It's your boy, PSA Sitch, here with another Tuesday, Tuesday, Tuesday stream with everyone's favorite stepbrother who's stuck in the washing machine and just needs what? to be pulled out. Adam Friend. I don't know if that's an insult or a compliment. <laughs> I can't tell. I mean, <laughs> it's, it's, I think it's an insult. It depends Isn't there on some uh, kind of like incest going on in that in that <laughs> reference. Well, I mean, if you're the one stuck in the machine, I guess, you know, you're the one Terrible. taking it. <laughs> oh, is that how it works? Depends on you, t you know, listen, listen, Adam. Postmates has got Ouch. you covered, okay? Okay, yeah. Postmates has the menu <laughs> just for you. I don't know if I've eaten correctly before this episode, though. <laughs> so I, I wish that I did not know people plan their diets around, like... Sex? <laughs> sexual encounters mm -hmm. and i've lived mm -hmm. this long and i never needed to know that so what ha why <laughs> why are you such a square adam you're not you're not uh organizing your diet around Kid, sex kids today oh i know oh jeez yeah anyway anyways yeah so look at that jinx you want to read some Coke. super chats and all are we going to dig out the this debate and do like 10 minutes of it I think we're going to not read some Super Chats at first. I mean, we'll read this. Why not? One. But no, because we're going to watch a little bit of the Vosh, the highly, highly requested, which we will do a full stream on this at some point in the future. But we're going to watch a little bit of the Vosh uh, Tom debate. Right. Yeah. About gender. We'll do the beginning of it because it's so, so fascinating. Just did you also did you read Trump's? response to the to the january 6th first did you see the january 6th second day i only saw it was yesterday i only saw half of it you only saw half of it well it yeah. is it's, it is what it is pretty juicy <laughs> oh okay the bill bar i guess it's bill bar recorded testimony but i got to admit mm -hmm. there they're answering questions that I've had in my head forever about, well, what were people saying to him? And I think I remember Scott Adams saying something about, well, right now he's surrounded by bad people who are giving him terrible advice. Mm -hmm. But he well, was also surrounded by people who are giving him what I would qualify as good, good advice, but he wasn't taking it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> So all of, so there was a in the hearing there's a meeting that that Trump has some report that he mm -hmm. thinks is devastating and is going to basically overturn the election. So he brings Bill Barr into his office and gives him this report or holds us up this report and says this report proves that there was enough fraud to overturn the election and this means I will get a second term. Uh -huh. <laughs> and he sends it off to his his secretary to get copied so Bill Barr can read a copy of the report, right? Yeah. So Bill Barr is kind of there going, because, you know, obviously he's investigating too. He wants to know what the fuck is going on. So he's all right. these different claims that are coming out. You know, FBI uh, interviewed the guy. Remember the truck guy that we both talked about? Mm -hmm. You know, FBI's interviewing him and his his statements are not credible. Uh, the they're interviewing. Remember the suitcase thing? The woman who pulled the suitcases out from under she the table. She pulled suitcases from under the right. table. Right. So they're they're interviewing them. They're interviewing all those poll workers. Yes. They're interviewing all the people who are the poll watchers. They're fucking yes. interview. They're interviewing the guy who fixed the leak. <laughs> right. Remember the leak <laughs> yes, that supposedly leak. never happened. The so mysterious leak. Right. Yes. They're, so they're fucking digging in, which good, right? That's what you want to yes, hear. You're like, exactly. okay, none of this stuff got brushed under the rug. So, but Trump has the this document, and Bill Barr. Well, is, let me just interrupt you for a second. See uh -huh. that that's so it's very important because and it's annoying because I remember during or like right after the election, we heard all these accusations. We never heard from the people making the accusations, obviously. That there was, you know, the FBI or the Department of Justice did did question these people and did look into all these claims and just mm -hmm. found none of them to be credible. Right. Yes. Yeah. Totally. But you know, what? Even one guy they, <laughs> one guy that they had testimony, 
said he got a call from one of Giuliani's people and the guy, mm -hmm. he, he basically told him what he knows and then the guy started on a tirade about the deep state. <laughs> the guy was like, I never <laughs> took a phone call from that guy again. <laughs> right? Right. So, I mean, the, the people who are investigating this stuff, let's face it, they are the deep state. But not right, in like yeah. a conspiratorial type of way, right? This is their fucking jobs. These are their jobs. Yeah. yeah. Well, especially Barr. I mean, Barr, you know, he, Trump, uh, you know, offered the job to him while he's president and Barr accepts it. And I mean, Barr's the guy who came out and basically ran defense for Trump during the uh, Russia gate thing. He, he you know, and, remember he, he yes. preempted, he preempted the, uh, the Mueller report and completely defended Trump. Yes. And then, and so then now people, just because he says, well, I looked into the, the election claims and I thought they were all BS. Just because of that, people just jump this conclusion. Oh, well, Barr really hated Trump from the beginning. He was a deep stater. I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> Barr, yeah, Barr, not only that, Barr was on Fox News, I believe yesterday or maybe even today. Mm -hmm. I just saw the video and he was talking about, he doesn't think Trump did anything illegal. Like he does right. think Trump is delusional and doesn't know, you know, <laughs> like he even says, I think in the January 6th hearing that it became obvious that he just became unmoored from reality. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Which I mean, as, as Not great. Well, I mean, I, I get it. I get it. He's, he's like, they're going to add me to the one term president list. Of course. The list of losers, the fucking right. losers. Mm -hmm. Look, no one, everyone knows one term president means you suck. <laughs> that's what it means, right? I mean, yeah, I guess that's true. He's that's on true. the loser list. Oh, God, of course he can't take it. Yeah. He, he can't, he just can't believe it. And I, I mean, I get it. I totally understand it. Well, Human nature, what it is, and him being a, a narcissist and all. Right. I, I think to summarize, I mean, so I watched the first half of the of Monday's hearing right to summarize basically what seemed to be the case judging from the testimony that they played was that you had Barr and you had like Trump's entire or at least the majority of his legal team who had been the legal team for his entire presidency and you had the people that the Trump administration had hired to do all the polling for the election basically all of them said uh, we don't see any evidence for this election fraud claim that you're making and according to the numbers everything checks out that you lost the way that you did and so then trump basically ignores or fires them all and then turns to the people that tell him what he wants to hear which unfortunately happens to be rudy giuliani and Sidney powell right. and they just say all sorts of crazy shit, and he just kind of believes anything that they say while ignoring everyone else in his administration and then Apparently, it seemed like, from the testimony at least, that it was getting so bad that even, you know, Jared and Mark Meadows and other people in the Trump staff, they, they all thought that uh, Rudy Giuliani and Powell were just full of shit. And it's like this weird power game where, like, they're trying to keep, like, they can't, like, they're telling Trump that they think that they're full of shit and that the election stuff is not credible, but Trump just doesn't listen to them. So then... You know, Trump's chief of staff is playing this game where he's like trying to keep Trump away from Giuliani and Powell without like making it very apparent to Trump that he's doing this <laughs> because he thinks they're a bad influence on him. Yeah, yeah. It's so, it's so like, it's so trappings of power, political like nonsense that was going on, you know, like surrounding this where it's like we have to keep all these, it's like, I'm the head advisor for Trump and I have to keep the advisors I disagree with outside, you know, the King's earshot and stuff, you know? Yeah. It's, I mean, he might, he might run and win again, mm -hmm. which is, and, and I'm conflicted on this because if he runs and wins again, it will be on this strategy of denigrating the electoral process, which, right. That is fucking, not great. That is not a way to run. Right. Can you imagine yeah. if we get in this cycle of everyone who wins wins because they've claimed there's fraud in the election on the other side? Not well, I mean we couldn't. It's not a that's feasible long-term right? strategy. Yeah. yeah. Right. 
Uh, yeah, I think, I mean, unless there's some super bombshell in the second half of the hearing, which I haven't heard yet, I think, um, I mean, I, I think that testimony from all those people is pretty, it's pretty damning against uh, Trump, but I don't think it's going to have any influence on uh, people who like Trump. I don't think it's going to change anyone's opinion. Of course not. Yeah. Or sway any people in the center's opinion whatsoever. So the, the, what I don't, I don't think he can win centrist voters, but maybe I'm wrong. Well, I think the only thing that might come out of the hearing that may change people's opinion would be if there's firsthand testimony of people that are like, you know, while the January 6th riots are going on, everyone keeps coming to Trump to tell him the, to, to call in the National Guard, to call in the military, oh, yeah. to right. do something. And Trump keeps telling them to fuck off. And if the claim, if there's some firsthand witness who testifies that I heard Trump say that, right, you know, maybe credible. we should hang Mike yeah. Pence. Like, I think, I think something like that incendiary maybe will change some people's minds. But I don't think the second day would really change anyone's mind. Right now, he's killing it in polling. Right. Everyone has buyer's remorse on Biden. Like, he's destroying yes. Biden, Biden and Kamala Harris in polling, which... Yes. Which bodes well for my $500. But I, now I'm in the position where... God, if he if I just if he runs and wins, like I might have to donate the money to charity or something because I just I don't think it's good for the country. I really don't think it's good for the country. No. Well He was polarizing before. Yeah. This is extra 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 polarizing. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Not and great. you know, it's fucked up because I you know, I didn't think he I didn't buy any of the hype. I didn't think he was I mean, too terrible a president. There was that fishing there was that first impeachment thing which was, <laughs> super fucking bad yes. which was not great yes which that's, was that's not putting great. it mildly yes yeah if you once you dig in on that phone call that ukrainian well, okay. phone call you're like oh, okay well this is not very good <laughs> here, okay here, here's my here's my question is like why did trump ever put out that report publicly like, I want to see, you know, I want the Trump administration, or really not Trump administration, I want Sidney Powell and Giuliani and Trump oh, yes. to show their work. If they're yes. claiming that all this fraud occurred, then put that report out there, put that information out there. Because well, they, you know that there's all these reports from Barr and the Department of Justice and the FBI that all say, you know, are all the agents who looked into all these claims writing the reports about why they thought it was bullshit – and all that stuff has been hidden away under, you know, executive privilege or whatever. Oh, yeah. And we're there, never going to see that stuff. There was some because Barr, so he gets a copy of the report and he starts leafing through it and he starts yeah. going to things and he's like addressing them. He's saying, yeah. okay, well, this thing about the truck driver, like we looked into this and his claims didn't seem to be credible. Like we interviewed all the people who loaded the truck and unloaded the truck, right? Right. So and we have no doubt that he believes it, but I don't. We don't think it matches with reality. So and then he goes on. So and Trump is like, okay. And then he goes, but there's this other thing. So then he goes on to the other thing, right? And they mm -hmm. end up going in a circle. By the time he's addressed everything, like he's back at the first thing again. Well, what about that? <laughs> <laughs> so you're going, which is okay. hilarious because that's actually that's actually a process. Scott Adams. Scott I know Adams Scott Adams, Adams articulates. About, yeah. Obviously, he didn't uh, teach Trump this unfortunately right, right so yeah the there was one really funny thing too bar i guess i don't know if it was this meeting or another meeting that i was going into but he had his secretary wait for him in his office because he thought mm -hmm. he might be fired and he might not be able to get back into the building to get his stuff yeah he it was it was uh bar told an ap reporter that they investigated all the claims and found no evidence for any election fraud that would have impacted uh, the overall right. count yeah and he thought after that he was going to get fired on the spot. <laughs> yeah. well yeah exactly exactly but he, i guess he ended up resigning because he was just like okay well i can't do anything i've done my best he's not listening yeah. to me i'm moving on right which is right. probably wise did he get i wonder if Barr got pardoned <laughs> i wonder if he i mean got... i don't I don't know, what did he do that would merit getting a pardon? Somebody tweeted at us 
that mm -hmm. Clinton made some really suspicious pardons. And that's one of the reasons. Well, th that's a good argument why they might not start going into Trump's pardons because it Maybe. would start a, you know, a, a tit well, for tat on pardons. First of all, I mean, uh, I did I did skim that article. I do actually vaguely remember that at the time. Uh, being very controversial, and I have no doubt about it that Clinton and the Clintons are highly corrupt, and would not be even remotely shocked if someone paid them a million dollars for a pardon or whatever the amount was. <laughs> so that doesn't even, I mean, sh uh, shock me. I don't think that's the reason why they wouldn't look into it, because first of all, I don't even know what the statute of limitations for something like that is. You know, so long ago, and just in like the public, I'm not even sure. Even if the statute of limitations, you know, if there was no limitation, even if they could still go after it, I just don't think the public cares about something that happens like tw that happened twenty years ago, right? Like if they go after if Trump it's for about, something, if it's they're going to say, "Well, what about this thing t happened twenty years ago?" If like, it's I don't a, know. It's come like, on, Sitch. If it's about Democrats doing fucked up shit, they don't care if it's a thousand years ago. Yeah, no, but it's not. I'm just saying, I don't think. I don't think that's the reason they're not going after it. I don't buy that. That's the reason why. Oh, okay. Going well, after that's, that's that's all acceptable. I'm saying. Yeah. I mean, I think it did happen. I'm not questioning whether the claim is valid. I just don't think that's in the calculation here. So I got the video up. Okay. I he does a stellar intro, completely destroying. Do we need to watch any of that? I don't know. Uh, we can, that. we can, well, we're going to watch the whole thing at some point. We can skip the intro. His and argument. If you want to just get to like the goofy shit in the beginning, cause it's funny. Yeah. That's what I was going okay. for. Right. The, uh, he might, he might do a summary here on the, on his intro. So let's identify him as being rich. Well, hold on. You could identify um, as being rich without. No. Me, All right. Um, what are you doing? Uh, Texas SB 12 for $20 says y'all's talk about how Rittenhouse was protecting himself and not property, which is true. Reminded me of Joe Horn's case where he shot his neighbor's intruder. If you ever get the chance, you should listen to the phone call. I'm not familiar with that case. Are you? No. Sounds Joe interesting, though. Horn shooting case. If my neighbor wants to come over and shoot our intruder, I'm down, down with that. Go ahead. Unless it's like uh, Joe, my mother-in-law or something. <laughs> shot and killed. Yeah, there you look, look at you. Killed two burglars outside his neighbor's house. Um, oh, man. He was asked 14 times not to interfere with the burglary, burglary because the police would soon be would sh soon be on the scene. The shooting resulted in debates regarding self-defense. Uh, Joe, he was cleared by a grand jury. So he wasn't, I mean, he was charged, but he wasn't, didn't get him. Hmm. All right. I'm actually curious the, the law about that. I would assume in most states you're not allowed to shoot. Well, I guess it depends. If you have reason to believe that your neighbor's home, maybe you could shoot them. Uh, I would assume if you know that your neighbor is not home, that you could not shoot someone for breaking into their house. All right. I would we, got, assume. we got one twenty-five before we have our guests. Okay. So what are you, are you saying you want to? <laughs> well, I mean... Okay, look at Adam. What is uh, so we're reviewing? We're reviewing Vosh versus Doctor Thomas Bogardus. That's a pretty Bogard. Cool, that's a that pretty good name, huh? Bogardus. Okay, so let's just watch. And he's a philosophy videos. professor, and we're skipping to. Is he a professor? I think he is. Yeah. Okay. I think he's a philosophy teacher. I didn't know that. Which is interesting. Yeah. I saw. I watched part of Destiny reviewing this, and it was. I mean, it's pretty fun. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, he's an associate professor of philosophy. The hu the go. hubris of Vosh. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of legendary, it really, is at this point. Okay. Well, Vosh is like the kind of guy who he's got like a big exam, his big philosophy exam. And right. He hasn't read. And he's any just going to wing it. <laughs> Yeah, he hasn't read any of the research or any of the pay or any textbook or any of the papers that he has to. And he just kind of rolls out of bed and he's just like, I could just bullshit on this test and I'll be fine. So I was working on the comic while I was listening to this. So I didn't see any of the screen stuff here. But look, he's got all trans women are women. He's got like the logic proposition here. Yes. All the, the 
the claim trees here, biological view, social view, self ID view, which is, I mean, this is so helpful being able to identify which of these perspectives. So he's like, which way are you going, Vosh? Are you, you going down the biology? No, the social, okay, the social view. So let's see here. Right. All trans women are women. Okay. This is what I this is what I was trying to say, but he was like, "You can't you can't say this. You can't say all trans women aren't women anymore." I mean, that's or not like, women. Yeah. yeah, but he's he is saying that. Not actually being rich, and so on, and this just holds generally for every feature, any property you choose, any feature you choose, um, and so what that means, what one and two entail here is, on this view, the phrase "being a woman" doesn't refer to anything because there's no feature that answers to this definition. There's no such thing. And so um, a kind of surprising result is on this view, it looks like there are no women and there are no trans women, therefore. And for our purposes, what follows is um, it's false that all trans women are women, or at least it's not true. Um, in fact, why like is the, I never watched this, I only listened to it. Why is the picture like zoomed in and fucked up? I don't know. I blame okay. James. I, I blame James. Yeah. What's going on here? So have just you seen a, James' badass beard? He looks so cool. I have. He looks um, like Lincoln. Yeah, there you go. Uh, <laughs> to to consolidate because we kind of started in the middle of this for the chat. His argument, which is a very interesting argument, which I never thought of, which is that since Vosh kind of takes this uh, argument where no one can really classify what it means to be a woman. Vosh is essentially saying that there's no such thing as a woman. Therefore, Vosh cannot say that trans women are women. Right. Which is like, oh, that's I had never thought about that, but that's very true. Yes. So, so he forces him into the position where he has to take the evil claim. Right. I mean, Vosh obviously refuses to take that position. Of course. But, yeah. He's like, this is a religious position that I have here. Why would I... <laughs> You can't argue me out of this. Have you heard of Agua? <laughs> Looks like none are, because there are no women at all. Okay, um, here's a couple other views. I think those are sort of the big three, but here are some other views that have been discussed um, by Vosh. One is gender abolition. On this view, ideally, there are no genders. So ideally, women don't exist. Here's Vosh expressing that sort of view. I think gender is a destructive concept, he says. So eventually, I want it gone. Look how much, look how much work that Dr. Tom has done for this. I know. He dug up all his quotes. He did all his charts. Vosh just like rolls out of bed and like licks his hair. And he's like, a eh, bit of bullshit. It's like, it's just so disgusting. It is. So I think I was so enraged listening to this debate because he's so bad faith, so horrendously bad faith when Dr. Tom does like all this work and lays everything out so nice and clear. Right? The whole goal of sophistry is just to destroy people's time. It's yes. to make well, them spend time doing this nonsense. Right. It's to obfus obfuscate. Obfuscate. Come on, look obfuscate. how... Obfuscate. You can never like, say that word. Obfuscate. Look, I'm a obfuscate. pro now. There you go. <laughs> it's to obf obfuscate the truth and to muddle everything up, yes. Yeah. Sally has an inclusive philosopher at MIT says something similar. She adopted a social role view. She thought to be a woman is to be oppressed. So she says a main um, part of the project of feminism is to eliminate women, which sounds kind of surprising, um, but that was her view. So um, I think we can at least agree that on this view, if you ask um, how things should be ideally, um, they would say ideally uh, there are no women at all. And they would say, ideally, there are no trans women. Look at that. He catches him in a contradiction. He says, listen, you're a gender abolitionist, Vosh. But if you are a true gender <laughs> abolitionist, you can't say what you're saying. Right. Uh, so well, that's... A well, there's a, there's a problem here, input. which is what uh, James Lindsay talks about a lot. And he's, he talks about with a lot of these critical theories and especially uh, queer uh, theories, the goal is just to deconstruct all normative claims and values about yes. society and so since that's the goal they don't intentionally they don't care about being consistent because they're not coming from a, a position of like ideological consistency or fundamental principles beyond 
you know, deconstruction and revolution. So they can do whatever, you know, they can feel justified in doing whatever rhetorical tricks that they want to just get to get what they want. And I think yeah. that's kind of how Vosh views it when he calls himself like, you know, a consequentialist or whatever. Because he's like, well, as long as society, as long as whatever bullshit arguments I'm making get me to the society I want to make, that's all that matters. Right. Yeah. The society where he has a big fat bank account and everyone loves him. <laughs> Right. I mean, yeah, the society I where he's at the top of the status hierarchy. Right. Right. I mean, this is Vosh has decided, you know, there's a lot of power in this church of wokeness. I want to be a priest there. <laughs> That's what he's doing. Yes. yes. A lot of people do this. Location of that view. Here's another one, which I think Vosh might want to defend today. He says um, in his opening statements that he says prescriptively trans women are women. So that's another view that I've heard expressed in his videos. Um, on this view, when you say trans women are women, um, what you're actually doing is giving a kind of command or prescription. You're saying you should speak and act as though trans women or women is literally true. You should speak and act as though trans women or women is literally true. And if you ask why, as Vosh said in his opening statement, it's justified by utility, by good consequences, by benefits. That's a more, that's a, Metaphorical truth position right there. Perfectly mm -hmm. stated. Yes. Um, so here's a statement of Vash uh, sort of expressing that. So he says, um, what people mean when they say they're women is, women is a social category I'd like to be a part of. I want to think of myself as, a, as part of it and be thought of as part of it. Um, Tali May Betcher, a trans philosopher, says something similar. In trans inclusive and queer communities, gender presentation indicates how you want to be treated. So if you think that we should treat people how they want to be treated, then when you say trans women are women, what you might be communicating is we should treat people how they want to be treated. We should treat trans women how they want to be treated. Okay, and again, it's justified by utility. So I'll just point out with respect to the prescriptive claim, whether this is something we should do, something that doesn't seem to enter into um, everybody's moral calculations is whether or not what we're saying is true. Well, 60, and, 60 seconds uh, left. 60 seconds left. Okay. And given what I've said so far, it looks like this statement, trans women are women, is uh, literally not true. And so we can at least agree on that. If we asked this prescriptivist view, strictly speaking, literally, are all trans women women? I think, given what we've said, the view has to agree with, has to say no. Okay, let's see if I can fit this in. I ran out of space on my slide, but sometimes Vosh seems to be a nihilist or an anti-realist about gender. Um, sometimes he says gender concepts are arbitrary social designations, and in reality, there are no men, no women, etc. Here's a quotation from Bosch back in 2019 saying, all categories are socially constructed. They don't exist in nature. We built them. So if you hold that view, and then you ask, well, really, literally, um, are all trans women women? I think the view has to say no. In reality, no. Okay, so I tried to show that. So there's some sophistry that goes on here. I've never heard anyone address this whenever someone brings up the social construct thing, there's more than one type of social construct. Okay. okay. There's soft social constructs and there's hard social constructs. A, so a, a hard social construct is a social, like, so like, yes, it's technically true that all categories are created by human beings. Like, you know, if you cut open a, like a bear, there's nothing in it that said there's no like God did not stitch and the universe did not stitch the words like mammal into the bear's right, flesh. Totally. Right. Yeah. Um, so but the classification of like mammal is a hard social construct. And it's called that because the category, despite being created by people, is based on like a, something that they call a brute fact, a fact about nature. Really? It's not okay. constructed. Yes. So like. You know, the decision to categorize things as mammals, you know, based on whether they, you know, generally, except for obviously platypuses, with one exception, you know, whether they have live young, whether they, you know, have breast tissue that they feed the babies, you know, blue, blah, 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 blah. That's a hard social construct. It's based on some kind of brute fact. A soft social construct is something that's not based on a, on a hard brute fact. It's something that is sort of based on some more arbitrary social like uh, language. distinction. Um, or the women like the color pink. Yeah, like the color, you know, like women having pink, you know, liking pink, boys liking blue, assuming there's no studies in that uh, physically with their eyes or anything, then yeah, it'd be more like a soft social construct. And what's really happening with Vosh and a lot of the under, other gender abolitionists 
is that they want to transform gender from a hard social construct into a soft social construct. And they kind of leave that part of the argument out of it, even though that's really the crux of what's going on. Right. You Just so they can kind of uh, you know, hide the ball a little bit. Right. Yeah. Well, he eviscerates him with the water example. Right. The statement trans women are women is not true on every view we've looked at, including five from Bosch. Thank you for your attention. <laughs> Destroyed. <laughs> Destroyed. Thank you very much for that opening. And with that, we're going to jump into open conversation. Want to say, folks, thrilled to let you know we have a lot of upcoming debates. You don't want to miss them. So, for example, just confirmed today at the Bosch Tuesday, you don't mind after that if I take a moment to respond to your premises, as I have plenty to say, as we as we it seems we both do. So the issue I have here is that every um, I feel as though you've misrepresented some of my views and definitions here. And what's more, all of these views are incoherent. The the construct I often find <laughs> is that people treat. Look, you've misrepresented my incoherent. What's he saying here? Sitch, I don't necessarily know. You know, he's saying he's saying you straw manned me. And then on top of that, your arguments are incoherent. So I'm just, it sounded like know. he said his arguments were incoherent. But no, they were straw man versions of his yeah. arguments, so he's going to fix it. Right. Right. The biological view, as though because it's the traditionally accepted one, it's the coherent one. But in reality, it's nothing but. There's a reason why nature, the arguably one of the most respected scientific journals in the history of the species, um, has been putting out article after op-ed about how um, the idea that sex and gender are the same or that gender should be considered an extension of a biological category is ahistorical, ascientific, and just false. Fosh says this all the time, and it it's so pathetically lame and gross, which is he doesn't even cite, like he's not even citing like this specific article that you could check, right? Yeah. He just says like, oh, well, this publication – yeah put out a bunch of articles about this like okay like what does that mean like, yeah so, thank goodness we can okay. go through the entire history right. of nature and find exactly what he's talking about yeah right give me something specific that we can look at and see what their arguments about you know he's, before you make this uh, fallacious appeal to authority he's but, bullshitting he's yes. totally bullshitting right and the reason for that is because what you obfuscate when you refer to the bio it's obfuscate come on say it right <laughs> fuck bosh listen listen, listen. Listen. Obfuscate, obfuscate, no, obfuscate. Okay, come on. Okay. Logical we sex can't... version of gender is the literal millennia of arguments and inconsistencies over what exactly it means to draw that line. Of course, for most of also, I just want to, I don't when he says that like for thousands of years humans didn't classify gender and sex as being the same. I don't know what the fuck he's talking about. For thousands of years, like gender is a very, very, very new concept. Yes, in human history. That's only been around for like 50 to 60 ish years. Before yes. that, there was never thought of a distinction between sex and gender. Ever. Yes. Yeah. In like every human culture, they always thought that sex and gender were literally the same thing. So I don't know what the fuck he's talking about. This is why Matt Walsh did go to Africa and, and hang out with yes. the tribesmen just right. to show their concept of this sex and gender. Sure. So when people like sure. Vosh go, oh, this is something. You know, ancient history is on our side. You can yeah, go, it's like, yeah, get the fuck out of here. What are I you talking about? I don't know what about? you're talking about. Right. Yeah. Well, and also, that's just, even if that was the case, even if there were societies that did separate them, that doesn't, I mean, there are societies that ate people. Like, I don't know. Sure, <laughs> yeah. What kind of argument is that? Societies that cut out people's hearts and sacrificed them to the, the right. god of the, like, okay. the coming harvest. Yeah, exactly human's history we have no idea what chromosomes or even hormone washes are so only recently has a full understanding of the actual things that differentiate biological males and females even been known to us but even leaving that aside long standing have been the practices of intersex people having their genitals mutilated by doctors who want and I, I imagine okay i know we're pausing it so much but it's like, i know you gotta let him get his argument out he, but he, everything he's saying is is crazy yeah because it's like from a biological perspective the entire, the only point of living, the only point of living from a purely evolutionary perspective is is just to reproduce. He's getting freaky with your your, your right. significant other. Right. It's it's literally just to reproduce and to you know care for your offspring, and 
so Vash is saying that for thousands of years of all human history, we didn't know what a, we couldn't figure out the difference between a man and a woman, which yeah. is the entire point of life was just for human beings to figure out that distinction so that they could reproduce. Yeah, I don't. How do you how do you take this completely naive worldview and superimpose it onto biology? Like, obviously, there are so many species that aren't conscious but still engage in sexual reproduction. Like, they don't consciously know that, right. that uh, you know, they're going to die one day. They don't right. have cultures. But they still know uh, male and female. They still manage to reproduce. <laughs> it's, so it's so stupid. stupid. It's yeah. so stupid, yeah. Oh. Want to get that's what part of sophistry is just needlessly complicating things so you can hide mm -hmm. some stupid argument you can make some stupid argument by hiding the facts or or obfuscating the facts them cleanly fit in one category or another biologically male or biologically female often to the psychological detriment of those people because those doctors are trying to force people into a binary construct that just doesn't work and the existence of intersex people at all simply destroys the concept of a sex-based gender, because a binary is just that, a binary. You can't have a system that you claim is coherent when it's like, well... How does intersex destroy the concept of sex-based gender when intersex is a biological phenomenon? If his argument is that gender is a non-biological, it's a social, it's a pure social construct, then that doesn't make any fucking sense. It doesn't. It doesn't at all. Did you see this vocal distance thread on the trans women are women thing? No, I didn't. There, he lays out, I don't know if it's a he or I don't know if vocal distance is a he or she. They. <laughs> the only time they is actually useful. They lay out a, a thread on the sophistry of the, these arguments. And when someone brings up borderline examples or edge cases and says, this example proves we don't know where the lines are, the correct response is, the only reason you can think up cases that blur the line is that you know exactly where the line is. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> See these how it the works? Exceptions that, these are yeah. the exceptions that prove the rule. Exactly. Basically. So the yeah. only way, the only reason you're saying that edge these edge cases, these intersex people are the only reason you can call them an example is because you know that they fall outside of what the binary <laughs> yeah right yes right. the only reason they are an example is because th you know what the fucking binary is dude you're just you're just lying you're just right what well, making shit and, up and, i mean they're using constantly using intersex people as a shield when most intersex people you know, yeah, do not do want, want to be a shield. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they 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 want to identify as male or female. Right. You and know, they're not normal advocating lives. to be yeah, exactly. right, non-binary. And and if they and if there's like the tiny amount of people that have intersex conditions who want to be labeled as non-binary, then like go fuck ahead. I don't care. That's fine. That that's not like all these people that are running out here with the non-binary pronouns do not have intersex conditions, and that's bullshit. And they know it's bullshit. Yeah. Oh man. There are not 90. I think a, most of the intersex people don't even know they're intersex because they have some kind of chromosomal difference and, and they manifest right. as male or female. So. Yeah, like because there's, there's like five or six, I think, uh, main intersex conditions. Right. And only like a few of them, you know, would you actually know that you even have you know, right. most of the time. So, yeah. <laughs> percent of people fit to it well 99 percent of people leaves out millions and what are those millions then aberrant counterexamples? no the system never functioned and it never made that much sense and it never survived scrutiny by the way it's not as though medieval french peasants were undergoing significant sociological analysis of the concept of the social construction of sex they didn't have sociology back then it's a fairly modern <laughs> construction when it comes to what we talk about so what is he saying there He's saying because the peasants didn't have sociology, they didn't understand sex well, and gender. Or? What he, what he's saying is that he's accidentally contradicting his earlier statement. I feel like for he thousands did. Thousands yeah. of years, people knew the difference between sex and gender. Now he's saying, well, they didn't know the difference between sex and gender because they didn't have sociology. So, right. which 
imagine thinking that sociology was is the only thing that's related to figuring out the difference between sex and gender. Yeah, sociology. <laughs> I mean, so sociology may be gender roles, but not. Or there's sex some roles. other fields that are important, like psychology, psychiatry, biology. biology there's some other fields yeah. that you know could be a little important biology, in determining you know sex and uh, gender differences. Sure. Like with the prescription of gender and all statements of definition are prescriptive, by the way, because we do create these definitions. We didn't unearth them in stone tablets written by God. You know, we had to make efforts to understand them. Um, what we're really doing is trying to find what serves us best. Now, there is meaningful utility in understanding the difference between a biological male and a biological female. There are categorical differences that are worth respecting in a biological sense. But that doesn't encompass the wide variety of social differences between most men and most women that are largely socially ascribed. So when you have this dissonance here, where so much of what it means to be a man isn't actually what it means to be biologically male, in both the modern world and throughout history, in many cultures, there are differences between those two things, we have an issue. What is a consistent, rigorous, 100% of the time effective, applicable mode of gender? What works? Build our definitions to serve human utility. And to that effect, uh, you call it the self-ID view. The prescriptive view I don't think is inconsistent, but I stand by this. What we mean when we say woman, a woman, is a person who chooses to adhere to a broad, constructed collection of values, aesthetics, forms, roles, and perspectives that we consider to be a part of what it means to be a woman. There is no consistency here, and you'll never find it. No more than you could find consistency in the definition of what it means to be cool. You know, find me a fine line on that. Point in the room where the cool, you know, the cool protons are, or the cool radiation. It just, it's not present, and you'll never find it. Um, but still, we have very strong ideas about what it means to be cool. And we argue, but the arguments are for a purpose. Because finding out who's cool, what's really cool, is socially useful, as is whatever definition we arrive at, which hurts the smallest number of people uh, concerning gender. And that is why I believe trans women are women, because all definitional statements are necessarily prescriptive. And as long as we are dealing with a system that is fundamentally, constructedly absurd, we should at least refer to it in ways that harm people uh, in the, uh, to, the, to the least possible extent. Okay, um, so you started that by saying you were going to respond to my premises, but I'm struggling to see how any of this responded to any premise of any argument I gave. <laughs> um, so let's go through some of the things you said. Um, you said all of these views are incoherent. You said there's no coherent concept of gender. Is that, is that right? Did I get you right there? You will not find me a definition of gender that is 100% consistent and all-encompassing and has no flaws in it. There are no such things. You'll, so, you okay. can't be found. So there's no consistent definition of gender. That's not what... I hate this. That's not what consistent definition means, okay? You, you could do that for a door, a chair, a window, a table, a car. You could do that for any object, you know, outside of, like, I don't know, the the elements on the periodic table or something that has some like incredibly precise uh, measurement yes or ca or classification that's not categories work by people create like a broad criteria of uh descriptions and then if something fits you know if something has enough of these things then they fit in that category but not everything has all the categories i mean that's why you have you know we consider a a revolving door and a door that's like a normal open up door, they're both, they're still doors, even though they look very different and they function very differently. They're still considered doors. Yeah. You know, if, if you take a door and you rip it off its hinges and you throw it on the ground so it no longer functions, it's still a door and people still recognize it as a door. And five year old children understand this concept intrinsically. And we couldn't have a society, like imagine how idiotically stupid language would be if we had to have a word. If every category had to have this exact perfect like encompassment of every possible thing, because then we'd have to have thousands and thousands and thousands of different words all to describe basically the same thing. Right. Like it's so stupid. We're the Eskimos with water or, yeah, or, or snow. snow. Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> the, I'm just going to memorize this. This is so beautiful. The only reason you can think up cases that blur the line is because you know right exactly where the line is you're all you're yep. doing is you're you're 
you're imagining a case that is really close to the edge of the line. <laughs> That's all you're right. doing. You're well, playing this game. It's 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 an actual fallacy. It's a Sordi's paradox, the continuum fallacy. And it's oh. based on the guy basically the guy said like if we have a heap of sand. Oh yeah, when does it become a heap? Yeah. Yeah, like if I keep taking individual grains out, at right. what point does it cease to be a heap? Right. And it's yes. like well there's no and it's it's actually interesting because Vanch and all the other uh, people making this argument, they're making the exact same argument the creationists were making because the creationists would say they would say, you know, whenever they talk to Richard Dawkins or something, they'd say, look, point to me in the fossil record, point to me the exact, you know, time right. that um that a monkey became a man. Right. And yes. then, you know, they would be like, well, that's not really possible because it's not like evolution doesn't work by a monkey one day gives birth to a human being. It's like very slow changes over millions of years. And so when exactly is the cutoff point is not, you know, it's, it's like you have like a spectrum of monkey to manness. And obviously these two categories exist and they're different. And just because you can't point to the exact spots where you think the change occurs, doesn't mean that the two categories don't exist. But it would be cool to see like a chimpanzee with a human baby. <laughs> like holding a human baby. It'd be pretty creepy. Can you imagine? It'd be pretty creepy. Like a chimpanzee had a there was there there is a big jump in chimpanzees though, because chimpanzees have a humans one of the chromosomes in chimpanzees fused to form humans. Chimpanzees have one more chromosome than human beings. Right. Which is kind of, I mean, that's kind of a big jump, don't you think? Like a, a whole yeah, chromosome but we, but fuses. It's it's not likely that like a single uh, person was born with this fused chromosome and was just radically different. I'm than... gonna go with the chimpanzee with the holding the human baby. <laughs> you just you just want this stupid the human <laughs> baby. Because how well, hold it, on. how does that even yeah. work? Like the chromosome fuses, mm -hmm. and then how does that that obviously that fuse of the chromosome went on to reproduce because well i don't know enough about genetics i don't know if it's like one baby was born with the fused chromosome or if it's like the chromosomes over time like you know become shorter or start fusing together slowly you know generation generation this is a mystery what? for evolution one that i'm, I'm not sure i don't know the i'm answer obviously question. keeping my but, eye on because i want to know what the he fuck wants to happened here the human baby. but like and another example which they gets brought up in this conversation though they don't talk about this specifically is is the color spectrum. It's like oh, every oh. person with eyeballs, you know, they can say, okay, this is red and this is orange, and we we see that these are different colors, right? We we recognize that they're different colors. But when exactly on the light spectrum does red become orange and orange become red if you were to zoom in and look at each like pixel of color? Like, I don't fucking know. Who knows? That's a subjective, that's probably a subjective question. There's not like a clear answer. That doesn't mean that red, the color red and the color orange don't exist. I just think it's funny that the, that Vosh is in the creationist position. Of course. And he's now they're debating literal creationists. I think Matt. Yes. yes. Isn't Matt? I, I don't think Matt Walsh is a creationist, actually. I, Matt Walsh uh, does believe that's in evolution. a good evolution, question. So. Does Matt Walsh believe in evolution? Matt Walsh de definitely believes in evolution. I looked it up. Oh, okay. But anyway. Hit it up. So no matter who I asked, if I asked anybody, what is a woman, no matter what they say, um, you think there's going to be some sort of impossibility or contradiction or inconsistency. You will always be able to find a hole or an exception, whether they oh. take a biological or self ID, a social okay. role or an abolitionist perspective, there will always yeah. be, well, gender abolition is a prescription, not a description of current gender states, but yeah. no matter what a person's definition of a woman is, there is always going to be something you can pin them on. Okay. So then it sounds like your view entails, there are no women because there's no true definition of woman. No, not right? at all. There are plenty of social constructions that I think have meaning and serve utility, even if there are no consistencies to it. I think cool people exist, but I don't think I could ever find a single definition of cool that is perfectly delineates in all ca like categories and situations uh, between cool and uncool people. Okay, so you said the concepts are incoherent and inconsistent, but I think what you just mean is... See, but wait, he just contradicted himself, because he just said, I think cool people exist, but I couldn't find some magical universal definition of it. Right. Well, it's like, okay, but... 
So you still recognize that like the category of cool exists. I mean, that's like a super soft social construct because different people classify different people as cool. Right. Yes, definitely. And you can't, I mean, compare that to a hard social construct like man and woman is right. ridiculous. But. Napoleon Dynamite is cool. Yeah, there you go. And this is all just, this is so stupid because this is all just an argument over, it's, it has nothing to do with like Dr. Uh, Tom isn't saying, you know, I hate trans people. He's not saying that they shouldn't be able to, you know, transition or anything like that. All he's saying is like, they ha there. It's a different category. A trans woman and a woman is a different category. That's literally the only argument being put forward. <laughs> that that yeah. that Vosh has such a problem with. Trans women are trans women, though. It just bugs the shit out of people. They don't want. They don't want to hear that. They're yeah. Like fuck you. How dare you deny my reality? <laughs> is perhaps vague, so allow for borderline cases or difficult to articulate. I think maybe that's what you mean when you say all definitions are incoherent and inconsistent, all definitions of gender anyway. I think what you mean is they allow for borderline cases. They'll be vague in various ways. Um, and what was the second thing I said? Vague in various ways and hard to articulate, difficult to articulate. It'll be hard to come up with or express or verbalize a definition that includes everyone who should be included and excludes everyone who should be excluded. So that's the view. I guess I would agree with that. Yeah, definitions are hard to come by, typically. Um, and most of them, especially in biology, are vague and admit of borderline cases. But nevertheless, they may be true. <laughs> um, there may be true definitions, even if they're difficult to express or articulate. You gave the example, one of your arguments against the biological definition of uh, woman was that we didn't know about chromosomes many years ago. Well, first of all, I don't think biological sex is defined in terms of chromosomes. Um, but let's just use the example of water. Maybe we could agree that water is H2O. Um, that was true even before we knew about chemistry. That was the definition of water before anybody knew anything about chemistry, before we knew about H2O. Back when Aristotle thought it... Do you see that he's furiously Googling something about water? <laughs> is he? He's trying to remember <laughs> the name of the water? I don't know. He just immediately started typing. He's like, wow. I got to get him on this water one. I can't even agree to the water being H2O. I love that this completely taps into that Jordan Peterson, Sam Harris debate over truth. Cause it really is, it is, it is metaphorical truth versus factual scientific truth. And I mean, if you are a pragmatist, you kind of have to accept that metaphorical truth is going to be more useful in building strong and healthy societies and mm -hmm. and factual truth probably less so but people still i mean i, I don't know if we'll get to it he makes a, a brilliant point in the end of the i think it's closer to the end of the debate where he says you know even if something even if, if you know scientists were trying to discover something that they knew was dangerous they would probably still want to discover it just to know it <laughs> just to just to know what is true and i ha i mean i have that feeling i'm team truth all the way i want right. to know what's what reality well, I mean, is that's part of i mean that's the whole thing with like splitting the atom right yes you know, they, yeah but it but it was a double edge because not only did they create nukes but they also created nuclear power which could end up you know saving the planet yeah and also nukes, uh, hopefully, will end up not destroying all life on the planet, but will end up actually preventing more wars than they, you know. But he, he so. makes, the, there's the, and this is, this goes back to the can you really serve two masters thing. Can you serve the master of I only want to do what's good for society and the master of I want to know what's true. You can't. At the no. same time. And I, yeah, you, you can't. No. You, you have to pick one or the other. No. Well, you, yeah. Well, the problem is that, and this is why I hate critical theories. Uh, you know, we have to adhere to the fact that there are facts about the universe that are that have nothing to do with morality, and then you know, you as a society can use them in for positive or negative ways. And that's just that's just reality. You can't hide the truth from people because you're afraid it will make them, you know, uh, do something bad. Essentially, right. It is trickier though 
to construct motivating ideologies that that really you know motivate people and and I don't think don't so. Create I, I think nihilism without. I I think I think you can. I I think you definitely one hundred percent can. So really, yeah. I I don't. Know. Water was just an element. Nevertheless, it was H two O. I'm sorry. This isn't so, true. That water has not always been H two O. Yeah. All you have to do is cross the Mexican border, and over there it's aqua. <laughs> Look at his face. Look at his face. Look at his face. He has the face of son. Um, I can't believe you've just said <laughs> the dumbest thing ever. He has that look like when your kid thinks, oh, they're going to tell you something really smart, and it turns out to be the dumbest thing you've ever heard. No. Oh, my God. Uh, this is, Did you uh, know in Mexico they, they have a different language and they use different words for water? Did you know that? Destroy. Bosch is, Bosch is incapable of feeling embarrassment, isn't he? He's like, um, did you ever see that episode of Community where uh, Britta is like, she's like so madly in love with this Carney? No, but you've talked and, about it before. And uh, so Jeff goes to the carnival and, and he's like, trying to figure out like what to do with this carnies and this carney is like just working at the gun stand and he's just completely like blank face and everything and he realizes that well then the carney eventually tells him the reason britta liked him so much is because he suffered brain damage that destroyed his ability to feel shame right <laughs> so, confidence right so he's just he doesn't care about anything and he just never feels bad about doing anything yeah yeah <sighs> I, does this well, there you go i mean Confidence is an aesthetic. Yes. But saying stupid shit sooner or later has to catch up with you, right? I mean, even if you say stupid shit confidently, I mean, you know, can this go on forever? Is I don't this, know. I don't know. Is this an inexhaustible... Y you, and, you and Destiny seem to be making the argument that Vosh is bleeding subs. I'm not sure I buy it, but... Uh, really? We'll oh, I didn't know Destiny was making that argument. Plus, he made it when we were talking to him. Oh, okay. Right, um, oh, you're we'll right. See. He did. Yeah. 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 I, I, we'll see. I mean, sooner, I guess you're, I guess most people, most people are below average intelligence by, I mean, <laughs> descriptively, right? Uh, no. It's I mean, the average is. Right. Oh, yeah. Well, and right. also, it, also that wouldn't, like the amount, the type of people that consume political content on the internet would obviously be. Smarter. Not, yeah, would be you'd think the higher range of things generally. Okay, right. so that's good. That's a point in our favor for Bosch right. losing subs. All right, let's see his. Let's see his bril. I sit. I'm with. I'm with Doctor Tom here. I mean, I think H two O was H two O. You know, <laughs> since the first star went supernova <laughs> and and created right. heavier elements, right. right? Well, this is what you said. You said Bosch is confusing. Uh, the symbol for something with the thing itself. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm able to distinguish between. I didn't. We create symbols right. because it was easier than always like, having the object around. Like Vosh walks up to like a restroom and he, you know, how it has like the little man and woman figurine. <laughs> he He's says, like, Hello. somebody has to let these poor people. They're out of here. They're trapped in the wall. How dare you enslave them here for your signage? <laughs> It's like, uh, it's, it's a picture. Okay. It's a picture. It, right? It's a picture, you moron. But he's, maybe this is why Vosh was hearkening to like past societies. He he he, like some primitive uh, cultures, thought that the photograph did in fact steal <laughs> your soul. Oh yeah. That, if Vosh is thirsty, he just sits down and writes out the word agua and then drinks it. <laughs> I can just, just drink the, <laughs> drink the concept. Vosh. Gosh, I don't understand why anyone goes hungry or thirsty in America right. when they could just go to Kinko's and print out a picture of water and food. And just... <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, come on, Bosh. That's H2O, not water. Aqua means water. Aqua is water. It's when a different they, term. Uh, actually, it's agua. It's not aqua, right? <laughs> and we're referring to terms and definitions. He's like, you didn't even get the pronunciation right, dumb fuck. Yes, yeah. Uh... 
words here. No, I'm referring to water, the stuff that fills lakes and rivers. I'm the not stuff talking that fills, about the word one. Many things fill lakes and rivers. Yes. So that completely destroys his argument. You're right, Vosh, because there are fish and turtles in lakes and rivers. It completely <laughs> annihilates the argument that water was here uh, since the beginning of time. This is, look at Dr. Tom's face. He knows he's talking to some fucking I know. bad faith actor. There are many things in waters and rivers. You've got to understand, <laughs> Dr. Tom. Don't try to fool me with your magic words, okay? Okay. Um, do you honestly Things, not know what I mean when I talk about water? Or are you just I, being a little difficult? I think you... you are you just being a little difficult? Yeah. Look at him. Yeah. Listen, little bitch. <laughs> We're having a conversation here. Knock it off with the sophistry. Yes. You made a mistake before you began that argument, which is that you... Look, and then he comes out and he says... You made the mistake, motherfucker. Right. Well, let's see. It's it's very. This is a very interesting response because this is basically Wash admitting that there's just some tactical decision devoid of what is actually being discussed. He says you made a mistake. Right. It's like, well, we're trying to have a conversation. Like, what do you? Or I guess that is a technical debate. So you said just because people didn't always know something doesn't mean that it can't be true. But that can't be the case when we're talking about definitions things that are true have constructed premises that lead necessarily to an an outcome a resolution but a definition is something applied presuppositionally you can say for example wait i don't know what the fuck he just, you know what he just said <laughs> i'm totally lost he's, he's, say, he's that, saying that, that a def he's basically saying that a definition is something that we make up like something is the thing because I, of no, the definition I, I understand. Well, okay, yeah. right. you said just because people didn't always know something it doesn't mean that it can't be true but that can't be the case when we're talking about definitions things that are true have constructed premises that lead necessarily to an an outcome a resolution things that are true have constructed premises right. that lead to an outcome. So, but he's talking about facts there. He's not talking about definitions. Now he's going to talk about definitions. Things that are he's, true. Right. He's talking about, yeah, <laughs> true statements. Yeah. Okay. It's he's se he's separating those from definitions. But <laughs> right, right. I, I mean, there's that. overlap, obviously. I mean, as soon as something, I mean, truth itself is a category. False is sure. a category. Sure. But a definition is something applied presuppositionally. You can say, for example, that the light, the, the spectrum of light that we see, the visible spectrum of light, is something that exists outside of our perception. And that is certainly true. But how we perceive it is not existentially correct. And what's more, the definition between red, orange, and yellow is not something that you can find proven uh, anywhere uh, in the real world. We have to arrive at arbitrary distinctions. Um, so that's, that's, can I just ask you about water again? There. Do you, you, do you not think water is H2O? But I think we've come up with a term to describe what we refer to as water. There okay, are of I'm course not, other I, cultures. I, that have I agree with you. We came up with a term to talk about water and that term right. is water. And we came up with <laughs> terms to talk about hydrogen and oxygen. Um, but what's here, here's a sentence. Water is H2O. You know what those terms mean. Now think about what idea is expressed by the words. What's the thought that's expressed? We could express it in many different languages. Now think about the thought that's expressed by that sentence. Look, he's so cool. This guy is like the picture of cool. Sit back. Let's think about this, this right. concept here. The idea, imagine it in your head, Vosh. And Vosh is like, hmm, let me check my Twitter. That's true, isn't it? The thought that is expressed by the sentences. Water is H2O. This is well. This is a really good response because he he cut through all all the nonsense. Basically. He did, yeah. He just like ignored it all. And he just, stripped like, all that sophistry right. away. He's like, let's just talk right. about the concept here. I I, could, I don't know if I could have this conversation. I just lose my mind. I know. <laughs> Jesus Christ. It's what do you think? And it was long before we got here. Long before humans got here. Water has always been H two O. Well, ice, of course, is also H two O. No. <laughs> No! Fuck you! <laughs> oh, God. It's so infuriating. It's I so know. infuriating. I he, know. He just won't answer the fucking goddamn this question. Is, this is, remember, I'm so happy I started using this term. This is first year college student 
logic, okay? It's like, oh, I'm a first year college student. I learned I can just deconstruct everything. Right. I win right. arguments. Like that's all it is. This that's is all it is. No, you're wrong. What about ice? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, okay. Congratulations. Okay. You're an idiot. <laughs> well, but water is it what is. we define it as within a given, you know, state. Ice is also water. It's not liquid water. Yeah, but colloquially, people refer to ice as ice and water as water. And whether or not they're going to use either of those definitions is going to come down to context. And what about heavy? So so Vosh is basically taking a position that you can't really. Like the knowledge only exists in the way that we define it, which is that is kind of the critical theory position. And that's the problem with critical theory yeah. because you can't have any sort of dialogue between philosophies or ideologies. Well, so, so Vosh's position is all categories are arbitrary right, and yes. constructed. And therefore I'm rooting my definitions and categories, not on, on real facts but on care harm well no uh, on foundation yeah and on power is usually the way they do it in critical theory like whoever creates right. the language has the well yeah the but that's more power. like that's more like the like that's the the realistic like the victor writes to history basically right. yeah yeah they're not saying that morally it should be based on power they're saying that's what happens but vosh is saying because everything's arbitrary i get to just define it based on what i think is is harmful or care harm Right. Water, 2H2O, or deuterium oxide, which is referred to as water and is, in fact, a type of water, an isotope, uh, but is not, in fact, H2O. There's an extra hydrogen atom holding on there, making the sub. <laughs> the expressions he makes are so, so funny. Ah, debating I wonder, an idiot. I wonder if the only way to really deconstruct this terrible argument is to is to look at the premise see if Vosh's premise even makes any sense like there's got to well the premise of like he's obviously not defining everything based on harm right like he doesn't i'm assuming Vosh doesn't think that you know Hmm. black people can identify as white and white people can identify as black right i mean wouldn't that be harm wouldn't it be beneficial if we deconstructed these yeah these racial categories well and not it's just like some defining things in one way harms one group over another (laughs) well that's why it's yeah that's why it's stupid but yeah you can't you can't make a definition that doesn't put somebody at harm right well i mean why should we call anyone you know, why should we call anyone stupid? Why should we call anyone having an intellectual disability? Why should we say anyone has a disability whatsoever? Like in the society where all definitions are not based off of something that's tangible and real, but instead based on what causes harm, like I, that society would look so foreign alien to us. True. I don't even think it'd be possible to exist within it. I mean, how could you say someone failed to do anything? You know, by acknowledging someone's failure, aren't you harming them? Like, it's just... This is just like a dystopian, you know, uh, Borgeron or whatever that story is called, Nightmare in the World. <laughs> yeah, no. Are we harming? It's dense. Mm. So if this is taking me back to chemistry class, but um, did you say deuterium? Is that right? Is that heavy water? Yes. If that's a, just an isotope, is it an isotope of oxygen that makes that? If that's an isotope, it's still oxygen and it's still H2O, and that is still H2O. That's still it water. Is that's why a different chemical water. compound than water, certainly. It's a different chemical compound. You have to acknowledge yeah, he, my stupid argument. He's making, but but Vash is unintentionally making um, making an argument against his case because then you could say, okay, yeah, but it's called heavy water, right? It's mm-hmm. there's a, there's a a modifier added to the term. It's called heavy water. Okay, so that's what we're saying, that trans women, <laughs> the trans women, you're just adding a modifier to the term woman. Yeah. Only if people refer to it as a different type of thing, not water, but let's say they... Tra- yeah, I guess he is doing... That's exactly what trans woman is, a different type of thing. It was the term waterium, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Scientists come up with wacky names. If they wanted to come up with a term like that to describe it, they would have a significant taxonomical distinction to refer to a different molecular composition but we refer to it 
as water. You might say it's trans water. A bit of a oh, difference, shit. but fundamentally very similar. Okay. So you're resisting me on the claim that water is H2O. Um, let me try a different one. How I'm about... resisting you on definitional prescriptivism. I think that we have... Uh, I'm not I prescribing think that... any definitions. I'm just saying water is H2O, true or false. And it sounds like you're reluctant to say true. No, so I, no try... I, I agree. I, I agree Wait, that water... It... He said, if, if Vosh is saying that all def definitions are inherently prescriptive, how can he fight him on definitional prescriptivism? I don't even know what definitional prescriptivism is. I don't either, but I'm saying if he if he's coming from this perception that all definitions are prescriptive, then he can't fight anyone on it because he's just saying that's just the reality of the situation. Definitional prescriptivism. I think he just made the term up, but Pers definition and exam. Well, the prescriptivism is a thing. Yeah, I know. I don't know that there's definitional prescriptivism. Yeah. He's just, well, first of all, so they're, they are definitely having two conversations here about, you know, re, one ver, reality versus, I don't know, what is Vosh arguing? Oh, wait, here we go. Prescriptivism. The belief, so I don't know why I said definitional, the belief that there are correct and wrong ways to use language and that books about language should give rules to follow rather than describing how language is really used. That kind of destroys Vosh's argument because that's not even what he's saying. Well, but I mean, isn't prescriptivism kind of a, a thing anyway? Don't you say like this is how you use a period? This is how you use an exclamation point? Like it is somewhat prescriptive, right? No, yeah, like grammatical rules would be prescriptive, right? But in the definition I just read, it said. It said language should be, it said books about language should give rules to follow rather than describing how language is really used. So for example, like addiction, like if you had a prescriptivism approach, you would say dictionaries should never use the word woke because the word woke is grammatically incorrect. Mm -hmm. But then the people that write the dictionary say, well, we're just describing how the language is used. We're not making a prescription about the correct usage of it. But, yep. but Vosh is taking that idea about prescriptivism and he's turning it to something that has nothing to do with what, like the argument about rules and grammar. He's talking about like, uh, he's adding like a moral element to categorical, to all categorical distinctions and all words, definitional, just by having the definition. Like, which is not what, according to this anyway, that's not what prescriptivism has anything to do with. Yeah, I don't know. It, and thankfully... I'm I'm so curious what he means that I would completely go down that rabbit hole, but right. Thankfully, Doctor Tom is not going to do that. <laughs> Doctor Tom is going to like stick to this. Yes, you can't even say water is H two O, dumb fuck. Well, I have a feeling that basically there's this thing about uh, linguistic prescriptivism that means something very specific and Vosh has sort of broadened it out and is using it incorrectly to mean all this other stuff. Right. It's because it helps him in the debate. Yeah. We, we refer to H2O as water colloquially. Yeah, of course. I'm, right. I'm fine. So with water that. is H2O and it was H2O long before humans came along. See, they're, they're a little bit talking past one another because Vosh is saying we refer to it that way. And he's dodging the question on whether or not that is a true statement. Whether or not yes. we know enough about chemistry to know that, you know, about oxygen and hydrogen and how water combines to make, how oxygen and hydrogen combine to make water. He's dodging right. that. Right. He's saying, yeah, we call it that, but. That's not really talking about each other. Call. That's intentionally dodging. So. What's that? It's not really talking past. It's intentionally dodging. Changing okay, the you're subject. right. Yeah. It, we we refer to H2O as water, colloquially. Yeah, of course. I'm, I'm colloquially. Water is H2O. And it was H2O long before humans came along. Another water example. Water wasn't a concept back then. I know. But nevertheless, water was there. Actually, water's never been a concept. Um, water's always been a molecule. <laughs> <laughs> so good. It's so good. Look at Bosch. What? Concepts and, and molecules are different. Um, we have a concept of water, but the concept is not itself water. Um, but our understanding of it 
and the differentiations that we make when we distinguish it from things like heavy water, these are socially constructed. After all, you just said it's still fundamentally water. This is so fucking No. Weird. You're so No, they're different things. We just come up with different terms for them. This is so fucking stupid. I know. It's not you, we don't we don't socially construct. Oh, I think we need five different types of water. Let's think up some different ways that would be fun for water to exist. No. And then those, and then those types of water are springing to existence yes, based you, on our Yes, you fucking dumbass. Yeah. Yeah. We start a nuclear program and we discover, oh, look, this water actually has an extra, whatever it is, like an extra neutron or something. I don't know how heavy water works. Yeah, whatever it is. Yeah. yeah. This water is actually a little bit different than the water that we've been studying. <laughs> Maybe it should have a new category, right? Mm hmm but we're talking about a different molecular shape now that's because you've arbitrarily branched these two within a cat arbitrarily it's not arbitrary it's he not know arbitrary what the word does he not know what the word arbitrary he uses this word all the time it's not arbitrary at all no yeah right arbitrary means like random yeah or category you know based i like if you look superfluous, it up superfluous it says based on personal whim <laughs> oh there you go yes okay. Right. It wasn't based on personal whim. No. Reality, for, there was a fork in the road. Reality went two different ways. Yes. And we said, well, if we want to track reality, I guess we better come up with another category here. Right. Because there's a relationship between them. But that's a social phenomenon. Mm -hmm. The universe doesn't give a shit whether you refer to heavy water as water or some other you know, molecule entirely. It's utterly indifferent to your perception of reality. But we still choose to prescribe. And that, I think, make any a lot of people, when it comes said. down to definitional games, you know, they start doing this, well, these things are these things. And, you know, we have a lot of power over that. Some animals are different species, but we distinguish what makes something a different species. The taxonomy for what refers to species differentiation, we may... Th doesn't yeah. the fact that... That's not true, yeah. Well, I'm going to say, like, doesn't the fact that the universe, through natural processes, has constructed a difference between water and heavy water I mean it does give a shit right like sure. i don't know how you can say it doesn't give a shit i don't know what he means by that well like, and yeah the, the universe didn't well i guess and we're part of the universe so we created a mouth sound <laughs> like i don't know what does that even mean well and we i mean we try we we determine the category of species based on a list of criteria that yes seems you know parsimonious to how reality is i mean we well, could that's why i said he, he he's making this the problem is he's not he doesn't know or he's hiding behind that there's this difference between hard social constructs and soft social constructs right yeah that's split the sophistry we didn't it we, we we invented it we didn't discover it yeah so i agree with you that species are um the distinction between species is less clear than distinctions we would find in physics and chemistry. So that's why, um, no surprise, I'm focusing on physics and chemistry. How do we feel about the claim that gold is atomic number 79? Do you, would you agree with that, or are you skeptical of that, too? I, I think that's how we refer to it, uh, sure. Uh, I'll take that's, your word for it. I don't have the, 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 the uh, periodic tip memorized. Yeah. Well, um, I'm benefiting from the fact that this is a bit of a commonly used uh, philosophical example. So that's really why I know that. Um, but yeah, gold, that term in English refers to um, a certain element that has 79 protons. It's atomic number 79. So gold has been around for a long time, long before the word gold came on the scene. Gold, cold, gold predates the word gold. So anyway, this is just supposed to be an example of a definition that's true. And we went down a rabbit hole a little bit. What do you mean by true if if we had taken another definition if we had created another definition to say gold yeah. and the term gold referred to a collection of uh of elements so let's say gold and lead and the term gold was something people use to refer to both that definition would be as true as the one we use today for gold they would have simply made the choice to include two different elements in their definition just as you've included standard water and the ice guys what if Follow me on this. What if the word gold and the word metal were reversed? Yeah. Oh my God. 
Who cares? Did I just blow your mind? No, he didn't. No, he didn't <laughs> even come close to blowing my mind. <laughs> There's not enough weed in the world for that to be fucking interesting. What if we called all metals gold and we only called gold metal? <gasps> that would be stupid. <laughs> guys, guys, guys. What if we called all soda Coke? Right. And we called Coke soda. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, this is so silly. Do you think Bosch knows that he's arguing the Jordan Peterson position in the Jordan Peterson Sam Harris debate? <laughs> That's funny. I don't know, actually. I don't I don't think he does know that. Yeah. Well, that means what you that depends upon how you define the word true. Exactly. I wonder how he would feel if you were like, you know you're you're agreeing with Jordan Peterson right now, right? <laughs> yeah, it, big time. <laughs> Remember, so many people clip that out. Well, that depends upon how you define the word true. <laughs> they were like, oh, got him. Yeah. Well, he's basically doing the same thing here. Yes. Jordan yes. Peterson at least had a, a good reason to do it. Vosh has no, like, the only reason he's doing it is so he doesn't accidentally say the forbidden words and commit a blasphemy. Mm -hmm. Well, this is why I didn't, I didn't side with Jordan Peterson in that conversation. Either. Yeah. Yes. I understood what his position was, and I think it's valid, but I still think you need, obviously, you need to have a word that means objective truth Sam, that everyone understands. Sam Hare or Brett Weinstein said it best mm -hmm. that scientific, sci science is the ideology that is the the arbiter between all the other ideologies. It's like the super ideology. Right. Because it's the ideology that explains all the other ideologies. Which was, I know time, people lose mm -hmm. their shit over that, especially if you're in, especially if you're uh, not a materialist. Go ahead. Right, exactly. Uh, what time uh, was Charlotte going to come? Three o'clock. We got 20 minutes. What do you want me oh, to send? Okay. You want me to send the link now or you want no, to no, no. bug I just, out? Go a little bit further? I thought, I, thought, I thought you said it was now. No. I didn't realize. Okay. We got 20 minutes. We got 20 minutes. Good. Yeah. The top of heavy water in the definition of water. It's just a definitional game. As long as they distinguish between the two subcategories of gold and iron with their respective mm -hmm. atomic weights, the singular term, like how we have terms for metals, uh, we have terms for uh, for, for the, um, the, uh, the gases, the inert gases. Help me out. You know more than me. The um, Talk about the noble gases? The noble gases, yes. We invented those distinctions. We, we invented the terms. The terms. Yes. Because the distinctions are only meaningful when we notice them. The universe no. doesn't. No. What a dumbass. He said the universe doesn't care. What the fuck is he talking about? That's what, Of course the universe cares. That's why these things are different. If the yeah. universe didn't care, then reality couldn't function or form what the fuck is he talking about yeah yeah it's we're drifting into like complete no man's land here. Yeah. like reality doesn't even exist yes yeah care whether or not we think there's something meaningful or significant about noble gases there is something meaningful and significant right like there's a whole different number of protons <laughs> it's a pretty significant difference Right. If you add a proton, you've actually changed the mo the the, the atom. Element. Yeah. Yeah. Versus the other stuff. But we there just is saw a, those differences. There is like, a different. Oh. oh, so we saw the differences. The differences were there. The differences are real. And then we came along and decided, you know what? We're going to name these differences. We're going to assign some names to these different um, elements. Agreed. Yeah. Okay. Now I'm, try I'm trying to remember why why we started down this rabbit hole. Um, I didn't get very far through the things you said, oh, is I just the first thing I brought up was you had said all these views are incoherent. Um, but then we kind of clarified that what you meant was um, any any of the popular views of women that have been proposed are vague and difficult to articulate. And then I guess I was just trying to point out that um, a definition might exist and be true, even if it hasn't been articulated. Um, so fa like rewind before humans came on the scene, I would have thought water was H2O even before anyone was around to name water or to realize its chemical essence. Um, so I was just disagreeing with that point about um, how definitions work. I don't think definitions um, properly understood are linguistic entities. I think there are facts out there in the world. But there anyway, are facts, um, but are, whoa, 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 wait, I have to challenge that. 
There are facts in the world, but definitions are categorically linguistic. We create them because we identify differences yeah. in things that we see in the world. The facts of the world, there are many, the, the spectrum of light that we consider. Wait a minute. Oh, no, are cat- go are linguistic entities. I think there are facts out there in the world. But there anyway, are facts, um, but are, whoa, 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 wait, I have to challenge that. There are facts in the world, but definitions are categorically linguistic. We create them because we identify differences yeah. in things that we see in the world. Did he just concede the argument? Did he? I don't know. He just said, listen. But are, whoa, 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 wait, I have to challenge that. There are facts in the world, but definitions are categorically linguistic. We create them because we identify differences yeah. in things that we see in the world. So he said there are facts in the world and that we create definitions based on differences we see in the world. Right. Yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> That's what he was arguing against a second ago. Yeah. Yeah. Good yes, catch. Thank you, Flash. So you do understand. You do have the, the mind of a, at least a three-year-old that can understand the difference between a door and a chair. Okay. Right. <laughs> Yeah. The facts of the world, there are many, the the spectrum of light that we consider to be blue contains within it an infinite range of potential blue values, but we don't have an infinite number of names to describe them. There may be a set number of facts in the world, but the categories we use to separate those facts are entirely up to us and our perceptions. So yeah. another example of this for it would be like in terms of gender prescription, <laughs> there are cultures historically that have had third genders for a long time. Often the third gender is a biologically male uh, a, a gender class that adopts roles that are much more similar to the biologically female. There are non-human animals that do this as well. You know, it's, it's not it's not unique to us. Um, First of all, I don't think that's remotely true that there's yeah. non-human animals that create <clears throat> social constructions of third genders. Okay? Yeah. And even in these what would cultures, be the purpose of that? Well, that how could like how could an animal construct the social construction of a third gender? Right. Yeah. Even like you know, I don't even know what he's fucking referring to. There are animals that have intersex characteristics or are able to change sexes or something, but I, mean, I don't know what he's talking about with this. But even with you know, in human history, when there was this quote unquote third gender, they didn't view it as a gender. Again, they viewed it as like a sex. Because they didn't make a distinction, right? They're like you're a third type of person, essentially. Right. They <laughs> they were doing the same thing. They were like, "Ah, oh, reality forked on us here. We don't quite know how to explain it." Right. Let's just and come up sh- with a new category. And almost all of these third, you know, sex uh, types that other like older societies created were not always, but often disparaging against you know gay men generally. Right. Be like, oh, you're an effeminate man, so you must not be a man. <laughs> Which right. I don't think Flash would ever, you know, be in favor of that. But okay. And in that case, there's there's a separate category, and maybe they felt clearly they felt that the categorical difference between these more feminized biological males and the regular biological males was something worth distinguishing in a in a gender oriented taxonomical sense. But that's not any more right or wrong than what we do. They just see different meaningful differences and apply different terms. So you can't make these objective arguments about terms. Terms may refer to the facts of the world, but we draw the borders. The land on earth might be, uh, uh, you know, um, objective, but the borders for, of the nations that we build over them, those we rule on on paper. We just have to be, you know, considerate of human need when we're describing what here we actually want to build. Yeah. Okay. Gosh, there was a, there's a lot I disagree with in there, but I'm trying to be um, trying to be selective or efficient with our time here. Um, maybe let me just ask you this. Um, it sounded like in your response to me, you raised some objections to um, the biological view that I expressed that women are adult human females, and you brought up um, well. You thought you said, you know, we haven't always known about chromosomes. Again, I don't think that chromosomes figure into the definition of biological sex. You also mentioned intersex people. So it sounded like you were trying to argue against the the reality of males and females. But then at other times, you say, you know, there are other cultures that have a third gender that are biologically male. And I think you might agree that there are animals that are biologically male and biologically female. So I guess just let me let me get clear on your view. Do you think that there are males and females of course. out there in the world? I believe it's bimodal. 
there are males and females, and okay. most people will fall pretty solidly on either end of the spectrum. But I do okay. feel there are a significant number of people who are closer to the middle in terms of intersex expression. Oh, well, if you also think that there are adults and humans, then um, what exactly is wrong with the definition that women, women are adult human females? You believe in adults, you believe in humans, and you believe in females. So there's something that I don't think Dr. Tom hones in on, which he just, I think, exposed the weakest part of Asha's argument. What's that? And it's that the same, all the same arguments that Vosh is using to say, gen, you know, for gender, apply to sex. Really? Yeah. How could they not? Everything he's saying about gender applies to sex. So you say, well, then why are you saying that? Why are you like, and this, this came up in the Dr. Deborah So conversation, you know, when Vosh says, oh, sex is biological and gender is a social construct. And then she said, do you have evidence that gender is a social construct? And then instead of actually providing evidence, he fell back on the this argument. All categories are social constructs. Right. It's like, yeah. okay, but you said that there's a difference between sex and gender. And you didn't say sex was a social construct. So that means that you're lying or you're just some sort of trickery going on here. Because under your definition, sex is also a social construct that's just entirely arbitrary. So right. you're so you are saying that there's no difference between sex and gender. Right, if they're both social constructs. Right. Right. And I think that's the, the key point to why all this stuff crumbles away. Right. Yeah, there are a lot of people that really, they're offended by the idea of separating sex and gender. Like, they think sex and gender should be unified. I'm more open to, there is some utility in separating gender roles and biological sex and if you want to call gender roles gender and biological sex sex then i think that could be mm -hmm. an efficient distinction in the same way <laughs> that you know some other well here's the problem i don't disagree with you in theory right that the term gender has utility as as having a term that means uh things related to men and women that are not generally biological. Right. Yeah. I had like, that makes sense. Socially constructed behavior. Right. The problem with that, there's two problems with that. The first is that, and we've talked about this, that's not how anyone uses the term gender except for like specific fields of academia. Right. Well, the fields of academia are the only place where it's valuable because it's only valuable in terms of study. Well, no, because Vosh is talking about, he thinks this should be the way the language is thought of colloquially. Well, Vosh is a moron right. that we just can yeah. dismiss out of hand. But. Yeah, that's not like the way that people use gender, the average person uses gender is the way the the APA, the they psychiatric APA use it. They use it as fashion, yes. basically. Well, no, they use it as basically anything about a man or woman that does not directly refer to your genitals right. as gender. That's so um, ridiculous. But that's kind of the way people use it. And... I wouldn't have a problem with the way of having gender and sex be this clear distinction between biology and pure social constructs. Mm -hmm. If my problem with it is that almost every single person that argues this refuses to acknowledge that there are biological sex differences between men and women uh, behaviorally and cognitively. Right. And so we would first have to have society start talking about and normalizing the idea of behavioral and cognitive sex differences and use that term sex differences yeah. if you want to use this sort of gender distinction. Yeah, that, that would be useful. That would be helpful, definitely. Well, I, I think, you know, just as this debate goes, just in terms of like the Lincoln beard contest, Vosh is definitely the loser here. <laughs> I think Dr. Dr. Tom comes in a close second, but mm -hmm. James just fucking takes it away here. He looks well, like Abraham fucking Lincoln. You're right. Well, it's not just the beard. He's got like the head shape. The face. Yeah, I know. The face. James. I know. I never realized how much I, of, of Lincoln James uh, embodies. I have a whole 
new respect for you, James. I mean, I feel like you should I get look, a hat, the big hat. I look at you and I think, man, that guy freed the slaves. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I think. There you go. For uh, all we know, James is the reincarnation of Abraham. Lincoln. It looks okay. good. It looks great. Oh God! Don't shave that beard off, man. It looks awesome. <laughs> So maybe maybe we should maybe we should wrap it up because yeah we should we should send a link to our guests. But any yeah. any closing thoughts on this walk through um, sophistry lane? No, I think I said I think I said all to say about it. I mean, we'll watch the whole uh, debate. Some I don't think we're not going to clip this. How about this? We're not going to clip this. No, we are going to clip this. We're no, definitely no, no, going to no, clip no. this. No, no, why? No, 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 no. Hold on, I didn't no. I didn't do this not to clip it. Like Wait why? A why because would we then what's the point this? of us doing the whole debate later? Well, you're the one that says we, you want to do the whole debate. I don't necessarily know that we need to do the whole we debate. We have to do this whole debate later. Well, we can do it. We can do both. There's no reason no. why we can't. No, listen. listen. I can't listen. Listen. This is topical now. The whole listen. reason to do this. This is, is topical to forever. It doesn't matter. The stream's not ending, but um, we're just going to be talking to someone. Um, no, we're bringing. We have two guests lined up, but right. let's argue. Let's um, argue about this. We'll argue about this later. Later, okay. yeah, exactly. Right. Um, so, final thoughts? Nothing. Okay. No, nope, nothing. Excellent. Walk through sophistry lane here. Let's get this. Let's take this down. Because mm -hmm. I think Charlotte is a fox. <laughs> right, right. Although I'm curious, I would like to ask Charlotte how she feels about. According to Vosh, not existing. I mean, may, I don't know if Charlotte <laughs> identifies as a woman, so I, I know that's gonna. You understand that's gonna. I mean, we could talk about that, but that's gonna be like a whole conversation. I guess we should ask her that first. I know if you want to ask that. Well, it depends. If you don't want to talk about political radicalization, then you can ask her this first. But yeah, if you do want to talk about political radicalization, you should talk about that first. Yeah. Do you have? I guess I bring my notes out from last time. Yeah. CT, I sent you the link. CT is, I don't have a way to contact Charlotte. I guess CT has been messaging her on Discord. CT is our middleman. Our middle woman. Listen, our I middle, use the term gender neutrally because I'm a gender abolitionist. Our okay? middle. Middle person. Adult human female. <laughs> I try to use the politically correct language, Sitch, okay. Isn't it weird? See, some of them are, some of these are weird. Like, I don't think we should have a distinction between actor and actress. Like, those are all actors. What, what? Why do we need a separate term for that? Yeah, I mean, it's, as someone who's been kicking around Hollywood for a while, there are some people that just prefer actor. Like, I've worked with a lot of, a lot of actresses who prefer actor. And it does seem like actor is more common. Actress is kind of rare, more rare for sure. So what the heck happened here? Holy cow. I don't know. Oh, I guess it's because it was highlighted. I got, I've started a notes category here. Sitch, did you, Sitch ran off to the bathroom, which is probably a good thing to do. I'll read a super chat. I didn't run off anywhere. Okay. Sure. I t I swear I had notes for Charlotte, but I don't. J Mac for one hundred dollars, you find your notes. Said Tuesday show. Let's go. Smoosh that like button and subscribe. Thank you, Daddy. Daddy J Mac, our yeah. American father. Yes. We crossed forty thousand subscribers, guys. That's super That's nice. That's right. Yeah. Yes. Thanks Thank for you subscribing so much. to the channel. Mm-hmm. Yes. Based. Someday we'll get to 35,000. <laughs> uh, I mean, right. 45,000. 55,000. Sure. Uh, Vile Van Gogh for $20. Thank you. Says, question to be read later on for Carefree Wandering. Could a certain amount of philosophical misuse by the public be reasonably interpreted as an indicator of a society approaching an what is this word? Oligarchic? Oclaractic? I thought he was going for oligarchic. I thought oligarchic had a G in it. I don't know. Um, Oclocractic? 
uh, state. She's just finishing dinner. That's fine. Yeah, tell her no. Tell her no rush to do. So we will have to kick her off at whenever uh, carefree watering comes. Um, approaching an ochlocoractic state. We have plenty of time because uh, mob rule is ochlocoractic. How do you say that word? Mob rule. Say it, mob rule. It's easier. Uh, Ochlocracy. Mm -hmm. Ochlocracy. Okay. Which is mob rule. Uh, so the question is, could a certain amount of philosophical misuse by the public be reasonably interpreted as an indicator of a society approaching mob rule? Um, okay, well, I'll ask him that. Um, I don't know the answer to that question. I wouldn't necessarily think so. But, okay. Oh, my God. We have a thousand people listening to the show now. You guys are not supposed to be here. I know. This is <laughs> a secret Tuesday stream, okay? This is supposed to be secret. Right. Just set it to uh, unlisted. <laughs> right. Uh, Dan with the Bruce for $10 says, I'm not going to lie. I was pretty on the election was stolen train until I got my elephant under control after I read more and actually investigated the claims myself. Well, there you go. That's pretty good, Dan. I did a live stream. This is when I was doing my Saturday live streams with Isaac. And mm -hmm. we watched the video of them pulling out the the ballots from under the table and i saw a suitcase man i was like oh my god my wife has that suitcase it's eddie bauer <laughs> yeah i was like but after the after they dispelled that claim early on and i think isaac even sent me an article they're like no these are these are vote boxes. It wasn't a boxes. suitcase. It was, yeah. They had the big boxes. That, and he sent me yeah. a picture of the vote box and everything. And I'm like, okay, right. yeah, that's definitely, that's a vote yeah. box. Yeah. Right. They have special boxes for that shit. Yep. Uh, Mr. Dolphin, thanks so much for being two months free. Will Seeker says, don't show academic agent the new Overwatch hero. Who is the new Overwatch hero? Is it, a, is it some tomboy abs? Mm -hmm. Let's see. New Overwatch hero. Who is it? It is a tomboy abs. There you go. There you go. I bet he is seething right now. I'll be honest. I don't know. She doesn't look that hot. So what? Sad. That. I think. I think Overwatch. I legitimately think that Overwatch got upset that like everyone takes their characters and makes like millions and millions and millions of porn about them. So they try to make their characters like not attractive anymore. <laughs> That's my theory. <laughs> That's my theory. Okay. So they stop doing that. So they're like, stop people, making porn of our people characters. On We're going to make internet? our characters not yeah. hot. Okay. Don't they just, I mean, I don't think our characters are that hot and people keep making, <laughs> they just make them, they just make them hot anyway. Sure, right? sure, sure. No, well, uh, so, but like, yeah, that's true. I mean, that's true. Anyone will try to get anything and try to make them hotter, but yeah, you know, whatever. Uh, isn't the porn free advertising though? Yeah, well, I think there was actually, there was a time period, I think, with Blizzard. I don't know if it was with Overwatch or with Warcraft, where they did for a short period of time try to copyright strike all the people that were making like pornography of their characters. And obviously that, that failed because um, pornography of characters is specifically already been tested by the courts and protected as parody. But Ouch. Even but with copyright? Theory, even with potential anyone can copyright make, claims? Well, it's weird because anyone can make porn of any character. And not only can they make porn of it, but they can sell it too for money. And they say, well, this infringes on our IP. And then they say, well, no, it's a it's considered a parody of the character. Really? And I guess there's yeah, and I guess it makes sense because Really? Well, if you're making a property that has no that's not like pornographic. See, here's the thing. If you made like a like a pornographic video game, maybe you could sue someone for making and selling porn of that game because they're actually infringing upon your space. <laughs> right. But if you're if you're just making like Overwatch oh, I get or some it. game. Yeah, like because porn is selling... a completely different vocation, right? And it's a complete like someone buying Overwatch porn does not 
impact on the sale of the Overwatch video game whatsoever. So, uh, Maverick Christian for twenty dollars. Thanks so much. Says the skill in which the bona fide uh, philosopher, Doctor Thomas Bogardus, eviscerates Vosh's position, covering bio biological and social views, etc., illustrates the usefulness of academic philosophy, at least in the analytical tradition. Uh, yeah, that's true. That's true and fair. I like that he, in his opening statement, you know, he had all the various arguments and he explained the positions and then explained why uh, Vosh was wrong. And then Vosh didn't address any of that, but okay. So, yeah. Vosh doesn't, Vosh won't engage, which is why, what is the point of even debating somebody if they're not going to actually engage? Mm hmm. Well, I guess it depends on the subject matter, but well, this Anyways. subject matter. I mean, he he came up with a really good argument. Yes, that's true. Anyways, we're joined by Charlotte. Hello. Hi, I'm having some audio issues. Very wow, fun. you sound great. <laughs> I know. It's amazing what being in a residential house can do for you. <laughs> yeah, you perfect. For some reason, it's like, it's not playing over my headphones right now. And that's the main issue for me. Well, the, we don't we don't really hear an echo in the background headphones? or anything, so. Well, okay. I guess I could just use my phone like a phone and right. hold it to my face like a dirty peasant. Um, <laughs> well, oh, no. Are you, on Zoom, there's some setting... Uh, to like make it play through like where you want to play through right i'm trying to get it to do that but uh take, it was take working your time. at first for like a second and then mm -hmm. it cut out and well, we maybe want, i should we want try you to be reconnecting to the so. audience yeah so. yeah you can try reconnecting no rush yeah i don't want you to like be holding up a thing to your head and it's being annoying I tried to get Sitch to do that the other day when we were working on the comic, and Sitch was like, <laughs> no, call me on Zoom. I want to yeah, talk on my computer. I don't want to hold up my phone for like two hours when I talk to you. Jeez. Yeah, but I, everyone has headphones for their phone. I don't. Except well, my wife, who makes me listen to her audiobook. Listen. Yeah, but the, this, is, I, this is... Hello. Sorry. I, I tried a couple of times. I just couldn't get it to work this is fine though i do don't you, mind holding do it up. you see uh at the bottom of zoom where it says mute and then there's like a little arrow next to it um like a little little tiny like arrow next to the mute button i think she's on an app though on her cell phone i'm i'm on i'm on my zoom app on my phone uh, oh yeah i also okay. couldn't get it to work on my laptop oh no <laughs> zoom what, really hates me what happened when you clicked the link on your laptop um, I tried to log in, uh, but it was just telling me we're having some issues logging into your account right now. Try again later. Oh my God. Okay. Okay. I don't know. Yeah. But uh, no, it's fine. uh, this is, this is what annoys me because I got a new phone recently and then Samsung did this thing where they don't have the normal headphone jacks anymore. You have to buy special headphones that fit into the stupid little, uh, mini USB charger crap. So excuse yeah. me, Adam. Been doing this for a while. Hmm. So are haven't you... they been doing that for a while? Listen, though? I haven't got a new phone for like ten years. <laughs> okay. Okay, that's fair. <laughs> okay, I I went from like a like a Samsung like S five or something to like a twenty two. So so there's a oh big gap in time. <laughs> yeah, I'm surprised your uh, S five held up for that long. It did. It, well, actually, it, there was no problem with it. I just dropped it like an idiot, and the screen got ah. completely cracked. So it actually. It actually held out for a super long time. So, so it works. That's so impressive. Sh okay. Charlotte, I'm crediting you as Charlotte's ghost poli sci student. Is that acceptable? Or I mean, that's have, perfectly fine. Do you have a social media or something you want to? Um, I don't really have a social media presence. Good um, for you. It's mostly just for like you know personal friends and stuff. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Perfect. That's good. You probably don't want. I mean, listen, being being on social media, I think is just ruined me okay <laughs> completely ruined me i so, agree i yeah. uh i've been on social media for a while now um and it'll probably sound a little 
I, the first social media app I was ever on was like Tumblr, but like <laughs> Tumblr. Yeah, it doesn't count. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Tumblr is just a whole other beast. Yeah. So do you? Uh, C- CT says we should call you Doctor Ghost. That's a pretty cool name. That should oh, be your that name. That is a cool name. Doctor Ghost. There you go. So I'm trying to be more professional here, obviously. Uh, what? Can, yeah. Can you? This is a comedy <laughs> show, Adam. Okay. Can you? Well. If we do these talks with people, and I've seen in the comments people say, I have no idea who you're talking to. So can you introduce yourself a bit, Charlotte? Yes. Sure. Um, my name's Charlotte. I'm a political science and philosophy student in uh, Texas. I'm currently a senior. I have a deep vested interest in um, political psychology, especially how the internet affects political psychology. So um, my goal is to just help people better understand political science as a science and um, to get like a better grasp on a lot of the um, kind of jargon that we use um, that ends up cropping up in online spaces and is often misused, stuff like that, from um, political science, sociology, philosophy, stuff like that. Uh, sorry, I'm, I'm a bit redundant, um, just That's because okay. I'm a little bit nervous in talking we, in We talk for 12 people, hours, but... we're very redundant, so don't worry. <laughs> well, yeah, I you, appreciate it. You don't have to be nervous. Um, <laughs> So we are super into moral psychology. We talk about politics all the time. I I mean, I'm into uh, political science, political psychology. Uh, I'm super into this book, The Dictator's Handbook, where they talk about selectorate theory, how democracy works, the difference between democracies and autocracies. So we talk about that kind of stuff on the show a lot. So we're very much interested in these topics ourselves. Right. What what do you... You said you said uh, you're interested in like people misuse terms. What's like the one term that people misuse the most that like really you're like oh just triggers you? <laughs> um, well, a while ago it was when people were using cultural appropriation in a in a way that didn't make sense for the what the term mm-hmm. is. What was um, what, how were they using it? Well, uh, I think it just got associated with only negative um, appropriation or misappropriation. So all cultural appropriation fell under the banner of oh, cultural misappropriation. Right. Rather oh, than, I like, never the other way around. I you're right. I didn't even you're right. I only thought it did have a negative connotation. I didn't realize it had a positive connotation at all. Yeah. I'm, well, it's more of a neutral connotation, right? Sure. Because, sure. Right. Um, all it means is you're adapting a part of one culture and bringing it into another culture. And I think um, that's a neutral thing overall, but it, it can have good or bad outcomes. Right. Well, I thought it was weird with like, you know, this came up a lot with the hairstyle stuff. Like Kylie Jenner had the corn rolls or I forget. She had some kind of hairstyle. Um, and to uh-huh. me, I just thought it was so weird that people were criticizing her for that. Cause I'm like, if you want, you know, quote unquote, non-white hairstyles to be accepted in office places and in culture. I mean, the way you do that is you have famous people wear them and that's what makes them cool. And that's kind of what normalizes them. I I don't understand sort of like the taboo of saying like, oh, you know, unless you're of whatever ethnic or culture that created Mm -hmm. this thing that that, then that's the only way you can partake in it. Because then that to me just makes it more isolated and less likely to be accepted. I definitely think it's better to have um you know parts of culture like that especially um things that you could see visually right like uh hair clothes as long as you're not doing it in a way where you're like being an asshole about it or you're Mm -hmm. or you're kind of like fucking it up like you're wearing a i don't know a rastafarian halloween costume you know that's that's really yeah Yeah, sure, sure no well, that's that's not good. Right. Um, right. You don't want to you don't want to look like you're trying to um, wear someone else's culture like a costume. Sure. You don't want to mock. You're, if you're you just know. doing it because, you know, you think it's cool and you have a respect for um, you know, like where it comes from and you're like, yeah, awesome. I'm into this. Then right. I don't necessarily see that always as a bad thing. Yeah. You don't want to like mock someone's call. This is a little different. Yeah, sure. That makes sense. Mm-hmm. Um, 
with black culture specifically and black hairstyles a lot of those do have roots in like slavery and the history around slavery so Mm -hmm. um that's why it's a much more touchy subject uh especially since slavery is very recent in history um and uh the just continued disenfranchisement of black people Mm -hmm. continued you know even after slavery so I can understand why people were a little bit more miffed about it. It's a very rich white woman wearing cornrows. It's like, (laughs) maybe, maybe not this time, but uh, I don't know. It's not worth getting too upset about. Mm -hmm. Maybe just weird chamber and then move on. I understand kind of like the emotion of resentment. Like if you're like, oh, if I'm penalized for doing something and then I see someone you know, do the same thing and they're lauded, you know, applauded for it. You know, I, I understand that, mm-hmm. the, the feeling, that emotion, but I think logically, you know, which is difficult, <laughs> logically, it's still, it's definitely from like a, a consequence, right. consequential view. It would be better to have more people. If you want these hairstyles to be accepted, I know a lot of this comes to like, you know, businesses are discriminatory against these kind of hair policies. You know, if you want this mm-hmm. to be accepted, you want more Kylie Jenner's, you want more famous people, sort of wearing these things because that kind of forces society to accept them. Yeah. I, uh, I think that seeing, um, definitely seeing black hairstyles more often in the, in the public sphere, that really does help with acceptance. And right. um, like, I've, I've had friends who like wear their hair natural. Right. And then they'll get written up at school um, mm-hmm. because it's like, Oh, you're wearing your hair against dress code and then the dress code is based around like white hairstyles and I just don't think that's fair so um yeah it it goes down to even like the uh the smaller micro levels like that when you increase acceptance Mm -hmm. so I um did take some time earlier this week to write out a little bit in terms of notes um just because I wasn't sure what show I was going on or how much I would really be expected to answer. But um, knowing a little bit better now, I did write out um, a little bit more about political psychology in some bullet points. Um, And then also uh, I I wrote a little bit about the um, survey I had wanted to carry out, but... um, To clarify, the reason why I didn't get funding for that project is because when we submitted the the um, the actual document with all of our hey, here's what we're going to do. Here's our sources and background research and stuff like that. My supervising professor submitted the draft because we were running a little bit late. Oh, no. And when the when the committee wrote back to us, they're like, yeah, you have a lot of background and clear (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> no there were no typos okay, it was well. mostly like um so i uh, oh god i cite things in such a dumb way i go through and then i'll write source um in parentheses after every area where i need to put source right. and then i'll just have like my my bibliography is usually just a bunch of links and then i'll like um go through create the actual um depending on what kind of citation style I'm doing. Mm-hmm. I, I prefer APA. I'll, I'll go through, create all the APA citations and then put in all the APA in-text citations. Um, but the draft didn't have those in-text citations or the formatted citations. Oh, wow. That's a huge um, miss there. Yeah. yeah. I, I, uh, I emailed her the, the finished version, but um, I don't, because all of our drafts had very similar names, it just got kind of confused, Ouch. and um, we that were running sucks. like right up against the deadline. So, mm-hmm. yeah, but it's suck. fine. This so explain the survey. Was it on deradicalization? You had a conversation with Vosh, and I think that's what you were talking about. Yeah. Um. So I was interested in figuring out like what kind of mental patterns lead to radicalization in the first place, and then like subsequently de-radicalization um because i'm looking for specific things there within right like gamergate was six years ago i understand that but there are the mental patterns within that entire period of time um sorry just a moment 
mental patterns for radicalization. Radicalization. Yeah, I'm taking some yes. notes here. I'm curious the sources for this because this sounds very L Lake Offian. Is that even a thing? Hi, sorry. Have you read? No problem. George Lakoff. George Lakoff. Um, yeah. <laughs> sorry, I'm terrible with names. That's Let me... okay. Lakoff is Lakoff is a is a what does he call himself? I, he's, he's a linguist, isn't a he? A linguist, yeah, exactly. But he has a, oh, a couple yeah, books no, on cognitive science and stuff like that. He had a book called Don't Think of an Elephant that was very popular. Mm -hmm. about what does politics. it have to do with what, oh, yeah, I see that. With what well, she was talking um, about? He, he, he talks about uh, mental patterns and has a theory of left and right that revolves around teaching styles that create mental patterns. So oh, okay. there is some correlation here. But go ahead. Yeah. So men mental, was, mental patterns that create radicalization. Yeah. So I, uh, I actually, within political psychology, there's um, a few different approaches. Mainly, uh, people will either take a traits-based approach or a motives-based approach or sometimes a combination. Um, there are different like trait um, personality trait models within okay. social psychology. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure you're familiar with some of them, like um, the the Myers Briggs personality test. That's right. technically like a, a trait based model in social psychology. Right. Um, I didn't think about this too much until I was um, trying to remember the the Big Five personality traits. Yeah. Um, I'm more Big Five than Myers Briggs all the way, but yeah. Um, that's that's what we tend to use more too. But um, I brought up Myers Briggs because it's more of a kind of pop social psychology. Totally, yes. Right. And I think that's really interesting. I uh, didn't realize that I really enjoy social psychology until I got um, to my upper division courses at university, and then it never really clicked to me that pop social psychology was so prominent because of cor corporate culture and trying to utilize social mm -hmm. psychology right who was it that we watched not that long ago wasn't someone crapping all over big five i don't remember oh, okay anyway yeah um yeah what, what's so, the what's the motive based one motive based is like um how does a group fulfill someone's uh, needs for achievement, uh, intimacy? Oh, okay. Sorry, I actually wrote down the four motives that um, are typically mm -hmm. cited. Power, affiliation, intimacy, and achievement. So uh, based on those, you can kind of gauge where someone is within a group or how they'll engage in that group, why they seek out that group. Um, a lot of the research I did for the the project i mentioned was um it indicated that people just they aren't necessarily seeking groups based on their preformed beliefs but like they just find a group and if it suits their needs well enough they'll be like yeah this seems pretty all right mm -hmm. so was the the survey was like to figure out who like people that were radicalized to figure out what their traits were or what their motives were Pretty much um, gauged because well, um, I never actually got to the stage of writing out questions, which is its whole other thing. Um, I actually took a class on public opinion last semester and it was mm -hmm. really interesting. But um, there's, a, there's a lot that goes into writing survey questions sure, as it sure. turns out. <laughs> but um, We've read a lot of bad survey questions. So <laughs> me I too. definitely, what I a definitely understand. Right. <laughs> yeah. Survey questions yeah. that can be interpreted multiple ways are definitely, you know, not great because you're testing. Right. You never really know what you're getting. So, but I, I am what? curious, like yeah. your, your dialogue with Vosh was very much, I mean, you could tell you were, you were talking to someone that you, you were in agreement on, of, on, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of different things. So you talked about leftism and, and conservatism. You brought up alt-righters. And just since you were talking sure. to Vosh, there was no, I, you never really defined any of your terms or anything. So as an outsider watching, right. I, could, I didn't really know what you meant by, 
you know, what is conservatism? What is like, how are you perceiving of that? And also, you know, you're talking about like, I'm not in favor of radicalization of any, of any form, but w how are you defining radicalization? I'm talking about radicalization specifically to the far right. Um, mm -hmm. There is a bit of a concern for uh, like radicalization to authoritarianism on either side, but like statistically, we just don't see a lot of um, terrorism from far left people. It's right. still a bad thing when terrorism happens from far left people. It's just far less prominent. And I'm more concerned with the people who are actively doing it, which tend to be by and large people on the far right so well, I, i'm I think, curious about where people usually start um and how they end up going to this point where they where they believe all this stuff like the jq um where they start thinking that like non-white people are subhuman or like less intelligent than them you know like the the race realism stuff um uh, things like that i okay. i don't really remember my conversation with Vosh too well because he emailed me like the day of he's like hey can you come on later today and I'm like yeah I can do that and then I panicked <laughs> right <laughs> um so if I had had a little bit more time well it wasn't the day of it was like the day before but um if well, I had a little bit more time I would have um more clearly written everything out and give myself bullet points because um there were a lot of points where I was like, oh, yeah, I can't ask this question because he already answered it. Um, and then I had to stutter and figure out where I was going to go after that. But um, we, we, I'm not you're what you're describing. I'm not in any way, shape or form in favor of. Obviously, it sounds like you're describing mm -hmm. what I would describe as like racism or bigotry. <laughs> which I'm obviously against racism and, and bigotry. I think Very most, bold of you to take that. I think most of most people are against racism and bigotry in this day and age. But in this political environment, uh -huh. I do see a lot of people conflating conservatism with racism and bigotry. So that's that's a that's why I'm in that conversation. It seemed like there might have been some of that going on. And I mean, Vosh does this often. So I just like, mm -hmm. is your. I, I don't mean to uh, conflate the two. Okay. By any means. Okay. I didn't feel like you um, did. No, I just. Uh, so implicit versus explicit racism. I think pretty much everyone. Well, I can't say pretty much everyone. Most people are against explicit racism. Right. But mm -hmm. the problem with implicit racism is people don't usually realize when they're doing it or how it harms people. Sure. Yeah. Um, and something specific within social psychology is like recognizing that if people think they're being attacked for um, part of their identity, then uh, they'll they'll get very very defensive, which I know that like that's an observable thing. But yeah. like once it's <laughs> stated out loud, you're like, yeah, that makes so much sense. Right. Um, so if you say that there are parts of conservatism or uh, there are conservative stances that have implicit bigotry or racism, people will think that you're attacking all of conservatism or calling them like a racist for something that they may not have even been aware that they're doing okay. so this um, this this is interesting it, it comes so, off like an attack no how, right. how, so but how are you see i we have to really dig in on how we're defining conservatism and and progressivism because i do mm -hmm. i do think if you are in a society where the status quo is racism where there is you know predominantly most people are racist they're not embarrassed about it and and you know, you could make a case that the South in before civil rights was that situation, right? I think of conservatism as, you know, uh, the philosophy of preser preserving the institutions and norms that have brought us this far in society. They're very they're they're concerned about the law of unintended consequences, and they think change could leave us in a worse spot than, that we're in now. So in a situation where racism is the norm, conservatives will be trying to conserve that. And you could make a case 
that it's embedded in their philosophy. I just, in this environment, uh -huh. it, with conservatives doing their best to distance themselves from racism in every way, shape, or form, I mean, I just read a book recently that I, I mean, I read it uh, and thought, you know, this is, this is like a very racist sounding book. And I went out of curiosity, I went to the reviews on Amazon and there were a lot of conservatives in the reviews saying, this makes conservatism look bad. I'm not about racism. This book shouldn't be like endorsed by conservatives in any way, shape or form, which makes me happy to see because, you know, I don't want people trying to conserve racism. So. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, that's does, good. But, does, um, okay. There, are, um, I, uh, I don't want to make conservatives feel like I'm saying that they, uh, are implicitly racist okay. or that they are doing racism implicitly all of the time. I don't know. I don't really want people to feel like, I'm trying to attack them, you know? Right. Mm -hmm. That's never my goal. I so, feel like there's a butt coming. There, there, so there, there are certain principles that uh, conservatives often um, express stuff like, oh, you just need to work harder to get up out of poverty. So, when so, there are a lot of systemic mm -hmm. reasons that can often keep people in poverty and uh, those systemic reasons tend to disproportionately affect people of color and then it, it's kind of like a recursive cycle right that keeps people in poverty um and it's just telling someone oh just work harder kind of discounts all of the other things that are keeping them regardless of how hard they work in the position that they are so but yeah i, I think oh, well, ahead, i so think that happens a lot um that definitely is like the whole pull yourself up by the bootstraps argument um mm -hmm. And I think there's, I think there's a huge flaw. Well, I think it's complicated because obviously like if you're an individual and you have that mindset, it's going to be largely beneficial to you. However, I don't think like society or a government can function with that. We have to have kind of like different uh, mentalities for different levels of society, you know, the, the individual, the family, the government, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I I'm not even sure that that kind of pull yourself up by your bootstraps mentality. Like it would be nice if the culture kind of imparted that the people I'm, I think that's mostly people are kind of born with that sort of motivation intrinsically. I'm not sure just saying it dismissively to someone who's having problems is going to like help them <laughs> in any way. So I agree with that. Um, mm -hmm. But I wouldn't call like if, if some white guy tells someone who's, you know, non-white, like who's had all these, you know, who's in a you know, lower income situation and just like, pull themselves up by their bootstraps or whatever. I mean, you could say that that's ignorant. I don't know if I would say that it's like a racist action on their part. Well, it's, it's ignoring the systemic racism that exists. And uh, it's kind of the impl uh, the implicit part where you're not do you're not doing it to be racist, mm -hmm. but it has racist undertones. If you want to call that uh, like bigoted undertones too. uh, that's fine. It's just the word you put on it. it it's bad either way to do that. Well, I guess is that's it, my main point. Is it, is it detached from the intention of the individual? Like, cause I'm assuming that the guy who's telling, you know, the people to pull themselves up by their bootstraps, I'm assuming I could be wrong. Like if they would not say that to a white person, then I'd say, okay, that's that person's racist. Like if they look at a poor white person and they, they're like empathetic to their plight, you know, like, oh, okay, that's kind of racist. Mm -hmm. But if they're telling poor white people and poor black people the same thing is because I would say that's not racist because of their intention. But I guess I'm asking, is is their intention relevant to the classification of implicit racism? I don't think it is, actually. Um, so I think I think this might be a, a big point of confusion for a mm -hmm. lot of people um, where they think racism requires the intent to be racist. And rather than it's just bigotry based on race that you're doing without knowing you're doing it or meaning to do it, but you're still affecting them either way. This isn't something that I have like a lot of experience in. Uh, I, um, I, I'm not, I, I'm white. I can't really speak to um, this too well, just because I haven't done a lot of research into it and I haven't lived it. So mm -hmm. um 
but from what I uh, conceptualize it all as, racism does not necessarily require the intention to discriminate on the basis of race. It's just you're kind of doing it whether you know it or not, like subconsciously. Well, but even, well, I think you get in trouble when you say subconscious because that implies that there's some underlying that there is a bigotry. And I guess what I'm describing is like, if a person says to a white, a poor white person, you know, pull yourself up by your bootstraps. And they say to a poor black person, pull yourself up by your bootstraps. Like they're oh, not, okay, okay, they're yeah, not so making like, like an analogous situation. Right. They're not making a distinction between race at all in that situation. No, I, I think that saying it to a black person in particular ignores systemic racism. And you could make an argument that that in itself uh, constitutes as being a implicitly racist action. Mm-hmm. You could also just say they're both like dumb responses to give to people who are in poverty because working harder is not usually the cause of par- poverty. Poor people work pretty hard. Right. S- Sitch, I, can I? We step back just for a second here because yes. I mean, there's a lot sure. of there's a lot of different directions that we can go with this, and I don't. Yeah, no worries. We're not gonna we're not gonna talk you out of. We're we're co- totally familiar with the argument for systemic racism. I think there's some merit to that argument. My mm-hmm. my question, since you're dealing with the subject of political polarization and you know studying what makes people right wing and that kind of stuff, I'm more interested in how the con- this conceptualization of racism contributes to political polarization sits are you but i don't want to cut you off if you want what conceptualization of racism well just this just this in describing it this way it's Mm -hmm. very easy to to jump to the conclusion conservatism is a racist philosophy that's a very easy jump to make yeah oh okay i see what you're saying so so i can understand what you're saying so Mm -hmm. in 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 you know, we all we all have to deal with identity politics. I like to separate <laughs> identity identity politics into uh, two versions. <laughs> there's there's common humanity identity politics where you're trying to widen the circle. You know, we all have to get along. We all have to share mm-hmm. the planet. And there's common enemy uh, identity politics, which I think is very toxic and dangerous and leads to political polarization. So, but mm-hmm. when I, so when are you I, just talking about the in group out group mentality? Yes, sure. yeah, tribalism, what I, how, whatever you want to call it. Sure. But when it just it seems like I said in the environment that we live in, everyone knows racists are pieces of shit. They're yeah. like um, they're detestable people. Yeah. So, yeah, I could speak on this a little bit. Uh, in academic settings, there's like an implicit understanding that, sorry, one second. <coughs> Gross. Um, <laughs> I'm a little bit sick. No problem. Um, so in academic settings, oh God, that made my throat worse. One second. It's okay. Go get some water. Yeah. But, um, did I derail you, Sitch? I didn't know. No, no. It's a, I just, I feel like we've had I the conversation. I think we've had you can't the whole idea behind systemic racism it's like well that's not what i i was just trying to understand what's being talked about. i'm not trying to sure i was sure, i wasn't sure. going the route you were thinking but do oh, we okay. need to like clarify anything or no, no, no. i don't not i don't think okay. so okay but... cool so in, in an academic setting there's an implicit understanding that things are nuanced and especially within social sciences that things are very nuanced because human beings are kind of weird and um, there's like a million different aspects to any one issue so that's all fine and good in an academic setting to be talking about how an action has uh like racist connotations to it the problem is when it moves out to like the general public and you lose the nuance um especially since a lot of people are only engaging with it in passing they are not um taking the time to do like an autistic deep dive into the subject um Mm -hmm. i i would know i'm neurodivergent so like i i've been i've been there you know (laughs) um but 
because a lot of people who use the internet are, uh, you know, teenagers or 20 somethings and um, they're still in that stage where they are being politically socialized, they will take things at face value. So if you say, um, telling a black person to pick themselves up by the bootstraps, even if you would do the same to a white person, probably does have racist connotations or even if you just say it, it, it's racist um they will also likely have taken in the rhetoric that racism is bad and you should do everything that you can to oppose racism and for some reason within like teenagers this usually means bullying so they'll just harass people for bad behavior when it's it's not a very effective thing to do for one and for two you're not really making anyone change their like on top of not being able to uh make people change their minds you're making yourself look bad mm -hmm. and you're making like anybody you associate with look bad um i think that might be a prominent issue because if you start saying that x thing is bad and you should oppose x thing people will take that to a very far extent i don't think necessarily saying that hey that thing you just did was kind of racist. Maybe don't do that again. Um, put someone necessarily in the out group. Does that make sense? Like you could still be in an in group and be um, welcomed within a community, even if you fuck up from time to time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, um, I understand what you're saying. And this, it, this is a big problem uh, in all these fields, psychology, sociology, where, you know, mm -hmm. there's some complicated concept that is being discussed and then obviously you know when it gets reported on the media or talked about on social media it's like it becomes this very dumbed down low resolution version of itself mm -hmm. um and i think sort of like the the example that you're talking about is a good example of that because generally at least the way that i see it being used is it's not like it's not like someone kind of saying like well maybe it's you know, racists, you know, to conceptualize, you know, the pull yourself up by your bootstraps argument in this complicated way. It's more like, oh, if you make that argument, you are a racist and you are a bad person. Like they're using that, like the racism cudgel mm -hmm. to kind of like beat someone away to tell them that their opinion is wrong. And then that person might say, well, I'm not racist because I think this is true for everyone. And they just kind of get angry and confused and I would say almost like right. that aspect probably creates a lot of radicals because then they're like, well, these people are, or, well, I think it, it probably creates radicals, but also it sort of creates like a cry wolf situation where someone will say like, oh, you know, this, you know, this guy's a white nationalist, this guy's racist. And they're like, well, this person called me racist and I'm not racist. So I'm not going to believe that this other guy is like a white nationalist too. And then that kind of creates a situation where a wolf in sheep's clothing can easily sneak into the Exactly, village. right. Right, exactly. Yeah. So, so that, that is how, um, from how I understand it, a lot of white nationalists and uh, far-right figures have been able to rise to prominence after um, the... Uh, after, after Gamergate specifically, like around 2018 and after, um, because... Uh, th there was already this culture of why should we listen to these people calling wolf on all of this other stuff that seems pretty innocuous like mm -hmm. I don't know white people dreads right like that right. that that's not hurting anyone it's it's iffy in terms of like should you really be wearing that I don't think it's good for your hair but you, well, you know what do you think I mean, is what is the solution to that? Like, because, you know, how do we get people to, to not throw out this wolf label with such ease so that people can correctly identify wolves when they come along? I think um, attacking problems at the source instead of just like the surface level problem. So mm -hmm. in the case of the pull yourself up by your bootstraps uh, argument, instead of going, hey, that's kind of racist, you could also go, 
hey, that's kind of racist, and here's why. I don't like this mentality of, I'm not Google. I don't have to tell you anything. Just go Google it yourself. Uh, People are going to find the wrong information if you do it that way. Is it? Google's a very big place. (laughs) Charlotte, is it possible to make that argument without the racist component? Because a, a lot of people... A lot of people have the moral intuition that, you know, uh, people are responsible Uh, for their own situation. Okay, so for, yeah, um, I mean, there's a lot of reasons why someone could be in a situation and it's not always up to them. And I think that if you explain why it's not always up it's, to them okay then it'll maybe let's, make a little bit but more let's sense, but... let's separate let's separate there's two different categories here though there is there is people who life has thrown a lot of uh misery at them a lot of a lot of challenges i don't deny that those people exist i mean life can cut you off at the knee sometime okay and telling those mm-hmm. people to pull themselves up by the bootstraps i think is wrong but there are people who are lazy and 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 don't want to work? I mean, I think I, I'm, I'm people are very prominent. I'm I'm a little bit guilty as myself person, but... as a as a lazy person myself. <laughs> well, hold up. First of all, Adam, you're not lazy at all. Okay, so that's not true. Um, well, but whoa, um, yeah. well, well, I think you're focusing on the wrong thing, Adam. Okay. Because what you're what what you're the first question that you asked is really more along the lines of uh, like. Why, if someone makes this pull yourself up by the bootstraps argument, I think as soon as you say, you know, that's racist or you're, or being racist, I like, as soon as those words enter the the conversation, I think the brain just shuts off. And I I think you're not wrong. Right. And like, if you're trying to sort of figure out like, because obviously, I mean, everyone acknowledges that some, some guy who just has a pull yourself up by your bootstraps mentality, and this goes across all races, you know, and. You can make an argument that it's some kind of form of implicit systemic racism to say that to a black person. Obviously, that person is very different than like, you know, Richard Spencer in terms of, you know, what they kind of want the world to look like, who's, you know, an avowed white nationalist. And I think I think if if the if the goal is to try to make it so that wolves can't sneak in, I don't even think that you should call the boomer conservative racist. You could just be like, well, I think you're wrong because, you know, of all these systemic issues. (laughs) <laughs> yeah you're not you're not entirely wrong um i think it's important to call out behavior as it is but um to the person you're calling it out to mm-hmm. uh y- you can change your rhetoric based on your needs um so if i were to tell my mom the next time she makes like a i don't know a lazy mexicans comment Hey, that's pretty <laughs> racist. Well, that's, a little di- I mean, that's a little different, right? Throwing it's, your mom really under the that's bus, kind of explicit, Charlotte. Right? I, I'm just saying. Well, she does. It's it's uh it's upsetting for me mm-hmm. personally, and also for everybody around her. Um, she does not want to be called racist, though. So if I were to say, "Hey, that's racist," she won't listen to me. I could also, you know, take the time to explain to her why that's not true. Or I could, like, you know, use rhetoric based around, like, I don't know, shared issues that she might... Because she's also, like, a hardworking, lower-class person. Mm -hmm. She's, like, lower-middle class. She works constantly. She works, like, 50 hours a week. Right. I I don't think that, like, um, necessarily there isn't a way to get her to, you know see hey that's racist but it would take yeah, too but long you know like even in that example like i mean that's someone saying making some comment about like mexicans being lazy like that's that's explicitly being racist like that is a like a people would generally acknowledge that as a a, a bigoted comment i think it's a little different than just like yeah. kind of broadening the racist term to imply to all this sort of like implicit or system or someone basically just not even implicit racism someone just not acknowledging some systemic issue, which maybe you can call it ignorant. I just I think it opens the door categorically to to broaden the category too much to call that racist. Um, sure. I just that was the first example uh, that came to mind. It's just, it's harder to form ex- sure, uh, sure. implicit racist examples. Maybe something like I don't know, telling a black person to pull their pants up, like. You, you could argue, yeah, that that's all so racist, but it's like implicitly racist. 
it's not necessarily like racist to say it to a white person, but if you say it to a black person, there's a lot of connotations that go along with it. And, you know, it's a whole thing <laughs> is what I'm trying to get at. But, yeah, I understand. Um, I think that when you're arguing with people online, which often happens in the mm-hmm. current day and age, uh, it course. might be better to just address people like at face value instead of saying you're racist and then like you know proceeding to harass them um to be fair uh they were being racist so that sucks and um not necessarily sad that they're being harassed but like i don't think it's a good idea it's Mm -hmm. not helping them and i prefer to help them to not be racist well i mean it, it it kind of like it goes to the you know, you were, we brought up Gamergate, which is like, in, in the, what you said before that I think is very true, is that there are actual people who are explicitly racist, who, you know, we would classify, everyone would agree is like on the more extreme end of whatever the racism spectrum is, the, the Richard Spencers, the, the Nick Fuentes, the white nationalists. Um, and you know, you have a situation, I think Gamergate to me is the perfect example because you have a situation where, you know, some tiny minority of people are, you know, gossiping about some salacious, you know, what they consider a sex scandal, whether it really happened or not, uh, drama about it. And it's just like this tiny, um, tiny amount of people are sort of like gossiping about this because it's juicy gossip. And then basically all these uh, video game journalists come out and they basically label like the entire fandom of gamers or the entire, you know, group of people's gamers as as being sexist and misogynistic. And you have all these people who are like reflexively like, what the fuck? Or like, I, how, why am I sexist? What are you talking about? I I haven't engaged in any of this behavior. Right. I don't even know what's going on. And then, so then those people completely lose faith in all those uh, game journalists. And then if those game journalists point to someone and say, this person is actually misogynist or actually racist, like they're never going to believe them in a million years. Um, yeah, well, it's like I've said before, right? When people think you're attacking an implicit part of their identity, then they will just shut off and they will go full defense mode. Well, so the, the implicit the part of, though uh, is, is like an accusation. You're well, you're um, you're making a, an accusation about them. That's why they're no, upset. No, no, I didn't mean. I meant like a implicit as in like it's it's part of their like, like you're a like, gamer collective no, identity the gamer is sexist right yeah, right yeah oh, okay. no i didn't mean that they are okay, implicitly sexist i'm sorry i should I have been you. more specific you mean with explicit. my language um you mean explicit is what you mean but no no she mean well, she just mean like that like if you if someone identifies as a gamer and then you right. say all gamers are x right you're attacking the gamer identity Right, but there's, so an ex- there's going to be there's reflexively ex- explicit parts of the identity. <laughs> and well, I guess if they're implicit, expressing their gamer, and there's then implicit yes, parts like, of the identity. Like the explicit part would be they play video games. <laughs> the yes, implicit part would be that. that they liked violence, <laughs> right? Uh, no, <laughs> I okay. I'm just going to say a part of their identity. I didn't mean to include the word implicitly in okay. there. Okay. I'm just I'm just trying implicit. to follow along obviously. That was my bad. Yeah. No, it's okay. Yeah. So, I, I just mean do you um that you, like a part of their identity has been attacked and they feel that um they themselves are being attacked. So, they go full like defensive mode and they completely shut down, don't want to hear the subsequent arguments, which is why you don't like start with the the starting line gamers are sexist well that is an attack it you literally know? is an attack and so is right. calling someone yeah. racist is an attack so yeah well um i think i think it could be just like a thing that you're pointing out you're like you you, you could say hey that was kind of sexist or hey that was kind of racist and it's more of like a stop doing that thing instead of a you are sexist or racist Unless well, this is like mm-hmm. a reoccurring personality problem, then like it, it's usually just a, hey, this behavior is bad. Maybe don't do it. Sure. But it, I guess that's not how of, people tend to use it, of course, but that's like right. how it is just, used in my well, head. I guess part of the contention is that when we talk about things like sexism and racism, 
you know, uh-huh. there are people have different definitions of what actually encompasses those uh, yeah, behaviors. That that's also an issue, um, right? So it's like if you if you're like, oh, this is sexist, and the person's like, I'm not doing anything sexist. I don't know what you're talking about. I think I think people are just uh, taking like these extreme levels of sexism, or maybe even just like explicit sexism only. Like, ah, why don't you get in the kitchen and cook me a sandwich? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, that one's always so funny to me. Like, okay, what? you don't like sandwich. You, sand- you don't like lettuce. You don't like the sandwich <laughs> jokes, the sandwich maker. I joke? think they're hilarious okay, uh, because good. they are so bad. They, I don't know. It's like being offended they, at the they are bit sexist. fruity homophobic dog. You know, they mm-hmm. are they are sexist, Charlotte. I will give you that. <laughs> they they are sexist and they're stupid. You know, if someone said them to me, I'd laugh at them, not at the joke, but at them for thinking mm-hmm. that it would like hurt me. I'm gonna, I'm gonna trigger the chat here. I want to ask you something, Charlotte. Do you, do you have an opinion about stereotype threat? Do you have you studied stereotypes? Oh, I thought you were gonna ask her about MMT. But that's no. Good. Uh, I'm sorry about stereotype what? Stereotype threat. I, I don't think I have an opinion on that. Would, uh, you, okay. Elaborate. Well, there are negative stereotypes. Yeah, Your mom has a negative stereotype of Mexican people, right? I think that stereotype Correct. is yeah. inaccurate. Like, I live in Southern California, okay? I, like, yeah, I'm, I'm Mexicans from the Southwest. Work, Mexicans work harder than anyone. Like, I'm a lazy motherfucker standing next to them. So I just, like, that stereotype that your mom has is definitely incorrect i think i think people try to voice negative stereotypes on people for nefarious reasons uh during before the civil rights movement there were all sorts of negative stereotypes about blacks we've worked hard as a society to neutralize those negative stereotypes right obviously a lot of those still persist and they are rooted in our you know history but I, I, I admit that like like I, I completely acknowledge that society has moved forward in terms of progress in our like views of certain groups of people. Right. Well, the I just I when I listen uh, to your conversation with Vosh, and I, I'm not accusing you of doing this, more more Vosh, because Vosh constantly does this. Vosh is in the world creating negative stereotypes of conservatives that conservatives are racists and i just like the there's a big talk there's a big controversy going on right now about the whole the the groomer term people are calling people groomers Mm -hmm. and i i would be just as against if people were out there trying to promote and i think people are are doing this which is, is just as bad as trying to define every single conservative as a racist they're trying to define every single progressive as a groomer that's a negative stereotype. That's a terrible thing to to try to put out into the world. And people latch onto these negative stereotypes, and they do they do tangible harm to people. Um, if I could speak on this for a moment, um, yeah, I mean, I acknowledge that Vosh speaks in a very hyperbolic way. Right. <laughs> like I I don't take everything he says literally, but. Uh, I I know that there are people within his audience who probably do, and I don't think that's a good thing. I, right. I don't think that like um, unfortunately you can't add like tonal indicators to spoken speech. So like it, he, he speaks hyperbolically frequently and uses a lot of sarcasm. So how are you supposed to like indicate that when you're using it frequently? Um, well, uh, are you are you saying can, like tell because you change your tone, but like. You know, um, are you, are I, you hold, hold on, just I hate to interrupt, but sorry, sorry, Go let's on. let's because I it, I just want to be clear here. Like, I you don't need to defend Bosch, just I want to talk to you. <laughs> like, you're the one, you're the yeah, one, no, you're the one studying this stuff. You're the to... one, you're like the you're the future here of actually <laughs> studying something that could be actually good for society, okay? <laughs> right. Rather, I would, I would classify. Vosh is like a conflict entrepreneur. Like the more conflict there is in the world, the better Vosh is. Vosh does. The more popular Vosh is, the bigger Vosh's bank account is. There are people who are actually academics who care about 
reducing the amount of conflict in the world. And, you know, I would like to think you're probably one of those people who wants to study this and figure out what's really going on. So, I mean, you're, you're, you're making an argument here for de-radicalization, mm -hmm. which I like, I def, I love. But if you're, if you're classifying conservatism as racism based on a stereotype, and we can argue whether or not Vosh uh -huh. believes all conservatives are racist. I think he probably does, even though I do agree with you that he's being hyperbolic. I think his truth is that conservatism I don't think he is racist. That. Okay, well that's good to hear. I, I would love to, I would like to I, hear I that from Vosh. I think he thinks that there are parts of conservatism, but like not all conservatives. Okay. That's look, we're making progress. Lo love no. yeah. Love in the love in the world for Vosh if he can make that distinction. The like if but if you're saying conservatism is racism, whether or not it's explicit or implicit is is up for grabs. But doesn't that make de-radicalization fighting against people who are racist fighting against people that are conservative? Doesn't de-radicalization mm. means preventing people from being conservative? And then you're just you're trying to persuade people to your political ideology more than anything. Uh, what well, yeah i mean swaying people to your political ideology is part of political discourse in but it's general, not part right? of science no no that's well, not i i no, guess it's not i guess what adam is getting i'm assuming what adam's getting at is um like with de-radicalization efforts my assumption so, is that generally it's not like oh this is a right-wing radical i want to make him a left like a leftist it's generally i he can be conservative. I just want him to not be like racist. Radical. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I want yeah, him not I to be bigoted. People not be fascists. Yeah. Sure. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, me too. For me, my only goal when I'm doing political science is to like figure out what the current state of things is. Right. Um, the truth. What happens yeah. afterwards is not is not related to that. So if I want more people to go from being um, like white nationalists to being i don't know like progressives that's not part of political science it could still be part of my personal goals in terms of what my research can do afterwards but like mm -hmm. my research should always be um uh, as representative as possible of the current like circumstances of any particular group of people um, You're taking an anti-critical theory approach i like it <laughs> it's it's more of just a positivist approach to to political science um sure but it's like when you're doing the actual political science part that is literally just gathering data and then sorting it that's right that's all you're doing um it's like one plus one equals two well i, I and can, then I, i'm assuming you since you are saying that Vosh doesn't believe all conservatives are racist, and you obviously don't believe all conservatives are racist. But uh -huh. the I just the that that stereotype just disturbs me quite a bit. Well, because, let me let me um I think I, I get what you're getting. Let me rephrase what you're saying. Adam. Okay, so you have to repeat yourself. Is um you're saying like okay if we broaden the term of racism to include a standard universal conservative idea, like pull yourself up by your bootstraps, then how is like you, then you, then we've constructed a system where definitionally conservatives will always be racist. And it seems like it'd be impossible to basically talk them out of like yeah, that position. standard position that they hold universally of people, regardless of the race. I mean, it's not necessarily, how do I, phrase this it's not that you're defining a part of conservatism as racism you're more defining like the consequences of that belief or like the factors that go into it as the racist part That's and not... then you're saying hey this is not a good thing maybe you don't continue to promote that like if, if the consequences know. of the philosophy are racism then the philosophy is racist by definition doesn't mean the entire i guess that part of it would be but i i tend to take things from like a piece by piece piece well, let's, approach let's let's this is why i began with the the definition of conservatism that i'm that i'm using this 
idea that uh-huh. they're just trying to conserve institutions and, and norms that are working. Like, how do you define conservatism? Like, you, you seem to think the pull them up by their bootstraps is some core well, essence it's... of conservatism. That was more of just an example, not okay. really like the core essence or anything. I would I just, say it's a core it, essence. It was a, well, sure. it's, it's a it's a Protestant work ethic. It's that's where it evolved from. So I don't think. Okay. Uh, anyway, um, sorry, I'm trying to figure out how to phrase things in a way that like right. makes sense, but I also don't ramble. Um, Rambling's so okay. For <laughs> for me, conservatism. It's it's just as you said, it's conserving institutions and um, norms, but m- more so modern uh, neoconservatism also has a tendency to want to regress, um, to like undo progress instead of just, it's, it's not necessarily always trying to go back to um, some kind of previous society. Sometimes it'll just make shit up. And then be like, yep, I'm conserving this thing that I made up five seconds ago. Um, <laughs> sorry, specific examples are very difficult on the spot. <laughs> well, they, um, they've, they've, well, I've seen a separation between conservatives and what people are calling neo reactionary now. The neo reactionaries definitely. Like want oh, I to... definitely think there's like a difference between like the neo reactionaries and and like um conservatives, I don't know, like yeah, a con- yeah, older cons- uh, traditional conservatives, whatever you want to call them. Um, Burkean, hi, Burkean sorry, my cat just came to um try to steal sausage. <laughs> <laughs> she smelled food and she was like, "Wow, you haven't fed me in five minutes. Um, guess this is mine now." But anyway, um, so I I agree there is a difference between reactionaries and um, <laughs> um, regressive types compared to uh, the concerns of like I don't know the eighties uh, ish. I was gonna say like late seventies to early nineties, but that's basically the eighties. Right. You know, it encompasses the entire eighties. Incredible thing that Well like, um, you know, Mitt Romney, I, I don't I'm not a big Mitt Romney guy. Uh I don't like that he was big into leverage buyouts, which I think are disgusting. But I mean he's very conservative, but I don't think he's a I'm assuming I don't think he's a neo reactionary. No, absolutely not. He was um one of the few people to actually be like, Yeah, what Trump's doing is pretty fucked up. Mm-hmm. And, um, oh, yeah. well, even like, oh, like, I don't think, I don't think uh, whether someone likes Trump or not wouldn't necessitate whether they're neo reactionary. No, right? I just meant like, not necessarily, but there were a lot of actions that a government official should probably call out. Yeah, sure. Um, if they don't want to seem like a neo reactionary. So, um, Mitt Romney did call a lot of that stuff out. And, well, maybe uh, maybe you know a, good for him. Pat on a better the back. example would be like Ted Cruz, who I really despise, but I don't think he's a neo reactionary. Probably Here, not. But here's a here's a quote from the live stream that you did with Vosh. Okay, are you ready? <laughs> oh, great, thank you. Are you ready? Okay. This is no. no oh, hold on. This is this. Ha- if you're especially if you're dealing with like alt writers and and de radicalization, like we've watched a lot of no. the content critical of alt writers, and I, you know, I'm not in favor of the alt writers either. Like the uh, the racism stuff bugs me, really does. The, I um, don't actually really remember racism coming up in the conversation, which is why I'm kind of confused. So really, quote, really, yeah. What's, I'm curious what this quote is. Then. I don't know Vosh says talking. all conservatives are hiding their real hate for trans and black people. That yeah, seems that does a sound little... like a bit of a hyperbolic <laughs> statement. <laughs> so, but but listen, when and and we we hear this a lot. Obviously, you know, people in the alt right will make jo- uh, jokes about Jewish people. I don't like those jokes. I find those jokes uh-huh. to be anti-Semitic. You know, I can take a joke just like other people can. Yeah, but but you problem... always wonder, you know, are they really joking? Is this really a joke? Right? Yeah, 
I think that's a bad so thing. So why is Vosh allowed <laughs> to do this? And I'm supposed to sit here and go, is he jo- is he really joking? Or does he really think that? I think it's fair to call him out for uh, making jokes like that and encouraging like a outgroup mentality about conservatives because it makes it harder for people to like approach conservatives in a reasonable way. Yeah, it's dehumanizing them. It makes any kind of winning coalition strategy My... impossible. Yeah, my main issue is that when Vosh, like, talks to people, he's very respectful. And, you know, um, until it inevitably devolves into a shit show. But Mm -hmm. um, those are always funny. Um, (laughs) Is that your cat or Adam's cat? Someone wants to talk to you guys. (laughs) What's your cat's name? This cat's name is Ragamuffin. This is basically a stray cat that came to live with us. My cat's so. name is Andromeda, and she only talks when she wants oh, food. Oh, wow. Are you a Men in Black fan? Isn't that the cat from Men in Black? I thought it was. Is it? I think it is. I, yeah. I, I named her Andromeda because she's a calico with a really oh, okay. cool pattern. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. That totally makes she sense. She looks like a little galaxy. But um, no, I think it's fair to criticize Bosch for making jokes like that. So, I, I don't have a problem well, with you. Two things. First that. of all, Adam, the cat in the Men in Black's name, was Orion. Okay. Oh, it was. Okay. <laughs> You're right. Orion's belt. Never mind. Yes. Yeah. I'm they a, said I'm the keys idiot. in Orion's belt. Yes. I'm a, I'm um, yeah. The the second. I don't think Vosh is joking when he says that statement at all. I think he's completely serious. I think he is too. Yeah. I can't read his mind. Sure. Sure. But um, I mean, so, I don't know if if you. I mean, I, I don't want you to like be the Vosh defender. <laughs> like that, but, don't. Yeah. Don't put like it Position. I know it's just like because recently, for Vosh. Yeah, I know because do recently, it. well, because we're talking about radicalization, and, and recently, uh, Vosh, you know, had the a debate that was widely talked about where he, he very explicitly at the end of the, the conversation uh, advocates that basically anyone on the left can engage in political violence against anyone on the right and can classify it as self defense. And I mean, to me, that I, seems like a pretty did radical... he say that? Yes, he did. <laughs> Interesting. It seems, it seems I to be pretty uh, radical. I haven't seen his last like three or four streams, mm-hmm. so I wouldn't. I wouldn't know. Right. Yeah, you're you're under no obligation to defend Fox. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. I just in the context of. I mean, I I view a lot of this as just people misrepresenting one another for political advantage. And I just, these negative stereotypes, I mean, this is where, this is the root of racism. Racism is about developing negative stereotypes about some outgroup, some race, some religion, so that you can denigrate those people. And and so people feel justified at denigrating those people. And I just, I don't, I don't think it's healthy or, or mm-hmm. helpful. So, well, the, you, you know, you mentioned in group, out group uh, earlier, which is like, one of my favorite things to mention too. And mm-hmm. like the way that I look at it, and I don't know if you look at it the same way, is that really the only effective way to combat, you know, racism or any kind of bigotry is to expand the in group so that, you know, someone who's white does not view someone as black as the other. They view them as, you know, American or whatever city or state or whatever they're part of you know they they include them in the in-group and to me i think that's the only way to really fight this kind of bigotry it's hard when you tell them they're hiding their hatred for trans and black well i mean do you do you do you agree do you think there's an alternative way to fight racism beyond expanding the in-group i i mean education um education about like things that are racist so that you don't run into the uh problem of people being like why i'm not doing anything racist and then getting super defensive um instead just like you know nipping it in the bud and and uh getting ahead of that so that they don't do the racist thing to begin with um and then um so on top of education yeah expanding the in-group might be a, a good idea um maybe not necessarily like um you don't have to like i i think this is a problem that a lot of people encounter you don't have to like everyone in your in group you just kind of have to tolerate them (laughs) yeah you don't have to like everyone in your family but you know you have to love them sitch what are you talking about (laughs) 
I mean, that's a bad <laughs> example. But yeah. Well, yeah, you don't have to. Li- I mean, but the, I guess the, the thing is, it's not a question of liking people. It's a question of seeing them as an individual as opposed to a representative of a group. I mean, I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll... I don't think it's fair to uh, lump anyone in uh, based on like group characteristics. I, I don't I don't think I don't think that's fair. I well, think that you should judge people like individually. And I also don't think that you should also uh, judge someone by their membership in a group. <laughs> Because not everyone has necessarily the same experiences. Yeah, no, I mean, I think that's one hundred percent true. Um, but I think that, but I think that's kind of the problem I have with sort of the conceptualization of some of the way fighting racism is is talked about today. Because to me, that's what you know. I that's what racism is. It's you know, uh, lumping people in together. It's not treating someone as an individual, and like in the example that we were talking about, like the bootstraps, you know, telling a black person to pull himself up by their bootstraps. I mean, to, to categorically assume that that is an implicitly racist act of some kind is to de-individuate the black person and say, oh, well, you shouldn't say that to a black person because they're part of a group. Um, yeah, I I just... I don't like uh, trying to generalize a group's members, um, especially when you're out interacting with them on an interpersonal level. Mm-hmm. Um, because group membership is important uh, in terms of like what experiences you might have had or uh, how your uh, political beliefs develop, um, sometimes even how your values develop, depending on when you joined that group. Um, and it's also like where you are within the group structure. So like uh, within social psychology, there's obviously studies of uh, group psychology. It's it's not that individuals aren't affected by their group membership. It's just that it's not um, productive or effective to, to interact with people as if they are their group. Um, right. I, I, think, I think that's so strange, like, like making them an ambassador for their group right i don't don't know it would be like saying i am the same as every other vosh fan which if you if you um know the the ambassador to vosh you are are, you are not a typical vosh (laughs) fan at all we are legion we're all we're all like balding bearded over (laughs) oh shit how dare you that was sexist as could be but probably true but it's okay because um, we don't like that. I don't think it's. I, I'm just referencing that one comic where it's like we are legion. Yes, yes. I'm just. Well, I'm I only mean, kidding. I'm just, yeah. I'm just joking around. No, I I agree completely. I I also think like that's why I think it's weird when there's sort of this conception that is thrown around by some people like, oh, if you don't like if you're black and you don't adhere to some kind of specific worldview, then you're not really black. Like you, you give up your black card by uh, d- disagreeing. Yeah, I always think that's super weird. Yeah, because yeah, I'm like, this, it just it just feels like this is just fermenting racism and and everything that's going to yeah. cause more problems. Yeah, I I think that um, encouraging this kind of like thought pattern um, definitely leads to like mm-hmm. uh, falling into like racist tendencies or. Um, anti-semitic tendencies sexist right. tendencies etc i don't like when people do this to men i don't like when people do this to white people i don't like when people do this to anyone i don't think it's fair um it's not that their group membership is discounted it's just that they are also an individual and you should look at the aggregate of their experiences not just their membership in one group that's why um, I care so much about promoting mm-hmm. intersectional feminism because it, it does have that focus on the different axes of a uh, person's identity and how they all interact with each other um, and, you know, going on and um, taking into account their personal experiences and mm. stuff like that. So um, saying that someone isn't black for having a particular opinion does not sit right with me. I, I completely agree. Do you think that intersectionality leads to people being more individuated or more de-individuated? 
I think the like, intersectionality, I, mm-hmm. I guess, um, more individuated because it, it encourages you to think about people um, and their experiences within society from like a, a multifaceted point of view. And I think that makes them more into like a uh, unique in that sense of the word individuated. Hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So that's kind of how I think about it. Um, it, it. It's hard to understand the experiences of a person without uh, taking in the different aspects of their identity because those aspects usually interact with one another. That's interesting because um, because after we talk to you, we're going to be talking to uh, what's Adam? What's his actual name and not his carefree name? wandering? Yeah, what's his actual name? His actual name Hans yeah. Moller, I think Hans George yeah. Moller. And he's a, I believe he's a, a Marxist, and his argument, which I disagree with, is that intersectionality and like quote unquote wokeness that arises from that is a neoliberal idea and he says that it makes people hyper individuals and time because to me it's the opposite is because intersectionality like yeah I, it make, I guess it makes you more unique um to some extent but to me it's still you're you're basically saying oh because someone has various group categories that they belong to you have to like treat them differently or assume different things about them based on like the various group intersections i don't think you should assume anything Mm -hmm. um (laughs) well uh that that's very strange to me i i think um i think it's important to think of people not only in an individual context because that's counterproductive to understanding their like where they fall in society and how um systemic effects have like changed and shaped their lives or how they uh fit into certain systemic effects because a systemic effect is not just i think it's kind of an abstract concept but it it requires a lot of people doing a thing Mm -hmm. (laughs) right Um, (laughs) you know so it's it's a little bit hard to wrap your head around like abstract concepts like that that's kind of the main issue um but no I i don't see it as um as uh making people like hyper individuals or as like reducing them purely to their groups um i've read uh kimberly crenshaw's writing it that's not really what she talks about it's more it's like i said it's it's a focus on not just the individual but the individual where they fit in society and how society affects the individual it's a balancing act and you can't just have one perspective without the other um i mean yeah i I agree obviously awesome i'm all about balancing things uh obviously we need to have you know you need to understand who someone is as an individual and also understand that i mean maybe because of their identifiers they've been placed in certain situations by society um i guess i'm just bothered by like when when I don't know which paper you're talking about, but in one of uh, Kimberly Crenshaw's papers where she sort of, she, she doesn't seem to want to expand the in-group. She, you know, she talks about straining. She's like, oh, you know, in the civil rights movement, there was sort of, you know, a lot of black men were trying to say that they're not, that they're a man who happens to be black as opposed to being a black man. And they're kind of straining. I think she says, like, they're straining for a type of common universality or some, I forget the exact language she uses. And to me, that's sort of a, I feel like she's kind of laying out a dangerous road by, by criticizing what I think should be the end goal that we all, all should be, you know, seeking this kind of universal uh, human category. Yeah, we are all human ultimately, and it would be nice if people saw it that way, but um, the, the problem with um, talking about things like this is we we say, well, we're all human, so why do you keep talking about X issue that affects only this group? Mm-hmm. It's because the, there's still systemic issues that affect only certain groups, and I, I think it's fair for um, Kimberly Crenshaw to be uh, skeptical of black men who are trying to uh, discount 
the fact that they are black by saying that they are a man who happens to be black um because it, it it ignores the experiences of black women too which is something she writes a lot about is um how often in civil rights movement and even now um there's less of a focus on black women and uh the common issues that black men and black women face but also the unique issues that black women face um so i don't i don't necessarily see it um as a bad thing what she said but uh mm -hmm. i i can see how you think it, it's walking like a thin line i i do understand this um this desire for like um kind of a of a we're all human everybody is all human it it's isn't. just you also sorry i'm a little bit stuffy so <laughs> it's it's hard because um it's hard to breathe through my nose but okay. i can't <laughs> breathe through my mouth when i'm talking so it's a whole you thing. could take a pause and then breathe yeah <laughs> our tuesday streams are chill so if you need to take a break yeah or... yeah no worries know. if you're on a ramble though keep going <laughs> How are... so when you when you uh say that we're all human you also kind of um sound like you're trying to discount the specific issues that specific groups face right does well, that make sense no it makes that makes perfect sense i guess i feel like because people are not able to hold sort of nuanced ideas in their head that it's correct like they lose like this comes in a lot with colorblindness um which is that you know, I understand sort of like the argument that you said, which is sort of the argument against colorblindness, which is, you know, you can't, you, colorblindness should not be used in a way to ignore uh, current racism or past racism, which has created, you know, systemic issues uh, that should be addressed. But then it feels like people then lose the aspirational part of colorblindness. And that's, I think, where we get mm -hmm. lost is because like, I mean, I would hope that most people would still say, you know, we should aspirationally be pushing for the Star Trek future where, you know, people don't care about race. Like that should be the end mm -hmm. goal. And I think that that gets lost. I mean, I don't think like when, when Kimberly Crenshaw says what she says, I, I think I'm assuming because she was a student of Derek Bell that she's taking the position that she doesn't think a colorblind world is possible Hello? at all. Sorry, I think it cut out for a second. Oh, okay. I said, I, I said, um, I'm assuming since Kimberly Crenshaw is a, a student of Derek Bell, that she aspirationally doesn't think colorblindness is is achievable at all, or should even be sought after. And I guess that's where my contention is: is losing sort of the aspirational goal of colorblindness. Um. Yeah, so this is something I've always uh, I've always kind of thought, uh, especially when I'm taking sociology classes. I understand uh, the desire for colorblindness. It's mm -hmm. just um, that desire often forgets the, the uh, forgets the systemic issues that still exist. So when you say you're colorblind. Uh, in this sense, um, it, it's, um, sorry, this is difficult because I'm not a sociologist and uh, funny enough, Vosh would actually be much better at explaining this. Well, I don't, don't have worry, a I'm not a sociologist either, so. Um, Vosh explaining I, I sociology. Oh, you piqued my, <laughs> you've piqued my interest. <laughs> No, I, I think that he would do a, a really good job of it because he still has like all of that academic um, background. There's there's really two <laughs> types of sociology though. There's like the the critical theory wing of sociology, and then there's like actual sociology. I would describe it as critical theory is what most sociologists use. I mean, I I know there are like now, other. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, for a while now. Who's, uh, I'm trying to think, who's the author of the book Suicide? Who's the, fa who's the father of sociology? Durkheim? Durkheim, that's it. 
Emmanuel yeah, Durkheim. Durkheim. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But if you ask Vosh who the father of sociology is, he'll tell you Karl Marx. Uh, no, he he's said numerous times on the stream. I'm pretty sure that Durkheim. Is I've like never the heard Vosh say the word Dur say the name Durkheim. <laughs> I've heard him like cite Durkheim numerous times. Okay. Well, I mean, watch a lot more of Vosh. So how your... so? <laughs> well, it hasn't. He hasn't talked about sociology like from an academic okay. standpoint in a while now. But um, mm -hmm. just because his his discussions, I guess, have been going elsewhere. But no, yeah. he cited Durkheim before. Okay, um, that's yeah. good. Yeah, no, I'm that would. Yeah, I'm stoked. Mm -hmm. uh, we can move off the color yeah, so thing. I mean, like. I we can move off of what, Sitch? The colorblind thing. If, if it's Color, not your colorblind, area of... colorblind is a term that's completely out of fashion, Sitch. Why would you? I understand. Because it's, it's the most. Why would you bring up that racist concept? terminology? <laughs> well, what word should I use? What term should I use? What am I allowed to use under today's discourse? Colorblindness is racism blindness, okay? We okay. have to see the racism so we can mm -hmm. deal with it. Okay. No, I'm, just, I'm serious, but anyway. I, know, I know, I know. Have we, I hope we've been gracious hosts with you, Charlotte. Yeah. Do you want, I really appreciate that. I mean, I, you've, you've been, uh, this has been a really fun dialogue. I mean, I, do you want, uh, we didn't ask you like how long you wanted to stay with us or anything. So. Yeah, that's fair. Um, I don't mind continuing to chat okay. with you if you had any other questions or whatever. Sure, Sitch, did you? Uh, well, I was I was curious. Um, wait, it, are you going to try to get the study or the survey uh, going again? Yeah, actually, um, mm -hmm. I was planning on adjusting it though. Um, I was thinking of just uh, distributing it via a few different like online content creators and asking a different question entirely, like a different research question. Um, I'm also very interested in uh, happiness and internet usage, especially within <laughs> political spaces. Because um, it, it, it's my personal theory that um, this is just making everyone miserable like trying to engage with usually academic talking points um, from a, a less nuanced and often undereducated point uh, perspective um, uh, in a lot of circumstances. I, I just think that it makes people angrier and uh, it's probably not doing a whole lot of good for their mental health. Right. You know what well, I, mean? I think? I think the process, I think you're completely right. I think the process that makes people angrier is not the discussing of the academic terms or even the dumbing down of the academic terms. It's that generally it seems that in most of these political situations, these things are only used as weapons to attack the other political side as opposed to like, this is a way to understand the world. And that's kind of what's making everyone angrier, to, to my estimation. Yeah. I think it also has a lot to do with um, what, I, what I said before about uh, younger people using the internet primarily, especially in online politics spaces. It's not usually people who are, like, done with their political socialization, you know? Mm -hmm. So they're still taking a lot of stuff at face value. Right. What is scary. What is that? Are you saying that political actors are coming in and deceiving them and that's something you're worried about? No, it's more like um, political actors will make statements uh, about political beliefs, um, which are just, you know, stances on actual uh, issue areas. And because these people are still usually forming their their value system. Um, uh, so, so political socialization tends to take place from late childhood until um, early adulthood, and uh, people will take things at face value without like. It's not that necessarily uh, the person giving them the information has to be malicious. It's just that they won't think too critically sometimes about right. uh, the things that are being said or why they're being said. Um, they'll you, just accept them. Do you think that people 
how, how do you think people come to the political ideology that they possess? Do you think people are taught a political ideology or do you think people have certain moral intuitions and, and come to the ideology that is most comfortable to them? Oh, well, um, it's actually more of the second one. So people tend to like seek things out based on their, their, uh, personal motivations and needs. Like I mentioned before related to like, uh, belonging and intimacy and achievement, stuff like that. And also that go along with their value system that they've started to build up. Um, so it's more like they find ideologies based on that stuff rather than like they find the ideology and then form the rest of the stuff. So if, uh, if that's the case, that sense. if that's the case, is it possible to even really change their political ideology? I believe so. Um, it's just a matter of how things are presented. So if you value things like um, treating people as individuals and uh, being fair, I think fairness is a big one. Um, and then you hear someone say, yeah, uh, gamers are sexist. <laughs> mm -hmm. you, you think, hey, that's not fair. You're not, you're not considering me as a person. You're just lumping me in because I like playing video games. And um, then from there, people will be like, hey, did you hear those people called you sexist for playing video games? That sucks, right? Yeah. And then they'll continue to drag you down further and further and further along, you know, uh, with um, with talking points and stuff like that. Um, it, it doesn't necessarily have to be malicious or intentional. Uh, it's sometimes unintentional, but it's it works the same way either way. So in, in your study that you wanted to do, you talked about mental patterns that lead to radicalization. Did you have like a yep. working theory on what the, the mental patterns were? And when you're, when you're talking about radicalization, I think we fleshed it out earlier. You're, you're talking basically about racism, right? No. Well, sort of, it's not, it's not just racism, you know, it's, it's like sexism and anti-Semitism. Okay, so it's stuff just, like it's that, but uh, broadly it's, it's bigotry more so, towards other groups. Right. Right. Um, sexism, it's, it's homophobia, this, uh, um, racism. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. it, it's just uh, treating people based on these characteristics uh, as if they are inherently inferior. Right. Um, okay. A, a, like an extreme form of bigotry. Okay. But um, more collectivized, I guess. Uh, and what are the mental patterns that are the problem? It's usually, it's usually people who um, don't feel like they necessarily have a place to belong, um, and uh, they have socially. They isolated? tend to have like negative, pretty much. Yeah. Okay. Um, they could be socially isolated. They could be like kind of weirdos, you know, um, I, I feel like we all either were or knew someone who was a little bit weird in, uh, in growing up and they just didn't have a lot of friends and it was harder for them to find groups that they, they, uh, could participate in. Mm -hmm. And then, um, sometimes it'll be like, uh, people capitalizing on this and they'll be like, Hey, aren't you tired of being uh, being so ignored and ex excluded on the basis of you being a uh, a fourteen year old white boy who likes to play video games? Mm -hmm. And um, from there, you can bring them into your group, and you provide them with like achievement, and uh, there's there's a sense of belonging. You get friends, you. It's all that good stuff. Um, you're satisfying like a social and psychological need for them. Um, yeah, they want a, uh, a social network to fit into. Mm -hmm. That yeah. that tends to be who's easiest to radicalize people who don't already have a like a strong social network. The thing that I the I mean, the question that I have is. Like, is this just a, a self-forming 
network does it's like the first person that adopts this bigoted perspective and then wants people to join them so that they can share in that bigoted perspective or is that bigoted perspective somehow you know innate in in different people um i guess it kind of depends on like uh how you grew up uh i don't i don't know if it's necessarily innate it, it might be i'm not familiar with like the um like the the brain science side of it right did you yeah. look at that kind of stuff when you were talking about diving into this topic I mean, you specifically said mental <laughs> patterns, which just makes me think, are you going to put someone in an MRI machine yeah. and say like, <laughs> let's get a, let's get, let's get in our time machine and go back to like the 1950s and grab the most racist person we can and throw them in an MRI and see what happens. Right. Establish the mental. Yeah. Pattern. I mean, I, I think it would be interesting to see like brain scans of racists versus like brain scans of people who aren't racist. I, it would have to be like explicitly racist people, you know. Do, um, do you think racism? I, I think it would is, be interesting, but do you think I, racist, I don't know if it would yield anything? Do you think racism is correlated to negative believing negative stereotypes about whoever the focus of their racism is? <laughs> Could you repeat that question? Do you like <laughs> Sorry, you, auditory processing. Do you think so a racist person, someone who doesn't like, let's say Jews, do you believe that that racism is motivated by a belief in all of these racist stereotypes about Jewish people? Yeah, I I think it can be definitely. Well, are you asking Adam if you like, think Like um the, it the it belief... doesn't have to be all of the negative stereotypes or are you asking if, if the the bigoted beliefs come first or second? Is that what you're asking, Adam? Well, I, I would be curious which it is. I mean, whether or not they have bigotry and then adopt the negative stereotypes. Right. I mean, it could be. It could. It could be. Depending upon the individual, it could be either way, right? Someone could have a bad, a bad interaction with someone of a particular race and then go looking oh, for negative yeah, stereotypes that, that of that also race. Does. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that do that does also definitely contribute. So, right. um, people who have had like negative experiences with a particular um, like individuals within a group will often like start uh, associating all individuals within that group with like only the negative uh, experience, and then like looking for negative uh, aspects to that sure. group and stuff like that. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. I, I that, would, that's definitely I, important out in the I data. I would be curious if like, I don't know how you would measure this. If you could see like, you know, people that are racist, what's more likely that they are racist or that they have some reason to not like a group and then they sort of adopt the stereotypes second or if they have a negative experience with an individual of the group and then adopt those stereotypes because of that. I would think more likely it's the first thing, but um I have no clue how you measure that. Regarding the, the brain scans for racist thing, I'd be interested to see, like, if someone did that. And, like, I don't know, you right. say you, you had, like, you know, racist people, you put them in the MRI and you show them pictures of black people or, you know, whoever they don't like or whatever. I would be curious to compare that uh -huh. to people that aren't racist but are very, like, political, you know, and hate, you know, progressives or conservatives or whatever to see if it's, like, is it the same thing essentially or is there some like actual... triggering the same areas of the brain yeah or is it or is there some actual biologically yeah, different process that's going on you so. you said on the bootstraps thing like you categorize that as as racist because of environmental conditions if say someone was like mugged by a dwarf and then they really <laughs> hated <laughs> dwarfs after that could you could you blame them for their bigotry against dwarfs? Because I mean, it was just circumstances that that caused that. Well, I I, I would still say that you shouldn't be bigoted towards. Oh, I all agree. Dwarfs. Um, yes. Yeah. It's I, a stereotype. I, I don't necessarily think that like you should really be judging anyone unless they are uh, using these bigoted beliefs to hurt people. Um, well, th this mm -hmm. is how the stereotype... Either through direct or 
political action. So this is the problem with stereotypes because so you're mugged by a dwarf. You get this stereotype mm -hmm. in your head. All dwarves are violent, right? Maybe he pulls a gun on you. You think they're all carrying <clears throat> weaponry. So you have these stereotypes and you share these stereotypes with your friends. And then suddenly everyone's marching around saying, you know, all conservatives hate black people and trans people. <laughs> and they're building negative stereotypes about these people. I, I just, I always, and the chat always hates it because I, sometimes I drone on about stereotypes a bit much, but it really seems like, especially in our environment, and, and you guys talk a bit about social media, it seems like a lot of social media is really just about forwarding these negative stereotypes about people. And for there are certain negative stereotypes that are permitted for some reason and certain negative stereotypes that are not permitted. And I just, uh, my position is I just don't think any of these negative stereotypes should be permitted. No, obviously, you can, um, there's like a free speech issue there, but I think culturally, we can't make it illegal, but I think we should, I mean, there should be, people should think twice before they start misrepresenting people and lying about people and creating these stereotypes, right? Yeah, I just think it creates a bad atmosphere in general. Yeah, toxicity. Sitch, uh, I think I might have got all my questions answered. Um, you, there was uh, one. There was one thing. Yeah. That Vosh said that you agreed to. the The right is better at certain manipulation tactics. So Vosh said the right is better at certain manipulation tactics, and you agreed with this. And I just I was curious, like what. What is what are the manipulation tactics of the right and of the left? Great question, I guess. Ask Fosh. Well, no, you. you he, <laughs> I, I okay. was just. What I was doing is a reflexive. Uh huh. Oh, yeah, okay, okay, yeah. that's fine. Um, that's fine. It's it's how I show I'm listening to someone. Right. Sure. I also could barely hear him. Oh. Okay. Um, <laughs> Because when um, when I'm particularly anxious, sometimes it's harder for me to process words. Right, so. right, sure. Okay. Um, oh, there, there was something that was funny. That uh, <laughs> this is a coincidence. Uh, right before, well, right before we tried to talk to you the first time, uh, mm -hmm. we talked to. Uh, we frequently have Sargon of Akkad on, and we frequently argue with him. Yeah. Uh, about Fun. about many issues, and. Uh, on the stream, it was just as a coincidence. You said that you didn't think Carl had, you didn't trust that Carl had read um, anything from John Locke, and we just had a, a debate with him where he is. You was know, like, I personally <laughs> don't think he has. Okay, Even if well, he has, he, he drones hasn't. on about Locke all the time. What are you talking about? <laughs> I was gonna say, it's spiritually we, he has not read Locke. <laughs> okay, well, so you're saying he's read it, but he didn't understand it. Is that what you're saying? No, I'm saying spiritually, I don't think he can read. Do you know we organized the first? <laughs> I'm not sure what that means. <laughs> no, it's okay. Um, I I wouldn't bad. know. I don't I don't right. watch Carl. Um, I, I have had limited uh, exposure to Sargon, okay. and from Fair what enough. I had seen of him, it right. didn't seem like he uh he actually had read Locke, but right. um. Yeah, I just say it was funny because we, we admit like he, that he probably has right because we literally had this super long annoying debate with him where he's like arguing that you know uh, the principles of liberalism are inherently flawed and he's like citing John Locke's uh, treatises and all this other stuff. So yeah, he qu he literally yeah. quotes John Locke in that, but yeah, but it's fine. It's, fine. it's very fine. It was, just, it was a silly. Uh, <laughs> <that's> like, <laughs> No, no worries. I was just, yeah. I, I was also being hyperbolic at that point. Um, sure, sure. Um, I, I, sure. He's read luck. There you go. He's, He's read luck. There you go. Carl, you have in fact read luck. We, we organized the first right, debate we between, we organized the first debate between Vosh and Sargon of Akkad, Carl, Carl Benjamin. Yeah. I don't think I remember that. that. It was very yeah. historic. That was a while ago. It was, it was very was historic. Ago, yeah. yeah. I'm sure. So, I'm not yeah. sure it went very well, but uh, <laughs> I guess no, that's a story no, for another. No, the second day. one went a lot better. The second yes. one was a lot funnier. Yes, it did. I they. I think the second debate. Well, they did two more after that. 
And I think they kind of came to some resolution afterwards. But Carl is such a, like a a hot button topic on the left that I feel mm-hmm. like people like Vosh are kind of forced to denigrate him a lot. And and I mean a, a lot of people reflexively say that Carl is racist. I don't believe Carl is racist. I don't think he is. I mean, you may, you could probably make the argument like you were making earlier that you or would you make the argument that it's like an implicit racism thing? Like it, it's okay for Vos to accuse Carl of racism because of implicit racism. I um, yeah, oh, but like I said, I also don't think that like being told that something you did something you did was racist was like or a belief you hold is racist should constitute like a personal attack right mm-hmm. well but Vosh has gone on stream and called Carl a white nationalist though and Carl is not a white nationalist mm. so that's misinformation yeah no I uh, uh, I wouldn't recommend calling people things that they are not that, that- is a bad thing to do does mi- I I think misinformation encourages people to misrepresent you. I mean they they obviously yeah. I I try to avoid it for that reason. So, but it, anyway. it definitely makes people less charitable towards you, and they mm-hmm. just won't care. Well, so it, I, I I agree with that. If you're in a space where you're trying to build credibility for you know being able to see accurately in the truth, it definitely hurts you. But if you're in a space where mm-hmm. bashing your political rivals is how you're rewarded, then obviously truth truth takes right. a, takes a back seat to that so anyway hmm. yeah um i mean i mean if you're incentivized to do so it definitely is the case yeah enlightened <laughs> enlightened centrist is kind of our like jokey description most people mm-hmm. on the left describe us as right wing and most people on the right describe us as like left wing (laughs) so it's really yeah it's i mean i i don't really i would call myself a disaffected liberal i would say that i'm like an anti-woke liberal sitch sure Sure. what do you like um Mm -hmm. sorry no continue I was going to say, what do you, uh, what do you consider woke? But I, I think that might be too long of an explanation. <laughs> well, no, we, I and mean, I'd we really could... like to know what such his answer is. Okay. I don't want to be. Oh, I, no, I, I, I'll, I'll agree with Adam's conceptualization. That's basically how I feel too. Yeah. I, I, I think woke is okay. illiberal. I think woke is illiberal leftist or le- lefty leftist tends to mean socialist, but. Um, well, it's interesting because um, this is going to come up in our conversation uh, right after you leave because the person who's coming on is going to contend that wokeness is a neoliberal. I'm assuming they're going to contend that wokeness is a neoliberal Ooh, interesting. Uh, ideology, which to me is the exact opposite of how I conceptualize it. I, I think wokeness, I mean, obviously, historically, wokeness started as like primarily a term used by uh, Black Americans to describe like to be either awakened to threats or to be awakened to racial injustices. Mm -hmm. And I think it's sort of been somewhat hijacked or taken over to basically mean like, wake up to the fact that uh, liberal ideas and liberalism will not solve racial and gender inequalities and cannot solve these problems. That's kind of how I interpret it. Do you, mm-hmm. do you subscribe okay. to that belief or do you... um i guess it depends on like what you're defining the individual parts as like um oh, I just saw... what aspects of liberalism what well, i know uh, i just i just mean like what aspects of liberalism can't address uh racial inequalities and uh furthermore like mm-hmm. what would you do instead but um We're... if you're asking if that's like what i believe as like on a personal level I, I don't think so oh really interesting you so you think liberalism can solve problems 
is what you're saying. No, she said no. <laughs> Some aspects you, of it can. Okay. Are you, are you, I'm cl- I'm clear. Uh, are I'm you not, saying yes or no? Uh, we're defining liberal. I'm defining liberalism as 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 rights of the individual, uh, consent of the governed, equal equal protection under the law. Right. And yeah. Universal. Yeah. I definitely protection. think that like. Um, I definitely think that like uh, universal protection under the law and uh, certain aspects of like rights of the individual when they aren't um, impeding on uh, because then you have to go into like positive and negative positive, liberty. Yeah. I'm, for, I'm all for positive liberty. Mm-hmm. Like, like I would are, if if UBI would work. Are I would you totally or do you mean negative it. liberty? No, I'm for pos- I'm for positive. I I want the I want the state to like provide give you a car. And okay, shit. I, I mean, just wanted to clarify. <laughs> No, I, I uh, people most get most people a, are a little yeah. switched up. Yeah, most people don't want the state providing any kind of services beyond like policing yeah. and stuff like that. I think it takes mm-hmm. money to make money, and like in order to get everyone on equal footing, you kind of need. I mean, we sort of have this system already because if you know you have a great idea, you could go to a bank with that great idea and and borrow the money to start a business. So. I guess you're like a socialist, so we're you're probably not down with that kind of thinking. I mean, we we live in the system we live in. I I don't uh, try to talk about things from a hypothetical perspective. Right. I can say that like there are things we can do now, such like under the umbrella of positive liberty, like a, a welfare state is very good for um, helping with certain things. Um, definitely. Uh, leveling the playing field a little bit more so right. to speak but it it's not as good as it could be and i just want things to be better you know andrew clark <laughs> has already gone adam just admit he's a communist there you go <laughs> you got it. at some level i can't level, believe you finally came out if yep. the state if the, the state slipped adam if the state can step in and provide a, a platform for innovation and I'm, Adam, I'm how down dare you? The the state well, no, this, stepping in. This is the thing because they'll <laughs> they'll say, "Listen," and I hate this because listen, mm-hmm. you you I think you outed yourself as a communist or a socialist. Or, I don't know what you want to call yourself. I don't want to listen. I don't want to. I call myself you. a socialist, but like hypothetically, okay. I, I just okay. prefer to talk about hypothetical things in the present. As much yeah, as I'm like, okay. <laughs> as much uh, as we, I'm we here, we live in the system we live in, right? As much as I'm here complaining about people misrepresenting other people, I don't want to misrepresent you. So, but I appreciate it. Socialism for me is a mm-hmm. belief in the abolition of property rights, private property rights. Uh-huh. So, you know, you know, a lot of times conservatives, and this bugs the shit out of me, they'll say, you know, if you're in favor of universal health care, you're a socialist. You want to socialize medicine. And I mean, if the state is completely going to take over healthcare, then you've got an argument. But we're not in favor of that. Like I'm in favor of a public option, which is the state <laughs> basically competing against private industry. And I believe private industry will do better. But obviously, everyone will be provided a certain level of medical care, which I think is good. Mm-hmm. Um. I agree that like public options are are great from like uh, when you're talking about them abstractly, yes, but like in in actual execution, they tend to be underfunded, especially by people who don't want them, and then um, they'll use that underfunded uh, public option and be like, "See, it's so ineffective. Let's just get rid of it." Um, Right. Which is why people tend to advocate for universal health care yeah. in general. Medicare it's harder for all, to get rid of. Mm-hmm. Yes, well, I figured um, you'd probably be in favor of Medicare for, for all. I am. I, I uh, for the reason I stated, public options are um, harder to make effective and to keep around. I, I'm more concerned with like letting people have health care over time. Right than keeping around uh, the insurance industry, which has its own host of problems. Hi, Andromeda. Welcome so, back. Healthcare puts people to sleep, but you, <laughs> the wokeness, I think, really perks them up. Did you disagree with Sitch's 
definition of wokeness? It sounds it sounded like you might have a different. Uh, no, I, I thought um, I thought when I was being asked if I subscribed to it, if that was like something I personally believed, like that liberalism was completely ineffective in addressing certain aspects of racial inequality. Right. Um, but no, I, I agree. That's uh, that's an apt description of what I understand wokeness to be. Right. I don't know. It's kind of um, one of those nice. buzzwords now. Right. <laughs> so. It is. Yeah, totally. I wish I, I, there was another word so I could stop hey, using it. But stop that. Well, I mean, I'm it's just the way it works. Like, you know, social justice warrior, and then it became wokeness, and then we'll find something new because, you know, it doesn't we matter. Bored and want to move on. Right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, hot, hot phrases like that and buzzwords tend to be cycled through. Right. So, so before we call it quits, would mm -hmm. you like to denounce Vosh publicly on ours? <laughs> <laughs> just, uh, you I'm know what? I'm no, obvious, I don't think I will. But... Obviously, I'm kidding. Okay. He would be. All, well, I, I appreciate. He would be. I appreciate oh, the yeah. opportunity. Nothing. <laughs> nothing would get you in bigger trouble than denouncing publicly denouncing Vosh. There you go. I like it. Well, I mean, I, I, okay, yeah, fair. Um, I, I don't know if, uh, if that would get me in trouble though. You, I. You know? I'm. I mean, I think it might, but I don't know. Boss, like, I, I mean, if I use that to harass him or like to direct ha harassment you're towards right. him you're, or his community, I, yeah. I think it would. But you're totally right. You're totally right. If it was, if you made like a video doing that, he'd be upset. But if you did it here, he wouldn't care yeah. at all. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, I was do it with the intention. Yeah. Mm. This is. This is. Oh, that's. Well, one more thing. I. I know we keep yeah. tying up, but. You said something, and I, I'm so glad I remember this. On that stream, you said something about conservatives using comedy to like mask their true intentions. <laughs> Do you remember? No, this? I just meant more like not really. Um, oh, okay. I, I probably meant something more like um, using uh, just kind of joking about a thing that you sure, believe, sure. but like the the thing you believe isn't a joke. <laughs> Well, you know I, what I mean? I, well, I hope we've convinced you at least a little bit that that is happening on the left as well, just as much. I mean, oh, whole, well, yeah, of course. Yeah. So hopefully, you know, uh, we can work things out, get past this. Yeah, I, I just, I don't want anybody to um, be attacked based on their group membership. I just, in general, prefer people to be treated on an individual basis when you're having like individual interactions because that's how an inter individual interactions should you know carry themselves out mm -hmm. right do yeah. you this is completely unrelated to yes but uh yeah it's related to who we're going to talk to i think his argument is that essentially if you remove class elements from something that it's no longer definitionally marxist do you agree with that conceptualization um it's no longer I, hmm. that's interesting i guess it kind of depends because if you're just taking it from like a conflict theory perspective then no you don't need to include class in that but um okay if you're like talking about marxist economics then well, yeah, obviously. Yeah, sure. that, that, that would obviously require, like, descriptions of class, well, but like specifically, specifically, like... Okay, I'm I'm farming you for arguments to use against them, so I appreciate <laughs> this. No, because, like, because, um, you know, like, a uh, lot don't of, obviously... Me. <laughs> <laughs> obviously, with, like, wokeness, you know, a lot of it has nothing to do specific... I mean, obviously, there's an intersection of, of economic stuff, but, like, you know, CRT and a lot of gender theory stuff, like a lot of it doesn't specifically, isn't focused specifically on economic issues. And I would still say that these things are either Marxist or Marxist inspired fields, regardless of the fact that they don't, you know, if, if class is being replaced with race and you take the framework of Marxism, I would still say that it's fair to say it's a, it's Marxist, but. We, we have I don't know some... if you would describe it as like Marxist specifically, but like mm -hmm. definitely influenced by Marx maybe. Sure, sure. There's some super chats. CT 
did a real nice super chat. Uh, for CT Charlotte, so. wants to know where is CT? First of all, she wants to know if you gave your cat sausage. I she licked the sausage. Okay, she 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 wanted it until she licked it, and then she's like, I don't want this. <laughs> well, it's spicy sausage, so right. there you go. Uh, yeah. See, it was oh three questions. What's the cast name? What you said was Andromeda. Did you give her sausage? And you're doing a great job. Thanks for coming on. Well, there you go. Oh, thank you. Um. Uh, what do you define Gamergate as? Is another question. Gamergate, that was, um, well, it originally started with uh, the whole Zoe Quinn fiasco and mm-hmm. uh, her, her, her cute, little, cute little game. And then people were like, wow, you must have gotten your cute little game promoted because you're, what was it? Like her boyfriend was a journalist or something? No, the accusation was that she cheated on her boyfriend with a journalist. Okay, yeah, I don't know. Um, it, it was stupid to begin with, and mm-hmm. then like it kind of whole whole thing devolved. Uh, it started like encompassing a bunch of other people, um, and it, it kind of got lumped in with a growing like anti pop fam- feminism movement, um, which was just you know inevitably just like an anti feminism movement by the end, and then kind of like the skeptic community. And it, it all ended up happening at the same time. So these groups all overlapped. And I just re- refer to the entire thing as part of Gamergate. Because it's nice, one umbrella. You could refer to them all separately, but there was a lot of overlap and specific issues there within. There was like um, the ethics in gaming journalism discourse. That was nothing. Um, there, <laughs> then it kind of devolved into like, uh what's her name the the one lady that they all hate any sarkeesian yeah how do you know that so readily sitch i know I, listen if you want you can it wasn't use me that as long your, ago your gamergate source i'm very we can have a conversation about this later at some point if you want <laughs> sure I have, a lot of, I have a lot of thoughts on, on gamergate um yeah Lucifer, Lucifer gamergate the Doberman. Was, it's it's not fresh in my memory that's okay. the issue uh, Lucifer Dorbin wants to know if you're racist against ducks. Why ducks? No, I love ducks. You loved okay. <laughs> she said, said she's a dirty duck <laughs> lover. Okay. There you go. Ducks. I don't get win. it. It's a, just a stream. It's just a well, show okay. meme. Do you? I guess I can ask. I, I want to ask the three questions. Yeah, I'll don't ask. ask questions. Don't ask the I'll three ask the two questions. questions. The, the, the first question is: Do you think you could defeat a horse-sized duck in a fight? Oh, no. No? Okay. Yeah. I think I'm... the next one's a duck-sized horse. Well, I, no, that was not the next question. But you can answer that question. Could, oh. Do you think you could defeat a duck-sized horse in a fight? Oh, that's oh, yeah, easy. easily. Yeah. <laughs> Anyone could do that. Yeah. I mean, they'd be so small. They'd be, like, yeah. cat-sized. That'd be fun could to kick. You definitely could definitely kick yeah. one of those. Okay. Yeah. Do you think you could defeat a duck-sized lion? Oh, I don't know. Oh, isn't that just a cat? <laughs> yeah, oh, I guess it is. Like I a guess, house yeah. cat? Well, I yeah, guess it kind of is, yeah. Is that is it just the size? Is that just Are you a answer? duck-sized lion? Um, don't kick the cat. What about a I duck-sized like bear? A duck-sized bear? Definitely not. Uh, bears have, like, those long digging claws. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, like, they'd still have those. They're dull because they're for digging but right i i feel like that would still hurt okay okay and then they got the they got the sharp teeth the carnivores and all that nonsense am i the only out of all the people we've asked am i the only person yeah so far that it's kind thinks of looking that they can defeat way. a duck-sized horse yeah. i mean a yeah horse-sized no, duck, horse-sized duck yeah. right i don't think anyone else Huber. why do you Mahler think said. you could defeat a horse-sized yeah duck? i know that's the real they, question i would just kick its legs out they have those little thin legs they got those thin little would hollow be so bird legs, but the 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 legs would be thicker because like it's a horse sized duck. Yeah, but that's horses not... are huge. But it's still a duck, though. It'd be yeah, taller but like, than you. It's just proportionally the size of a. It's just if you upscale the duck to be the you know the height of a, a horse, basically. You know, no, I, I a saw horse. a horse the other day, and I mm-hmm. forgot how big horses are. Horses oh, are listen, huge. I don't think I could fight. I don't think I can defeat a horse in a fight. Okay. 
How about a Clydesdale a sized duck? It's a duck, though. I mean, it's like, come on. Right. What? Like, I it's get that duck. part. Come on. But what are we doing it's here? It's so big. It's a duck. What is it going to do? It's just, was it going to hit you with a little bite beak? you? I don't oh fucking know. Oh, my God. I punch it, it right it in the face. You. Okay. I'm not scared of no yeah, horse sized duck. What, yes. what are you going to do? Uh, Ducks have teeth. The hard yeah. part? Poke its eyes out. What do you mean? If it grabs I, I onto my arm. I think it might bite you before you can, like, well. Okay, so the thing is, ducks are very much prey animals. They got, like, the side eyes, right? Exactly. Like, so, so would they be even able to see you if you approach them from the front? Well, I'm assuming assuming it's, like if they were assuming it's attacking me first. Ah, okay. Uh, okay. I'm not hunting the duck, okay? I'm minding my own business, <laughs> and the horse-sized duck comes and attacks me. Right, and if it, if it tries to grapple with me, okay, if it grabs my wrist with its duck mouth, I think I could... I think I could gouge its eyes out in a fight That's to the fair. death. Maybe. I, I think if you're in a life or death situation, yeah. Okay. Hubris. Okay. <laughs> uh, the second question is, uh, are owls birds? Are owls birds? Yes. I'm if, not you a, have, if you have to think about it. Not an ornithologist, but yeah, <laughs> I, I, I believe they are. Okay, so good. That's people the are, correct answer. It's such an easy question. People are just it's stumped. It's because you're asking. It's almost like exactly. a trick question. Like, yeah, I exactly. Don't know. Right. Are owls of course birds? they are. I, I, I haven't researched ornithology. It's fun. No, no, no. no. It's it, it. That's what makes it a great question. Is that um, it it's like something like that question. seems so obvious, and it's like, why are you asking me this with no context? So it seems like a trick yeah, question, and I, makes I like people that. Yeah. question themselves. Yes. So yeah. there you go. They're Pretty beautiful, good. majestic birds. So there you go. Owls are birds. It's true. Okay. All right. I'm not asking the third question, guys. You Do you want to? Uh... What the fuck is the third question? It's a, it's Why... a question about your porno uh, pornographic habits. So I'll spare you that one. Okay. But... Well, I, I appreciate you sparing me. Yes. <laughs> so what are you gonna say, Adam? I don't know. I'm just trying to land the ship here. We got a bunch okay. of super chats to read. Right. Do you, if you want to come back on, I mean, we'd love to have you again. Absolutely, yeah. it was it was really nice talking with you both. Yeah. When are you? So you're off for the summer, and then you're back to school. Mm -hmm. All right. Let us know if you need any help yeah. with your survey questions. Sure, we would. I'd be curious to what my audience's um, survey answers would be. Yeah, and. Um, Ooh, uh, caffeine tweaker. Did you call her CT? Yeah, CT, CT. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I'll, I'll let her know if I, um, have anything else I need to reach out to you guys about. Um, and a special shout out because I, I really appreciate, um, getting brought on here. So cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. I don't know if you want to, you can, you cannot answer this if you want. Chad is like losing its mind here. Okay. They want me to ask you what a woman is. If you if you want to answer that question, if you don't. a woman is a chair. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were gonna say okay, because you're because you men used to sit on them. Is that it? So you have to carry the men's weight. Is that, yeah, is, is that, that what you're like... <laughs> Is that what you're saying? If, your implicit are you, is it what? Yeah. What are we? Does this mean? Um, does this mean men are doors? Because you can walk right through them. Just I don't a, understand. Just a path yeah. to achieve your own goals. Oh, <laughs> men! No, th men would be stairs then, not doors. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, sidewalks maybe, perhaps. There you go. Oh wow! Um, wow, this is better you know, than I thought it would know. be. There you go. A woman is a chair. I like. It's that's actually a really good woman. Answer. Woman is chair. Uh, mm -hmm. no. <laughs> A woman is whatever you want it to be, man. It doesn't fucking matter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't like the concept of gender. There you go. It is kind of a trick question these days. I I get that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyway, thanks for coming on. Yes, thanks for coming on. No, thanks for having me. Bye. Take care. Later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay, wait, wait. Okay. There you go. I asked the, the what is a woman. She gave a good answer. The chair. Yeah. That's a good answer. A very sexist answer, but still good. True, but a good answer. Okay. 
At least, uh, it, at least it wasn't a footstool, right? <laughs> uh, Carefree's going to be on in two 50 hours. minutes. Two hours. Yeah, seven o'clock, seven p.m. Oh man. Yeah. Okay. So let me read some super do chats. Enough, do we have enough time to get through all the super chats in that? Probably. Okay. Uh, should I start with today's, or do you want me to go back to start with Sunday's? I I feel like well, Sundays I feel like is appropriate. In case there are people that have been waiting all the way until okay. Sunday. Let me draw up a hot bath mm -hmm. of Super Chats. This is, uh, that was, that was good. That was fun. Did you see, um, I thought it was fun. I guess it's sort of related to the radicalization, uh, thing i put out a tweet that i thought was very funny there was um recently was this? It was an, yes it was in idaho i don't know someplace there's a pride rally and there was a bunch of like antifa people protesting and the then police a bunch arrested of 31 patriot front guys is that it? yes and the, okay. the patriot and there's a bunch of patriot front guys which is supposedly like a white nationalist organization i don't know much about them to to fight with that classification or not but apparently they arrested so they showed up and they arrested like 31 of these guys and to me it was so funny because there were so many like people that were basically doing like joyful backflips about the fact that they got arrested and i'm thinking this completely destroys the narrative that antifa puts forward that we live in a fascist society oh yeah of course it does <laughs> because it's like you literally have the police not arresting the supposed anti-fascist and then arresting the fascist and all the articles i don't know if this will you know change maybe the articles were, were bad but the original articles about this event made it seem like the police arrested them on nothing they just seem like it seemed like they just arrested them based on like a call and tip that they received from some person <laughs> so it's just like i don't know to me it was so it's just a weird thing that like we live in this weird it almost is like the uh, who's the who's the the signs of fascism, and and Bardo, Edward. What's the how do you say that guy's name? You know Lombardo? what I'm talking about? Edward Lombardo. I don't yes. Know. I'm just you know spitballing here. You know how he's like you know fascists classify their enemy as weak and strong at the same time. Right. Oh yeah. Right. It seems like that's like what the anti-fascists kind of do to the quote-unquote fascists because it's like. Oh, we live in this fascist society and we have this fear of fascism moving over ahead. And then we have like literally a group that's supposed to be fascist that Wikipedia claims is fascist is on their knees getting arrested by the police, the supposedly fascist police, and the anti fascist group is just filming it and laughing. Like it just I don't, it just feels like we live in this like topsy turvy yeah. clown world. The police arrest 31 Patriot Front guys, but not any of the Antifa people at the Pride Rally in Idaho. I mean, yes. when you're having Pride Rallies in Idaho, you know you've made some progress. <laughs> <It's> like, what <laughs> the true. fuck? Idaho? Umberto Echo, thank you. That's the guy's name. Idaho, Antifa, and... Idaho used to be really conservative. Right, right. Antifa and ACAB folks currently seething realizing that as the police protect them they yes. can no longer legitimately claim they live in a fascist country what yes. you think you think they care about legitimately that legitimately well, is doing a lot of heavy lifting listen, here it's a joke they're not actually seeing i'm saying like if they this thought is a about joke? it you know Yes. This is a they're not actually you, they're not how you, dare Antifa you. people Antifa people are not actually seething about this. They're happy about it. But I'm saying like if what they were you, being consistent with their core principles, they would be upset. What do you think you are? Some kind of comedian? What gives you I the said right? I tagged Ryan what? Uh, Long Comedy. I said he should make a sketch about this. What? Where or well, somebody else said this and I said this would be a good sketch for him. It was like he's pretending to be like the antifa guys that are upset that they're not getting arrested right <laughs> why can't you arrest me i'm right here <laughs> right, right. look you fascist pig mm -hmm. yeah that is pretty funny i know i know early on people were claiming and i think i think people have to be careful with this because 
like there was this tendency when this first happened for everyone to jump and say, oh, these guys are glowies. They're really undercover FBI Oh, I know. Agents. That's what everyone was saying. You know, yeah. all, they make all these claims. And then, like, the next day, they published all of their mugshots and identities. So it's just like, obviously, really? not a, Yes. Oh, wow. Okay. And all that, and all, you know, and all the Antifa people are just, like, broadcasting all their identities over Twitter and trying to get them fired from their jobs. No and, you know, all this other stuff. So I'm like, well, you like, like, guys, you guys, you know. You, you know, not they're obviously not undercover cops or whatever. So, why do they do that? What did they what? what did they do that got them arrested? I don't. It was as someone chat said. I think this was what well, the article I read. It said something like conspiracy to riot or something. It was oh, a very really? weird kind of nebulous charge. Which I'd be curious if there's any evidence of it, right? Or if it's like if it's literally just like someone from the Antifa protest called in and said there are spooky guys here and then they arrested them on that that would seem pretty crazy if that's the case one of the cops claimed that they had an informant i don't know what that means uh people interpreted that meaning that they had like a like a mole or something but <laughs> i don't know who knows yeah really. that isn't a, a mole <laughs> so did you read the statement by president donald j trump our nation uh, is <laughs> our nation is suffering in all caps oh our economy is in the gutter inflation is rampant uh, how gas they... prices have reached an all-time high mm -hmm. ships are unable to unload cargo families wait 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 wait, oh. wait 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 okay i have to i have to argue the chat why because well i don't i don't understand how people are still don't if all their the names chat. and identities and mug shots are released how are they still quote feds did they I mean, did they get like random people who were not uh protesting or not patriot front people and just put their names and identities there like how i'm just i'm curious to like the logistics of how this all works sitch your logic is impeccable <laughs> like i don't understand <laughs> i just want to know I just, how can I'm you just argue curious. with this i'm curious like so now some people are saying that maybe the feds planned it and that's a different that is a different claim, and maybe we'll see if that's the case. Because they're not real people. What does that mean? <laughs> they're like, they're, what are they? <laughs> they're CGI people? FBI. I don't, they're deep fakes? I don't understand. Assisting investigation of Patriot Front, the alleged, mm -hmm. alleged white nationalists accused of planning riot at Idaho Pride event. Okay. CBS News, obviously, super fucking woke. But they do have, I mean, they have the mugshots of that, all of them. Right. I don't know. Listen, my dad mm -hmm. works for the FBI, and he told me right. that he planned the operation. Oh, he did? And that out of the 31 people they arrested, only five of them were not federal agents. Okay. That's what my dad told me. So these guys anyway, were planning a riot. They have fake identities. What do you, so who? But who are the? They just released third. Wait. So did they? Who are the pictures of the people that they released? They just released thirty-one like fake pictures, like deep faked face pictures. Are just these made up pictures? Names. Like I don't. Are what, these what, pictures made up? They aren't really. I don't. I don't. I don't know what the argument is. That's what I'm saying. These aren't real people, huh? Apparent. I mean, according to to some people, they're fake identities. I don't. <laughs> well we'll see when those people all get canceled and have you know have their jobs lose their jobs if they're still fake people <laughs> yeah anyway we can move if on they're to doing what was... anything illegal i like right well that's the thing too they're probably not going to uh get into it but I'm gonna I'm gonna mock you if you listen. I, I do know. not think that you should be allowed to start riots, even at pride parades. Of course. Yeah. The question is, this is conspiracy to start a riot. That's kind of. Oh, so they didn't. That. They didn't actually. Don't you have to wait until the riot actually is underway before you? Uh, I guess not. I guess not. What if they change their minds? What if they're like, you know, this is not a great idea. Let's just mm -hmm. go get some Slurpees and go home. Sure. No. No, it doesn't matter. It's a conspiracy. Ouch. 
Anyway, what was the the Trump statement you wanted to read? No, I'm just curious if you read it. I did not. I don't even know what it's. Oh, it's about the January 6th hearing. It is. Yeah. No, I, tell me. A what bunch does it of. Say? I saw a bunch of left wing media complaining that it was 12 pages, and I thought. I mean, what's wrong with that? He's got like citations in here and shit. Mm-hmm. It, well, okay, cool. It's I basically was, a shock that Trump wrote something for twelve pages. I sure. mean, this might be. Well, I'm sure he had help writing it. <laughs> this might be mm-hmm. the 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 part of the report that the uh, Barr had. Who knows? Right, that'd be interesting. He's got it separated out. The sham investigation is a header. Stop the count. Ballot trafficking. He's got citations for the math. He's got a section on the math. He's got. But what mm-hmm. if there were more? Hold on. Does that not sound? Well, it's good. Like, I mean, if if he's if he's trying to give like evidence to those claims. Listen. Does this not sound? This is straight off a. Uh, straight off of what is it? QEV. <laughs> this is. What do you mean? What is a channel where they sell shit? QVC? <laughs> QVC. Oh, okay. Yeah. Is this not straight QVC? Page six. But what if there were more? <laughs> <laughs> but wait, there's more. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. But what if there was more? I'll, ha- oh, I'll read this if you want. I Define. mean, there's lots of citations. Stuff, no. So. I mean, you don't have to not, read I'm it. saying not read on stream. I mean, I'll read it. After stream, right? Zucker Bucks Zucker instead Bucks. of Zuck Bucks. Mark Zuckerberg contributed $419 million to election investi- uh, initi- initiatives around the country. Supposedly, the money was used to make elections safer as a result of the China virus. <laughs> Trump, mm-hmm. really? As a result of the China virus? <laughs> He's still he's still saying China virus. There you go. This is just I just I don't understand. You've already hit the building, okay? You can step <laughs> off the gas now. Well, I like that it says as a result of the China virus, parentheses COVID nineteen. Like in case you didn't know what he was talking. <laughs> I didn't know what he was referring when he said the China virus, I, I didn't know what he meant. I thought he meant like, you know, the influx of uh, martial arts movies or something. I don't know. I just. However, I, the money was not primarily used for China virus protection. I just. I feel like Trump. I feel like Trump got a lot of stuff done and could have mm-hmm. like fallen back on his accomplishments, but just the whole one-term president thing. He just saw, like, I bet somebody snuck into the Oval Office and like put up a picture of Jimmy Carter on the wall, and he was just like, ah. I'm Jimmy Carter now. He just couldn't. It just broke his brain. But see, this is going to be interesting. We're going to be in another historic time because we're going to have two back-to-back single-term presidents. Yeah, there's no way, no way Biden is winning. Yet. Right. Well, he's not running again, but I don't think. But, um, I mean, I think the last time we had this was right before the Great Depression, when when FDR, right before FDR was elected. So I pulled up the list here. Mm-hmm. I just wanted to have this on hand. One term president list. <laughs> so are are any of these back to back? John Adams, John Quincy Adams. Hold on, <laughs> John Adams and his son, John no, Quincy Adams. Both. It was were... like his nephew or something. Oh, okay. Martin Van Buren. No. I think Martin Van Buren died like two weeks into office. What, someone died like right after that, they got into office. I wasn't Martin Van Buren that died. James A. Polk. Is that the guy who died? Franklin uh, Pierce. James maybe. Buchanan. No, it wasn't, it wasn't. Rutherford B. Hayes. Benjamin Harris. Shortest. William presence. Taft. Herbert Hoover and Jimmy Carter were not back to back. Herbert uh, Harrison. Harrison's the guy that died 31 days. He got pneumonia. Harrison. Is he? Yeah. Oh, okay. Benjamin Harrison. Uh, Hoover, Herbert Hoover, Jimmy Carter, George H.W. Bush, and look. 
they didn't even have the decency to put the J in there. Mm -hmm. They just said Donald Trump. Who made this list? They put Herbert Walker Bush in there. Why didn't they put? Well, because they have to differentiate between him and, and oh, W. Oh, yeah, W, you're right. Never mind. So. Anyway, I guess they have to. That's why they did the Quincy Adams, too. Yeah, wasn't it? Was was Harding and, and Coolish not on that list? Are they not? Are they one term president? I thought they were. Maybe I maybe this list is wrong. I just got it off the internet, so who knows? Uh, they weren't. No, I'm wrong. I thought. No, Harding. Harding was a single term president. Uh, Coolidge. Oh, Keep, cool. Well, I think Coolidge only won one election. Was Hart? Did Harding leave? I don't know. Keep in mind, we need to get all the super chats done before no, he, seven. Harding so. died. I okay. Know, anyway, I know you get easily know. distracted. So I'm distracted by this. I never get shit. easily distracted. Whatever you brought up this topic. I'm on task. Well, I just yeah. brought it up because this is a January six is like the big story. We'll probably have to cover it on Sunday. The crappy robot for two pounds says help. I just finished. The U.S. version of The Office. What should I watch next? Obviously, you should watch Hunter Hunter. That's what you should watch next. It's all on Netflix, man. Hunter Hunter. Hunter Hunter. You didn't like it. Right, yeah. Because you were a bad person. But Terrible person. Yeah. Hunter Hunter. Um, it's a live action TV show I'd recommend. A live action TV show. Know, you could watch know. the new Love, Death, and Robots. is pretty cool. I feel like all the newer live action TV shows I that I've seen recently, I have not liked at all. Um, I'd watch Community if you have. If you want a comedy, if you haven't seen Community yet, then watch Community. I watched the first season of Better Call Saul. I could never really. It never grabbed me the way that um, that Breaking Bad did. I couldn't really get into it. So, if you haven't seen Breaking Bad, I'd recommend that. Uh, the Love Doctor sixty nine all day for five dollars says the betting markets give Trump a higher percentage of winning twenty twenty four than Biden right now. In case you're wondering how unpopular this administration is, yeah, that's not even remotely surprising. Oh, yeah. I'm assuming betting markets are based entirely on whatever the polls are and stuff. So, well, somebody has insider information and bets money based on that, which is the whole idea behind betting markets. Well, considering I don't, I think this is like, I think there's a little, I think there's a very low chance Trump will actually run again. I think there's a zero percent chance Biden will run again. Well, okay, like a zero point one percent chance. So yeah, I mean, I would agree with that. Obviously, it's more likely that Trump will win again than Biden. Biden is going to run. You really think Biden's going to run again? Yeah, they're going to work him like a puppet. That would be so disastrous if Biden runs again. Because he's going to get obliterated. And yes. Trump's gonna, and tr not only that, when Trump wins, he's going to go, I told you they stole it from me. <laughs> he is. Don't laugh. That's yeah. that's the reality. And then the... And then the the, the Democrats for four more years are going to cook up some Russia collusion thing and impeach him like five times. Mm -hmm. Our entire country is going to grind to a hole over this mm -hmm. nonsense. Okay. Uh, Dr. The Five Hour says, A team broke a rib trying to suck himself off and gets annoyed all of these hot singles in his area are so hard to contact. S class is a class. I broke a rib, huh? <laughs> that true? Just, Can you I, confirm I mean, At least tell me if it was worth it or not. <laughs> you on. tell us if it was worth it. Come on, that's obvious. That's fake news. Fake news. Uh -huh. Lies. Okay. Okay. Lies. Okay. God, these, this is getting worse. Uh, Kern for $10 says Republicans should go after the fact that the illegitimate election laws were passed via state Supreme Court. You can't do that. It has to be the state legislature. The voter fraud angle isn't helpful. 
I thought that's what I thought that's what most most of the cases were about. Well, that I guess you're saying it helped because it was yeah. right because it was the state supreme court. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I'd have to. Yeah, I mean, I would agree. Well, I think you you might be right. Like legally, that would be the route to go. Uh, emotionally, that's not really going to connect with people the way that you know claiming. You know, let the they got a bunch of fake ballots. Like that's going to have much like punchier emotional weight, I think, than the others. Even if the other stuff might be more legally persuasive. I agree with you in theory, though. Uh, Brain for five dollars says, "Has anyone ever seen Sam Cedar and Droopy Dog in the same room?" <laughs> I'm not unconvinced that Sam isn't a real life sad faced cartoon dog. I mean. It's true. I have never seen them in the same room. And Sam Cedar has voiced a cartoon character, so you could be on to something. Uh, Majin, for $5, says, am I the only one who thinks Sam Cedar is voiced by Charlie Day? Uh, who's that? I don't know. Oh, that's the guy from Always Sunny. Yeah, I could. I can see that. I can see that. Sam Cedar, what yes. a piece of work! Just so so desperate to get his name back in the spotlight. <laughs> I was there. I was on cable TV. Mm-hmm. I could have been mm-hmm. a contender. Mm-hmm. I could have been a contender. <laughs> yeah, that's totally his. That's his thing. That's There's his like three jam. people that know what movie you're referencing, <laughs> besides me. <laughs> What is what movie is that? Raging Bull, right? Raging Bull, yeah. yeah. Classic movie that's in I've black and white that. for no reason. I've seen that movie. Yes. Could have been a cat tender. Yeah. What's up, little wormy? Uh, Brain for five dollars says those kids were running after the shooter just like Kyle. I don't see the problem. I heard they they're all sex offenders, probably Biden voters. <laughs> But what were, what were we talking about? Those kids are running after the shit. It's not their job. The kids that were chasing Kyle Rittenhouse. The kids trying to apprehend. I said those Kyle kids were running after the shooter, just like Kyle. He's not talking about Kyle. Or maybe it's I don't know. I agree. Whatever you're saying, I'm agreeing. Just like no, they're saying, they're they're making the same argument I was making about how. It's ha! People are saying it's jobs. not from. The Raging Bulls from On the Waterfront. Oh, you're correct. You're completely correct. I'm oh. the idiot. And so is Adam. On the Waterfront is... Yes, it's from On the Waterfront. Yeah, who's Marlon Brando, right? Marlon, yes. There you go. Come on. I got confused. They're both in black and white. So I know my merged art. merged in my mind. I know my art house movies. Yes. There you go. You like Jim Jarmusch movies? Uh, I don't know who that is. Jim Jarmusch movies are great. So I mean, some of them are overrated, but Jim Jarmusch. I haven't seen any of these movies. I've never even heard of any of these movies. I I'm gonna say that they're all bad. That's Jim Jarmusch. Saying. When I lived yes. in New York City. New York okay. City. There was it's a place that would show. Hoity toity. Art house indie asshole. There was a you place. You filmed you, Jim Jarmusch. This was pre-social media, guys. So yeah. we couldn't all sit around on our phones. We had to actually do stuff in the real world. Uh-huh. And there was a place called Ocularis that showed movies in, I guess, like strange places. They set up a like a movie theater on the rooftop in Manhattan. And we watched a Jim Jarmusch movie. It was really fun. I, I'm trying to look up which movie it was, though. This is an this is a riveting tale mm-hmm. of Jim Jarmusch's. There was a lot of a lot of really attractive single women at this at this uh, movie showing. Hey, which, that's the, which all was a, Adam's motivation. Great in reason life. to be there. Before getting married was literally just a fuck. Like I've never met anyone who was so single mindedly focused and fixated. This is on. the difference between my generation and your generation. I just I don't understand it. I really don't. 
<laughs> the difference Why is that your generation all... were all like NPC robots who literally just want like yes. they only could fuck. They had no other motivation yes. in their time. Yes. When we sat around, all we would oh think all, it was all a strategy session on how we were gonna get Oh girl. my god, this is how so we, lame. How we were gonna get girlfriends and see look, maybe this is people like to fixate on the bad parts of internet porn. Maybe there's a good part. Maybe it allows men to think of other things in life. Oh, really? <laughs> and be motivated by other pursuits other than just like fucking uh, yeah, yeah. <gasps> Jesus. I, Down by Law, that's the movie. Down by Law was a movie that I saw. <laughs> it's called by Law. What's I'm not that? saying people should go out there looking to like fuck or to have a relationship, but just like like f like every story Adam starts with is like, well, we were looking for poo for for booty. It's like, geez. Did you did you know that in New York City the the like women to men ratio is way out of whack. Mm -hmm. like Which direction? Women. It's like sixty five really? percent women to like thirty five. In New York City? Men. Yeah. Why when, is I, it? when I was there, I don't know. It could oh, be different okay. now, but I yeah. Why that was. yeah. Yeah. I was like, Whoa. Well then that's awesome. Yeah. You're in a, <laughs> totally. You're in a buyer's market. <laughs> women yeah, women were like desperate for boyfriends. They were like Yeah, yeah. Got to get one before my friend sees him. <laughs> He's mine. Stay away. There you go. You got to listen. This That's one's what... mine. If if they're if they're in so there, just check just check the men to women ratio per city and find out where your best odds. This oh, <laughs> the... it, I mean, playing the numbers. Come on. There you go. Play the numbers. You got to know what works, right? Mm-hmm. Right. Why would you want to be a woman in that city? Well, uh, this is the thing because New York City, no. all the women mm -hmm. there were like, like had good high paying jobs and were, like totally had their shit together. Like they literally moved to New York City because they had their shit together. Mm -hmm. And most of the guys are like bar flies. <laughs> <laughs> I think this, I think this more just speaks to your personal, uh, friend circle i don't know if you want to like maybe i mean it could to... it could oh, man, i mean no. maybe there was well you I, listen i went i moved to new york city because i want i fancied myself an artist i wanted to be an artist right. and i was looking for pleasure. for the exact wrong reason yes exactly right so i guess yeah the circle was i was hanging out with the like the film people and the movie people and the and the right. art art people yeah yeah the soho people yeah. yeah, the loot. I mean, yeah, the, the artist. Ah, oh, so bad. <laughs> so bad. I mean, there is a there is a grain of truth to that. There really is. I'm kid. I'm just teasing. <laughs> I mean, if that if if my motivation was really just to climb the success ladder, I've said I've fucked up a lot of really you yes right. opportun a lot of opportunities that. But you know, sure, happiness sure. down by law uh, is an interesting movie, though. You should see it. Okay, it's got the guy who did Life is Beautiful in it. What is his name? He got super oh, famous over Life is Beautiful. Guy. Yeah, I've seen that. Bern I see that. Roberto Benini, Roberto Benini. Yeah, you've seen Life is Beautiful, right? Yes, that's a very sad movie. That's don't, the the Holocaust movie, right? Don't go on a date. Don't take a it. Don't, no, it is a Holocaust movie. Yeah, don't go on a date to see Life Is Beautiful because your girlfriend, the girl, will probably never talk to you again. That's the one where the guy's like in the concentration camp with his kid, and he's like pretending that like everything's not awful. Yeah, yeah. And he convinces his kid that it's like a, well, a I nice think they, place. He to like be. dies in the end. I think he, he does die. It's really dark because he <laughs> it's like fucking dark as fuck. He like happily walks off to be killed, right? Just so his son doesn't realize like that he's gonna die. And then right, and it's like right as the allies basically free. I know they, uh, they slap camp, you in yeah. the. Not only is it the yes. the most fucked up thing in the world, they slap you in the face with like, oh, he could have lived. If he just held out a little longer. Yeah, yeah. Yep. 
Well, I mean, I, I never, I didn't, because it's not supposed to be like a literal, like, it's not like a literal, like, the, it shouldn't be interpreted like literally the next second. It's more like, it makes sense with the, like, the metaphor of the story because, or the theme of the story, because the, the kid had to immediately be rescued. Otherwise, he would know that his dad died. Yeah. That his dad died in the horrors of the concentration yeah. camps and all that stuff. So they couldn't have just rescued him and the kid. And we could have added, like, I'm all for happy endings. I mean, they could, but it wouldn't. I mean, yeah, it would have been a much happier ending. I mean, I like so happy dramatic. endings. Well, it's Look, a story if, about the Holocaust. So if, Tar- <laughs> if Tarantino remade that movie, mm-hmm. Team America would have parachuted in at the end and fucking killed all those Nazis. In front and rest- of the kid. And then it turns out and that rescued Team America, all of them. America no. ends up traumatizing the kid who somehow <laughs> no, no, did no. not get traumatized Listen, by here's, the Here's Here's the Tarantino ending. <laughs> yeah, like, that would be funny. <laughs> They throw the kid a machine gun, and the machine, gun, and the kid helps mow down the Nazis. I like better that like America parachutes in and kills all the Nazis, and that is what traumatizes the child. <laughs> like his father shields him from the horrors of the Nazis, right, and then, but he still then gets... him being saved is what ruins. <laughs> but he still gets fucked up. Yes, uh, that is yeah. No, I guess. I mean, that's you're a comedic right. ending. It is, is a comedy. Comedic, that is yeah. a comedic ending. Yeah. <laughs> He's like completely like a basket case. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, no. I like it. There you go. Uh, Ronaldo Ramirez for five dollars says, I heard it wasn't an off duty guy, it was two officers, one with a shield and, and it went in after being told to wait longer. I thought it was I thought it was a border patrol guy. I don't know if he's off duty or not, but I thought it was a border patrol guy. But I'm not. I'm not 100 percent sure. I know they were told to. I I heard that that the police chief still didn't want them to go in when they eventually went in. So. This was the, is it Uvalde or something? Yeah, the school shooting. Ouch. Uh, Kano for five hours says Sitch quote, with your cute anime girl avatar, Alstofo quote, you've activated my trap card. Got him. Uh, Goro Cero for ten dollars says last Tuesday Trump using plurals could also be signaling to Omar. Oh, this is the uh, the, uh, the congresswomen tweet. need to go yeah. back to their country thing. Okay, uh, Trump using plurals could also be signaling to Omar without using her name. Uh, I, um, I.e. You got to love with enlightened centrists have TDS. But yes, bad move. Number 45, women have no rights in Somalia. I don't, I mean, I, I get, I understand what you're saying. I really don't think, I think he was referring to the squad as a whole. So I didn't, I did not interpret it that way, but fair enough. We argued over that for a good we like did. an hour or two, which was right, great. Right. You got triggered. I got, well, no, I didn't get, I don't get triggered anymore. I there forgot you go. to tell Adam you that. never gets triggered. That's my new leaf. It's good. Uh, v Radio for $5. Hey, V Radio says, Rittenhouse Talk put me in, coach. Oh, sorry. I didn't see this. <laughs> yeah, I didn't see this on Sunday. What's that? V Radio wanted to come on. I didn't see this until oh. right now. Sorry. Uh, Brain for ten dollars says, "Let's all wait for Sam to talk about self-appointed violent marauding brigades burning down communities while hunting down possible Republicans in a vapid Caddyshack Caddyshack gopher hunt to keep the grass green." There you go. I love that movie. Someone was making fun of my movie takes in the comments, saying that I'm showing about my what? age. Because you like boomer movies? Caddyshack is ancient, though. It is, but it's funny. Well, I mean, I'll be honest, I haven't seen it since I was a wee lad, so. Isn't Caddyshack... It's got... Oh, who who's Bill the Bill Murray's guy? the guy chasing the gopher. Yeah, but who is the guy? Who Rodney Dangerfield is in Rodney Dangerfield's yeah. in Caddyshack, I he's, think, yeah. He's like the rich guy. Yeah, he always plays the rich guy, which is funny because he was never rich. You know, he always played like the rich, like, You're asshole. Right. yeah. Yeah, Ronnie Angel is great. The they that movie that they did with him, Back to School, was kind of a Caddyshack sequel because he played kind of the same character in it. I thought he he played the same character a lot. Yeah, he in got a lot of movies cast. like that because it was so good. Yeah, because it was so good. Um, oh, I, I saw not recently, 
I saw as an adult, I'd never seen it before. I saw stripes, yeah. which like every older person is like, you guys see stripes. It's so funny. It's just a funny Bill Murray movie. And I saw us. So I'm like, not only is this movie it's not, not funny, good. Yeah. but Bill Murray is like a piece of shit. Like, I don't even like, I don't know why we're supposed to be rooting for him. Right. Like he's totally an asshole in that movie. Yeah. And he's just literally wrong in most, like in almost the entire movie. Yeah. It was really weird. He's that's the anti hero. Yeah, but usually the anti hero you agree with. Like, I guess it's it came out of a time where people were just so anti military, so anti authority like authority figures. Because mm-hmm. of that Vietnam. they Because like, of Vietnam, yeah. That's so they're just like, Yeah, stick it to the stripes if you don't know is about Bill Murray, he's like a young guy who I forget why he sort of accidentally gets enlisted in the military. Mm-hmm. And he's just like a total asshole to like all, all the military officers. But, yeah. Uh, Mutant Banhammer for five dollars says, "Sitch, you better make that StarCraft Two video thing. You better make it a video. Make the video, Sitch. Stop neglecting your channel. <laughs> your channel's basically dead, right? I mean, I know, it's sad." My channel's uh, kind of dead too. I, mm-hmm, every mm-hmm. once in a while, I'm like, I, I should at least like jump on here and do a stream or something. Imagine I could make I could make a StarCraft two video that no one will care about. Sure, you know it's been so long. I have strong thoughts about it, strong feelings about it. Who cares? I should just jump in, right? Uh, Joe with Mig for five dollars says the Rittenhouse case was really just the friends we made along the way. There you go. For us, yeah. For us. for Kyle, it was a little, I'm sure, a nightmare, but it's a little harrowing. Uh, Alex Cares for ten dollars says, Adam, I just bought some manted egg cases in order to thin out the lantern fly population. Do you have any advice on how to make the mantids dance to <laughs> to original <laughs> gangster hip hop? I don't. I don't. Yeah, mantids are good. They are good natural insecticides, but those Chinese, you probably have Chinese mantises if you're in America, which the Chinese mantises actually were brought over from China as a form of pesticide, but it never really worked because they're cannibals and they eat each other. So they don't really form a a good population to deal with the insects. Do they, they grab the insects out of the air? How does it, what happens? Yeah, they eat bugs. So you put them in your garden. They catch them out of the air. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. They sit well, very you, if you, still. If you put them they... in your garden, wouldn't they like? Don't they just walk away? Like, or do they stay there? No, they hang out. Oh, okay. But the thing is, so the egg cases, you get like maybe a hundred and fifty mantids will come out of those things. But the baby mantids, they're as cute as can be. They're like little ants. They will end up eating each other if they can't find food to eat. And by the end of the process, you have like two mantids in your yard. And the bugs, it's just two mantids can't eat a lot of bugs. So, yeah. Very fun. Sitch. <laughs> Sitch is like, Adam can talk That's about it. That's very exciting. <laughs> So it's I'm, like, so riv- I'm riveted. Adam can talk about mantids for a good 30, 40. I can. Have you seen my video about the spiny flower mantid? I have, yes. So I'll Very bring exciting. it up for you. Let's watch it again. Let's not watch it again. Uh, Satoshi was a reptilioid for 200. Knock Knock says, shut your filthy mouth, sitch. I only watch the stream because of the comedy. Oh yeah. I why would go. you do that? You totally demoralized yes. everyone when you were like crapping on our show. <laughs> uh Pincolo, the driving eight for two Canadian says, embrace your heritage, sitch, accept the inevitable. The inevitable cam oh, I see the Jewish comedian. Okay. I gotcha. I gotcha. Are there a lot of Jewish comedians? I don't really know. There's a fuck ton of Jewish comedians, yes. Is there? Yep. There's Woody Allen. And that's it. And that's it. <laughs> Who that's else it. is there? That's it. There's no others. They just don't exist. Who else is there? What do you mean? It's like a million Jewish comedians, stand up comedians. Is there Lenny Bruce? Was he Jewish? Jewish stand up 
Can oh, there's so many that you have to look it up on the internet. I'm okay. You're making my okay. point here. Here you go. Seinfeld. There we go. Jerry Seinfeld. Yep. Is Jerry Seinfeld Jewish? Is this, are you joking? Whoopi Goldberg is not Jewish. Whoopi Goldberg is not Jewish. Seinfeld is Jewish, yes. I thought Whoopi, Whoopi, wasn't there a big controversy about Whoopi Goldberg trying to be fake Jewish? No, I don't think so. Uh, Sarah Larry, Silverman, okay. Sarah Silverman, Mel Brooks, Seth Rogen, oh, Albert yeah. Books, George Burns, Gary Shadling, John oh, Rivers, Albert Charles Stern, John Stewart, Larry David, Billy Crystal. Do you like Lewis Black, one of my favorite. Do you like defending your life? That movie is fantastic. That movie is the best. I love that right. movie. Right. Yeah. I would recommend that movie. Was him. Defending Your Life's awesome. It's a, uh, it's a uh, Albert Brooks dies. Yeah. And he goes to the afterlife. Right. And he has to watch. Basically, he has to get into a court case with angels about whether he deserves to, to go to heaven. <laughs> well, not to go to heaven. To move on to some sort of new experience like the next step of life or is he going to get sent like reincarnated and sent back to earth to like do better? Huh? And, uh, it's pretty interesting. I'm a, it's very funny too. It is very funny. Yeah. Uh, Ben Stiller, the Marx brothers, Don Rickles, Adam Sandler, mm -hmm. Jonah oh, Adam Hill, Sandler. Sasha Bear Cohen, Andy Samberg, Bette oh, uh, Midler. Man. That Andy Samberg movie. What is it? Which one? Oh, it's so good. Where David is... Cross, Jack Where he's Black. Like the, he's the the bi the bicycle guy. What movie? Gilbert is Gottfried. Damn. There's a bunch of Jewish comedians out there. Andy Samberg. Watch the That's the real JQ. Me. Why are there so many Jewish comedians? There you go. Uh, Miss from six for 500 knock knock says you have to keep the comedy show in because otherwise it'd have to take Adam's MMT take seriously. Oh, burn. How dare you destroy. I can't. Some people like the MMT. Read the good it, super chat. Miss from six is a, uh, he's the true comedian here. Oh my God. The roast of Adam Friendin. Hot Rod, that's it. Damn, you guys are better than me. I never saw that movie. What? 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 You have to see Hot Rod. What? Hot okay. Rod is amazing. Hot Rod Chappelle, is amazing. Chappelle, another Jewish comedian. <laughs> uh -huh. uh, Kyle King for five Canadian says, regarding actual malice for Sam Cedar, you have to either knowingly lie or fail to follow your typical standards for research. Do they even have standards? <laughs> oh, my God. Probably um, not. Probably not. Uh, Chitachi for $5 says, BLM r rallies are like baptismal fountains. Come on down and have your sins expunged. That's true. Yeah. That's true. Of course. Very religious. The, you know, and it's, it's, it's nice that the, it's kind of the term woke because the term woke and even, um, mm -hmm. carefree wandering says this, it has very strong religious, uh, overtones, like to be reborn, to be awakened to like the truth. And he calls wokeness a civil religion. And I think he's completely correct. A hundred percent. It is a civil religion. So I assume you agree with that too. A civil religion, wokeness. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. An uncivil religion. <laughs> uh, Pinkalo the Driving Eight for Duke Canadian says the movie that's like Top Gun but with A6s is called Flight of the Intruder. Well, there you go. I've never never seen that one. I saw Flight of the Navigator, but that's about aliens and time travel. Which one? Flight of the Navigator? Yes. I don't remember that. I think there are Muppets in it, so you probably wouldn't like it. Madge is complaining that I didn't bring up his degenerate art. So Which one? This Sitch is the stream over yet. Art boy. Yeah. There you go. That's pretty degenerate. It definitely does. Look at like them. Look at them short th short shorts and them thighs. And like God. a club foot. 
What other stuff do we have here? You look like Beast Boy in that picture. Well, this is... Yes. Oh, I brought up another one. Mommy, I know who I'd vote for. I guess it's like a bulging Trump. Uh, oh, this is another picture? Yeah, I brought it up. I bring up the stream so I can actually see it. Just for you. Is there a bunch? Is that more? supposed to be um? Who is that? Senator? Is that supposed to be Senator Armstrong? Who am I looking at? Majin. Who that? Who that? Majin. The animal really wants us to show that degenerate meme. -y thing. The animal? No. <laughs> Listen. Make some wholesome memes. Uh, yeah, make some wholesome memes, animal. Okay. So, um, what do you think? Did you figure it out? Is it Trump? I don't know. I was waiting for Majin to say in the chat. Oh. It's a bad render of Bush. Oh, okay. George H.W. Bush or George W. Bush? It looks like W. Bush. It does look. Oh, no, it's H. It's Oh, I get it. It's be I understand. I, I'm, the chat understood my own life better than I did. Right. Okay? This is me as five-year-old Sitch seeing the sky writing of right. bush in the sky and telling my mom i wanted to vote for bush now i wanted them to vote for bush because right. uh, <laughs> there you go there you go that's exactly it that's exactly it you should yep yeah i don't think i was voting in that election <laughs> hey sammy g sammy g for ten dollars Says, I want you two to know I showed that Postmates bottom nutrition ad to a coworker since we work health. And then I had to explain to them what bottoming is <laughs> and why I know too much. <laughs> I know I do art and that is why. Sure. Sure, Sam. Sure. All right. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Okay. Sure. Wink, wink. Okay. Yeah, I guess. Uh, you do you for two dollars says uh, white communist is Sam's burner account. There you go. I believe that. When can we have that. Sam on the show again? No, no, no. Sam Cedar. Not no, Sam. Sammy G. Oh, yeah. When it, well, maybe when uh, she's doing, she's hard at work trying to get all the uh, the plushies. Oh yeah. Uh, sent down. So she can't come on until she's done. Well, once she's done, maybe she'll come on the show again. Yeah, it'll be she great. She came on once and it got we lost. We can talk about health and you cannot delete the VOD. It got lost forever, yes. yeah. Maybe if we are if we bring her on the show and we're nice to her, she won't, you know... Draw degenerate tro art? ...troll us with her artwork any longer. Uh-huh. We'll I feel we'll like, win that's her not, over. like that's never going to happen. Yeah. We'll win her over. We'll win... Uh -huh. We can win her heart. Uh-huh. And then she won't be mean to us. Yeah, but we're but we're at a crossroads because I want her to keep drawing degenerate art, and oh, you okay. don't. So I guess you're right. <laughs> hmm. Well, if she comes on and and it's and everything's cool, maybe she'll just do degenerate art of you and wholesome art of me. It'll be no, like, no, no. I want her to do degenerate art of you. <laughs> <laughs> it's a. It'll be a contrast. Uh huh. It'll be just you. That's not fun. Yeah. That's not fun. The fact that you don't like it is what makes it fun. <laughs> okay. I know. It, it's true. I get it. I do. I should just like it. I should just pull a reverse psychology on you and go, oh, yeah, this is amazing. It's too late. It's too Thank late. you. Uh, Sammy says the degenerate art is already all sketched out, though. I just have to finish it. <laughs> <laughs> bad news, Adam. Oh, damn it. Sorry. Sorry. Ready to go. I thought I was going to get a... I thought I was gonna get off scot free this month. What is this? Do you want to talk about this tweet while I go to the bathroom? The tweet? Or do you want to read a super chat while I go to the bathroom? What do you want I to can, do? I can talk about the tweet. Okay, go talk about. The I tweet. mean, I'm gonna bring the tweet up when I brought it up because when carefree wandering comes on, mm -hmm. Hans, go get out of here, punk. I'm going. Get gone. Bzz. Out of I'm here. waiting for you. I'm waiting for you to. Sit. You're gonna start smack talking me as soon as I leave. So like, <laughs> of course. I'm gonna listen. I'm listening to the stream on my phone as I okay. go. Okay. So. 
So this art piece of artwork was done by Richard Conley. This amazing piece of art is... This is Kyle Rittenhouse with his JoJo stand. <laughs> and his JoJo stand is obviously... Can I say... Can I say... Assault rifle, or do I get in trouble for that? Is assault rifle the thing that I'm not allowed to say? If it's a fictitious assault rifle character, is that okay? So this is the assault rifle character with a head and arms as assault rifles. And Kyle Rittenhouse doesn't... Look, he doesn't even have to do anything. The stand just comes out and does it all. Kyle Rittenhouse is the pedo bait. <laughs> For the stand. Oh, damn. That's funny. All right. Let me see if I can get a super chat up here. I think I saw some super chats come in. So I guess Sammy G, we've already read the $10 one. Investigator One Quim for $5. Hey, did you guys see iDubs appeared on Hassan's stream? I think he, I think he going woke. You know, I did see a screenshot of that and somebody was calling him a sellout. That might have been you, Investigator One Quim, since I follow you on Twitter. So, yeah, I yeah, I don't know. I mean, wasn't he trending woke already? I mean, what is woke? I guess woke is socialist. Inve I'll wait for Sitch to investigate one clip for $50, but I'll wait for Sitch to come back. That's a nice, very generous super chat there. Uh, Jaeger for $2 says, just watch Sitch, uh, just watch Sitch to say a team reign super. <laughs> I guess we got to let Sitch read that one. Damn. Lucifer the Doberman for five Canadians says, Terrible cops don't empty pockets and remove masks before anything else. Is that on the Fed thing? I'm not sure. Jack of all, uh, Jack of X spades. Uh, I guess it's just Jack of spades. For $2 says, Adam, check your mentions for a Marty Robinson. Robbins meme. Who's Marty Robbins? Check my mentions. Okay. I'll check. Let's see here. Matrix 07012 for 100 Kazarkazarks. I don't know if it really is Kazarkazarks, but I'm going with that. The anti radicalizer researcher makes the argument and talking points of radicals funny. Yeah, I mean, there. Were, she, I feel like she did admit that there were radicals on the left as well, but we didn't really get into yeah. that. I was yeah. gonna. If, I was gonna. I was thinking about asking if she considered the people that did the Chaz as radical, but mm -hmm. I'm not sure where that would be useful. So I, I'm. I'm almost done. There's just Jaeger for two dollars. You got to read that super chat. Is this from today or yesterday? Or oh, something? you're on the old ones? Okay, never mind. I was reading from the new ones. Uh, I'm not reading that. <laughs> Why? I ain't reading that. You read that. It's I can't read it. addressed to you, Boyle. I can't read it. Yeah. Okay, I'll read it if you want. Do you really okay. want me to read it? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Jaeger for $2 says, uh, just watch uh, Sitch to say, 18... Rain Supreme. Come on, it sounds like you're constipated. There you go. Say it there was it is. Some, I read it. Say it was some gusto. I read it. Okay, I'll read it with gusto. Ready? Mm-hmm. Uh, team Rain Supreme. Mm. Is that better? <laughs> is that your interior decorator voice? That is. That's my retard voice. <laughs> okay. I don't know. How so. dare you? You're such a bigot. Why? I like interior God. decorators. Okay. Okay. I think they're a valuable member of our valuable members of our society. Mm-hmm. 
What is this? What is Lucifer the Doberman for five Canadians said terrible cops don't empty pockets and remove masks before anything else? You're talking about the um the uh the the Patriot Front guys. Part, right. So part of the argument that, that people were making to say that they were really secret mm-hmm. police was the fact that they didn't remove uh their masks until after I think they didn't remove their masks until they started putting them individually in the cop cars or something. So, well, they had a bunch of them to deal with. So, right. Yeah. I, I don't know what the protocol is. I would assume the protocol first to be, if there's like 30 people to just get them all handcuffed immediately. Um, I don't know if they don't want to empty their pockets. I mean, I'm assuming they search to make sure they have weapons. I don't know if they want to start emptying their pockets and their masks because since there's so many people that, Right, you know they're gonna lose their belongings and shit. I have no clue. I don't know anything about police protocol. Just mace them all. There you go. Just mace them. Perfect. Investigator. I mean, it looked one. like look, it looked like they were all complying. So I don't know if yeah. that was the issue. But investigator one quim for fifty dollars. Thank you so much. That's so generous. Question for you guys today: Is cis a slur? Personally, I believe it is because the vast majority of the time. I see it being, I see it being being used as a slur. The vast majority of the time I see it being used is as a slur. Right. Also, great interview, but I think the Thank girl you. is is whole in the bubble, mm-hmm. and her study will reflect that. Well, I mean, obviously these things take time, but I mean, part of the reason of talking to her is to kind of, you know, make that perspective evident right and i mean i i've said this a bunch of times it's just when you're if you're going if you're like studying sociology to be an activist i just think you're going to be a bad sociologist and i really do think we need good sociologists i think that's part of the problem so right yeah uh yeah i agree completely. Uh, i think you can have activism though just outside of your work well, it's difficult. It's difficult because it's always going to be reflected. Um, Don't you think you know, it was good to get her to to say that she doesn't think all conservatives are racist? I mean, good, I guess yeah. she kind of said they are unconsciously. Or that they promote policies that are, in fact, racist, which, I mean, I don't see how you make the right. distinction between. Well, it came, it, yeah, I mean, the, the bootstraps thing, I think, was a good a good avenue of like, I mean, this is a pretty core conception of conservative ideology and thought, And, um, if it's applied universal yeah, to I people, know. regardless of their race, I mean, to me, I don't think that should be classified as, uh, racist. And I don't, I mean, this is part of the, I think the, the issue is I don't think that someone denying or, you know, regardless of how you want to, to talk about it whether they're denying or ignorant or they don't care about like some idea of, of someone's systemic or even personal history i don't think that that makes someone racist yeah and i, I, I don't think that the term racist should be broadened out to that to include that at all but totally agree cis as a slur i uh, mm-hmm. i don't think it is a slur but well it didn't start as a slur um, but I agree that I see it almost not exclusively, but more, most often when I see it, it is used as a slur, right? Or not as a slur, but well, it's isn't like scum a, like the slur part. Cis scum. Well, I see it more, not like as a slur, but more as like a, this is how I dismiss your opinion. Right. Like you're a cis white male. Like, you know, you don't have an, you, basically the argument is like, you don't, have any intersectional uh, oppression groups so therefore you're invalid but see that's part of why i that's how i don't see how you could say that intersectionality is an, is a anything but de-individuating because that's why you say oh you're a cis white male it's like you are not an individual you are this collection of intersectional identities and because of that i can either dismiss your opinion or pay attention to you yeah so I think there is uh, some utility to the word cis though, but I do not like it being used right. as a slur, obviously. Right. 
Yeah, no, I agree. Um, so like, bro. Uh, Automata for five dollars says, "Hey, Rosenbaum was one kid away from having six on his punch card, which would have gotten him a free six-inch Subway sub straight from Jared." That was the oh, real wow. tragedy. Wow. <laughs> wow. There you go. Oh, that's bad. Uh, contrast for two Aussie bucks says Sam Cedar is a PDF file. There you go. That's true. Uh, Lieutenant Havoc 62 fight hours says Adam, the MMT is the comedy. <laughs> okay. There sure. you go. Breaking my heart. Uh, Judge make for fight hours says YouTube is literally preventing me from super chatting a joke about Sam being a grummer. Groomer. Groomer. Oh, okay. Don't and you know? Sitch DMing me about knowing that Sam is a pedo. There you go. There you go. Listen. 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 Don't drop the DMs. Okay. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's uh, good. JMac for fifty dollars says, "If we're playing the game of self-identification, yes. then I wholly mm-hmm. reject the identity of cis. It's similar to neurodivergent and serves no purpose other than political." Yeah. Well, it's just it's just because they they want another word. They want a word to refer to non-trans people that isn't like normal. <laughs> Yeah, I know. <laughs> they say that that's, that's what they're trying to avoid. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm not, I'm not opposed to like in the scientific or academic literature there being some term to differentiate that, mm-hmm. but obviously it's being used very disparagingly and incorrectly in widespread uh, media and consumption. And there you go. If, if we're going to self ID, then why should we? That's why I'm glad you brought up when we talked to Lance, like. It's weird that there's this bizarre argument of self-identification for a woman or man that basically means whatever the fuck you want it to mean. Right. But then if it comes to something like conservative or liberal, it's like, oh, no, 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 no. I'm yeah. putting you in this box, you know? Yeah, we have <laughs> You can't to, self-ID. We have to identify you how we see fit. Yeah. Right. It's, it's interesting. We, we create a stereotype of you. Yes. And then right. make pin that stereotype to you. Right, right. It's a, how is it not? It's, a, it's exactly the same thing that the races do with different races. Mm-hmm. That's why yeah. I, I, I said I thought it'd be interesting if they did a study and if you saw like, you know, the racist area of people's brains lit up was exactly the same as like the partisan area of the brain. Oh my, yeah. Because like I would get, I would wager that it's exactly the same if I had to guess. Because it's, it's exactly the tribalism the circuit. Yeah, it's exactly the same. That would be my guess. I mean, for all I know, they've probably already done something like that. Joe the Mig for $5 says, YouTube is... Oh, I read the one. Render and a Caesar for $5 says, I got suspended from Twitter this week for tweeting out, Kyle Rittenhouse did nothing wrong. I thought we were past this. Still? Interesting. You should... Um, I'm on 100% serialness, uh, Render and a Caesar. You should take a screenshot of that, and you should send it to Kyle. Because so, that would be part of the lawsuit. If you literally can't tweet out Kyle Rittenhouse did nothing wrong. So that sucks. Yeah. That's yeah, that's interesting. That's way fucked up. I mean <laughs> he's innocent now. Well, I guess right. they're they're just saying. I mean, you know what they're saying. He killed two people, obviously. A... Yeah, but he was justified. Yeah. He, he literally did nothing, did, nothing yeah, yes. Kyle, Kyle did nothing wrong. Yeah, Conrad House did nothing wrong. Right. If you, if some fucking pedo tries to attack you and steal your gun, you have every right Here, to Here, I'll, def- I'll tweet out. I'll see if yourself. I get blocked. Kyle. Are you going to tweet that? Yeah. It's, oh, there, there goes your account. You're, you're gone. Okay, I'll see. I tweeted out. Let's see if it. Uh... Let's see. I'll flag it. <laughs> Wait, you can't say flag it on this show. Okay. First tweet, Calvin House is nothing wrong. I was told this would be blocked. Okay. There you go. Anyways. Um 
But we'll see. It looks like it's still up. So we'll see what happens. Uh, John R for two dollars says, "I want no guff from Fenton." That's right. That's right. Like, it's hard to take Sam Cedar when I just see the face of Fenton every time he talks. Fenton. <laughs> that was his character from Home Movies that he voiced. Oh yeah. He played this huge asshole in Home Movies called Fenton. Uh, Become the Knight for five dollars says, "What's up with the Herman Mora infinite eyes background? Sitch rocks every week. Looks cool. I'm just confused." Is that who is that the artist? I don't know. Oh no. This is from Elder Scrolls. Uh so the story behind that is Adam one day saw generated AI generated art and said that's cool and then decided to stick it behind me and I said, All right. And Go everyone forward. obviously loves it because it right. looks amazing. So right. we just ran with it. Yeah, there's nothing special to it. I mean, there's no special unique story behind it. Uh, DJX for five dollars says a team reigns supreme. Disgusting. Sam Cedar receives the Peter. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Wow. How dare you? Yeah, it's very offensive. Uh, Muskin Dose for five Canadian says, uh, Sitch. Wait, it's actually a comedy show. Adam, it always was. True. True and based. Uh, the debate me channel for five dollars for five dollars says uh, I actually covered the same video a few days ago and you guys sound exactly like me. Oh, based. It's called liberal media just won't drop Kyle Rittenhouse smearing. So there you go, guys. Check it out. Liberal media just won't drop the Kyle Rittenhouse smear. Yeah, why? Why can't they just let it go? Why can't we all just get along? That's what let I want to know. Go. Uh, Fruges for 2,000 yen says, keep the comedy show moniker. Just put it in quotes. That's what we're going to do. And we did. We're going to do. Based. I think I did it on this thumbnail. Okay. I didn't notice. Honestly. Just to keep I, it consistent. I appreciate it. Uh, CT for Duke Canadian says, Stephen Crowder is really right-wing. Hassan, change my mind. There you go. Stephen Crowder is right-wing. Hassan. Stephen Crow mm -hmm. Crowder is a million times smarter than Hassan. <laughs> yeah, I'll say they're in like similar veins, but Stephen Crowder seems to actually have right. an IQ above a hundred, where I'm not sure that when, <laughs> when Stephen Crowder does change my mind. Yeah, that's true. I'm just he's read all of these studies and he knows the authors and he like, he does, he doesn't have any notes and he's talking about this, you know, intelligently about the studies. Come mm -hmm. on. Hassan could never do that. Not in a million years. Right. That is true. That is true. Yeah. Uh, Hurl Hay for 2000 NGNs says Stephen Crowder uses statistics, skits, invites guests, and has some good political takes. Only get compared to Twitch bro Hassan that has his chair on as a regular guest while he makes chicken nuggies. That's not a fair comparison, CT. Oh, yeah. Look at that. You got oh. fighting super chats here. There you go. I like it. Okay, I should fight each other in super chats more often. Yeah. Automata for five dollars says I've literally heard. Uh, Tiffa girl on Cedar say how many girls you'll get for joining the DSA and know you'll get to hit all the walls. Cringe. Oh, really? Interesting. If you remember, she was criticizing um, Steven Crowder for saying that to Kyle Rittenhouse and Automata saying that she says the same thing about joining the DSA. So She's offering other people up as sex objects for yeah she's saying hey boys the dsa the the sex maybe she's right maybe the women to male ratio in the dsa is 60 percent, like new york city used to be <laughs> so who knows <laughs> uh, i mean i wouldn't be surprised if 20 percent of all males in any political movement were literally just there to try to pick up chicks okay <laughs> i wouldn't be even remotely surprised by that well, I've done some research into this, Sitch, and I can mm -hmm. tell you that is absolutely experience. correct. Yes. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Oh, these girls uh, have just... political ideology? Wow. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm so glad. Uh, two Rivers. Not to be confused with Tale of Twin Rabbits, but Two Rivers for five heroes. It says, I'm about an hour behind regarding the pedo slash pedo pronunciation, way to pronounce, pronunciation, mm-hmm. whatever. Adam is wrong. What? Adam is correct. Oh, I'm sorry. I missed. I just saw Adam is correct yeah. and my brain couldn't process the words. You're a, saying peto. And I'm saying pedo. And you're saying pedo. I say pe- I say pedo. And you say pedo. Pedo. Pedophile. Oh, you're right. With pedo, a T. Yeah, yeah. Pedo, right. It's not a pedophile. T, it's a D. So there. Wait, say it. I'm saying pedophile. And you're saying... Pedophile. You're, it's not just the D, D T. You're, you're saying... You're pronouncing the E differently. Pedo, yeah. You're pronouncing it as a long E. I'm pronouncing it as a soft E. Pedo. Yeah. You're doing the Geppetto and I'm doing the Pedo. Right. The Geppetto. You're doing the... <laughs> uh, a, a, P, a Pedo loves soil. I've never heard this. Uh, a, paid, a pedo loves kids. Oh. What? A pet. There is such a thing as a pedophile. Oh, I feel so bad for those people. Pedophile. It's a pedo. Pedo soil? Oh, no. There is no pedo. Oh, wait. Oh, a pedo. F- Hodge, Hodge's pedophile. Oh, pedology. Law. Pedology is a discipline within soil science. <laughs> okay. Hilarious. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Hilarious. Okay, wait, wait. Well, no, like, okay, wait. So if you say pedo alone, it's just pedo. You don't say pedo, you say pedo. Like a. I say pedo. A, like a podiatrist. You don't say a pediatrist. Right? You say whatever you want, okay? I'm I'm sticking with pedo. According to Google, we're both wrong. You say a soft e like I'm saying, but you pronounce the d instead of saying a t, so it's pedophile, 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 Pe- pedophile. Yeah. So we're both so we're both correct. We're both sort of wrong. I'm gonna say so. There you go. We're enlightened centrists. From our two wrong mm-hmm. pronunciations, we can combine them to make the right. I'm still right. sticking with pedo. Okay. It's fine. Pedo. No, get the pedo out of here. <laughs> Put Get the pedo into the wood chipper. <laughs> there you go. Uh, John Sykes for five hours says, to be fair, the people on the majority report never claim to be free speech absolutists, LOL, which is a bad thing that they're not for the record. Oh yeah. There you go. I, I don't. I mean, I don't think they're free speech at all. But uh, doesn't matter. I mean, why do they even call it a wood chipper? Why not just call mm-hmm. it a pedo chipper? Makes Did you ever no talk sense. about the tweet or no? The tweet is for Hans. Oh okay. This so is, much has. This is what we're going to talk about when Hans comes on. I believe. I believe um, I can. Fl- oh, sorry. I got distracted by Twitter. What? You opened a Twitter? Uh, okay, let me close Twitter. J Mac for twenty dollars says. Thank you, Jay. No BS is the Hassan of the right. Is it <laughs> still a thing? That that seems a lot more accurate to me. To be honest with you. Hmm. No, we have to. Well, I don't know. What you mean you by that. think you think Hassan is smarter than OBS? First of all, yes, I do. Really? But that yeah, that's a very low bar. Okay. okay, that's like that's as low as we go. Okay. Okay. That it can still form coherent sentences on the. Sitch. Hey, come oh, on. That's hilarious. That is hilarious. What? Listen, listen. So, <laughs> that's yeah, as I don't know. Close we can go. I mean, it's. Cl- I'll say it's closer it's that. I'll say that's closer than co- Stephen Crowder. Okay, I'll, give you, I'll grant you that, Jay. It's closer than Stephen. Co- co- coherent sentences on the internet. Yes. <laughs> no BS yeah. is like right at that cutoff. All right. Sure. Sure. I guess. Um. But I'll, I'll say he's closer to that. Hassan is closer to No BS than he is, than he is to Stephen Crowder. How about that? 
Okay. Uh, Satoshi is a reptilioid for 200 knock knock says thanks to Sam Cedar, who might be an active clan member that recently participated in lynchings for demonstrating that the far left refers to the IQ bell curve. There you go. Really? True. I mean, if we're just saying things though, I mean, I right? now I can officially say that I heard Sam Cedar was at a clan rally and not be lying. <laughs> Right? You're right. Someone someone told it. Yeah. I'm just reading someone's comments. Okay. Somebody very close to the situation told Anonymous me. Anonymous source. Yeah. Told me <laughs> that Sam Cedar regularly attends clan meetings. Yeah. Uh Guardian Fortress, thanks so much for the ten dollars and the dancing dog with Japanese fans. Oh, I love those. I don't know how they do them, but it's I love It's a super them. sticker. Somebody left us a $2 comment on one of our videos. How do you do you that? You can leave two you can leave pay comments on videos? Yeah. I was I didn't like, know that was a thing. I hearted it cuz I was like this is based. Wow. Yeah. I had no clue. That's amazing. Yeah. Uh this is the Aquanaut for for $5 says A team sucks. There you go. Bullshit. You can't. Uh, you you can't, you have to read the super chats accurately. Oh, I'm sorry. It says uh, a team reigns supreme. Yeah, that's better. Read Jagger's. For... Who? Jagger has a supplemental super chat here for Jagger? five dollars. Yeah. Jagger, not Jaeger. Jaeger. <laughs> it's got the little dots over the A though. I don't know how do you yeah. pronounce that. Jaeger. Is that Jaeger? Jaeger. <laughs> Jagger. He's got moves like Jagger. Okay. Uh, for five dollars. Jagger for five dollars says, uh, "Say it like you don't have an eggplant in your throat." Okay. Here we go. Ready? Oh my. I'm getting the eggplant on my throat. Hold on. Are you taking the eggplant out? Eighteen wins. <laughs> Is that better? Oh better. <laughs> it's funny. Yeah. It's funny, but I, I, did, I you said it, I did it better. I enjoy the way you say S class is best class because you. I know. I know. Okay. Uh, he, he did say eighteen reign supreme. So there you go. Yeah. Uh, Ryan Mackey for five hours says, you said you don't want to talk about guns, and now you're talking about guns. <laughs> uh, this is both of your blind spots. Shut up. We're a fighting expert. Listen, Ryan, if you, want to, if you want to come on and talk about guns, that's not the way to do it. <laughs> okay. Well, I, I am down to, I want to, I'm just out of curiosity. I, right. I want to have a gun conversation that doesn't. Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess I owe it to you guys after so many, stupid mmt conversations but i i kind of feel like it's gonna go the route of mmt it's gonna be like a lot of a lot of really detailed information that is probably only interesting or relevant to a small group of people but maybe i'm wrong i don't know i'm i'm down mm -hmm. to have a gun conversation like what do you what do you think the, what do you think a gun conversation is going to be like such uh, I don't know. I you my granddad would take us shooting guns all the time. I didn't learn sure. anything about gun safety. I just was like, <laughs> they were like, see the target over there, just aim and click the trigger. <laughs> they even tell they didn't even tell you like just don't just keep the gun pointed down range. Yeah, they they, they would say that. Yeah, oh, of okay, course. yeah, okay. Don't so point you, it you at did... your foot. Don't point it at your head. Don't point yeah, okay, it at your so, sister's head. Right. Yeah. They did tell you gun safety stuff. Couldn't do anything like the fun. basics. Yeah. Right. <laughs> okay. Uh Elis the Aquanaut for five dollars says Leon from the professional said the knife is the last weapon you will use. Proximity changes everything. Don't let them encroach for real self defense. There you go. Wow. Uh, old school for two dollars says Sitch is unironically evil. Winky face. True. True. Right. Yeah. Uh, Pinkalo, the driving eight five Canadian. 
says, as much as I dislike AIU, he was at the OJ trial and his breakdown of the case was pretty informative. Really? Wait, wow. Atheist Unstoppable was at the OJ trial? Wasn't he like 10 at the time? What do you mean? How old is he? I think he's the same age as me, isn't he? He's like Gen X. Is he? Oh, yeah. I thought he was. I thought he was younger. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. I didn't even know he did it with Jay Breakdown. Fascinating. Uh, Andrew Clark for two dollars says, "Adam, I won't tell Sitch, but you know what to do." Oh, you know. Oh, that was you putting up the. Art. Yeah. You degenerate. Oh, maybe I should put it up again. <laughs> you like that, wouldn't you? I know you like looking at it. Oh, yeah. Uh, Danish jargon for $10 says, Kyle's stand is Eugene Stoner. Hmm. Okay. Who, who's Eugene Stoner? Eugene Stoner was the designer most associated with the development of the AR-15. Oh, well, there you go. Really? There you go. Look, Look we're like talking a big about nerd guns too. again. Look like a big old nerd. With a name like uh, Eugene, it kind of come probably comes guess you're the right. territory. But his right? last name's Stoner, so right. You know, I thought that was gonna go somewhere. Uh, Michael Money for five dollars says, "Sitch, you might have some weird media takes sometimes. Never, all my media takes are correct, but nothing will ever be as bad as liking that Sherlock movie. S class, S class is officially best class. Oh wow." I mean, Which I just movie? the yeah, I just the one with um, Robert Downey Jr. Oh no, he's talking about the other he's one. About, what about there's another show? The Sherlock one movie? with Will Ferrell and oh 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 yeah, that the movie looked like crap. Yeah, everyone yeah. got mad at me because I liked that movie. That movie. So bad. Oh my god. I just I can't believe the authoritarians in the chat just completely policing my movie takes. <laughs> So so sick. Mm -hmm. You guys need oh. to go back to Nazi Germany. <laughs> <laughs> there's some there's some art you could put up. Go back to Nazi Germany and quit policing my 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 loving movie takes. There's some art you can put up. No, and, uh, my you got to put up this. I'm uh, done with the art. The uh, uh, JP Mexicans comic. A view with a shopping cart is pretty amazing. <laughs> I don't even see. Oh, it must be the mentions here. It's a C, no, CT sent it to us. Oh, really? Okay. Brain for $2 says, being killed alive is like listening to Sam Cedar. Oh my God, there's a bunch of art in here I didn't even look at. I like it. Yeah, because Sam kept saying, like, he killed them dead. Right. And it's like, well, what's being killed alive? Well, being killed alive, just having to listen to Sam Cedar. Oh, yeah, that's true. There you go. Perfect. Uh, Red Toa 94 for $10 says, sorry if this is too off topic. Maybe a question for the Tuesday stream, but I've never heard a good argument for this. Why is it okay to call people black, brown, or white, but not yellow or red? Hmm. Fashion. It's just what's fashionable and what's not. It's just, and a lot of these norms are basically built around of whether or not you're just on the end on the well, end tribe i think it has to do if i were to wager i guess mm -hmm. let me think about this it's like arbitrary with, like, it's totally arbitrary well it's some it might not be though like because we're like the like calling like the yellow especially you're sort oh, of you're broadly right. calling all yeah. asian people yellow now with black people you are calling all black people black but I think it historically derives from, you know, the black uh, descendants of slaves versus like, it wasn't like calling a bunch of different uh, people from, I mean, I guess they were from different countries, but they were conceptualized as one group living in America. I don't know. Maybe there isn't a good reason. Maybe you're right. Maybe it is arbitrary. <laughs> okay. This is hilarious. I brought oh, up the, the comic. comic. Yeah. So in the first panel, we have. Do you do you have an answer beyond the arbitrary thing? On I the, don't. You could okay. be right. I'd have to think about it. I never really questioned that. I it's mean, an interesting question. You were, I think you were on the right path with the yellow thing because yellow is derogatory and like it means you're scared piece of shit. That's not what so. I was saying at all. But 
red means you're like angry angry or sometimes like envious so maybe that's why they're connected to other emotions that could be why i don't think that's why okay honestly. um language is weird it evolves in strange ways right I don't know what I think about it. It's so the question. IJP Mexican says, panel one, you live here now, Mr. Cart. <laughs> I'm assuming. <laughs> in the middle of the parking lot. It's like in a panel. the middle of the parking lot. <laughs> it's like, I like it's at the diagram. It's like five <laughs> feet, 10 feet away from the, the cart. <laughs> right. I'm five, I'm five feet from the cart return okay should i go into the store through this door exit <laughs> yeah whatever man <laughs> yeah i don't want to even walk we even walk the five feet to go to the enter door a, of the come exit. on all the exits are entrances as well at the grocery <laughs> store okay this adam is, is that guy it's like very clearly <laughs> there's like the exit that like everyone's coming out of that leads you to like the wrong direction of all the cash register people. And then Adam is, and then the entrance that leads you like to the other side of that. And Adam just like walks into the exit, like, fuck you. <laughs> Whatever, man. I listen to your rules. I threw it on the ground. Adam, like, not only does Adam do that, I bet Adam walks in through the exit at the grocery store with a shopping cart. Right. But then he tries to push it through the, like the people are standing in the little aisle to pay. Adam tries to push through those people to get to the store. Sometimes. No, I take the cart up the aisle when other people yeah. are in line. No, I'm coming through. Right, you're like, excuse me. Excuse me, I'm coming through. Excuse me. I did. I actually returned the shopping cart ever since that ever since that conversation. Ah, we guilted you into you it. You did guilt me into nice. it. I've nice. done it. I think two or three times now. Yeah. Guilt works. I have never, Shame. I've Shame. always returned it. And now I think I'm even like planning my parking around being <laughs> closer to the thing. That's hilarious. See yeah. who said public shaming doesn't work. It did. Yeah. I didn't know this was a thing. So you've been publicly shamed. <laughs> Adam. The, I know exactly. There you go. Adam, the funny robot. Oh, this is cute. I like this. See, this is why this is why the internet incentivizes bad um bad takes. Okay. I just tweeted out Cobran House did nothing wrong. Mm -hmm. An ancient take from a million years ago. It already has 130 likes. <laughs> okay. Of course. It's so stupid. Of course. It's so stupid. God, this is what's wrong. With you. you people are what's wrong with the internet. I'm I mean, just it's just it's just a fact. I'm just kidding. I know. It's, it's just funny. It is just funny. Oh, uh, where was I? Here we are. Andrew Clark for $5 says, LOL, Andrew Bronca just tweeted a pic of him in his dress shoes in the Pacific Ocean on the same day. You guys said that's kind of crazy. Why, why did he do that, though? At least with Kyle, I'm assuming those weren't his shoes. That, uh, he, you know, it was whoever at Fox News is dressed people's shoes. Why did Andrew Brocka do that? I like Andrew Brocka. Why did he Why did he tweet himself standing in the ocean with his, his business shoes on? Why does he have so many tweets? What the fuck? I'm, like, scrolling through his Twitter timeline. He's got, like, nonstop tweets. Who? Who did this? Uh, law of self-defense. What the fuck's happening here? Who's law of self-defense? Andrew, what do you mean? Andrew, uh, I can never say this wrong. Andrew Branca, law of self-defense. We've talked about him. We've watched, I thought you watched some of his video. He's the self-defense lawyer guy on the YouTubes. Law of self-defense. I don't, it's not ringing any bells. Maybe okay. my memories. Don't gone. worry about it. I want to see the picture of him standing in the ocean with uh, his dress shoes on. It doesn't come up. Maybe he's banned. It doesn't come up when I search. No, his law. name on Twitter is just Law of Self Defense. That's what I searched. You said no. You searched Law of Self Defense. What is it? 
Law self-defense. Law self-defense. Oh, here it is. Why is he doing this? This is a picture. Andrew, what are you doing? He took a picture of himself standing in the Pacific Ocean in his business shoes. And his loafers, I guess. Law self-defense. Why do you do that? Andrew, what are you doing? What are you doing, Andrew? What are you doing? You're crazy. Oh yeah, he goes. He's been on Ricada's show a bunch of times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. You know he's cool. I like this guy. Uh, wonderful Galaxy for Five Hours says listening to Sam is making me irrationally angry. Now I understand when Adam lets his elephant out. <laughs> S class is the best class. Sometimes when you get irrationally angry, it just feels but good to let it all go. What? I'm sorry. What are you saying? <laughs> what are you saying? <laughs> Sometimes, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Adam. I didn't mean to interrupt you. You, by <laughs> all means, I didn't hear the end of the super chat. Can you read it one more time for me? Oh uh, yeah, S class is the best class. Okay. But Asian, Asian Supreme. <laughs> it wasn't another part. Sometimes you just gotta let. Yeah, you. Sometimes when that anger reaches a crescendo, you just gotta like go with it. Let it go. Yeah. Let it go. See, how come women are incentivized to let it go, but not men? What's up with that? Women, no, women never let it go. Come on. <laughs> those not are that kind of letting it go. Those are biological that, sex differences right. right there. Not that kind of letting go. That's what true. Do you mean? Like the, in the song, Let It Go from mm -hmm. Frozen, she's not saying like, let go of the fact that your boyfriend didn't put the toilet lid down one time. I guess oh, okay. she's talking that's not what she's referring to. What is she talking about? I've never seen She's that like, movie. let your emotions fly. Let your oh. emotions go. She, she's talking to some guy who won't let his emotions show? She's is talking. That, no, I'm saying. Is she educating saying, toxic masculinity out of somebody? I'm saying it's interesting that the big part of female empowerment that we're seeing from Frozen, mm -hmm. from Star Wars movies, from Miss Marvel, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. from the Red Panda movie uh -huh, is this concept uh -huh. of like girls have to let it go. They have to like let their emotions out but we don't really hear that from men we never hear men say like let your emotions out and it's interesting i wonder if that's because like with a man the implication is like dangerous it's like let your emo let your anger you know reign unchecked almost if you were to say that to a guy dude you're gonna get hit right it's, it's kind of fascinating difference yeah men have to control their emotions because they're so fucking based <laughs> There you go. This is why, this is why the biological sex differences are important. Yeah. It would really because it's the biological sex difference is men based, women not based. Is that what you're saying? What, women soy. You know how it is. <laughs> you know the rules. There you go. There you go. Yeah. If you mm. if you um, women are allowed to let their emotions run wild because that's sexy. <laughs> Is it? Depends what those emotions are. Don't you think Amber Heard was kind of like playing into the I'm just hot and crazy stereotype? Uh, I mean, I don't think she was intentionally. But. I mean, I think it, it It seems like there was something in the trial that came out that she was bragging about how Johnny likes some feisty. <laughs> I feel like she, that, that was that was in there, right? I'm not just I'm not misremembering that. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I think I she think, said. I Johnny think you are misremembering. That, yeah. I don't know. I didn't watch enough of the trial. I don't remember that part. Okay. So. I watched a fair bit. I mean. Is that why you like AOC? Because she's crazy. You just like crazy chicks. I mean, it, there is a certain. <laughs> no. Tell us about your wife, Ed. No. She hit you. She crazy. What's going on here? No way. No. Uh -huh. Not at all. Okay. Uh, I uh -huh. would. I would not put up with that. Definitely. Have you ever dated any like domestic abuser? No. Any psycho bitches? <laughs> uh, uh, emotionally, but it didn't last very long. Obviously, not right. physically. Okay. I was like, I'm like, I'm very quick to be like, hmm, this person's crazy. Time yes. to dip away. I yeah. Did, I was like, I dealt with this once, and I'm like, that was enough. Yeah. Crazy is very unattractive in a partner. 
in the it depends last... what kind of obviously there's <laughs> different shades of crazy that we're talking about i mean this but... we're literally talking about the hot crazy chart now. well no bipolar is like i'm just no get away from me and i don't mean bipolar clinically i mean like sort mm -hmm. of like like the the person that turns on you on a dime from like yeah everything's fine to like rage and you're like what is happening <laughs> that is what that's what psycho is right right yeah they i think that's sports. technically what borderline personality or something yeah i forget the exact terminology uh right. drew Cypher i'll be right for five hours says i need your clothes your boots and your motorcycle aoc to <laughs> katie porter staffer <laughs> that's funny uh, Elis the Aquanaut for ten dollars says, "Quick, Sitch, what size shoes do you wear? Tell me, damn you, tell me." I'm not gonna tell you because you're just gonna do some freaky foot fetish stuff. Okay, how dare you? Uh, Adam, are you there? Do you exist? Are you alive? Did Adam leave? Did a team just dip out? Just soy out? Just cuck out? I think it did. I think it did. Uh, Damn with Bruce for ten dollars says I'm not gonna lie I was pre oh I read that one. Uh, Andrew Clark for two dollars says Adam have you watched Kajo or Kazar yet? So Adam told me uh, he didn't want me to tell you guys this okay, but I will since you guys are like such you know, your true fans. Adam told me he did watch Kazar. That's the uh, the anime where the the people have to drink breast milk to gain superpowers. And he told me. That him and his wife just loved that show. That they binge watched it. That they were just like, like he said, this was the highest form of art he's ever seen in his entire life. It was, he said it was a masterpiece. He was literally in tears talking about how beautiful this anime was. And I just, I don't know, man. I, I saw a clip from that anime and I'm like, Adam, I, I think you're a little crazy here. I think you're overreacting. I, I, it's just a silly anime about sucking tits. And he was like, no, Sitch, you don't understand. This speaks to me on a deep level. This reminds me of being a baby again. This, this brings me closer to my humanity. I felt like I was wrapped in the womb, safe and secure, watching this anime. And I was like, OK. And, you know, at that point, I didn't want it to be like a deep blue situation. Or not deep blue, a Zima blue situation. I didn't want to shatter his dreams, so I just said, "Okay, I just why I just why I just let it go." I just said, "All right, I'm glad you liked it." And then who uh, was this? This was uh, you. What do you mean? Who? No, who did you not want to shatter? You. I, mean, I don't want to shatter your dreams. You shattered my dreams on every single show I've ever watched. So why would you? <laughs> why would you stop at the <laughs> Suck and Pit show? What are you talking about? <laughs> I know you didn't want me to leak the dance, but it just. Oh. Did you watch? Did you watch KSR? I'm assuming you didn't watch it yet because you're no. busy doing the comic. Okay. There you go. I mean, any show about sucking tits, I have to actually watch the show. Yeah, you can't just listen. Yeah. <laughs> well, I guess you could just hear the. You could hear that. That's a good clip. Any show about sucking tits, I don't watch. <laughs> Whatever you do, don't clip that. Yeah. I'll still fuck. Uh -oh. <laughs> uh, did you read Anonymous Cow for twenty dollars? It's insane. People unironically watch a guy who thinks he knows more than an academic PhD in their own subjects and thinks he outpaces them intellectually. This is a strong case to argue that Vosh fans are the dumbest of all. True. I mean, if you want to argue that, I'm not gonna. I wouldn't take that debate. Yeah, I would. I would I just would, wholeheartedly agree with that. I would avoid that debate at all cost. Uh, some weird guy for one dollar says S class is oh god says S class favorite tags are inflation and ugly bastard. <laughs> he keeps finding themselves. And keeps finding themselves becoming girlfriends to ducks when they get sent to male prisons. A team reigns supreme. 
Ouch. Man, that guy there nailed you. That guy nailed you. He did. He did. Uh, some weird guy for another dollar says, I don't even know if I should read this one. Uh, Sammy G, we're almost halfway through Pride Month. Can we expect any seasonal fan art <laughs> regarding a couple of our favorite <laughs> podcast hosts, perhaps with an unbuttoned shirt and tight red shorts? <laughs> Terrible. And That's you so were wrong. you were casting uh, you were casting uh, <laughs> porn tags at me. You uh, Janice Coon for a dollar says, hey, now, I'm listening back to your talk with Matt. He said he doesn't mind misaligning people because some lie about their politics. Uh, it's literally the same thing turfs say about weirdos lying to get in women-only spaces, and I do mean literally. That's true. That is the same argument. That is the same argument. I'm, e- <coughs> I'm emailing Hans the link now, so... Okay. Are we almost done with Super Chats, or are we going to have to do... Uh, we read all of Sundays. I was doing Streamlabs now. But... I mean, I feel like I got... I feel like we were, we've read most of the ones for today. Yeah. Oh, I don't know if we did. Uh, we have two pieces of art from the LJP Mexican. We have me as a Jedi and Adam as a funny R2-D2 robot. I love it. I feel like that's appropriate. Mm-hmm. I feel like it's perfect. I like the little R two D two with the red shorts. So, yeah. Uh, Doctor Diller for two dollars says, if the Nazis were half as common as these morons believed, they'd be getting their asses beaten in the streets. I mean, I know they don't know the tenets of fascism, but at not, but at no point were any of them ever known for. Uh, subtlety and tolerance. That's true. That's true. Yeah. That's real friction for for two dollars. Says I like how Adam puts the creepiest fucking shit as a background behind Sitch's avatar. I guess this means Sitch is a sumo super emo uh, dark lord Sith. True. That's all true. I do like that background though. I, I did used to be super edgy, but I've grown out of that phase of my life. Uh, Dr. Lever Jar says, if you dropped Sam Cedar into a situation where some crazed druggie was going to kill him for money and you gave him a gun, what do you think the odds are that he defends himself? I'm stuck between 100% and 100%. <laughs> That's a good, po- That's a good question yeah. for Sam. No, yeah. I agree. Yeah, it's 100%. That's a easily yeah. 100%. Uh, Dr. Diller for another dollar says, the real question is how he would conceptualize that as being different from Kyle, despite having both killed people. Well, he would say, he'd say, the difference, doctor. I can't do his voice. How did you, how do you do a Sam Cedar impression? Doctor. Uh, He's uh, a very unusual uh, voice. Uh, like, I'm trying, uh, I'm trying to get the tone, not like the, the speech pattern. I mean, he, what he would say was, uh, the difference is, you know, well, you're dropping me into this situation. You know, Kyle went to that place. Oh, yeah, He made a right. choice to go there. You're that's right. the difference. And I would, I mean, I would say that that's irrelevant to self-defense. Because um, then I would say, oh, well, I mean, that's the, that's the basically, you know, you're asking for it situation, right? Yeah. Like if a girl goes to a, a bar, you know, does she gain culpability and if she's like sexually assaulted because she went to a nightclub or a bar I don't no know, so. you're allowed to go to places like that you're not allowed to go to a black lives rally black mm-hmm. lives matter rally with a ar with That's a gun right say. yeah you can go to a nightclub wearing a very skimpy outfit but you can't mm-hmm. go to a blm rally with a, right. an ar chapter because for some reason open carrying which would deter most sane people uh, I guess it attracts insane people to attack you or something. Right. They just can't help themselves. It's like a bull seeing red. They just have to go for it. Yeah. Even though I heard that that's an urban legend and not true. Dr. Didalo for another $2 says, I don't care what the judge, quote, I don't care what a judge says. He's still a murderer sued for defamation. Quote, I don't care what a judge says. I'm not giving him my money. Jail for failing to pay a sentence. Quote, I don't care what a judge says. I'm not staying here. Beaten for beaten by the guards for trying to escape. Turns out just because you don't think the rules apply to you or doesn't apply to you doesn't mean they don't. Respect the process doesn't matter, thick headed leftists, because the government owns the monopoly on force. There you go. 
Uh, tanned cedar for a dollar. <laughs> it's not Sam cedar, it's tanned cedar. It says, Joseph Rosenbaum was absolved of his sins when Kyle Rittenhouse touched the AR-15. It was a gun, you people, a gun! Guns are more evil than kid diddlers. If you like the Super Chat, please consider subscribing to the Majority Report. <laughs> there you go. Did you know that? I didn't know that. That guns are more evil than kitty diddlers? Interesting. Really? I, yeah. I mean, I beg to differ, but... Okay. I disagree. Do you, I, I hope you disagree as well. I, I do disagree. I'll okay. take a bold stance, and I will disagree with that. Right. Uh, Dr. Lou for a dollar says, leftist unintentionally dog whistle to me. I see collective instead of company, and I automatically know it's full of idiots. A fucking idiot. <laughs> there you go. Uh, Magor for two dollars says, I don't really follow the Sitch and Adam show, but this Adam fellow seems like the kind of guy who hoards gold under his bed, and Sitch probably calls everyone from Ronald Reagan to Lenin a liberal. <laughs> mm. There you go. Sometimes. Thank you, Magor. There you go. I've heard you call Ronald Reagan a liberal before. I did. I did. Yeah. Uh, McGuire for a dollar says, Vocal Distance is a, is a dude who looks like my coworker, Dalen. He does streams with Benjamin Boyce and James Lindsay every so often. Well, there you go. Benjamin, who is it? What's his name? Vocal Distance. And he's the gun guy that we're supposed to do a, a talk with? No. What the fuck are you talking about? Oh, okay. Vocal well, Distance? Oh, okay. He's uh, the Twitter guy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's good on Twitter. So it's a he. It's a he. Yeah. And he's done streams? Maybe we should With have Ben more. and James Lindsay. So, yeah. They're oh, cool. That's good. Uh, Dr. D for another $2 says, Vosh here has the Chewbacca defense of logical arguments. Vosh's logics, Vosh's, Vosh logics, only conclusion is that he says, quote, this is water. You have to respond by slugging him in the face because that's the only way to establish truth anymore. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Yeah, I don't think your method of dialogue is effective if it requires that you have to get the violence to... Uh... To enact it? Right. right. Yeah. Well, normally in society, you're trying to minimize violence. That's the whole point of law. Right. Law, the law and order, right? Well, that's, I mean, exactly, but that's the issue with sort of the way Posh was deconstructing the argument is that there is, there would be no way to communicate without violence, essentially, because it's just going to, it's just such utter BS. So. Right. Uh, oh, here we go. Hello. Hello. Oh. How are you doing today? I'm good. I'm good. Thanks. Uh, I cannot see you. Is that supposed to be the case? My camera is going into OBS, into our live stream. So we're live right now. So obviously, okay. just to let you know. Ho hopefully right. hopefully that's okay. Sure. Um, thanks for joining us. I, I really... I, thank, thank you for having me. Um, sorry again about... Uh, if I'm, <laughs> I'm not familiar with this kind of format. Am I supposed to have my camera turned on or turned off? Uh, I have you in the stream, so we can see you. Yeah, uh, on is fine. If you, I mean, if you're not comfortable being on camera, then you don't have to. Turn no, on. I'm comfortable. I just want to know what kind of the the etiquette is. I'm not <laughs> sure. I mean, you, uh, your your mic is like super loud and somewhat distorted is it is it coming through the correct mic and not like a, uh uh audio i'm not sure but i'm don't think i have much of an alternative let me check if you go to zoom in the bottom uh, let me let me check okay let me maybe this is better uh is this better now sounds uh, completely the same yeah <laughs> Okay, then there's nothing I can do. Do you, are you I'm just afraid. using are you using like a laptop microphone or are you using a Yes. Okay. Oh, it okay. is what it is. It's okay. I mean it sounds okay to me, but Okay. I'll I'll try not to speak too loud. Yeah. <laughs> That's fine. Okay. Well, I, I I'm a huge fan of your videos. So you've done some great videos on philosophy tube, obviously. You did a video on Jordan Peterson that I think I responded to and was a bit critical of, but 
I, I have read your book and I understand the the pro felicity argument that you're making. And Thanks. I mean, I'm, I'm really intrigued by it. I'm really fascinated by it. This, uh, there's a, there, well, first let me start. Why don't you just introduce yourselves for, for people who might not have heard of your channel? Okay, yeah, thanks, first of all, uh, for your very kind words. I'm glad you liked uh, the book and the videos. Yeah, I'm, I'm my, uh, so my name is obviously Hans-Georg Müller. I teach philosophy at the University of Macau, which is close to Hong Kong and is a special autonomous region, a you know, small city, actually, in China. Uh, one of the reasons, one of the main reasons why I'm here is because I have a background actually in Chinese philosophy and Chinese studies. Um, but throughout my, well, academic career, intellectual development, I became more and more interested in not so much in early China, but in uh, contemporary society and contemporary issues. Um, so the book that you were referring to, you and your profile, uh, which uh, I co-wrote with my former student, Paul D'Ambrosio, is about um, identity. And that's maybe the, or that is the main topic that I'm interested in now. Uh, how do people uh, shape their identity? Um, and um, yeah, so, uh, but my, 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 maybe one more sentence. So my, my approach is on the one hand, um, influenced by contemporary um, social theory, social systems theory, uh, but on the on, on the other hand, also still uh, this background in Chinese philosophy is also a significant influence on on how I look at um, uh, identity. So there's a cross cultural element in it. So it's the thing that's very fascinating to me about it is. Right now, there is this interesting dialogue about social media and whether social media is dangerous to society or to people psychologically. There's all this different stuff going on. And we're huge fans of Jonathan Haidt on the show. I've read all right. of John's books. I've, I've, I did a video for John on moral foundations theory. And I've always like, I've been able to have a little back and forth with him via email. So I, nice. he's, he's working on a book now that is critical of social media. And I emailed him because like your book is one of the few books that he has this really interesting way of imagining social media. That's not necessarily derogatory Right. And uh, I'm another, there's another book that I'm a fan of. I think it's Steven Johnson. I think the book is called Everything Bad is Good for You, where he goes through all mm -hmm. the evolving technology and how everybody just instinctively thought this new technology was going to destroy uh, mankind. I mean, he goes back to like writing and books and like uh, phone, uh, you know, recorded music. All of this stuff was supposed to destroy society. And every single time it actually makes people smarter. And in your book, you talk about this thing called uh, second order observation, which I think, you know, I'll let you take over from here to kind of explain it. But it really is this interesting concept about how it is a, a new skill that we're learning. Right. So, um, um, yeah, let me, let, the, the term second order observation is from this German social theorist, Niklas Luhmann. I said earlier, I'm influenced by that. So what does it mean? It basically means you look at something not simply directly, but you look at it via how it is being observed. And I like to give like two core examples for this mode of observation that I think is now ubiquitous. Everyone operates within this mode. Uh, and it has uh, is essential to modern society. It's like to live in modern society means to live in second the mode of second order observation. Let me just give like the two core examples that I like to give is number one the emergence of the notion of the picturesque. This was an aesthetic notion like in the 18th century, and it has to do with uh, the new media at that time with magazines and journals. And it simply means that you look, for instance, uh, that was an aesthetic category regarding la landscape painting. 
And uh, when people looked at painting uh, earlier than that, whatever, like painting of a person, they would just look at the painting and then they say, oh, it's a good painting. It looks like the person. So they would compare the, the they look at the painting and then compare it with the person they've seen. But this changes then in the 18th century with the notion of the picturesque, where people look, for instance, at a landscape uh, and then say, oh, the landscape looks like a painting. It's a nice landscape. So they look at the landscape no longer just merely directly, but they look at it in terms of how they view pictures of a landscape. So they always already already have this second order observation in mind that they look something as it is being or has been observed by others. And then more importantly, and much more close to us, I mean, we still are, I guess we still live uh, in, I mean, we still op operate in the mode of the picturesque all the time. But uh, um, socially, economically, this gets much more important than with the emergence of the brand in the 19th century, right? Uh, so uh, in in uh, in the economy and commerce, right, where where now you no longer buy a shoe buy shoes uh, or buy milk or whatever, you buy a certain brand of shoes or a certain brand of milk or any any drink. So we're completely used now to see everything that we're buying. Uh, in terms of the brand, which again is second order observation, right? You, you you cannot just see a shoe. You always see the shoe in terms of the, the brand of the shoe. Uh, and that's also second order observation. And then this becomes uh, so prevalent in the economy, right? Uh, or whatever. Now, even in my field in the university, you have all these university rankings and all the universities have to brand themselves. Uh, and eventually, uh, you also brand yourself, which basically means that you shape yourself for being uh, observed in the mode of second order observation by others. And that's what, what we call that's our core notion a profile. Right, if um, the personal branding uh, is results in the construction and the curation actually of profiles. And so the core thesis of the book is, uh, the subtitle is Identity After Authenticity, uh, that this kind of identity shaping mode that preceded um, profilicity, authenticity namely, uh, is, um, is going away and that now uh, increasingly uh, everyone is just shaping their identity in the, in the form of shaping profiles. Uh, and uh, this, of course, is obviously the case uh, on social media, where we actually took the term from, right? You have to have your, we all have our different profiles on social media. Um, and um, yeah, so that, that's just a, that's just, um, a new form of, of, of shaping identity. And regarding the technology, um, the uh, social media and generally like new media, new technology, new media, um, we think that the success of that it's not that um, you know uh, profilicity um, come is there be, because of social media, but rather the other way around. That profilicity has been there for a long time, right? I mentioned branding, which has been there since uh, more than a century, two centuries maybe, um, and that the the way these new technologies are used and um, the huge effect they have on our life, that that's basically because of profilicity. Profilicity was already there. And the way social media and new media are used, and the reason that they are so successful is because they they are such great tools for enhancing profilicity. If I may say just a short final thing uh, with the technology, um, uh, if you like, um, like um, like for instance, printing as a technology had a huge effect uh, in early modernity in in Europe, and then of course in in uh, in North America as well, um, but it uh, had been invented in China a few centuries earlier, and there it had very little effect. So it's not uh, that a, a technology sort of automatically takes off. Uh, it really can, takes off, and especially it takes off in the way it does if it somehow fits into certain 
uh, social needs that are that it that it can that it can um, uh, that it can serve. So right. that's basically the theory of the book. Yeah, pro profile building, and you mentioned this in the book, like profile building. Certain people did have access to profile building in the past because you know obviously there were famous there's famous people celebrities people in the media who have access to this feedback loop about how they're right. being viewed on tv or how you know their celebrity is being viewed and social media is kind of the democratization of those tools that exactly. others have had access to yeah that's the thing and this is the divide and and i did a, i shared with you a response that i did to jonathan Hyde because jonathan Hyde is so i mean he's very much against social media a lot of people are against social media and i i'm just i'm trying to look when i look at it through your lens it's more of like a tool of identity creation that some people will be successful at and other people's will not will not be successful at but that's like any vocation right some people are good at sports some people are you know good at scholastics some people are good at math just because everyone is not good at something doesn't mean that that thing is bad for society or that just because certain people are demoralized because they're bad at math that we like it's a tragedy we just point them towards something they might be better at yes but i guess i mean everyone somehow has to build a profile just okay. as somehow everyone has to do math right you don't have do, to be do they there are only very know? few what's that do they need to though i mean i yeah, that's I mean, that's my question whatever yeah, everyone has to be able to count and make simple calculations. Otherwise, you know, you can't exist. You can't have a well, bank account I, I or mean, anything. I mean, I mean, on the profile basis. I guess that's a good well, analogy. Well, I think the yeah. same. The same is the case with a profile, right? Okay. I mean, that's the whole. That's the whole point. Um, as you said, like uh, correctly, right? I mean, in the past, only a few people, whatever celebrities, right? They they had a profile, and no one else had a profile. Uh, and now uh, everyone has profile has the profile. Most people actually have several, uh, and that's normal. That doesn't mean that everyone is actually a, a celebrity. Uh, just I, like not everyone is actually whatever a math wizard, uh, but everyone has to build profiles uh, and uh, has to build their identity in the form of a profile. Like in my job too, right? I mean, everyone has to build up a CV. Uh, whatever, when you go to college, you choose a college that you go to, you post anything on social media. Uh, that's all part of profile building. So everyone operates in this mode. So just as everyone has to learn somehow basic maths, and and I, that's really the point that that um, that uh, that everyone uh, is building profiles. Of course, again, it's understood that not everyone is going to be like super high profile. Most people are still kind of low profile. Right. So yeah, but the, the point you made about Jonathan Haidt uh, the, in the tweet you sent me. Uh, well, I, no, no, you, go, you no, go ahead. Ex ex no, expand on it. I, I mean, I, I'm interested in, in the uh, where you're at on Jonathan Haidt's like mission to kind of rethink social media. Um, I, I watched the whole interview I had with Lex Friedman, and um, I found it very interesting. And I'm I'm generally very sympathetic, both to his previous work and what he's doing now. I think the stuff he's doing is really, really good. Uh, and I think obviously also his observations about the problems with social media are kind of spot on. Uh, and he's pointing in particular to this kind of. Um, I think he calls it like even like something like a uh, epidemic or so about uh, mental health issues of especially among young girls like age something like eight to 14 or so i don't remember exactly and that there's been like a, a suicide wave among them right sure and uh, he says that is directly correlated and he has the empirical research on this to um, social media use and specifically to posting on Instagram and similar sites. So not just whatever, looking at uh, internet content, but, and he doesn't use the word, I think he should use the term. So uh, I think it would help his theory because that's when we learn profile building, right? That's how now uh, everyone learns to, to build their identity and at, a, at an early age. So he reports this very interesting fact that, um, uh, that young teenagers or uh, even younger um, um, 
go on the internet, uh, start building their profiles, and they somehow do not succeed, and they somehow get whatever depressed or kill and kill themselves. And so his he thinks that's really bad because it's not like really traditional child play, which I think he has a very good point, right? Traditionally, people would do unsupervised play. They would like whatever, go out and, and play on the street or in the in the woods or whatever. And they're no longer doing this. And now they, they're growing up on, on social media. And there are all these pressures. And then he has the radical suggestion. He thinks it should be regulated, that internet shouldn't be accessible to people uh, below the age of 16 or something like this. Um, and um, so you responded to this, and I think your the tweet uh, uh, I saw, uh, I think that's spot on, right? That what the kids are actually doing there is uh, second, is they learn second order observation. They learn to build their identity in this way. Uh, and therefore it's actually indispensable because that's what they have to learn uh, in order to build identity in the way now identity is built in society. But obviously they, they run into problems. So I don't think height solution is really the right solution. And I think you're saying the same thing uh, that you know you just block uh, people's uh, access to um, uh, social media. Uh, I think the problem lies deeper uh, I've reflected uh, on this in the past week or two, and uh, I was thinking of this, um, I don't know if you heard of this, it's the a German novel, the, the English title is The Sorrows of the Young Werther, or Werther, which was written by the famous author Goethe in the 18th century. Uh, and that novel, it was published 1774. Uh, that was a huge success. And it's about a young man committing suicide. Uh, and it became like super fashionable and uh, uh, still until today, one of the most famous German novels. But uh, well, the point I'm trying to make is at the time, it caused a suicide wave, right. uh, at least people say so. Uh, and um, it was a copycat suicide. And I wonder if we have a similar, if the phenomena that Haidt observes is similar to this called the Werther effect. There's even a, the, the term, the Werther effect. Social contagion, uh, two, is, is that basically yes. what it is? Okay. Yes, uh, but for two reasons. Number one, um, uh, 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 sorry, let me go back. Uh, the, this 70, 74 book, that was the, the, the time when we had the transition from what I call sincerity to authenticity. Sincerity is the old role-based model of identity building, right? That you're born into a certain role, mostly gender roles, but also professional roles and whatever you're an aristocrat or you're a farmer. And so your whole identity is very much built by yourself, uh, learning to identify yourself with this socially ascribed and fixed role. And then when modernity comes in the 17th, 18th century, this is no longer seen as good you want to be authentic instead, right? This role orientation is regarded as just being conformist and everyone has to develop their unique and original and creative self. That's authenticity. So we have basically at that time, a transition from one mode of identity shaping, sincerity, sincere commitment to roles, to a new form of identity building, authenticity, developing your true self and being finding out who you are and being your real self and stuff like this, which you have to find internally, and then build your external self in accordance as a true representation of your true inner self. And exactly that's the theme of that novel, right? So this Verta guy who is like, whatever, 18 years old or something like this, or 20, uh, uh, is, is, is a love triangle and uh, he is in love with this girl who is uh, about to be married to an older guy that's all arranged to you know the social uh, rank and so forth so he can't really fit his, his, his rank is too low and his unhappy love affair and he develops his authenticity as a young man but he can't succeed in society and the love affair or the failure in the love affair is kind of a symbol of the failure of his building authenticity in a 
society that is still kind of governed by the old rules of sincerity and rank and social status and these things. And then he commits suicide and becomes this kind of hero. And again, this uh, novel instantly becomes a huge, huge success. It's actually outlawed, I think, in Italy and other countries. And people start dressing like Werther uh, and people start committing suicide all over the place. Uh, and again, I wonder if that's something similar that the, the, the core phenomenon that Haidt describes, the suicide wave, if that isn't similar to the Werther effect in two, two respects. Uh, number one, as you just said, like it's kind of this, you know, contagious, you know, suicide is somehow contagious. But why is that? I mean, um, because somehow at that time it confirms your authenticity, right? It's uh, you're, you're, um, it confirms that that you know you're you're not really following social convention, and it's kind of a big big sign that you give to kind of paradoxically affirm uh, yourself as a protest, right? By by not conforming. And uh, the, so you, 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 you see this model and there's some, some people only dress like Beata because they want to be as authentic as him and as, which is of course entirely paradoxical, right? <laughs> so they want to so. be non-conformist <laughs> by, by being like him, right? He's unlike everyone else and they want to be like him, unlike everyone else, which is ent entirely paradoxical. But anyway, so, uh, um, the question is, isn't, isn't this somehow similar for these two reasons? Number one, it's a copycat phenomenon, again, which I don't really know, but I suppose if this is happening on social media. People, people will know about these suicides, the kids, and, it's, and it's, it's known to be contagious. Suicide is known to be contagious. But then secondly, and maybe more importantly, that just as at that time it was the, the, the suicide wave came at the time of the transition between one identity mode and another, sincerity and authenticity. Now we're going through this uh, uh, transition from authenticity to profilicity. And so it's that this new mode of profile building uh, for the new kids, they, they're already like in it, for the, for the young kids, they're already like in it. Uh, but at the same time, and again, like with hate, they don't get support. Everyone, just like at 250 years ago, people were expected to be sincere, to be committed to their roles and whatever, be a good housewife and stuff like this. Now, uh, people are still supposed to be, uh, the kids are supposed to develop their authenticity. That's the, that's the education ideal we all grew up with, right? That's why you go to school and we get an education. Everyone's supposed to develop their individuality to become who they are and to, you know, uh, uh, but that's not how the world actually functions anymore. Right. The world already is prophilic. And, and that's why I wonder if height is actually doing a disservice to, to his good cause, right? He wants to uh, have the children suffer less. But I think the, the children are under enormous pressure to be authentic in a world where authenticity is fading out and they need to be prophilic. But uh, they get uh, they don't get support in that. And we yeah. also we don't you know the parents want them to be authentic. They don't want them to be on social media, and the whole of society is is in this. Par I think that's really the, the is a character core characteristic of the society we're in right now. That we still have this the the the, the ideal the vocabulary of authenticity, but we already function in the mode of prophylicity. And so these kids, they are, they are still pressured by the expectations to develop an authenticity, but at the same time, they live in social media where it's all about profile building. And so they feel misunderstood. They have no orientation. They have no guidance. In fact, they get criticized, whatever, for being narcissists, right? Right, uh, yeah. Uh, and, uh, but they have to be narcissists. And it's not narcissists. They're actually not narcissists, right? They're just already practicing the new form of identity building. So I think what people like height should actually do, should, they should understand the phenomen phenomenon better. Uh, with, a, with the help of the notion of prophylicity, they should acknowledge this transition that's going on and that is inevitable. And uh, they should, rather than criticize these young kids for and, and tell them you shouldn't go on the internet, they should understand the phenomenon better. And I think that's exactly what you say, what we were saying in this tweet, and understand that they are in the process of building 
their own identity in the form of second order observation. And we should, number one, understand it, and number two, uh, then support them instead of criticizing them for it and saying, no, you shouldn't do it, you shouldn't go on social media. Is it? Is it? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, totally. And uh, this is fascinating. I'm so glad. I'm so glad you're uh, elucidating on this. The so are is sincerity, authenticity, are those other forms of identity that others have studied, or are those your ideas? I'm. I'm. I. I don't know anything on this topic. So. Yeah, the the notions of sincerity and authenticity are not your, my, our ideas. So I wrote the book together with Paul. That's right, I thought. Our... Yeah, so other philosophers have talked about this stuff. So I, yes, I just so that's, the, the... you don't need you don't need to really uh, go in on, on that. I'm I'm curious. My question is whether or not authenticity or profilicity. I so, like my gut intuition is that profilicity is less pressure than authenticity. But we have all of society like pushing people, like pressuring them into authenticity. When pro felicity, so many of these kids, they have like 10 profiles and they're experimenting. Right. And right. any one of them, they can throw away at any time. So it's, it's a lot less pressure. Potentially, yes. Uh, I mean, again, like the pressure comes from the outside that because of the conflict with authenticity. Right, uh, which the whole society is kind of uh, in this pressure and in this kind of self-contradiction. Uh, but then, of course, there can also be profilicity pressures. Whatever you, you know, you get um, you get negative feedback, uh, and you and then also uh, you're always kind of in an anxiety. You know, will will my will my profile really be successful? Will I get enough? Like I'm now a YouTuber, right? I'm always worrying if i if i get enough views if the next video has as many views or ideally more than the previous one right and that becomes a concern now i'm old and i'm not really taking it that seriously anymore but if i was a teenager it would be much more serious these kind of considerations and then of course um so you can fail like you can fail with anything as you said earlier right uh, you want uh, you want high profile but most people just have low profile so right. that's a constant pressure. Uh, that, uh, that, 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 that's, I guess, the major pressure. And the second pressure is uh, also from my own experience. I just thought about it this morning, right? I, I haven't posted. I didn't do, do a new video on my channel since two weeks, <laughs> right? And uh, You're a so YouTuber now. <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> So that causes uh, stress, right? I gotta, I gotta post something, right? If you don't continuously post, uh, you're yeah. dead. So I, w one more thing on the pro felicity stuff, and then I want to turn it over to Sitch. My buddy wants, we want to talk to you a little bit about like wokeness and your video on wokeness. Right. But I, I read this book. Everyone is getting super triggered because I keep talking about it. But there's a, 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 a transformation that happens in the book that's very fascinating in light of this pro felicity idea. So the book is Kellyanne Conway's new book about her experience in the Trump administration. Now, I don't know if mm. you followed any of this drama, but Kellyanne Conway was Trump's um, a campaign manager okay and she basically helped get him elected and then she, her and her husband were going to move to washington dc and her husband was going to get a, a job in the trump administration and he didn't necessarily get the job that he wanted to but her husband uh, became an outspoken trump critic on social media his name is george conway and he basically was of elevated to stardom as this uh, Trump critic with his wife being uh, one of the chief supporters of Trump. Do you, do you, do you know right. the background on this? Or Very vaguely. I remember okay, the okay. names, but not really the details of the story. So, but yes. you'll find this fascinating because in the book, George never had a Twitter, was never interested in Twitter, and, and Kellyanne Conway basically ex explains this. But his first tweet was definitely someone in the realm of authenticity who knew nothing about second order observation. He said this, anything, anybody with any practice in second order observation would patently realize, okay, this is a mistake. Don't do this. This is something that you shouldn't do. And right. so he, he develops this social media addiction 
And you can tell it's basically him exploring this idea of second order right. observation. But if you don't, if you don't understand, like if you don't understand the difference in the two identity formation tools, the authenticity versus the profilicity, this, 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 uh, the situation I don't think would be as meaningful as it would be to someone like you and I. So, right. Yeah. It's, it's yeah, fascinating. That sounds, uh, yes, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. And, uh, again, the same, like with height, right? If you have this, if you have these two concepts and apply them, it can be very useful and it can explain a lot of things that otherwise you can't really see that clearly. Yeah. Because it's a shared experience. It's a sh like uh, so many people share this experience in one way or another. Well, and, and, and we, I do too. We also, I mean, our our, I mean, we're not like some YouTubers are giant, obviously, but we have a, a community here that you know we do a show and share in an experience that's not. I mean, I like to think it's a positive thing in the world, not necessarily Absolutely. a negative thing. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. I mean, I'm very glad I, I did the channel, which I also it was like maybe that, like this Conway. Uh, it was like very co coincidental and I didn't intend it, but it just happened um, because of my PhD student who did the whole thing. Um, and um, yeah, now I'm really glad I did it because uh, it's such an interesting experience uh, and uh, yeah, it has made my life more interesting. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, you read the comments on you. You put exactly. something out into the yeah. world, and you're seeing so many different perspectives, and you yeah. really are it's so kind much of better than the academic than the academic <laughs> world, which is like is very boring, and uh, so it's it's my I, the the feedback is much more intense, and um, uh, so that's also a prejudice, right? Uh, that that um, that is somehow it's all somehow this is because it's second order it's second hand but it's actually a very like intense experience and an extense intense exchange and lively so i don't think it's it's i think it's more lively than than the traditional academic world much lively much more lively it, it's interesting um because i think generally when people conceptualize it they're like oh um if someone leaves you like a nasty comment on you know a youtube video or something because of the fact that they're not talking to you you know face to face because they have like a username mm. that, like that's a truer reflection of their like inner self but but you're kind of saying it's like the opposite of that because they're sort of performing for everyone else mm. Yeah, but uh, this performance is, I mean, it's kind of child play or so, right? Where you also like think back, you think back when you were like children, you did like mm -hmm. child play, you were like, that's also a very intense form of interaction with others. And of also, even though it's authenticity vocabulary of exploring yourself, right? Of exploring right. possibilities. And so it, it has this kind of playfulness. And uh, as you said, um, uh, Adam earlier, I mean, Jonathan Hayhide is doing the same thing, right? He's very much present on the internet, too. That's how I, I, I learned about his mm -hmm. uh, new ideas. I would I would never have a relationship with Jonathan Haidt without the world of profilicity. Right. Yeah. I would never. Yes. We this conversation would never be happening between us. Exactly. So. Exactly. So, Sitch, you want to talk about? Well, before and, but we get to that, because okay. um, I mean, I like I don't, I I don't agree with sort of limiting the internet for kids either. Um, but do you have any like what would be a solution? Or something to do about you know suicide rates kids having all sorts of emotional problems based around social media and stuff well again i'm not a, a social psychologist i'm not a therapist but um uh, well neither um, are we but we like to talk about yeah <laughs> no again i think it, it, it would help and this is like a, my I, I'm, I'm apologizing for only making such an abstract suggestion rather right. than a more concrete suggestion but i'm a philosopher so the, what i think what would help is if we would have a, a better conceptual understanding of what's going on and would not just expect like generally either as parents or generally as a as a public uh, uh, of which height is a part uh, the kids to be authentic in a time where that's no longer really the um, the thing to be, right? So we should change the expectations towards the identity building and the understanding of what identity building is. 
uh, at the same time, of course, it makes sense to introduce some form of regulations, whatever. I, I think it makes sense to somehow, uh, you know, shield kids, whatever, from pornography or from violence or these kind of things. Again, I'm not a psychologist. I don't have any kind of evidence to back that up, but intuitively that makes sense to me. Uh, but uh, Haidt is, is, uh, makes this point, which I think is very important, uh, about unsupervised play as being, so if there could be something, if uh, I don't know how to do that, some form of uh, internet or social media space that somehow is unsupervised play on, on social media, I think that would be actually a good thing. But I don't know how to do this concretely to make it at the same time mm. somehow a safe space, which what unsupervised is, play is by by definition somewhat unsafe. That's the whole purpose of it. Right. That, but wouldn't yeah. like, you know, people talking on anonymous message boards or playing video games with people they don't know? Wouldn't that be unsupervised play? Yeah, I think it it is, and I think it should be understood in in this in this way. Right. Well, it's interesting because they're all, they're trying to crack down on all that stuff. You're right. Like it's interesting because like physically, yeah, there was a, you know, there's a physical danger generally associated with like unsupervised, you know, kids playing. That sort of, at least in America, has been like cracked down on. And now with the internet, it's like there's this fear of emotional damage uh, coming from unsupervised kids playing on the internet. And it's like you know, everything has to be uh, cracked down. Everything has to be safe now. Yeah, but it, as a matter of fact, you know, I, I hope I don't get this wrong, but I think Height was the one, who, I'm pretty sure he was the one who said it, but that's like a fact, right? That unsupervised play is very important for growing up healthily, for growing yes. for build. Uh, it's dangerous, but at the same time, it's uh, it absolutely essential. Right. I think he says that uh, you, basically kids have to figure out how to solve problems themselves, and we're basically stealing that away from them until... Right. You shovel them exactly. The college, and even then, colleges have kind of become more safe spaces too. So. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. So let's fight about Marxism. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I, you you had a video it was like a over a year ago, I think, uh, about wokeism, and uh, you said you said once you said something in it that I really really love, and then you said something in it that I don't agree with, and the uh, mm. the thing that I love was. Uh, you were talking about how wokeness is a civil religion, which I right. think is a hundred percent on the money. And you talk about this concept of guilt pride, which is basically you talk about kind of like in reference to the Germans post World War II, right. and how you know if if you have people that have this tremendous guilt for some past transgressions that either they or their ancestors committed, they you know some way in which people seem to deal with it is that they kind of take pride in the fact that they are you know admit so much guilt over it yes in essence it can kind of be weaponized to like chastise other people i guess for, yes you know being guilty themselves exactly yeah and i think i think that's totally right i think that's exactly a huge part of wokeism uh the only the, the part that i didn't i guess i didn't really understand was that you said that you conceptualize wokeism as a a neoliberal conception mm. and you were contending that it was neoliberal versus Jordan Peterson, who calls it sort of a Marxist conception. Right. Uh, yeah. I, so um, uh, thanks for summarizing my, my point so succinctly and so nicely. That's exactly the main point. And I've just been thinking about this last night. I had an email conversation with a friend, uh, also a former PhD student who is more on the woke side, but also critical <laughs> of it, but much more on the woke side than I. Mm -hmm. uh, and he did some uh, satirical piece on, on cancel culture. And uh, uh, in this piece, uh, he mentions, uh, so that's about cancel culture, which is of course a, a central part of wokeism, right? Right. And in this piece, he mentions kind of, he does this like ironically, satirically, uh, kind of uh, uh, constructs a history of, of cancel culture and mentions one thing which he did ironically, but I think it's actually not ironic. Uh, he mentions um, a, a, a religious practice of the Amish people which is called shunning. 
and they use it even though the, <laughs> yes. the German word Meidung. You know about this? Yes, where they won't talk to you, yeah. Yes, exactly. I didn't know about this, right? And this shows, I think, to me immediately, again, the, the whole kind of religious that that wokeism for me as as you said is for me a civil religious phenomenon it's a secularized form of religion mm -hmm. right and so uh, america is so religious right i mean that's how your your whole country was founded by these right. religious fundamentalists who were even too fundamentalist for europe which at that time was still <laughs> a fundamentalist christian society and then mm -hmm. they had to go to america to be even more fundamentalist <laughs> And uh, so you, I, it seems to me that America never got over it, right? And and so wokeism is kind of the civil religious occupation of something that was moving away from religion, that was more like a political thing. But even that, I mean, you know, the social justice was always very religious. Look at someone like Martin Luther King or so, who's also, of course, strongly religious background. So, um, but then with the Vietnam protests and so forth and the hippies, it became more secular, but it never really lost its kind of religiousness. And now the religiousness in wokeism strikes back so big. And one element, again, is cancel culture, which is basically an Amish practice, right? <laughs> uh, where, you, uh, uh, where you shun people who are not uh, as uh, radical in their pronouncement and just, you know, move away a little bit from what is expected and then they get shunned. And the point is really, and I was um, thinking about this, th that you really, sh it's not really only, the, the shunning is against those within your flock who um, who are somehow not right. And you see this uh, again, like the same thing with cancel culture where like the uh, people like Brett Weinstein or so, whoever, right? They were people who are actually kind of liberal, and mm -hmm. and um, but they are the main victims, not the ones necessarily who are on the on the right, right? So, uh, so I, I think it's kind of this puritanism, this kind of moralistic civil religious puritanism. Uh, that that's a kind of another revival movement in America that is now operating on a secular basis. Uh, and I think that's very much at the heart of wokeism. And it now, of course, it com comes back to Europe as well. And it's very strong there, too. And um, so, uh, yes, uh, and it and in the German and as you my point is coming from which is where I experienced this this guilt pride development in Germany. I left Germany twenty years ago, but uh, still that that is the defining element of of German civil religion. This exactly this process as you describe it. So we can be. We, we admitted the greatest guilt, but because we were able to admit the greatest guilt, we are now somehow morally superior to everyone else. Kind of also very interesting paradoxical reversal. And that's very similar to what the basically wokeism used exactly this phenomenon, right? The, uh, this mechanism and, you know, whatever. We, we've been racist in the past, but now we admit to it and that makes us somehow morally superior. Right. Uh, and then we criticize everyone else who's not 100% uh, uh, on in, uh, in line with this, and thereby we prove our own kind of regained purity. So this is a religious phenomenon, but then you are uh, criticizing, uh, can you repeat the crit critical point again? Well, you said, um, uh, you were saying that you thought that even though wokeness is definitely a phenomenon that is uh, on the left and not the right. Yes. Uh, that you were sort of you were criticizing uh, Jordan Peterson. I think you also talked about James Lindsay because they both characterize wokeness as a Marxist something that's come out right. of Marxism or should be classified as Marxist. And yes. you were saying you thought it should be classified as a a form of left neoliberalism. Yes, and uh, that was also not just my uh, my own ideas. Few mm -hmm. leftists uh, came up with this idea earlier, like Walter Van Michaels and um, I forgot now the name of the other guy. Anyways. Um, and um, uh, I mean, traditional Marxism or traditional leftism is about ic about the economy, right? It's about uh, somehow um, uh, fighting capitalism in a sense that um, 
uh, that that you try to uh, basically just have a, a, a more how to say uh, not necessarily equal distribution, but that that those who actually produce get a bigger slice of the cake who actually work. That's the point, right? That those who actually work and produce uh, get get a fair right. share of so, yeah, for so what they are doing. Ownership. Yeah, uh, right. And then we have um, so, but anyway, people it's, are it's entitled about, their fruits it, to their own labor. Is that what you're looking for? Like people are entitled to the fruits of their own labor. That's a very yes, capitalist yes, 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 perspective. Yes. Right, okay. right. Uh, anyways, it's uh, how well, whatever your position may be on this, it's about these kind of economic things having to do with work and labor and stuff. And that was what leftism was traditionally about, right? It's about it's a workers' movement. Uh, and that's no longer the case with wokeism, right? The, the economic uh, struggles, which are, I guess, still very important, uh, especially in, in, in America, um, where labor is becoming more, less and less worth, right? It's just very simply put, how much do you get paid for actual labor? And in the US, you don't really get paid a lot for your actual labor, right? Um, and um, but that's no longer the core fight. And if you if you shift the fight, if the left kind of forgets its core issue, and uh, is is replacing it with other issues, then you have all this kind of woke washing, and you have co every corporation is now super woke, and wokeism is now uh, basically promoted and uh, how to say um, um, appropriated by uh, by the big corporations and by let's say the establishment the the political and the and the economic establishment and therefore it's not left i think it is it, it is a sellout of of le of the leftist struggle mm -hmm. well i mean and again that's not my uh, that's not an original point others have made this uh, point mm -hmm. before i did well i mean like you could have a like they talk about this with environmentalism too, you know, there's the greenwashing, mm -hmm. right? You know, it's, and it's like, or, you know, you go to the grocery store and there's like a million things that say they're organic and, you know, who knows if they're really organic or not. And I mean, I think you can say that, uh, like if wokeness comes from a specific philosophy, that that's a little different than if a corporation sort of, you know, takes the mask of that on, you know, they sort of paint the blood on their door you know, like the, the ward off the 10th plague or something like if corporations want to woke signal for whatever reason, I mean, I think that would be a separate thing than whether whatever the ideology or the origin point of the ideology, uh, the basis of that, I would separate that from like whether corporations sort of wear this fake mask of wokeness. Like, mm -hmm. I, I don't think I guess what I'm saying is I don't think corporations using wokeness would would remove have anything to do with whether the ideology of wokeness comes from a neoliberal or a, a Marxist perspective. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I agree with you. Um, uh, yeah, but doesn't that prove my point? That it's not leftist? <laughs> I don't know how so. <laughs> Because, like, if if the uh, if the corporations can appropriate it very easily and profit mm -hmm. from it very easily, doesn't it that show? And if it's good for them making more profit, doesn't it show that it's not a leftist thing? Well, you're you're defining leftist as like a workers' movement. Yes, we yes. normally when we talk about leftism, we talk about socialism or the abo the abolition of property rights specifically. Yes. For, I don't know. Well, some people you say leftist, and they just mean left politics. So, well, and I guess yeah. I guess more than that is that because um, I, I feel like it sounds like you're you're conceptualizing leftism in this sense as a purely an economic issue as opposed yes. to a so there's also like I mean I would say there's also social yes. cultural issues that are on the left and yes I mean the corporations are definitely adapting these left social cultural attitudes even yes. if they're not adapting the economic ones which i agree they're not yes that's exactly the point i'm making mm -hmm. and that's why i'm saying so we use the word left differently that's maybe the maybe and it makes it makes sense to use the left in the way you use it because that's actually what has become of the left right but my point is 
it shouldn't it should they should they shouldn't call themselves left anymore it should be called left anymore it's a it's a misappropriation of the word to be fair if you look at it historically originally the left what the term actually comes from mm -hmm. uh, is from the french revolution um where uh, you know the they had this kind of parliament and then on the left side were the republicans that is those who were most against monarchy and and on the right were those who were still most in favor of the monarchy that's how they had the seating order in this parliament and so the left ones were the ones the progressive ones who were uh, for, for, for abolishing the monarchy altogether so in the beginning left was basically a political issue having to do with a republic uh, monarchy right. um, conflict and then soon after in the 19th century left and right was kind of re uh, uh, was understood in the sense that the left were the ones who were the marxists so who were for um, public property uh, more and were for workers rights and uh, on the right were those who were the the employers and uh, the capitalists so that's a second is a development of the meaning of left which shifts away from purely political to more economic issues right and now we have this shift away from the economic issues in the way you describe it towards this kind of moralistic civil religious uh me to do towards this moralistic civil religious meaning and when now is to be left is whatever for in favor of lgbtq and these kinds of things right mm -hmm. now uh, which is which is no longer really economic mm -hmm. well i think I, I mean i'm glad you brought it up i think it's a, a good way of conceptualizing because i was thinking about this the other day and i kind of thought it was similar to the divide between or not the divide, I guess the evolution or change of liberalism versus neoliberalism. Because like liberalism <clears throat> right. is a political philosophy and then, you know, neoliberalism comes along later and it kind of uses the framework in the argument of liberalism, but not for politics, for an economic system. Right. And that's kind of how I see wokeism is that they basically, it's like the inverted version of that. They took the, like a lot of the economic arguments of Marxism, like, you know, uh, conflict theory and false consciousness and cultural hegemony and things of that. And they kind of remove the economic element and they put back in a, so they put a social element into it. Exactly. Right. Yes. Exactly. Okay. So would it be, 100% agree. would it be fair to call it? I mean, I know, I guess Neil Marx has already, is like a term that's already used to describe something else, but um, I mean, is that just, the, is that the hang up is just to, to call it, you know, you don't like to call it Marxism. <laughs> No, I wouldn't call it Marxism right. at all, because Marxism is, in essence, and I don't agree with many things of Marxism either, but it definitely is, in essence, an economic theory. Right. What so is, what should we call it? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I'm civil religion. It's a civil, civil religion. religion. Yeah. I think someone suggested calling it critical social justice, which maybe that's more akin to, I mean, I don't think anyone knows what that means, but... Are you yeah. are you conceptualizing a like a political spectrum where workers are on the left and owners are on the right? That was traditionally like when I grew up, mm -hmm. that was still the case. Mm -hmm. That's still how I uh, the kind of political thing I grew up in there in Germany. Like there was still like this was like the nineteen seventies. You know, there was before Thatcher which was still an economic thing. So the main political kind of, or not, but some of the main political struggles when I was young, like a teenager was uh, unions, uh, you know, trying to get more higher wages for the workers. That was still like a very big thing at the time. Yeah, I just, the, I, I, the political spectrum thing is super interesting to me. Obviously, you brought up the the origin of the left right political spectrum with with societal change, and you can see people on the left are much more like less weary of change than conservatives are. Obviously, on the right, so I conceptualize that as a political spectrum. The economic spectrum, <laughs> I usually con like. It seems like people on the left are less weary of state power 
and you know they they want to nationalize things and whatnot but people on the right are less um skeptical of corporate power so there seems to be a dynamic between left and right you know state power versus corporate power but when i think of workers versus owners like what is that what is the what is a single factor spectrum what is that really measuring i don't necessarily know i have to think about it more but it's an interesting dynamic i've never really heard left and right conceptualized that way mm -hmm. it, it seems like a single issue type thing so well it's not really a single issue type thing it's because according to orthodox marxism this is the base structure of society and right. everything else everything else whatever education religion uh, anything uh, is um, according to orthodox marxism in the service of this base structure right so if that's the economy and uh, how the mode of production, right? Uh, how, how things are produced and who benefits from the production, right? Does, does, the mo does most of the profit go to the actual producers or to those who own the means of production? That's very basic Marxism. And this question is seen as the basis for everything. Again, like education law, very importantly, right? The social manners and so forth, that they all are kind of in the service of, of supporting this base structure, this economic base so structure. So maybe the maybe the political spectrum is like a level of societal mm -hmm. inequality from individual uh, from individual to individual. Like on the right side of the spectrum, the right is more comfortable with extreme inequality, and the left is more comfortable with lower levels of inequality. Maybe that's what you're measuring. Yes. That's one of the things, but I, I even I'm not a big fan of the notion even of equality, and I don't think it's. Uh, I mean, um, the point is just like very simple that you know that again, like those who produce, who actually work, who actually labor, uh, they should uh, you know be fairly rewarded for this, and uh, they should uh, own the means of production. Uh, mm -hmm. That's even the point, right? That the the the, the, the and since but they own it not individually uh, because that's impossible. Uh, they own it collectively, right? If that was the idea, you have whatever like industrial production in the nineteenth century, which was the main thing that they were talking about, or mines, whatever mining and these kind of things. And the the whole point is that those who labor there, who do all the work, own nothing, and that that's fucked up. That shouldn't be the case, right? The, the the actual workers who produce all the wealth should also be the owners of the wealth. Now, that's not really possible if you have single individual ownership because this is mass production. You can't really have a modern society where just everyone has their own little workshop, one person working. So the only way that Th those who actually labor, those who actually work, uh, own their mode, own the, the own both the means of production, own the the, the 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 tools they work with, which they don't, and own the the things that they produce, whatever the coal they mine, is in a collective way. It's not about uh, it's not about uh, abolishing ownership to the country. It's about making the people who actually work own what they work. That's the basic idea. Collective. This is like this whole idea of alienation, right? That, that, which comes from Hegel, if you go to the philosophy, back to philosophy, that you have this, you have this, they have this state of alienation that you're alienated from your work means you own not, neither the tools you work with, nor the products you produce. And that's alienation. And that right. state, that state, uh, according to, and it's nothing. It's not about equality. It's it's uh, it's 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 in order to remove this alienation state in in the mode of production, in how things are made, and how wealth is produced.
that's the basic idea well i i and, and and sorry for one last sentence and that's still the idea of leftism i have from the 1970s because it's precisely about this it's in germany it was still germany had very functioning that we had like a huge economic growth with very functioning unions unlike the us and it was about giving the workers a great greater mitspracherecht they had all these um uh, they were running the factories to an extent in I, the 1970s still in germany that was what what it what what it was about to to give the workers a much greater stake in the running of the companies i would i would say that the economic inequality mm -hmm. is the real focus and that the the alienation argument is kind of just a rationalization that mm. sounds good after the fact. That's the way that I, I would conceptualize it myself. But obviously, are, are, I mean, you, I'm sure you know the problems with collective ownership and there's kind of a tragedy of the sure. commons thing that goes on. So it, they tend to I agree. develop worse management. <laughs> yes. Well, I, yeah. I don't want to yes. have a... I don't want to have a, a long argument about right. co-ops or anything, Adam. But. No, no, no. I'm just I'm curious because I I don't I, you've never done a video on Marxism or anything like that. A no. lot of a lot of people think that you are like a a Marxism or a Marxist or a secret Marxist. I like I, you don't strike me as someone who, if you were a Marxist, <laughs> would keep it secret. So, well, I'm not hundred percent Marxist. Not my my um. Uh, kind of a foundation, but I, I sympathize. Uh, we can have a discussion about this on uh, social with socialism simply, but we probably have a very different understanding of this. I mean, I lived most of my life in in functioning socialist um, under functioning socialist conditions. So again, I'm talking about the Germany of the 1970s. Okay. Where large part, which was economically hugely successful, more successful than the US, right? I mean, we were like totally destroyed in the, in the Second World War, and then I had this Wirtschafts, one of this economic miracle, partly with the help of the US. But nevertheless, the, 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 the basic economic system was very socialist. That means that large parts of the economy were somehow publicly run. Uh, that's whatever the postal service, the, all of the education until today. This is, is in uh, West Germany, right? Western Germany. Western Germany. The, um, many of the banks were like co cooperative banks. Uh, the energy was kind of energy system was stained. Or the traffic, the the the, the public transport was all uh, uh, basically publicly owned. So and it worked very very well. And the uh, standard of there are other factors of course, but it was a very functioning in this in this way. Um, uh, basically, with a large part of the economy being public, and then uh, similarly, uh, I don't know if, I'm, if that's uh, I'm allowed to say this in American YouTube, but I mean oh. China, right? I came to China uh, as a young student in the 1980s and lived there for several years, and I saw this development, this amazing economic development, which is unparalleled in the world, where you have like within just 10, 20, 30 years, you have hundreds and hundreds of millions of people basically starting on the level of India and then reaching the level of India with the same kind of 1 billion uh, number of people reaching, getting close to the state of the US within 20 or 30 years. And it's all based on large parts of the uh, economy being kind of publicly organized, right? You have public education for, I don't know, hundreds of thousands. You go to an American university, see where the, all these American, uh, Chinese students are, but they come from a public education system. Uh, and uh, for, for hundreds of thousands of students are out of poverty, you have the, the public transport system, which is amazing, right? The, the, the bullet fast trains with 300 like, kilometers per hour, like thousands and thousands of kilo, kilometers throughout the country. I don't want to idealize China. There's lots and lots of political problems. But I, we're talking about economy here, right? Mm -hmm. And this is the, that's the point I'm trying to make. Uh, in my personal life experience, both in Germany and in China, I'm only speaking about the economy, 
uh, I witnessed the immense efficiency of a kind of socialist economy. It's a myth that it doesn't work. It's a myth to the country. If it's done well, if it's done in the right way, I think it works better than capitalism. Well, but again, this is more my own experience. My background is in these other things that we talked about mm -hmm. earlier. Is, I, I've read that China, even though that it's a, like a central planning type economy, I've heard that they do, one of, the, one of the things that's made it so successful is that they have introduced market forces and, and price of incentives course. and stuff like that, which Absolutely. are the hallmarks of capitalism. Absolutely, absolutely, Adam. Uh, on this, uh, absolutely, and you have to have the right mixture. You have to have the right mixture, uh, which was both the case in 1970s Germany and in, in China. You have to have the right mixture between uh, capitalism and uh, socialism. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I just we, I guess this is just maybe our bias because we we generally conceptualize. So in America, and, and us in particular on the show, we generally conceptualize socialism as the abolition of property rights, which is the like extreme state-run everything. Because a lot of times in American politics, I mean, if you just want to talk about you know, universal health care, which most European nations have some form of, are the conservative party here just i mean they're calling you a socialist already which i don't think is sure. helpful yeah because no. like you said it's like it's a it's the right mix of public and private entities yes. working together and obviously yes. the right incentives because incentives are yes. what matters right so yeah. you, you want to well i mean it's interesting because like when in america like you know post world war ii from you know the 50s to the you know, or late seventies, I guess we had, I mean, America, you know, the, the economy was not anywhere near as worker owned as, as how you're saying uh, Germany was or West Germany was, but we did, obviously we had much more, like our unions were far stronger. Labor had way more power in America. Yes. Um, and then it seemed like, you know, because, uh, you know, in the eighties, you know, you had the inflation crisis that was, that came about and basically, you know, you had Reagan, in America and yes. Thatcher and the UK and they kind, right. of, kind of we you know it seems like a lot of these economies switched over to the more the neoliberal model exactly eventually. and exactly. it's weird because it was like in the it's almost like in the 50s to 70s it seemed like you know the left at least in America had a lot more control over the economy exactly the, the right had a lot more control over the culture the culture was far exactly more, like traditional yes. and then yes when I don't know like when but i maybe in the 90s i don't know some flip occurred where once the economy kind of switched under the like the rights control it seemed like yes. the left kind of seized control of the culture yes and, exactly yeah, yeah and that's like, terrible you know, yeah and, <laughs> yeah, and it's like terrible. right now and i'm sure this this bothers you <laughs> i think it bothers a lot of people on the left who are more economically minded that like it seems like the the democrats in america and a lot of the left you know individual left uh, people and left youtubers have sort of just thrown away sort of a lot of the economics of the left and just completely fixated on these uh, social culture issues. Exactly. You know, and, and it seems like the politicians are very happy to do this because it's kind of, it's much easier for them to fixate on these cultural issues that, you know, don't really, exactly. they don't cost any money to change anything. Exactly. Do anything. Yeah. It's just, you know, it's, it's easy to sort of say like, we're going to fight racism or sexism and do nothing. Of course. Right? Yeah. As opposed to like actually implementing some economic policy or something to that effect. Exactly. Yes, that's my. I, I couldn't agree more. Mm -hmm. Is there any? Um, let's see if I can get you into trouble. <laughs> you got. <laughs> you. I think you. You made a lot of headways uh, early in, on your YouTube videos because you made a video criticizing Philosophy Tube. Mm. Um, are there any other like? youtubers that you that you want to criticize or are not really a big fan of or you think they're kind of wielding philosophy incorrectly yo how do you um, how do you feel about the youtuber vosh i mean he's a he's a marxist too can we get you to publicly you... denounce vosh on our show here uh actually i i only i didn't really i'm i'm i have to apologize i don't know him well i watched uh, a little bit of your show with him and of the conversation you had with him but i don't know enough to make any kind of 
intelligent comment on that. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. No, and the other YouTubers, yeah. uh, the other YouTubers, <laughs> you see, I don't really like that too much to, um, you know, to do these negative videos about <laughs> other YouTubers. So <laughs> I, yeah, but you have to do it. I know it's, I mean, it generates a lot of attention. Right. And, uh, mm, uh, this, this philosophy cube video in the beginning, I mean, that was ridiculous, right? That was, um, I, I, I was using this in class. I had no idea about the channel. This is how my channel became famous. Right. And then my PhD student who was sitting in the class was saying, oh, we should do a video about this because I had introduced the philosophy cube video on Kant in the class that this is not good. And I explained them why. And then he said, oh, let's do a video of this. And then we did the video uh, and then we posted it. And then on the very same day, the video got posted. The Philosophy Tube presenter, now named Abigail Thorne, mm -hmm. came out as trans. Oh, no. <laughs> yes. Oh, no. And that got like a million something views like Abigail Thorns and ours, because of then the algorithm, yes. we got like hundreds of thousands of views for this video. So overnight, because of this, is that's how the channel became, that's, that's how the hilarious. channel became successful. Yeah, I had no yeah. idea that that was what, like why I got sucked up in the algorithm. That's the, that's the only reason why. That's so bizarre, <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. Were, were, you, were you watching earlier, we were watching uh, part of that conversation between Vosh and Dr. Tom about gender, is that what you were watching? Uh, no, I wasn't oh. watching that. I was watching this uh, uh, or whatever t two weeks ago or so. Oh, okay. You had About some the, some uh, older stuff. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, something like this. Okay. Yes. Okay. Do you do you have any uh, opinions about the like the what is a woman gender conversation? Actually, or? that's my new project. I'm working oh, okay. on this. Yes. Interesting. Yes. And and of course, I I look at it also from the authenticity. Mm -hmm. for felicity perspective oh, yeah of course right. yes so um i i uh i think uh so to put this very uh generally in the past of course we had gender roles very obviously mm -hmm. right uh and now we have gender profiles and um people have to form their gender profiles and again it's the same thing we still the the, the vocabulary is still all this authenticity finding yourself being yourself but that's not how it's actually working and especially not with the transgender topic where this i think it's the same for all genders but in transgender it's becoming uh, extremely obvious the contradictions there right that that you're actually creating a gender profile and everyone has to do that and we're still having the the authenticity vocabulary to describe this but what what we're doing is actually very different from what the vocabulary says so i i also think that gender very clearly and this becomes very obvious again and with regard to the whole transgender uh theme which is so big in the media mm -hmm. um that this is a form of also building a profile identity and gender has always been at the center of building identity so for me the whole transgender thing is um, an expression, again, of the transition from authenticity to profilicity. And since gender and sexuality is so essential to identity, it's not a, uh, it's, it's, it's very close at hand that this, that this topic comes to the fore in the way it does. Mm -hmm. hmm, that's true. Yeah, so uh, I think that's uh, that, that, uh, that's something that kind of fascinates me, the, the whole gender topic, mm -hmm. right, at the moment. And of course, it's like with social media, uh, there are lots of problems attached to it, right? We have all now these, um, how people basically now, um, I don't know what the right word in English is, not obsessed, but how they are preoccupied with high pressures of creating their identities, presenting their identities, mm -hmm. and they invest a lot in it, right? They're, 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 they're willing to whatever, have surgeries that are like highly invasive and 
you know, that's a lot. Can you imagine this? I mean, what what kind of what kind of psychological and biological and personal investment uh, is going on there? So I think that's a fascinating phenomenon. And then, how, again, how society reacts to this? How society? Um, this is the other side of it. How society still tries to kind of salvage the the authenticity vocabulary, right? It's like uh, in, 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 in increasingly grotesque ways, if you know what I mean. Are, are you going to write another book? Are you going to write a second book or are you working on it? Yeah, book? that's what I'm, wor I'm working on on this topic. And I'm, of course, it's highly, um, uh, how to say, uh, controversial, right, the topic. So I sure. hope I'll find a publisher. <laughs> Yeah, you'll probably get well, can canceled. It, for... it depends. I guess it depends what you say, whether it's controversial. Yeah. Or not. <laughs> yeah. It, you might you might actually enjoy this conversation. Uh, it's it's pretty funny because it's a YouTuber who I didn't think about it until you were talking about it just now. It's a YouTuber who I would say is kind of being very you know engaged in sophistry, who's obviously primarily fixated on like their profile. Um, yes. and they're kind of having this, this, this debate and they're, he started talking to a, a philosophy teacher who is not really focused on their profiles, more focused on what they think is like the truth or the authentic truth. And it's kind mm. of interesting to see sort of like these two completely different forces butt up against each other and not be able to communicate at all. Yeah, yeah I'll, I will send it to you. It's an interesting video. You'll probably get a lot out of it because he, he is like think, a philosophy teacher and it does it. They're, they're debating the topic of what is a woman. So I, I see. Yeah. Please do, do send it to me. I'm interested in that. Yeah. He goes into the, the philosophical underpinnings of categories and the, the person he's debating is not even willing to admit that there's a difference between objects and the categories and the, the, the symbols symbol that, that define, the, yeah, that represents the category, yeah, yeah. Mm. Right. or the object. Okay, yeah. cool. So, uh, okay. anything else, or I mean, you've you've kind of answered all my questions. It's like, yeah, I think you've answered all my questions. Okay, that's that's good. <laughs> yeah, it was uh, it's it's been a great great conversation. Thanks a lot for having me. Yeah, thanks show. for coming on. This was great. Yeah, we will. Uh, if you, you want to, if you want to come on, talk about gender at some point in like a more deep and more depth when you like get yes. into your book, that'd be wonderful. Yeah, yeah. that would be a, that. Let me think a little bit more about this, mm -hmm. and then then we can then we can discuss that. That would I, be great. I have uh, I, I your book is super fascinating to me. It's it's difficult for me to recommend it to people because so many people are are anti woke, and you. I think you unironically cite Judith Butler in the book, which is like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. which I got, I got to admit, that's the first, that's the first citing of Judith Butler that I thought actually, you know, made logical sense. So I'm much more open-minded about this stuff. You, some people are so tribal these days. It's like, you know, obviously. Yeah. Kind of ironically quote her. It's about this book she wrote, giving an account of, giving an account of yourself. And uh -huh. I, I, I I switch it to the because you didn't intend it in this way because now we're basically all giving an account ourselves in the sense of a profile right everyone has their different accounts so maybe I misread it are you saying that Judith Butler was wrong or correct in her assessment uh, it's a little bit like tongue in cheek okay why well, yeah <laughs> I didn't get that so oh well, there you go yeah now you can well, recommend it to more people maybe I can okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. Thanks for coming on. This was a fascinating talk. Obviously, do you yeah. want to do you want to pitch your channel or anything before you take off? Uh, yeah, yeah, I don't really know how to do that. <laughs> we, <laughs> we, we, yes, we, uh, check out my channel. <laughs> I know it seems so odd, especially in an authenticity. It's it seems so inauthentic to give do us that. your profile. <laughs> yes. Well, I like profilicity. I don't I don't mind it. I just not not really that much. Uh, well, actually, there's a, there's, I had one more question I just forgot, which is like people generally classify, you know, authenticity as like a moral position mm -hmm. and putting on this facade of, you know, a profile, a profilicity, like an immoral position. Right. But you're, exactly. you're, you're talking about it like in a very neutral way, right? You're not. Yes. Do, I mean, do you yes. give any credence to the people that think authenticity is more moral? 
Well, I think we all grew up in the age of authenticity. I don't know about you. I don't know exactly how old you are, but mm -hmm. uh, at least I did. So in that sense, it's something that, that I still built my identity with, and most people did it. But at the same time, uh, I think it's uh, entirely paradoxical and actually impossible to be authentic, right? We learn authentic, like with a Werther, from someone else. And the more, the more intentionally we, we try to be authentic, the more obvious the paradox becomes, right? Um, mm -hmm. So that, that I, I, I see through the paradox of authenticity. That's my own personal experience. And so I do not share... Uh, the moralistic um, approach. And again, the morality, sorry for again, you uh, answering, uh, responding to the question in such a kind of long winded way. Uh, I think morality follows the, 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 the mode of the reigning mode of identity. So back in sincerity times, it was a morality of honor, and everything was, uh, everything that was morally good was, uh, you know, related to fulfilling your role. Right? Mm -hmm. Again, like a morality of honor, you have to be whatever, um, uh, a, a, a virtuous wife, and you have to be whatever, an honest shopkeeper, or you have to be a brave soldier. It's all related to how you live up to your role. And then the whole moral code changes with authenticity. You know, you have to be true to yourself. You have to be original. You have to be um, creative and all these kind of things. And, and it has to be, you always have to truly express your inner uh, whatever, right? And right. and um, so the, the uh, for me, I'm an amoralist or whatever. Uh, morality is relative to... Um, the way we uh, define our identity. And since we live in an age of authenticity, even though it's uh, uh, we're in the transitioning to felicity, mm -hmm. we still uh, kind of our language and our thinking still reflects this, this morality of the regime of authenticity. Right. But I don't share it. I, I look at it I share it in the sense that I grew up with it, that I understand it, that it, that it's part of my 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 life, but as a philosopher, I can distance myself from it, and that's why I'm an amoralist. I'm 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 critical towards this this um, this uh, whole kind of indoctrination of values of authenticity, even though at the same time, I. I grew up with them, and therefore they're part of myself. Right. Yeah, no, I, I understand exactly what you're saying. Um, I mean, and this could be my own bias, too, because I did grow up very much. I mean, I'm younger than you, but I definitely, at least uh, where I grew up, you know, in the culture and in the media that I consumed, it was very much like, you know, be yourself, be yourself, be yourself. Yes. You know, very authentic, yes. you know, shove down your throat. Um, yeah. So I guess, like, and maybe it's unfair of me to characterize or categorize things this way, but I think of like authenticity and being yourself on Twitter is like someone, you know, writing a long tweet where you sort of explain like a complicated nuance uh, situation, which, you know, no one reads or cares about versus like, You're right. the, 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 like, con, you know, constructing the profile is like giving like the one sentence, very low resolution, like exactly. very tribal yes. kind of, thing that everyone you know likes and retweets because it's so broad and vague that everyone kind of interprets it however they want exactly so, yeah right and bring this back yeah, but to i see that it's like bad the <laughs> it's like a bad thing you see that brings us right back to the beginning of the conversation yeah that like the 10 year old girls who, who experience this contradiction and mm -hmm. then they can't cope with it right right hmm. Hmm. that's it i mean it's interesting because i never really conceptualize like like I think with like a lot of, a lot of what height focuses on with with kids is that the stress is that they feel like they have to be constantly on like it's like you're constantly in a social group as opposed to having yeah I think it time. goes much deeper they have to become they have to build an identity because they don't have one yet and they're just like ten years old and they yeah, have to yeah. build a, they have to build it in the form of a profile and and then they get criticized because they're not authentic enough. Yeah, and I think I think that's a really good point. That there is this weird contradiction that they yes. can't really wrap their minds around. <laughs> yes, height yeah. does recognize that you can't 
pull them away from social media because it's cruel that all their friends are experiencing social yes, media and exactly. they're not participating in it. So he does a, at some level recognize the problem there. All of his yes. friends are building an identity in this new exactly. way and they have to participate. So he's kind of, he's advocating that, that no one builds that idea. Like he just, you, you take that tool away from everyone and kind of solidify the realm of authenticity on the younger generation. But I just, I, what is a, I mean, it seems like th th those are the ages that you really are building your identity, no matter whether your sincerity, authenticity, or, or exactly. pro felicity. Yes. Like trying to build an identity, you know, when you're 30, <laughs> It's like, I mean, yeah, you, you do, you, most of your identity building is done in your teens and twenties. Exactly. So, yeah, exactly. Exactly. So people in chat want us to ask him the questions that we're not, I mean, this is like a professional type. I mean, obviously he's a respected author and, uh, <laughs> and, uh, you know what? I mean, if you want to answer joke questions that's and fine. YouTube, you let me know. <laughs> Just think if I'm okay. I'm just okay. Gonna try. I'm not sure if I'm good at it. I'm okay. good at uh, it. Yeah. The, the first question, I'm only. I'm not gonna ask. The, the, the first Why question not? is. No, you have to ask yeah, the last one. Uh, do Do you do you think that you could defeat a horse-sized duck in a fight? A horse-sized duck? Yeah. yeah. If a duck was the size of a horse, could you defeat it and, and kill it if you had to? I don't know. I mean, this depends, right? Uh, I wish I, 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 I wish I, I would be able to. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. You have to say, what do you think? Yes, the, the horse-sized duck is coming for you. It's going to kill you. Are you going to, are you going to manage to defeat it, or are you going to get eaten? Uh, I imagine myself, uh, you know, uh, doing a bold picking. How to say? What's the English word? I know. I, I, I imagine myself like kind of a knight. Defeating the, <laughs> the defeating the beast. Ice. Wow. Nice. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Based every every other person except for me. Me and you are I the know. only ones that think we can take the duck. Everyone I else know. thinks they're gonna lose. Yeah. We, we all accept awesome. our fate as no, duck no. food. <laughs> Extra based. Okay. Uh, the second question is: uh, Are owls birds? Uh, <laughs> as far, that's a good question. That sounds like a trick question. <laughs> I would say, yeah, they look like birds. Fly. Okay, good. That's the correct answer. It's not a trick question. <laughs> you, you we we passed, had a guest yeah. on who argued with us that owls were not birds. So now we have to ask everyone forever that owls are birds. Now, okay. now the, the last question is optional. So <laughs> you really want me to ask? I'm not asking. Well, go ahead, go I, ahead, I'm, go ahead. I'm always I'm always amazed at how many people are really, really. You know, they're gung ho to jump into the question. The last so. question is about, it, it involves pornography. So that's about, why. Okay, okay, go ahead. Go ahead. It yeah. involves personal pornography consumption habits. Right. Okay, go ahead. Okay. The question is um, Do you, when watching pornography, do you view it like two people and you're sort of like voyeuristically watching them? Or do you like put yourself in the place of, you know, one of the, the actors, like as if it's you? Well, if I would watch <laughs> pornography, right? <laughs> uh, you have to rephrase it. Yes, yes. Yeah. If I would, I, I would prefer the option number one. Real? Okay. <laughs> oh, so like, really? like okay. other people. Okay, gotcha. Interesting. I, I, is it yeah, because I mean, I don't know, right? It's uh, if I would watch it. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah, I mean. People do weird things, right? And <laughs> I don't <guess> necessarily. <laughs> I like right, I like a, that perspective. A plumber or, right. or, a, or a step brother <laughs> or anything like that. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly this kind of stuff. Yeah. I mean, I, I, yeah. that question is so interesting to me because almost everyone that I talk to about this, like no one conceptualizes that other people think about it in a completely different way than them. Yes. Yeah. Or that there's more than one way to think about it. Yeah. Or yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, there you go. I think, I think you may be one of our most based guests. Yeah. You know, <laughs> okay. Guests that's a big compliment. Oh so, yeah. That's a that's, big compliment. Yeah. Awesome. Well, we're looking for, right. 
we're looking forward to your next video. Thanks for coming on. Obviously, we'll we do long streams on Tuesday, but we clip them out as standalone videos, so we'll put it up on our channel. So, and link to okay. your channel. Okay. Thank so. you. Yeah. I'm Thank you good. very much. This was great, fascinating, and I, I mean, we yeah. might ask you to come back on again because this is in, really interesting. Yeah, I'd love stuff, to. So. I'd love to. Okay. Take care. Okay. Take bye -bye. care. You too. Bye bye. Later. Awesome. That was great. I'm yeah. glad he answered the porn question. Shot I know. I, the chat is so, I mean, I got to admit, as soon as I saw him asking, I'm like, fuck. <laughs> but well, yeah. there you go. But he answered it. That was pretty, very based. Yes. Very based. <laughs> cool stuff, man. Yes. And you, yeah, uh, he's a great guest. He's a very cool guy. I never really, I never thought of, I guess, just se separating the whole of politics just down to economics i guess it really is that economics versus cultural issues yeah well i mean you know if he i, I don't know what it was like and I, I think probably i guess i should ask this because i didn't think about what you said just now like i wonder if in germany like the the social like when he grew up in the 70s there wasn't really anyone probably maybe there was no one arguing the social aspect from a political ones it was literally just economic questions right and so that's sort of like how he, the conceptualization of politics is based around that where in america even though from the 50s to the 70s i think the right had a lot more control of the culture i mean there was we were in the middle of a culture war in the 70s like, right. in the 60s too with vietnam and the civil rights act and all this other stuff so we never i don't know if we ever experienced that like unipolar uh political environment where it was just about the economy or just about the culture or something yeah both are very motivating ways to conceptualize the country right so they they kind of are in tension with one another <laughs> depending upon the situation right i mean if mm -hmm. if the economic situation is good obviously the culture is the is the flag to capture if the right, economic right, right. conditions are bad then the culture is less relevant mm -hmm. yeah no it's that's a fascinating talk and i mean he, it does seem like he's very much marxist oriented but i mean you can actually talk to him like a human being unlike yeah. <laughs> just like you got to admit i mean it is it, it is an interesting perspective for someone who's right. just not I guess most of that is because he comes from the authenticity perspective and it's not well, as much about building a profile for him. I don't even think it's that. I think it's, you know, he talks about how because of sort of the way he's viewing things philosophically that he's able to create distance between what he thinks is moral and sort of the argument. Because he's, you know, talking about how this, you know, he he thinks you know authenticity is more moral because he understands that's the framework that he grew up in yeah um we and got, so go ahead. you know because Sorry. he's able to create that distance i think that's why you can sort of like you know have these conversations without things getting like ridiculous <laughs> so. there i was trying to when he was talking about morality it doesn't mm -hmm. neatly fit into my concept of morality sure of course but yeah so well and also i mean it's funny because i think that we share a lot of uh overlap with him because i and i've heard this i mean there's a lot of of you know primarily left economic focused people who really really dislike wokeness <laughs> because they basically feel like like the wokies uh marched i think even james Lindsay used this example like that Thank the you woke both basically marched fight. on them in the middle of the night and stole their flag and <laughs> when they had their pants down and then kind of just marched off with it and yeah you know <laughs> totally. there's nothing really they could do about it. i thought we were arguing economic issues what's all this race stuff yeah exactly it's like and it's all just completely you know overtaken everything so there you go yeah 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 so um so you seemed pretty competent in the pro felicity stuff at least interested in it Oh, I am interested in it. Yeah, um, yeah. I think it's a, I think it's a very interesting way to conceptualize things. 
Um, and I never really thought of it in terms of that is what is stressing kids out so much is sort of this trying to balance these, you know, contradictory uh, ideas about authenticity and profilicity. Well, building an identity is the most stressful part of life as it is. I mean, obviously deciding you're deciding on a college, you know, am I going to go to college? You know, who are my yeah, friends? But that's, that's different. Well, it could be different. Depends because yeah, like some people can conceptualize things like, Oh, you know, I, you know, I got to go to college so that I can get a good job. So, you know, people will like me. Right. Mm -hmm. But I think a lot of people like, they're like, Oh, I don't, you know, I got to go to college cause I have to get a good job. So I'm not like, so I can make money. Like, you know, they're not really viewing it necessarily from a profile perspective. Um, well, so I think mean? you have to, you have they, to separate identity from profile. Cause I think they're a little different. If they're planning on going to Harvard, they want to go to Harvard because Harvard looks good on their profile. Well, that's something that's more specific, right? Uh, sure. I mean, like if you want to go to a specific, you know, if you're like busting your ass because you want to go to a specific school because you want to do, you know, be the top of the class, right. you know, because you want to get a specific job, you know, that's, a, yeah, obviously that, that's a lot more profile oriented. Um, well, you're building an identity as a Harvard man, right? Or guess are you going to build an identity around the college that you went to or are you going to buy it what where are you gonna i mean i i definitely have built an identity around being an artist like that's been right my authentic well, self forever. it's it's funny because i'm so like i'm so deep into like the rebellious authenticity bubble right <laughs> like, like i for me like i would never identify like like I, I always saw school spirit is like i was literally daria i'm like i saw school spirit and like, like conformist yeah like these obviously. fucking conformist sheep you know obviously i mean i wasn't so like you know uh, emo about it but that's basically what my thought process was so i would never think in a million years to put any weight in my identity to like what school i went to i mean i just went to a state school so i didn't mm -hmm. i'm not like an ivy league or anything but if well, i yeah, was obviously. i would yeah, either, i would be but... rubbing it in your face fucking every day i'd be like i went to princeton motherfucker or i went to ucla i'd be like <laughs> i mean yeah, but even then it's not even like that's not even your identity it's more like you're just using this as like a cudgel <laughs> well i would <laughs> use it i would use it as part of my identity if i had done something like that well it's but... more like a signifier like this is this show. This is a representation to show that I am like intelligent or something. Well, higher status, yeah. Yeah, I have higher. I have. I've achieved some higher level status than you have, essentially. This is right. the th when he was talking about the. Because I'm really trying to imagine this political spectrum with the workers versus the owners. It real that is really just a status competition. It really right. is. Right. Anyway, for, okay. That guy makes me think way more than Mosh does. So. I oh, gotta, of course. Yeah, right. we'll just we'll just have to fix the audio next time. It wasn't it wasn't horribly bad for me, and I did turn it down a little bit. So hopefully it comes out. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Well, I was thinking if it if I don't know how it comes out if you turn it down, um, like because when we clip it, we could lower it or something. Play with the audio like a, bit. a little bit. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think because well, part of the thing that's annoying with Zoom is I know you on your like an like you can't I don't think you as a host can do anything. Nope about volume which is a really horrible design flaw for zoom, for zoom i know it yeah, is it's kind yeah. of shocking um i know that like each individual can adjust their audio but i think there's a problem where like i'll try I'll have to experiment with this i think you lose a lot of settings if you don't have like a signed in account which oh, really? i don't you know i don't know if he, if he has a signed in account oh, okay because if you do have a signed account you can just click a thing and lower audio settings come up yeah yeah Hmm. Okay. okay. Well, let me get back to the super chats. Yeah, I'm gonna look up and see. I think we actually have Christian Riley's coming back on next week, so that should That's be right. fun. That's right. Especially <laughs> after the January sixth. <laughs> I mean, uh huh. Because remember, we were talking about whether or not Trump's a racist. Christian Riley came on. He runs the MMT podcast, which I really like his podcast. It, It's what? Why are you laughing? Oh, my God. I don't want to interrupt you. What are you saying? No, tell me. Someone's obviously but no, I looked at, um, you. 
the the cookie clicker thing that Canvas Infinitum made, the free will clicker. It's like so fucking funny. Canvas Infinitum. <laughs> yeah, it's a CT uh, right. linked it to us too. It's pretty amazing. How's it work? It, like it's a there's a game called Cookie Clicker. And okay, um, that's pretty loud. Yeah, you're gonna have to turn the volume down. There's a game called Cookie Clicker mm-hmm. where you basically just like click a cookie and it produces more cookies. Mm-hmm. And uh, and it gets like ridiculous. Like you have to like use cookies to buy more grandmas to make more cookies. And then you use cookies to buy like mines where cookies can be mined. It just becomes like this whole insane, like ridiculous. Like a, eventually you're making like demonic packs with demons from alternate dimensions to produce more cookies and stuff. And so Canvas Infinite did like a joke on that, but it's like the free will clicker. Where oh wait, does it actually work? Oh wait, it actually works. I thought it was just a GIF. Yeah, I, I sparked sparked it up and it was making all kinds of noise. I'm trying to bring it up on screen. Here we go. Here it is. The free will mining. Yeah, so okay, so we have like, yeah, you if you click on the pop-ups, uh it increases like the free will that you <laughs> that, that is being generated. Like, that's, that's really funny. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like oh, if you see, you see the CNN and Fox uh, pop-ups, that pop up in the middle of the screen. Oh, there we go. I figured out how to turn the music off. Okay. So I'm clicking on the pop-ups as they come up, and I get free will for that, or? Yeah, like it, it, I'm assuming it increases the uh, rate of free will that comes in or something. Mm-hmm. Hi, Rags. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Let no more, no more MMT. What? <laughs> yeah, I like the names. Uh, Leighton homosexual. Where's the comic comedy show? Let Sargon in. Kick V. Make Aiden cry. Hi, Rags. Oh shit. <laughs> I see the no more energy. A normal alliance. Comedy no show. No MMT. <laughs> look at all these. This is movies. hilarious. This is so amazing. This is from uh, Canvas Infinite made this. Oh. So there you go. We'll, we'll have to make a, a free will clicker at some point. <laughs> like a full <laughs> clicker. That's funny. Here we go. Awesome. Oh, look, CT put it in the chat already. Look, she's already on it. Nice. All right. I'm just going to get. Look, I'm up to $26 of free will here. Nice. Look at these. Breaking it in. Abby. These damn CNN pop ups. Trying to give me all this fake news. Trying to totally destroy my mind. Yeah, when you close them, it increases your free will. But I'm leaving the Fox ones open. Oh, I'm only so closing the scene. <laughs> you're not going to you're gonna slow down your free will production at that rate. Oh, really? Yeah. But it looks like free will just goes up on its own. Yeah, but it goes up more when you close the uh, oh, okay. nice. pop-ups. I got nine CNNs. All right. Nice. Um, where was I in the, the stream labs? Mm. Uh, Dr. Diller for a dollar says, I don't care what chat says. Making fun of Vosh's stupidity is funny as hell. And I enjoy these streams. True. Thank you, Diller. And yes. I kind of don't true. really care either. It's just, it's usually just like one. Oh my God, we're doing Vosh again this week. Yeah. And I, like, I don't, it's like, okay, don't watch if you don't want to. Right. Yeah. I mean, I agree. I don't want to be like the Vosh reaction channel or anything. Well, like, I don't, we only looked, I don't mind. only looked at that video because we were kind of like killing time till Charlotte came on. So, well, and we're going to clip it out, obviously, and put it on the channel. So, well, okay. We still need to talk about that. <laughs> but it's hilarious. You, have, you definitely have to send uh, the doctor. Oh, I, I already sent it to him. Yeah. Oh, nice. That yeah. link. I, I, it would be amazing if he did like a video. He watched it. And did, I like, know. Oh, oh, it'd be so good. Because I didn't even. That's. I had no idea that he was doing gender next, which I guess makes sense considering if you're talking about you know authenticity versus uh, profilicity. He does. I mean, he does response videos, and he's always very professional and polite. Right. He's, he's trying to be academic about it. Of course. He did a, a that Wait a second. Um we've responded to this guy. What the theater kid guy? The th- you know the theater kid guy went after Tom all Tom Tom, Tom yeah. 
that Tom, name? I don't even can't remember his name. He's like a socialist, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> he went after him for the woke video and tried to like cancel oh, and, him, and basically. Carefree yeah. Wine did a, a response to that? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, Tom Tom went full fucking woke woke scold on his ass. Oh my god. Was calling him out on Twitter and yeah. And it was funny because, you know, he's responding like you know, like an adult. I'm an adult. I'm yes. a, I'm, a, I'm a respected philosophy professor, okay? Right. I don't want to get in the mud here with you. Which obviously. Oh, you mean he responded on Twitter? He didn't respond. Did he respond in a video? He did. And which which video is it? Summed up, I think, part of the Twitter exchange. Uh, it's on his channel. I can't remember the name of the guy though. We've responded to his videos a couple times, I believe. Yeah, I don't see a thumbnail with his face on it. Here, I'll find oh, it. I'll Read some super some chats. I'll find but, it um, for you. I know who you're talking about. Yeah, Tom. I thought his name was Tom Oliver or something. Tom Mishmouth, I think is his name. Tom Mish. <laughs> I'm sure someone in the chat has Tom, been yelling the name. Tom, the the Tom Theater Punk. Tom Theater Kid? Yeah. No one's yelling the name of the chat. Because no nobody, knows, nobody chat? knows who he is. Tom Woke <laughs> Uh, Wait. Yeah. What if I type in like Tom leftist? <laughs> <laughs> I know that's that'll that will actually bring probably up. bring something up. I did not bring it up. No. Well, he did a video on cancel culture, right? That was what it was. And he was sort of talking about like the French Revolution or some bullshit. Cancel culture. Uh, Tom Nichols. Tom Nichols. That's the guy. Tom Nichols. Tom Nickelback. There you go. Tom Nickel and Dime. Tom Nickel and Dime. I like that. That's better. Woke as a civil religion. Oh, is that the video where he's talking about Tom Nichols? No, I think this is a video that Tom responded to on Twitter and got all butthurt about. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, oh, I should have watched. He has a, it says Ukraine war, de-escalate the destructive dynamics. Well, maybe you could have argued about that. I disagree. I think I disagreed pretty harshly with that. Oh, okay. With that. But I mean, obviously, we can have him on again. It's sure. Great guest. People seem to like it. Uh, Dr. Diller for two dollars says at 40 minutes exactly in the video Fosh says the difference between these feminized biological males and, reg and regular biological males implying he As does know that there is a prescriptive element to manhood additionally that's true that's true additionally he said in the middle of some utter so uh, sophistic bullshit sophistic bullshit leading me to believe he said it unconsciously unconsciously if that's the case then it's a slip that Vosh knows his entire argument is nonsense. What he is saying isn't related to what's normative. So unlikely he did it for the example. I mean, that's that's what's frustrating about the conversation to me is that, of course, Vosh knows it's bullshit. He 100% knows it's bullshit. Everyone knows it's bullshit. If, if a three-year-old child can look at a door and a chair and understand these categories, you know, look at a man and a woman, understand these categories, then obviously there's something to it, right? There's some intuitive property to it that makes sense outside the bounds of whatever insane bullshit, you know, sophistry that we're going to try to use to deconstruct all this stuff. So, yeah, even if you can't, even if people are unable to articulate it clearly. And I think this is, I mean, I think the main issue here is that just they're arguing against a way of defining words that we don't actually use to define words. And people don't realize it because a lot of the way people use language and define words is such a intuitive thing that people just don't even conceptualize. They're not thinking about how these processes form their minds. Yeah, of course not. Actually, I'd be curious to... to 
to hear like John McWhorter talk about that um, since he's a linguist. And I know he sort of disagreed with Jordan Peterson to some extent on the, the neo pronoun stuff. Right. But then again, he was, I don't know if he's ever, has he taught, I don't, I haven't heard him talk about like, is there a difference between a woman and a trans woman before? He's a, ling- a linguist too. I mean, he would right. totally destroy that Bosch argument. Right. Uh, Dr. Ziller for a dollar says, I've become convinced chat cannot take part in a conversation with something they disagree with without shouting out banal platitudes. <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, fair, true. Yeah. Because you, know, you know what chat is, right? Yeah. You know the what chat u- is, right? The universal, the general peer. That's what he no, calls it. No, it's everyone doing their pro pro felicity. <laughs> yeah. Yes. It's putting on your profiles. Yeah. Just right. like social media. Signaling. It's a signal. Yes. Come on, guys. Well, Consume the free will. Don't just signal. Okay. Stop signaling. He did. Just listen. Start I... being your authentic selves. Okay. He did, he, <laughs> when I brought up the, you know, the the market forces that China has used to create a thriving society, like, mm-hmm. <clears throat> he didn't balk at that at all. He totally agreed. Right. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, he's obviously not like one of these, he's not like a hardline Marxist. Right? Can you, Vosh would have never accepted that. Vosh can't even accept that H2O is water. Like, come on. <laughs> why would you want to have a why would you want to have a conversation with someone like Vosh? I guess because it's funny. <laughs> yeah. Know. Well, ultimately it is funny. And that is right. a good reason to do it. So right. as long as you wouldn't want to have a serious conversation. Yeah. I mean you're it's a oh, it's just a, it's a completely different game that you're playing. It's a completely yes. different mode of being. <laughs> right. Well, I mean I think I, I I never thought about it until we were talking uh, to to the doctor. Yeah. Like that it's literally Vosh is just 100% profile and the philosophy teacher is 100% trying to be authentic. And it's just watching these two strategies kind of butt up against each other. Yeah. So it's very fascinating. Uh, Diddler for $2 says the problem with saying something can be racist. And let's be honest, many times they do not need the basic... They do not mean the basic differentiating by race. Without intent is you're removing a fundamental com- component of morality from a moral judgment. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, obviously, I agree with that completely. Um, yeah, it's, it's not as, it's not really, you take the moral sting out of it. Right. And I didn't want to delve too deep into it. And maybe if we talk to her again, we'll, we'll bring it up again, which would be to me, the only like the purpose of calling someone a racist and i think she'd agree with this the, the entire purpose of calling someone a racist is to shame them yes into uh, com- complicity right to shame them into complicity for a belief and it's like so so it doesn't make it, there's like no sense to it whatsoever if i mean if you acknowledge that then you know you can't to broaden because what she was talking about wasn't even implicit racism, or not even how I would think of impl- or unconscious racism. I guess. Yeah, unconscious is a better term. Because like implicit racism, to my understanding, is an, it's like an unconscious racism. It's saying that you have some sort of bias against something or someone that you're not fully consciously aware of. Well, right? it, it could also be emergent. I think if it's implicit, if it's like implied in the system that's what implicit is from sure but i would never consider like i don't think like not addressing a group of people's systemic racial history of bigotry like that is not i would never consider that implicit racism or no i wouldn't whatsoever either yeah right so and obviously you know if you're going to call someone who's you know not buying into the systemic effects of racism as a racist i mean i just i think that's basically what you're saying you're you're basically saying that it's racist to have 
pretty general right wing views that are not racist at all. That is, but that that's the point. The whole game right. that's being played is to shame people into complicity, and that complicity is to adopt liberal, uh, actually progressive politics, illiber right, right. illiberal progressive politics. Yeah, exactly. Which I, I, one of the things that Hans said that was so good was the like just calling out America as just we got fundamentalism in our genes. <laughs> we really do. We're surrounded right. by fundamentalists. There's so few right. of us that aren't in some way fundamentalists, but now we just have all these different you know, outlets for our fundamentalism. And wokeism is just a, the latest extension of that fundamentalism. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, I even as a kid, I, my, I, my, there was a Baptist uh, revival. So I've heard that term before, the revival term. And revivalism is something, you know, that's gripped the United States in many different, at many different times in history. This is like a, the big woke revival. Right, exactly, yeah. We're going back to our puritanical roots, guys. <laughs> we are. There was, um, I sent you this uh, speech, or not speech, it's a little paper. Oh, I read it. That thing's amazing. Yeah, there was, because um, the, the reason, if you guys remember, there was like a, a, a very woke CIA, CIA ad right. from like a million years ago, or from last year or something. It feels like a million years ago where like the CAA lady is like, you know, oh, I'm, you know, I'm a Latina woman with a general anxiety disorder. Latinx. I'm in the CAA. Yeah. Right. Like, it's funny because like, I don't, we, maybe we should watch that ad. I don't know. We'll see. Maybe we'll, we'll put that on the back burner. Maybe we'll watch it at some other point in the future. Be, yeah. Yeah. I want to talk about it later. There's a lot to talk about that video because that video is hilarious because she is like, I'm not here as my for just my identity. And when she says that, I swear, this is like literally shot like an SNL parody sketch or something. Like, as she says, I'm not just here for my identity. I'm here based on my merit. The visual cuts to like uh, diversity award. <laughs> right. Like this person won a diversity award. It, like it keeps cutting to all these like CA like wins diversity awards. CA hires someone for diversity. Like it's just so. Like the visuals are undermining everything she's saying. It's, it's like it's so it, funny. It totally undercuts everything she's yes, saying. Yes, yes. But in it, in the beginning of the video, she quotes uh, like this black lady from the early 1900s, or I guess the 1940s. I don't know, 1920s maybe. Who, like, she completely misunderstood what this woman's saying because I went back and I read the paper that she was citing because it's only like four pages. And this woman is like the most based woman alive. Yeah, she's like completely race abolitionist mentality. Yeah, her name was Zora Neale Hurston. And she wrote this paper called, this was a very short like paper called How It Feels to Be Colored to Me. And she's like, she's like Kamana. If Kamana was like a black woman in the 20s, it's <laughs> just like, just so ultra based. I was like, oh my God. She completely, the woman in the commercial completely misunderstood like, I think the point of this, uh, her story, which was a hundred percent, uh, race abolitionism and to say that race doesn't matter and I'm an individual. Yeah. Yeah. For, and that was super based for the time period, obviously. Right. And a lot of, for a lot of her family probably was racist. Well, it was funny because I looked, when I looked, well, not that I don't know if her family was racist, but she obviously was, I mean, she was living in pre... A racist culture, know, yeah. Right. She was living in, you know, segregation time. So obviously she was, you know, the brunt of racism. But it's funny because when I was looking into her, I saw that actually she was being cited by John McWhorter as being like the first, like, black Republican or something. Really? Or the first black conservative that or something. totally makes sense. The first that like totally celebrated black makes sense. yeah. I was like, oh, okay. I think he said it somewhat tongue in cheekish, but oh, really? I'm assuming. Uh, Doctor Lifferdar says it's like being called evil because you sold cra uh, crawfish 
to someone who ordered them not knowing they had an allergy and later died from consuming it. The intent to kill was never there. So there's no moral culpability. That's a good example. Yeah. That's a good example. Well, it would be like saying, um, no, okay. Um, you're, oh, okay. I can't think of another example, but. Uh, Diddler from Odar says, additionally, it opens the door to literally anything being racist, and you have to accept moral and social responsibility for something that wouldn't be racist anywhere along the line until someone who engages with it decides to take offense. Very true. Very true. Oh, wow. Dr. Diddler with one, four, five, six, seven dollars. Thank you so much. With one, two, three, four, five. Let me read these. I'll try. I'll add spaces so it doesn't come off as pure schizo posting. Uh, you can make the argument that some of these crazy leftists aren't necessarily racist, just using racist language to achieve a fundamentally good thing, but then a lot of them also know what they're doing is racist, so dot, 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 dot. True. Yeah, yeah. Well, what they, obviously what they believe is a fundamentally uh, good thing. But I don't know, I think a lot of them are racist, though. They, they have a real problem their their use mm -hmm. of the different definition of racism is twofold like it it indicts their political enemies and also indemnifies them against racism so right right exactly yeah well and it's just i mean i think lance is a perfect example like and i think matt matt and lance have no idea what crt is at all no they yeah. don't have any clue and they might I'm assuming they would fundamentally disagree. I mean, maybe I'm wrong, but I'm assuming that they would disagree with being like a black separatist or a black nationalist. I would assume that they would disagree that black uh, people and white people should interact with each other as if they're like foreign citizens of different countries. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and right, like that's the fucking page one of, of CRT is like this bizarre conceptualization of how racists should interact with people. That's what I was saying to Charlotte. Like, like she doesn't, I don't think she understands fully uh, what Kimberly Crenshaw is advocating for. Kimberly Crenshaw is saying that the prescription, that the end goal of colorblindness is not possible, which of course she would say that was like Derek Bell's entire fucking thing. That was his jam. She, and I just, Charlotte I said think, she agreed with that though. No, but she agreed with a different conception of it. Okay. She, I thought she said she agreed, like, that we should, pers like, uh, as a goal. I thought right? she said it was unachievable, though, that she agreed that that was an impossible I don't goal. I thought she did. But. Which I was like, man, that really sucks. <laughs> right. Well, if that, yeah, if that's the case, then I guess we're just doomed. But. Maybe it is, but we have to at least pretend that it's achievable and try. Right. I mean, how do you? Well, who wants to live in a world that's the opposite of that? Right. Uh, Doctor D says, "I did it. I didn't send the super chat about something." Sitch then immediately said, <laughs> "Unfortunately, I used that money to send this one, so the result was the same." That's okay. <laughs> that's that's fine. That's good. Uh, Doctor D says, "It's interesting that Doctor Ghost sees everything through an individualistic lens." but also subscribes to a ton of exclusively collectivist ideologies, rose colored lenses. Yeah. I, that, I thought that was very fascinating because she does agree. It seemed like with our conception of like racism and on like this, don't judge people as individuals and all this other stuff. But then that to me, that would contradict a lot of like the collectivist stuff that comes from the left that she subscribed to the left, the leftism stuff that she subscribes to. So well, it's even an interesting she, contradiction. Even when she called herself an individualist, I could feel Vosh fans just cringing out of their seats because that's like <laughs> a buzzword now. It is. It's true. Right, right. Individual. What? What are <laughs> you, a libertarian? Right. Yeah. I don't know. She seemed nice enough. She seemed reasonable enough. Sure. So. And if, I mean, I, I'm with you on the Vosh does believe conservatives are all racist, but I mean, 
it's at least promising that some people don't <laughs> believe he believes that, right? Well, it's funny. I, I didn't. I was contemplating whether to to bring it up or not because. I mean, it's funny because she, you know, for someone who was talking about radicalization, I mean, she's literally was essentially giving the same defense of Vosh that like people give of Nick Fuentes, you know, like, oh, oh he's just joking. He's just being you hyperbolic. Can't, you can't bring that up. I know. I was like, oh, I don't know if I could like, I don't know if I could like that will just I mean, I destroy kind of, the conversation. I kind of brought that that idea but no i didn't link it to nick point right i was trying to think of a way yeah. to bring it up a little like ease into it yeah because i mean i just and i and i, and I was going to send her the that debate because i'm very curious as to what her opinion on that political violence debate is um oh, because yeah. it, that's that's the way it comes across you know to me is it's, it's the same thing as people sort of defending nick point is saying it's just jokes i'm like uh, is it though is it though? Question mark. I don't think so. I don't think so. Well, ultimately, I mean, the reason why they're against jokes in the racial context or the or the they gay say they're not context. Jokes. Well, no, they they admit that they're jokes, but they still say that it's you know it causes harm. So harmful. And, yeah, right. exactly. Well, they say both. They say it's it's harmful and or it's a dog whistle. Well, you know why so. it's harmful, right? Negative stereotypes. Negative <laughs> That's stereotypes. exactly it's why your favorite, it's horrible. Yeah. yeah. Favorite. Uh, Dr. D for Dollar says, interesting that Sitch hammered home that colorblindness is the goal, and she ignored that and went right back to the talking points. Should have unlocked the teleprompter. <laughs> yeah, I didn't notice that. Uh, Dr. D for no Dollar says, funny, uh, she said radicalization was bigotry towards groups largely, argue that people's moral intuitions inform their politics, and sees Vosh through rosy lenses. Yeah, I don't know if we ever, because I guess she was saying that radicalization was bigotry, because I thought in the beginning, like right in the beginning, I thought she was defining radicalization as like violence. So I don't know. Racism. Well, right. Uh, the official S class, who is not the official S class, and I'm pretty sure is either utter nonsense or Dr. Thallium, the dirty, dirty degenerates that they are said uh since i'm the sidekick of the show aka the bottom i've decided to change my diet to accommodate my position <laughs> i will now only eat nuts white rice citrus peas and fish uh thanks again dr goldstein for the recommendation see you at the meeting <laughs> wow 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 indeed uh, Andrew Clark for a dollar says, uh, Dr. Ghost gave an example of implicit racism, quote, telling a black person to pull up their pants. But she fails to realize that that doesn't demonstrate any racism, explicit or implicit. It's an example of cultural standards that could include racism. Yeah, that's that's fair. That's a good, I see good distinction. plenty of white guys with their pants sagging around their, right. their buttocks. Right, right. Yeah. Right. Well, it does sort of breed into a cultural relativistic argument, too, and a cultural essentialist argument as well. So it's, I feel like it's a very complicated thing when you sort of dis start dismantling, like, is it racist, you know? Far more than is obviously being discussed by the left broadly. Which, uh, one, of, which one of our investigators brought you this screenshot of Avash? Of Bosch's chat. Someone named Vor typed. Oh. Bosch, Adam and Sitch brought Mahler to talk about you. <laughs> I know you're a fan of him because you follow him on Twitter. I figure you'd want to. I figure you'd want to watch this, watch that instead of Destiny and a link. <laughs> Vor, where you been all my life? <laughs> Investigator Vor. <laughs> It was so actually there was not no one sent this to me. I found this. You found this? Oh man. Yeah. Good I'm sure good catch. Good. It eyes. was because this this happened during um this happened during I think the like the political violence stream or something, like before, after. I don't know. Like it happened at we were watching some I was watching some Vosh video for uh 
something we were going to cover. And I, I noticed that. Maybe it was, oh no, maybe it was in the gender debate. I don't know. It was in something. And I just noticed it. And I'm like, that's hilarious. Yeah. It might have actually been, no, I think it was in the, it couldn't have been the, the, the political violence debate because that's what we were watching. I think it was the, the gender debate by Dr. Tom that that came up or something. But I don't know. Well, it was funny. Either Investigator way. Vore, thank you for shouting out. Right. The Vosh did uh, obviously did not respond to that. So thank you for shouting out the Adam and Sitch show. I really right. There's <laughs> there, there's some pictures you didn't show that, by the way too. I showed them all, but you didn't recognize them. So I, I just I moved on. Well, yeah, tell me. I'm not the I'm moment. Looking at this, the this moment streamer. passed. CT made a picture. Did you I, show that? I one? brought that up. The don't, the don't care picture. Yeah. Why didn't you Why didn't you tell me? I mean, I feel I like I think it's credit. Your job to periodically. I'm check looking in. at the super chats. Okay. And Adam over here came and be like, this "We have picture a beautiful. We have a beautiful by CT. We have a beautiful picture by CT here. Yes. Of Sitch tweeting out, "Don't care, bitch." <laughs> <laughs> I like that. It's like I'm throwing my phone with right. power. Yeah. Don't care. That's right. This it's is awesome. what it lit. This is what it means to live in authenticity, right here. I should start sending this out. Someone, uh, there's a crazy, a crazy person that started arguing with me on Twitter, and I ended up by just saying <laughs> okay with like the uh, Saitama okay, but I actually now I'm gonna post this. I'm gonna say don't care. Yeah, this is a it's regular. Awesome method, though, right? This is a it's regular right. response. Yeah, awesome. Thank you, CT. Um, and then Carl updated his characters, the Sitch and Adam characters from, I don't know if it's Elden Ring or Cyberpunk. I forget what game it's from. But. What is this? What is what? I'm so glad I learned economics. <laughs> I am. It's just, it's fascinating to me, especially now when we're actually experiencing inflation. Because they're everyone's fucking arguing about it, and central banks are actually doing shit. This uh, Theata is it Theata? Message me an article. Giant hedge fund goes Soros on Bank of Japan bets billions that Japan and MMT will break. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I argue with. I argue with with uh, Mr. Ubercross in the about economics in the DMs sometimes too. <laughs> it's fun. <laughs> I love Mr. Ubercross. As you should, as you should. Yeah. I it just it's nice to have people that you can argue with. It just like it's just fun. I I like arguing with people. It's people get to. They're too caught up in like this person has to fucking change our mind or my whole fucking life is demoralized. It's like, why? <laughs> so stupid. So here we go. This will be my first use, my first official Twitter usage of, of the, the don't care. The don't care. All right. So in regard, in response to the uh, the tweet that I that you showed where I was talking about the Patriot Front guys. Yeah. Uh, someone who completely misunderstood my point. Uh, they said, uh, Green Text arrested 31 Patriot Front guys, uh, not any Antifa people. Don't be a daft shit stain. You know damn well these things are not the same in the context of pride. Centrist political brain rot on display. <laughs> Which wow, that's pretty, is pretty mean. Well, it's pretty stupid because... Uh, and I was nice. I was polite at first because that had not. I was not equivocating and saying Patriot Front and Antifa are the same. I was saying the fact that Patriot Front, who are listed as fascist, are being arrested by the police, destroys Antifa's arguments that right. they are live in a fascist society. Yeah, the police obviously aren't fascists if they're arresting right. fascists. And so it's funny. Uh, I said, she said, this person said, I think it's a she. Yeah. They said, did I miss the plot? And I said, 
you did. My point was arresting that police arresting the fascist aligned group and not the leftist aligned group is evidence against Antifa and many leftist claims that we currently live in a fascist society. So what do you think the response to that was? Do you think it was a, a continuation of the theme? If you don't so, think we live in a fascist society, you're just smoking crack, you dumbass. Right, right. You're close. Was I close? You're close. <laughs> you're close. <laughs> look, look, I speak woke. I know. It was, actually, it was actually worse than that. Okay, let's that. hear it. Let's yeah. hear it. Uh, oh, CT sent a better one. Why is this one better? What do you okay, mean? I, this one said. I brought up the better one. I don't know. I don't... Uh, so, How dare so they you. said, uh, fascism is a creeping system that doesn't happen in a microcosm. Hitler was arrested and jailed for treason, but that did little to hinder fascism in the long run. Centrists like yourself are utterly incapable of fighting fascism. Historically, I'm right, and you know it. Oh, that's weak sauce. What the Now, fuck? see, this is the problem. She doesn't realize that she just activated my trap car. <laughs> because we just talked about this last week, if you recall. Yeah, no. So yeah. I said, considering the only reason Hitler came to power was because the far-left Socialist Party in Germany refused to join forces with the moderate center-left party, thus splitting the vote, allowing the guy who appointed Hitler to win, dot, 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 thinking face. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So what do you think her response? Do you think she gave a... A reasoned sort of response? Coherence? Oh, my goodness. I had no idea. Let me update. Or, you know, maybe... No. You know, say a little what? You know, maybe even have an argument about the facts of the case or something no she no she just said moderate left equals very brief respite while negotiating your way into fascists yeah <laughs> so so there you go they're gonna i don't cause, know if you knew this they're gonna they're going to ignite another fascist fucking party right they don't take any responsibility for it whatsoever well, it's funny because that's literally, she's just the mirror image of the neo reactionary argument. Yeah. They're like, oh, moderate right is a very brief respite before you negotiate your way into communism. Yeah. It's no. like, like, how did we exist as country, like a country where we had moderate left and moderate right for hundreds of years before fascism and socialism even existed? <laughs> like, how did this all work? I'm just, I'm very confused by it. If, if, if the moderate left is going to make you become fascist, the moderate right is going to make you become socialist. How did our country function before communism and fascism existed? Just yeah. curious. Just curious. So anyway. Did it? Were, I mean, communism, America was around before communism even existed, right? I yeah, mean, exactly. Marx, yeah. So George I, my Washington response to that, hadn't read Marx because Marx wasn't born yet. Yeah, of course. So my response to that was just the Saitama okay, because I don't know what else oh, to yeah. say. Oh, yeah. But now don't care is a good response. I have don't care, yeah. And so, so her response to that was, I didn't expect a meaningful retort. That's okay. First of all. No, so she bitch. responded to the don't care? <laughs> she responded to the okay. okay? Yeah. This is, I'm, I'm responding respond. to the don't care. You can't respond her response to, the to the okay. okay. Oh, you she did. You can't respond did. to the Okay. She did. That's game over. Where is this bitch? I need to see this. She said, I didn't expect a meaningful retort. That's okay. But first of all, this bitch who basically kept didn't understand my original tweet and then just kept changing the subject whenever I like actually acknowledged what she was saying mm -hmm. is criticizing me for not meaningful retort. But okay. How do you know it's a she? You probably like so she has pronouns in the bio. Oh, she, her. Okay. Yes. Gotcha. Uh, she says, far right lunatics installed by a minority president for a generation in the Supreme Court now dictates policy. But please continue to tell me the benefits of the center left. Whoa. Whoa. <sighs> so now I got the don't care. I just, I just slapped her with a don't care. Did <sighs> I can see too. I mean was it the was it the center left that 
voted in favor of Trump? I mean, I, I can't imagine that's the case. I mean, maybe the center left didn't vote, and that's why Trump no, got see, elected. She probably listened to the Vosh political violence conversation mm -hmm. and thinks what Vosh said is gospel, that we're just on this one-way track to fascism and that you know that anything other than the armed leftist resistance is just a a roadblock to uh you know success for you know or a roadblock to preventing fascism i guess mm -hmm. look at this now my Kyle, 40. my, my, my she my, her navy veteran there you go. My mm. stupid Kyle Rittenhouse meme tweet is already at 500. <laughs> I know. It's really... See, this is a see. Yeah. See, see, doctor, this is the problem with pro felicity. I if I cared about pro felicity, if I was a fucking grifter like Vosh, I would see this and I would tailor my behavior based around accordingly. This. Yeah. Yeah, accordingly. That's the problem. You would. That's you, the problem. You'd be the next Tucker Carlson. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'd be the next Vush, the next Tucker Corson. Yeah, I know. It's just <laughs> terrible. Oh, it's man. terrible. So bad. Look at Luck Danny's already in, in the conversation. <laughs> nice. There you go. This person's an idiot. I wouldn't waste your time interacting with them. Oh, honestly. Luck. Oh. <laughs> this person's like, I think this person's literally a moron. So just, it's just like, I mean, you're you're free to you're free to bang your head. It's like it's like you know. Elden Ring. You're free to bang your head against the brick wall, but Arrested. I'm not sure you're going to beat that 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 enemy. Okay, and the logic will get through. Shall I use crayon next time? <laughs> I know, and it's funny because she literally was just, was wrong. I mean, She's you could just type it out clearly. My intelligence, yes. Oh. Okay, you can bring up the Carl things. The Are Carl you... character, Adam and Sitch characters. What? Are you sure? Is it time? Yeah. Okay, I'll bring them up. It is time to bring those up. Uh, Dr. Diller for a dollar. What are you saying? Are these from a game or something? Yeah. All right. I, I think one is from Cyberpunk and one is from Eld. I think the Sitch is from Elden Ring and the... Adam is from Cyberpunk. Sweet. I think. So. Hmm. Cool. Look at that. Based. I'm assuming you've you brought them up on screen. And... I did, yeah. Okay. Fun stuff. That sitch looks a little, uh, a little black faced, though, Carl. I'm, like, <laughs> I know, I'm gonna say, I uh, like this. I dare you to make this your avatar. <laughs> I think I get in trouble. I think I get in trouble if I made that my avatar, especially with the white lips. On Twitter, do it. It's a, that's your smile. That's not your lips. Come on. I know, I know. That's why he made the lips white. But he made the lips white. Those are your teeth, you dumbass. <laughs> okay, okay. It's true. I mean, I'm telling you the truth. No, I know that's why he did it. I'm saying, you know, if you had someone that. That, that you're right. If I made that my avatar picture, I would get in trouble. <laughs> I would get in big trouble. <laughs> and it's racist. Yeah. Of course, that's why he's against CRT. He's a white supremacist. Okay. Lance was right. Uh, Dr. Diller for Dollar says uh, Charlotte sounds like most people like her. Charlotte sounds, comma, like most people, comma, like her worldview is underdeveloped. She sounds like she thinks equal protection under the law and socialism can coexist when they're mutually exclusive. Yeah. You know, this didn't come up. I, I way, I like so overprepared for the conversation with Carefree Wandering. Did you? I so overprepared for that conversation. Why? Uh, I don't know. I didn't, I didn't know if he'd be as based as he was. Um, about the, you know, the wokeness being rooted in Marxism. I didn't know where he's going to take it. I mean, basically his, like he he sound like he completely agrees that it came out of Marxism. He just thinks that once you remove the class element, he doesn't like calling it Marxism, which I understand. I think that's more of like a personal. Well, isn't this uh, like cultural contention. Marxism? Is that I know you're not supposed to say cultural Marxism. Well, no, but... because technically cultural Marxism was uh, 
Well, he wouldn't consider it that because cultural Marxism, technically, if you're if we're going to like talk about like Antonio Gramsci and George Lukacs, there are what they were doing was they wanted to control culture in order to bring about still class Marxism. Okay, so I, I got you. Yeah. Right. So it's still and, economics, but they're de- yeah, it's, they're using the goal culture still as economic. a tool. Yeah, right, right. Okay, I get it. And so so Carefree Wandering's point, or the way his perspective, is that, well, if the end goal is not economic, then it's not Marxism, which, I mean, it's not classical Marxism. I think you can call it identity Marxism or race Marxism, as James Lindsay does. Yeah, uh, I you know I understand if he's you know sympathetic to Marxism, he might not like that. But, but I think that's you know an accurate. That's why I use the liberal to neoliberal thing. I mean, you know, liberals don't like to be cast in the same vein as neoliberals. But I understand like why it's like why the label exists the way it does. Yeah, it makes logical sense. Right. But but something that was interesting when I doing my over preparing for this conversation, which ended up being good because this conversation about CRT being Marxist and wokeness being Marxist comes up like all the time. So it's not like I lost. It's not like this information is useless because I kind of mapped out. You know, I was listening to a bunch of James Lindsay's video where he kind of maps out like the, you know, the history of sort of how uh, Marxism evolved to being woke the way it is today, and uh, what Diddler just said. You know, really strikes too is something I had missed, which is that uh, Max Horkheimer, who is the guy that really came up with the idea of critical theories and defined it, uh, he he says that that Karl Marx is wrong, that the ideas of justice and freedom contradict each other, that you can't have a perfectly free and a perfectly just society. That's and, uh, kind of fucked up. Well, that isn't, that's super fucked up, especially in the context of Marxism, because then I don't know what Max was saying specifically, but it's, that would lead you down the road to sort of having this authoritarian uh, leftist regime to sort of implement uh, perfect justice, right? Or perfectly just society. I mean, usually the trade-off people talk about is security and security, freedom. not yeah. justice, right? I know. So I, I'm interested in like what the conceptualization of justice they're talking about. Well, so he apparently Marx envisioned that like the communist utopia would be a perfectly just and perfectly free society, and Max Horkheimer is saying that's not possible. You have to choose one or the other, and I'm assuming since he was a Marxist or socialist, that he would choose the just end of the spectrum because the perfectly free end of the spectrum would be more like a, you know, an and some kind of ANCAP, ANCOM. Right. You know, okay. I get yeah. I get that. Right. So, hmm. and he, and, and Max Horkheimer, this is a guy that came up with critical theories and he was a neo-Marxist definitionally. So, to me, that's sort of a uh, a scary thought that he was sort of dabbling in. You can't have a perfectly free and perfectly just society. I think you can through technology, but it's got to be Tom Jump's perfect world. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I, obviously we're going to get down to, I don't think you could ever have a quote unquote perfectly free society. Or, like, right. I, I mean, it's going to be a definitional thing. How are we defining perfectly free and perfectly just, but... Uh, Magor for a dollar says not trying to throw too much shade at uh, Charlotte, but it seems like she knows just enough to start reinventing the wheel. Uh, kudos to her trying to do her research, but also sounds like she'd do well to read a little deeper and refine her model. Well, I mean, she's you know, she's a a young college student, right? Now that me and Adam are old men, we get to say everyone else is young. Yeah, and I, I mean. I'm always trying to get you guys to go into sociology, but none of you will do it. So that's gotta, right. We have to recruit where we can. That's true. Uh, Magor for another dollar says, on the other hand, I think height went a long way to answer her question. People find acceptance in a tribe and thus start adhering to the moral code of the tribe. And sometimes that tribe believes in QAnon or systemic racism. Yeah, she should really, I think she would gain, a, I think she would accrue a lot of benefit reading The Righteous Mind. Because it's right up the exact kind of things that she was uh, talking about. 
So I'll recommend it to her. Or CT can recommend it. I'll recommend it to her. Did that, I want to send her that bash, that, that watch video too. Remember the mattress girl that carried the mattress around and yes. attacked her rapist and stuff? I forgot her name, but yeah, I know you're talking about. She read Jonathan Heights The Righteous Mind and someone sent me a blog post where she was all yes, I remember red pill. Yeah. yeah, it kind of so like I mean, changed her worldview. <laughs> so maybe, you know, Charlotte reads The Righteous Mind and just, you know, has a revelation. I know right. I, I that happened to me. I was like, wow. I've just been lied to about conservatives my entire <laughs> life. By the Vosh's of the world. Yeah. Right. I had a bad stereotype and since I felt I just I immediately felt horrible about that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh J Mac, thank you so much. J Mac, Daddy, Daddy, J Mac with a hundred dollars. Thank you so much. With a heart. That's Our it? father. Yep. That was it. Our surrogate That's father, amazing. J-Mac. Uh, Arithmus for a dollar says, uh, Sitch, quote, I don't see the point of gender terms like actri- ac- actress. Uh, Adam. Yeah, I know a lot of actresses who prefer actor. Uh, Adam dealing a devastating blow to Sitch's argument while agreeing with him. This is the kind of comedy gold I come here for. I don't understand. How is it? How is that? I don't understand. Yeah, I don't How is that a devastating blow to my argument? Because I called him an actress? I guess. Well, I mean, I, obviously. It would, it would be confusing well, if I said, I know a lot of actors that just like actor. Right. I mean, like, assume the word actress didn't exist. He would just say, I know a lot of female actors who, like, if you're cre- if you're talking specifically, you're trying to create some distinction. Uh, then I guess, but I just, I don't think we talk about actors. I don't think we divide actors by sex enough to really merit the necessity of, of having the separate terms. In my opinion, I don't, yeah. I don't see how it's important. I mean, I feel like the only time it ever fucking comes up is like, if you're specifically talking about it, or if you're watching like the Oscars and they have categories for best actor, best actress. Otherwise, I don't. It doesn't really come up in conversation. What are they gonna? What are they gonna do with the Oscars if that catches on? They would just say Best male and female and... actor. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. well, actually, what's the point? That would be a problem too. Well, that might be a problem because male and female is generally first to sex and not gender. So, what would they do? Men, we, okay. Actor is, men and I've... actor women. Like I don't know what they would do. I just, I just realized. Okay, you know yes. how we're. How we're constantly chronicling institutional decay. Yes. Here's one for you. Okay. The Oscars introduces a best non binary. Best non best non-binary category. They can never do that though. Why? Because how you know oppressive how many- that they don't haven't done it yet. If, if, but here's, here's, well, they, they might, and it'll be hilarious because this is what will happen. If the Oscars introduces a third category for like best non binary <laughs> person, okay. Um, best non binary actor, come on. Every actor is going to start identifying as non binary because they're going to figure the pool is yes, smaller. Yes, it's so small. You're going to get that. That it will the... drastically increase the chances of getting an oh, Oscar. This is so, this is, this is. <laughs> Every non-binary person is going to move to Hollywood overnight. We're going to be swimming in non-binary people. It, well, no, it would it would it would just be that every actor and actress like, or they would they change it depending on the movie. Like, if there's two actors in a movie that are both really good and they think they're going to be like competing, like one's going to suddenly identify as non-binary just so like they're in a different. Category. Would they have to be non-binary in the role? I guess I don't no. know. How's that uh, work? I, I assume not. Like I if, let's say, you're a woman, but you're playing uh, you're playing a man in the movie. You st- if you're nominated for best actor for that role, you're nominated as a woman, right? Mm-hmm. As your as your biological sex, <laughs> not as the yeah. Role but that's that because I mean, generally, you know, there's not like a lot of roles. 
not that many roles where like men and women are playing, you know, the opposite uh, sex, right? I mean, Mrs. I, Doubtfire. I don't, I don't think these issues ever come up before. Did Mrs. Doubtfire get nominated? <laughs> was Robin Williams nominated as best actress for Mrs. Doubtfire? Let's see, trans actor Oscars. Uh, no, I think the only uh, and a first fantastic woman wins Oscar with trans lead, transgender leader. Oh, but the, the movie though, the act. Okay, I don't think a trans actor has ever won an Oscar. According right. to this, only Elliot Page has, and that was pre transition. So, does that count? That doesn't count. Does does she have to give does he have to give the Oscar back now? Because he has an Oscar that says best <laughs> actor <laughs> actress. I mean that would that would cause me a lot of dysphoria if I had there that Oscar. Go. Maybe maybe uh if he I had, had it a... shaved off and replaced it says best actor. Get like it, the actress part like just white it out or something. I wonder if the Academy I mean I'm sure she could probably trade it in, but then that wouldn't because someone won best, someone won best actor. Yeah, right you're right. Here. You couldn't. You're right. You couldn't just do that. Yeah. Yeah. I guess you just have to to eat it. Well, that uh, the amount of dysph you know dysphoria makes people suicidal though, and right a lot of dysphoria. This is this is so lame on Wikipedia. So it has like a list. It says like uh, best actress in a leading role by LGBT categories. You have Elliot Page, who's transgender. And then the next three are Angelina Jolie, Lady Gaga, and, and uh, Kristen Stewart. <laughs> Did you, they're bisexual, I guess. So they get like shoved into this LGBT category. I, Lady Gaga's bisexual, I guess? I, I guess so. Okay. Her, Angelina Jolie, and Kristen Stewart are all bisexual. Angelina Jolie is... Oh, okay. I didn't know. I was, I was, <laughs> I had no idea. Okay. I mean, Whatever. I thought she was married to Brad Pitt, but... Who knows? Well, she's bisexual, so, you know, she could... Hmm, okay. She could do both. Uh, Magor, for a dollar, says, My experience with family members living in poverty is that there's nothing to fix it. Someone could buy her a house and a car, and within a year, the house would be trashed and the car totaled. Some people just won't have nice things. That's the... I mean, that's sort of like the dark... Like that's not true of everyone, um, but it's true of some people, <laughs> and it's sort of like a dark red pill to swallow. And that's kind of like, as much as I I really like uh, the most based woman from 1928, the Zora Neale Hurston. Like when you read her words, it's very clear that she was just born based. Like she didn't become based; she was just born this like this way this is just her intrinsic personality type yeah and it's unfortunate because i don't know <laughs> i i don't think you can just say you know i mean obviously with some people you know like some people have mental disorders or whatever but uh i don't think for the broader society you can just be like fuck you you're born this way you know you don't get any social safety net i don't think that's the way we can structure society or should structure society but to, to find the right balance but that's why perfect equality obviously will never be achieved because it can't ever and should never should not ever be achieved because people are too different. I mean, if I just if people have good ideas, they have access to capital to develop those ideas. I mean, I guess it, it really depends upon yeah, but there's people's two tolerance here. for risk. There's not everyone has good ideas. Right. Not everyone, even if someone has a good idea, is not going to know how to materialize that good idea in the world. Or not even have the energy or willpower to materialize that in the world. Right. So. Uh, CT Ferdar says, what is the worst word in the English language? As in, what is the word you hate the most? Something like moist or schmegma. Hmm. I think pretty bad. So yeah, people don't like moist. I've never been bothered by moist at all. 
because I generally when I think of the word moist, I don't think of like gross moist. I think of like like when people are cooking something, they're like, oh, this cake is very moist or something. Yeah, what's wrong with moist? Yeah, people. I think people think of it like in a weird, gross, like bodily way or something. Uh, I think schmegma's. I think you might have landed on. I think schmegma might be the worst, well, the most disgusting word in the English language. Hmm. I don't know. What do you think, Chat? Ameliorate. <laughs> Ameliorate's pretty bad. Okay, ameliorate's not bad. I think. I think Vosh made ameliorate bad. I looked I up know. ameliorate and it wasn't that big a deal. I mean, no, I know it's just funny because he, it's like a meme because he uses it so much. Ameliorate. It's like, did we never super... show this? Did we never show this picture? Did we forget to show this picture? I feel like, the, or this, or is this ameliorate this means to make better? Yeah. What the fuck? Improve. Right. I, it's I, basically I know what the a word synonym means. for yes. improve. Yes. Well, it's a little different than improve. It because it it's like a combination of improve and soothe, right? Because it, it sort of means to like the difference is that you have like a problem that is being solved. You know, you're yeah. ameliorating something. Ameliorating the problem. Okay. Right. I like that. So it's, it's a little different. I like usually when people, you know, these big boards, they have some slight connotational difference. Which is fine. It's just funny because I don't know. It's a word that I was aware of. I don't know if I've ever used it personally. And then it's funny because it's like one of those go-to Why words. Why would for you? But yeah, it's I kind mean, of a goofy, stupid word. Anyway, I'm, I'm sure there's, there's weird words I use that I'm sure people could call out. I think I don't really hear people use the word behoove, except for me. <laughs> it's one of my go-to words. Behoove. Yeah. It's behoove somebody or something. Behoove you, behoove of you. Yeah, it's behooves you. Uh, there's a couple other I forgot I thought about the other day that I use and I realized other people just don't use these words. So, but I don't know. It's funny because he's such a sophist that it feels like dishonest. Mm-hmm. Uh, Superogatory is another. <laughs> Go on. Uh, mm. Phlegm is pretty gross. Yeah. Yeah, I think schmegma takes the case though. Schmegma. Schmegma. Yeah. Can you imagine? Sure. That's pretty. Uh, this did we? So did we not show this picture? This ultra based David Aragon picture. I just put it up now. I'm showing it right now. Did we miss it last week? I don't know. Did we? Was it from last I don't know. week? Or did we show? I it? mean, I feel like it was from this week, but. Okay, I don't remember. But uh, yeah, ultra based. David Aragon picture you got no we showed it but but I think it's fine to show it again we got uh, Sitch Chan and Adam Chan and they're putting quack in between their abs of course don't you <laughs> like to go. smoke some crack off the abs nice uh, stymie I use that word very occasionally very occasionally Look at your favorite Sam Cedar host with who a, dat? a good friend of hers. Every time Sitch says ferment fondant. violence instead of foment violence. Listen. Ferment violence. Listen. Foment. Do you know the difference yeah, between foment and ferment? Fer- ferment and foment. Foment. Listen. Listen. I mean, they're very This similar. is like when uh, people say... For all intensive purposes instead of intense and purposes. Okay, give me a break here. You're just criticizing my southern drawl, Hex. All right. I say I could I could care less. You're fermenting violence here in the in the South. Fomenting. How dare you? Yes. Stop fermenting it. I like fermenting violence. It, it makes sense too in that context. Mm. Like the violence is being fermented; it's growing. Yeah, and obviously, I'm taking it back. I'm saying, I'm saying, I get to say it. Okay. Violence with alcohol is so much worse too. So that's it true. Makes sense. That's true. See, it makes so much sense. Right. Everyone should they, well, they, violence over. They mean different things because foment means to like to instigate. And ferment means to like grow. 
sort of like mm-hmm. stew. So stew. Uh, yes, CT. They all make fun of. I say the word. I say crayon <laughs> in a I mean, way they don't like. We only have one guest lined up next week. Maybe we can crayon. invite Carl on to to argue with us about his liberalism perception page. his precepts about liberals that could be fun yes mm-hmm. <laughs> fermented schmegma that's a pretty bad one. <laughs> oh man that's pretty bad that's pretty bad fomenting it <laughs> nice. i mean what are we nice. what's it what are we judging the criteria on i mean I don't know, just gross factor. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, Ocean made a, a sitch too. They can bring up. Nah. Wait, is that what you brought up? And you thought I didn't look. Is that what you brought up? And you, when I was saying black face, black white lips, and you were saying the teeth was the teeth was white. Yeah, that's what I did bring up. Oh, you fucking asshole! Why? I was not talking about the picture. I was talking about Carl's picture. What do you mean? Oh my God. Chat. You got to bring them both up now. Cause... Oh, the white lips one? I guess you're right. This one does. Yeah, you got to bring up. Lips. Okay. This, I, I, I thought you were just memeing on me. I didn't understand what's happening. <laughs> no, this obviously this okay. picture has white lips. Yeah. Yeah. So, Carl, yeah. So, on Carl's Elden Ring picture, he has white lips. Then we have. Uh, uh, Ocean's picture, which I think he made that. I don't think that's from a game or anything. I don't know what that's from. Has I think he just made it. it. Yeah, it looks cool. Yeah, I brought it up already. Right, but I was giving, uh, I was saying misinformation about it. Okay, here I it. Because you again. failed me, Adam. You I brought it up again just for you. Failed me. I did not read your super chat about dangerous substances yet. Equal, equal shadox. I don't think I did. Was it from today? Or was it from last week? Mr. Oh, last CPU for one dollar. Why? Thank you. Blunder of you for two dollars. Everyone Calm was non-binary until gender was invented. There you go. Everyone was non-binary <laughs> until gender was invented. That's not there true. No, it's not true. But it's funny. It is funny. Uh, okay, sorry. I incorrectly because of Adam's fuck up. Well, this was I from Carl. Up. I this is from up. Ocean. This is from Ocean. I never fucked up. This is not from a video game. I did it so correctly. This is the one that I wanted you to make your profile picture. Oh, I thought. See, I thought you were talking about the Carl picture. I mean, they're both bad, right? This one is as well. This one's not like this one does not look like blackface. Yes, it the does. The way that the Elden Ring character looks like by <laughs> Bring up bring up the bring up the, the Carl one and show it's there. Zoom in. I mean I'm using it Side as the side. background. Look, it's the same character. I have I don't, the, the background character. It's the same character. I don't I don't see it. Just it's right next to look if you okay. can see well, the I'm gonna screen. have to wait because it's gonna take like some minutes to catch up. No, it's been oh. on the screen the whole show. Okay. Here, look, I'll bring it up. Here it is. It's got to be so difficult. Why do I have such an uppity host, guys? <laughs> oh, man. I'm telling I'm telling Charlotte that you, you use... So I said uppity. You, you use <laughs> racist terminology. Uppity. That's fine, because you're white. Okay. It's not fine. Why is it not fine? You can't use that word. That word is racist. Yeah, see, Carl's... Carl's feels a lot more blackfacey than uh, Ocean's. Why? Uh, I Is think it it's the because white lips. Well, it's two reasons. It's the white lips, and it's also because, like, there's like this weird thing in video games where sometimes you can change just like the you just can change the coloration of the skin, mm-hmm. but if it doesn't change any like the facial features, it looks like weird because it's just like you're just putting like a black. Uh, skin filter on like uh, a face that would be more structured like European or something mm-hmm. right you're not you're not changing any of the other like ethnic facial uh, differences right facial structural differences so it looks weird 
where with Ocean's the face is non like is more nondescript because it's more like a sitch. Like it's a it's like a art an artist rendition of like what the sitch face is more nondescript. So hmm. it loses all that like cultural context. I guess it is kind of sense. the same silhouette shape as your actual avatar. No, it is exactly. And he even added the hair and everything. The little part. Right. And so yeah. Was... I'll just put it so right no, this here is, on Oceans is cool. I I wouldn't I would put Oceans in my, my avatar and I would not be afraid of like being hit with a blackface label or something. Mm -hmm. So Well if anyone says you're blackface, just hit them with the don't care. Well, sure, I'm just saying. They both have noses, C T Just slap them with the don't care. That's true. Don't care. Don't care. Anyways, uh, let me continue. Uh, Dr. Thallium for a dollar says, uh, question, question time. Oh, no. Uh, this is from Dr. Thallium. Uh, you have successfully built a time machine and have the sudden urge to make sure one wild animal gets domesticated along with dogs and cats. What wild animal do you make sure gets domesticated? Wow. That's a good that's a good question. I mean, kangaroos hmm. are pretty badass. They seem like they'd be useful. Uh, Could you saddle a kangaroo and like hop around and shit? That'd be fucking uh, so amazing. I think that's a bad. I think it's a bad choice because the kangaroos Why? are so limited to where they live. Yeah, but it's domestication. Wouldn't that be spreading it all over the world? I mean, horses only were in one place, and we yeah, but they didn't. How long did it take for them to get to Australia? Did we bring horse? Were horses introduced in America by the Europeans? I don't even yes, know. Yes, they were. But they, so horses, there was, I think, I remember, I think it was weird. I think like horses actually started in North America and then migrated to, to Europe via a land bridge or something. Or there were horses in both places and the horses in North America died. There was some weird thing that like, there's some weird evolutionary reason for why when they brought horses to North America, they were like so uh, attuned to living out in the West already. I think there there was some reason for that. So hmm. I don't remember exactly what it was. Lamb bridge or something. Something like that. But yeah, the horses were brought over. They did not exist in America. Um, so you're going to go with kangaroo. Well, yeah, I think kangaroo is pretty cool. Uh, that's a terrible choice. I'm going to go with, <laughs> let's see. Hmm. Maybe like, I think I'm between three. What? Right now. Come on. I'm thinking like between elephant, bear, and tiger. Domesticated elephant? Yeah. I mean, they 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 have domesticated elephants. Though. No, they have tamed elephants. Oh, but not domesticated. Not domesticated, no. Well, first of all, kangaroo. You can like have in your yard in your house and shit. You can't fucking have a an elephant like hanging out in your fucking yard. Come on now. Uh, yeah, but you could ride it into battle. I mean, honey, they did that, but it was like a big problem. Honey, I'm going to pick up elephant food on the way home from work. Can I take the fucking dump truck? <laughs> uh, pick a raptor? Like, domestic, like that'd be pretty cool. Domesticated eagles. I mean, a kangaroo is like the size of a dog. You could totally. No, it's not. Kangaroos are big. What are you talking about? Are they that big? Yeah, they're like the size of a person. Well, a big dog is the size of a person, so not when it's okay. Like it's, but it's standing up on its hind legs. That's like your height. Yeah, you could wait, talk to them. They could wait. Sit. When you said domesticated, did you mean like they shrink? I didn't think you meant that. I just thought you meant like in terms of behaviorally, they're domesticated. Well, I guess domestication you could do a lot of things with. I mean, you could right. Shrink. If you're talking about like, yeah, if you're including shrinking them, I'm not including that. If we're including shrinking them, then then that'd be hell. Like, if you had, wouldn't you want a little elephant that was like oh my God. the size of a Could dog? Could you do that? Awesome. 
Oh, that'd be pretty base, right? A little alpha. That would be amazing. I want to. Picks up shit with its nose. It could bring you stuff with its nose and stuff. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah, no. that'd be pretty cool. A dog size, like a little dog size elephant, would be actually pretty awesome. So. Well, here's one with a little Joey. Little Joey in the pouch. Yeah. Kangaroos are adorable. You're, you're heartless. I never said they weren't cute. Right here. Just saying, like I would choose that to domesticate. Right here's my domesticated kangaroo. If I was, if I was, domesticating animal purely on cuteness, I'd pick like a panda or something, or like a red, like a panda or even a koala red bear would be cool. Or koala, yeah. What? So you picked the elephant. What else? Uh, I picked elephant, bear, or tiger. Bear would be pretty cool. I mean, that'd be pretty yep. awesome to have in your yard. Like to I'm going to substitute it with panda. I want domesticated pandas. Tiger would be cool because of the stripes. When you want a panda, that'd be so based. How like about a panda z- walking how about around zebras? Here. Fuck zebras. It's just how a horse with stripes. How about a duck-billed platypus? Uh, orcas would be cool, but it'd be annoying because it's like you have to have a you know, a big you tank can't. of water. Yeah, what the hell? Yeah. I'm thinking of something that, you know, you could, they could have kangaroo food at the pet store and you just, every, a lot of people have them. Uh, koala smell gross. I've heard that, yes. A tiny dog-sized rhino <laughs> would be dangerous. <laughs> Even at that size, it's running around trying to fucking horn shit. Hmm. I, I I'm thinking I'm gonna go with panda. I'm gonna change my the panda. Panda, panda bears or are giant. That's what I mean. Well, I'm saying it, if you could shrink it a, a little bit, <laughs> shrink it a little bit. I don't know. Even if you could have it, like that'd be awesome. If you had like a big ass fucking panda in your backyard that just like hung out and ate bamboo, and it well, just like laid on I, his I, back, and you could I just like cuddle wanna... with it, like that'd be amazing. It's as big a fucking teddy bear. I want to kind of want an animal that can come in the house. You could have a panda in the house. They're chill as fuck, aren't they? Aren't pandas like really docile generally, unless it's like protecting its cubs or something? You don't. Oh, I guess this this kangaroo is not housebroken yet, so it's wearing a diaper now. A giant panda temperament. Yeah, they're pretty docile, so they're already like in a good a good temperament. So if they're domesticated, that'd be awesome. Do you know? That Have you seen that video of like the adorable video of like the little zookeeper? She's like putting the food out and the panda bear keeps like jumping on her legs and like trying to climb up her and stuff. And you're like, that's the most adorable thing ever. I haven't seen it, no. Okay, well, I'm going to go with panda bear. Who wouldn't want a panda? You wouldn't want a panda? Of course I'd want one. Okay. Yeah, no. I'll take one. A panda would not get eaten by an alligator or python. They're too big. You can grow, you know, you can grow bamboo uh, in Florida. Lots of people have just bamboo all over the place. Do they? Pandas are stupid? Well, that's fine. (laughs) Yeah, come on. It was a mistake to free the Brits we kidnapped after we domesticated them. <laughs> Pandas aren't evil. How dare you? Baby-sized rhinos. Red foxes. They actually have... Don't they have domesticated uh, foxes that you can buy, I think? Yeah, they do. You can buy a, fo- a fox. I don't know how expensive they are, but... In reality, they don't make great pets, according to this website. Oh no! This they're saying, they're saying they're not. No, this is untrue. There are domesticated foxes that have been specifically bred to be domesticated. Foxes are pretty cool, especially the domesticated ones. They're pretty cute and they laugh, they make cute little sounds and everything. Fox is a good choice too. Is this a video you're talking about? Where the panda's trying to crawl up the guy's leg? Yes, I'm assuming. He's like an Asian guy. Yeah. Oh, and that's not the one I was talking about. But there's probably a bunch of them. 
<laughs> it does look pretty cute. Yeah, see, I'm telling you. The one I saw was like even smaller than that. It was very small. He's like, hey, buddy. That's what Wormy does to me all the time. <laughs> hey, look. Pet me. It's me. Be my friend. <laughs> Somebody thinks that when we talk about porn, that's when the porn bots come. Like we didn't have porn bots until we brought up the porn question. It took forever to get to this point. Or did they? the porn bots show up immediately when we just said the word porn? No, I said it after I saw it, but... Okay. I mean, was this the first porn bot just now? The first porn bot was when we brought up the porn question with the Oh, ones. okay. Yeah. Hmm. Which I was like, hmm, maybe that's... How's that happening? Like the bot listens to all streams? I was yeah, like, oh, did work? you mention porn? Okay. I don't know. Maybe we get put on a, a list. <laughs> you put the you put Carl's head on my avatar. <laughs> yeah. Of course. Okay. Lips need to be bigger though. I'm gonna fix that there you for go. you right now. And red, right? No, white's fine. Uh Chris Jones, thanks so much for being a free will seeker for three months. It says grats on 40k. Thanks so much. Uh, we're officially Space Marines now, boys. Uh, I never understood why people weren't upset with Barr after he released the letter before the Mueller report came out. Care to explain? Oh, why people were upset? Okay. Um, well, the argument was that Mueller uh, intentionally deflated and, and shaped the narrative around the Mueller report. Because what the Mueller report said was twofold. They said... We found no evidence that Trump uh, was colluding with Russia, but we did find evidence that he obstructed the investigation into that. And the Barr letter basically left out that second part and just fixated on the, we found nothing, we found nothing wrong. You know, there was nothing going on here. And so that kind of shaped the narrative around the Mueller investigation. And that's why people uh, criticized it. So, But it was a solid for Trump. I mean, obviously. Obviously it was a solid for Trump, yeah. So if he did that solid for Trump in that situation, why would he? Well, the only point is that it shows that Barr was not a secret anti-Trumper or that he was biased from Trump you know, from the beginning or something like that, which is sort of how people like to, I think, kind of revise uh, him because he didn't go along with the election stuff and actually quit over it. Yeah, but why, if if there was election fraud, Barr would obviously say so. and I would assume, yeah, yeah. If, he thought, if he thought so. So that's the thing. Well, and but that's, that's why they're... people say he's inherently biased against Trump is to circumvent that idea. So, But he's obviously not because he did the solid with the Mueller report. Well, we forget that that happened and ignore it. <laughs> I'm just okay, saying. I don't, know what to, I don't know what to tell you. I'm saying that's not really... A, if you want to know the truth, that's not really a good strategy. Of course, of course. All right, I fixed your mouth. Is it better now? That's... <laughs> I look like a frog. <laughs> I'm a wide mouth frog. <laughs> Come on. Uh, the the Wooster for ten dollars says, "Have you guys read Francis Fukuyama's Liberalism and its Discontents yet?" Also, if you guys are interested, in Peter Zahan released a new book today called "The End of the World Is Just the Beginning." I saw a video from Peter Zahan, mm -hmm. which was terrifying. Uh oh. Which basically says the supply chain issues that are causing inflation are going to get much worse. Like it really hasn't even begun. And I was like, oh, what the fuck? So that's a little disheartening. And no, I haven't read his book, but I will. And I have read Fukuyama's book and it's, it's great. Like mm -hmm. I can't really recommend it to, certain people like Carl because 
Fukuyama is definitely a little bit. I mean, there's conflicting narratives. Like, he thinks that the right is a real danger and that, you know, he's got, a, he's a little bit in the white supremacy camp is the big problem. So, and that also, like, he categorizes January 6th as kind of a white supremacist movement. Does that, does that ring true with you? I mean, I don't feel like it, it was, but. They have that one picture with the Confederate flag the guy brought. I don't know. Uh, no, I don't think... To me, it doesn't make any sense to characterize January 6th as a white supremacist movement. I okay. don't view it that way at all. So. so Fukuyama makes good arguments in the book, and some, I think, are a little biased against conservatives or the okay. the right. Uh, Ram for five dollars says because they rely on no one being brave enough to say inter stuff. To say intersex is a biological genetic mistake anomaly, and they hate facts. Yeah, they don't want to use the word mistake, obviously, or <laughs> mistake. anything like that. Disorder, right. abnormality, sure. right? Abnormality. Yeah, I mean that right. is obviously what intersex, uh, intersex conditions are. Right. Uh, but they bulk at that so much. Deformity. Obviously. Well, it's not a def I thought disability. Deformity, well, maybe not necessarily. I thought deformity, were, like you have to have a physical character, like a, a tr an outward appearance trait that's like. Well, I up. mean, depends upon what kind of intersex you have, I guess. Sure, sure, sure. That's true. If you have like a, I don't know, if you have like a, a penis and a, a vagina, a vagina on the end of your penis or something. I don't know. <laughs> I think it works that way, but sure, yeah, right. Fair enough. Uh, Nax last for five dollars says, as a PhD student of sex differences in neuroscience, I hate nature's new wokeness on the issue. Bosch using them for his credibility is infuriating. Oh, that's interesting. There you go. There you go. We have a PhD student on sex difference in neuroscience. Wow, that's fascinating. That's awesome. Uh, Naxlis, thank you so much for being a free will seeker for three months. Says, I'd love to chat with you guys about sex differences and gender, especially in the brain, relevant to the topic. If there's ever a Tuesday opening, yes, 100%. Put Naxlas on the schedule. Okay. CT and Adam. That'll be for it? if we have a Tuesday. Naxalas. Naxalas? And this yeah. is the phd student phd student of sex differences and neuroscience wow that sounds fascinating that's pretty based how do i spell that n a x e l a s e l a s yeah well next alas you have to contact us yeah you have to like dm me or do you have a twitter i don't know if nax is still in the chat We'll try to find if you have a Twitter or a Discord or an email or something. But yeah, yeah, that'd be great. I have the same name on Discord. Oh, awesome. Are you on the are you in the laser the Laz? Or yeah, something? I, I'm not allowed to use Discord because I was I talking to Nax. I wasn't talking. Oh, okay, good. Uh, Andrew Clark for, for five dollars says gender's greatest utility is mate attraction slash selection. True. By deconstructing gender, it makes dating so much more complicated. Gender is not the same as personality traits. Also true. Uh, CT says, I already have them. Awesome. Thank you, CT. Oh, really? Oh, good. I'm exhausted right now. I know. I can tell. Uh, Toph for $20. Hey, Toph says, uh, would you guys have on vocal distance? He's very well read on postmodern philosophy underlying Bosch's arguments. He's made several appearances on Benjamin Boyce's channel, half those alongside James Lindsay. Yeah, of course. I love to talk to local distance about something. Sure. Maybe even if we do the full Vosh debate in the future, maybe we can have local distance to commentate on it too. That would be great. Yes. I would like that. Uh, William Vance for $20 says the debate is dumb from Vosh's point and the professor is very nice to him for no reason and for far too long. Vosh basically says, you don't understand me. Everything is arbitrary, so you can't nail me. 
but I'm right because popular now. <laughs> right. It's true. It's true. Sad. That's pro felicity right there. Yep. Uh, Green Nats for 10 pounds says we need the G Man to pluck Rittenhouse from our time and deliver him to places about to experience an Armalite incident. <laughs> Okay. That's funny. That that's a Half Life Two reference. Half Life reference, Adam. Oh, I love that game. Yeah, I know. I can I can imagine. Or right, I'm actually shocked that no one has done that meme. Is you have like the G Man saying, "Mr. Rittenhouse, wake up." Oh yeah. We need you not to say you've been sleeping on the job, Mr. Rittenhouse. And you like, and the meme like ends with Mr. Rittenhouse being put in the like the school shooting situation. Wow. How has that not been a meme already? Because that's Life so is funny. An ancient game. Yeah. But still, it's very funny. That feels like a, um, what's the guy that does all the comics? Uh, Stan Lee. No, no, the woke comics. The like woke. the anti woke comics. The anti woke comics? You know, like Tim Pool has Freedom like. Tunes. No, 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 no. He's just a cartoon. You know, Tim Pool has like the comic in the background. Um, like in the shot. You know, he had the one of like Biden. You know, a I did a live stream with that guy. Yeah. What's his name? It's like blank on his name. I can't remember either. But whatever. That sounds like. That feels like a comic. Uh, he would draw. Is that not stone sauce? No. Stone. <laughs> yeah. No. I can't remember his name. That's okay. Okay, whatever. You know what I'm talking about. I do, yeah. Yeah. I can't believe no one in the chat has got his name. There yes, thank you, Zoki. G Prime 85. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, but that's not his name. Well, that's yeah. his. Uh, Twitter handle or whatever. He has me blocked. So George, George. Alex George Alexopoulos. Al there Alexopoulos. you go. Is you blocked? Yeah, he blocked me after that conversation. Why? What happened in the conversation? What did you do in the conversation? I didn't show sufficient en enough, I guess, empathy with him or something. I don't know. Hmm, that's weird. I mean, he came on to basically tell me that Mm -hmm. that Ethan Van Skyver was organizing a secret plot against him. And I was just like, oh, okay, you're... there's some weird comics case show. Okay. Yeah. I was like, okay. <laughs> it's, right. it's like a little weird, but. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Right. So, I mean, he, he pitched me his reality and I didn't bite. And so I think he blocked me because. Well, after that talk, a lot of people were making fun of him. Like, obviously, you've got the wrong impression of reality, and people just were not I happy. I see. Yeah. I didn't do anything. What did I do? Like, <laughs> Another Adam gets savage for no good reason. And he still has me blocked to this day, but I was Classic like... Classic Adam. Why? Well, I, I mean, Adam. I said, you know, we'll talk again. And, I mean, his... The idea that Ethan is running a bunch of alt accounts to like, it's just, it's weird. It's a little, Ethan has other shit going on. Like, uh, completely believable videos in the chat. And I'm going to believe him because his name is completely believable. Video says Adam called him a variety of slurs and ended the conversation by wishing his, by wishing his mother was launched into the sun. <laughs> Adam, you're telling a very different story. <laughs> okay. Can you imagine? It, that would not come on. That, that's, that's like okay. You know, you know who we're never having on the show ever again. Who? Pisco. Why? Because fuck him. He's a total piece of shit. Why? I'm tired of having conversations with people, especially leftists, who I have a conversation with them. I'm. Completely acting in good faith. Uh, I think they're acting in good faith. 
And then they go around on Twitter and they fucking snake me like a piece of shit. So Pisco sniped at you on Twitter? Yeah, you didn't. I tweeted it out. You didn't see it? No. I ended up deleting it because I just didn't. It's just, I was like so pissed by it. Like, it was. Um, well, Matt, maybe that's why I didn't see it. Because <laughs> you fucking. Yeah, but it was up for it. a while. I got like hundreds of likes. Shit. Why? Well, but well, it's fine. I'll tell I'm you what. Try- it was. When I'm, tr- I'm trying to not be on Twitter as much. Right. Like I have a fucking comic to finish. So so this was the thing. This is why this is why this pissed me off. I saw Pisco in his conversation with Nick Ricada, and I thought, I don't know. I thought Pisco feels very dishonest in this conversation. And I said this publicly on the stream. I said, it feels like he's being very dishonest in this conversation, but I'm not a lawyer, so I don't fully understand maybe exactly the arguments. So maybe I'm not giving him the proper benefit of the doubt. Okay. And then we watched the Lauren Southern conversation and he came on and I thought, you know, I disagree with him, but I thought he was, you know, nice to come on. And he, you know, and I, I appreciate that he came on and he was being a good sport about the whole thing. Right. Yeah. We weren't making any headway, but he wasn't being mean. Yeah. But he, but yeah, exactly. But he wasn't fucking calling us Nazis or something. Right. Um, so then on Twitter, Hex says it's in their nature, Sitch. That's right, the scorpion. How do I spell Pisco? I want to look up his tw- his Twitter feed. Uh, P I S C O, but there's a number after it. I don't know what the number is. P I S C O. What? So. So this was in response to the AOC thing. I'm gonna go 420. So in response to the AOC thing, I said. This was when Lauren and Destiny were arguing about AOC. And I said, I think the issue here and the thing that Lauren and people like me are reacting to is that AOC is like stealing the thunder. Or I don't remember exact words, but like is basically taking the, the suffering that people who were like police officers who got beat up by rioters. She's like acting like that happened to her. And I think it's very disgusting for her to sort of like take the focus away and be like, but what about me? Look at me, look at me. You know, in her tweet where she was like, this brings it all back, you know, when she looked right. at the police officer getting beat up. Um, I thought that was very disgusting of AOC to do that. And then he like fucking like jumps down my throat and he's like, all right off the bat. He's like, well, we, we need AOC said that she was the same as the police officers. And I'm like, well, she, I'm like, she obviously didn't say that directly. She's not, she's smart enough to not say that directly. And I said it was implicit. It was the the comparison was implied, and so uh, Pisco was like, "How is it implied? How is it implied? Show your work." Which, first of all, I'm not your fucking student, asshole. Okay, you're not in college. I know you just graduated from the like law school, but it's like so. First of all, it's incredibly condescending to tell someone, you know, personally, show we show your work, show your work. Like okay, he's an I'm attorney. Not, okay, I'm, I'm not your fucking kid. Okay, you, you can to- ask me to. You can ask me to like, why do you think that? Like a How fucking dare. adult, like How a human dare. being, right? How dare like, you why, disrespect why you, this respected attorney, Sitch? Why do you think this way, Sitch? What are you using the basis of this? Okay. Right. And I was happy to answer that question. And it's like, as I'm going back, like I'm in the middle of uh, taking a screenshot of AOC's tweet. And I was going to write like why I felt that it was implicit he doesn't even wait or he waits like some like less than a minute or something. And he responds to his own tweet and he's like, Oh, you're just saying this now because you know, you realize that you're you're wrong and you don't want to admit it. And you know, you are just full of shit. And he just like goes on this whole like mind reading. Uh, oh, Sit, that... you just realize you were wrong. That's why you're backing off or changing your fucking position. That's terrible. Like, he goes on this fucking crazy. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? I was like, like, holy, where did this fucking come from? I'm just, I'm sick and tired of talking to people, especially leftists who, like, I'm having a good faith conversation with them. And then on Twitter, they start fucking mind reading me and accusing me of like, oh, you just believe this because exit. You just believe this because you're secretly racist. Oh, you just believe this because you secretly hate someone. Oh, you just believe this because you're secretly stupid and you said something stupid and you don't want to admit. Like, I just, I'm sick of these fucking pieces of shit. Who act nice to me and then go around and mind read me. I mean, Jangles are the same fucking thing. And it was just 
like I was so disgusted by it, like this behavior. So and this. I called Pisco out. I said, "What the fuck is your problem?" Like we had a nice conversation right. on stream, and then you just fucking act like a total piece of shit to me did on Twitter for literally no reason. Did you DM him? No, I just I I said I'm not. No, I retweeted it. I fucking quote tweet. I put him on blast. I said, "Oh, that's I said, "What good. the fuck is your problem?" You gotta do okay. that. You gotta do that. Privately. Why the fuck am I? I'm not DMing him. I have literally after he tweeted that, I'm like, oh, I just have no. I'm done I have with literally. This I'm just done. I have no. I don't. Why the fuck? Do, Pisco isn't like. Sitch has like, a fuse. It's very short, guys. Watch out. I don't have a. I don't have a short fuse. That's not true. I have a fuse about specific things. Right. Okay. And it, I'm sick of like defending people for them to snake me. Okay. It's the same thing with Brooks. Well, I don't I've like never, defending someone. I've I never defended Pisco. I mean, no, but I defended Pisco. How? Because I'm like, oh, we had a good conversation. When did you? You, know? did, you defended that? Because people or? in the chat were like shitting all over him. Like, listen, guys, you know, he came on. It took a lot of guts to come on. We had a nice conversation. Right. I was defending him from the chat, and then he turns around and stabs me in the back. Yeah, don't do and that. And I'm just, let I'm, the I'm chat really just, like, the chat. Let them. They know. <laughs> no, but that's fine. Like, and also because I had changed my opinion of him. I like, I thought, you know, going, you know, before I talked to him, I thought very little of him. And then mm-hmm. after I talked to him, I'm like, oh, okay. It's just, you know, seemed like a, an interesting guy, a cool guy. And then it's like, nope, my original, my original thought was right. He's a fucking snake. And he fucking snaked me. So I'm just, I'm just sick of this. I'm sick of that behavior. I'm sick of defending people who just, St- like for no fucking re for no re out of the blue he's the one that re- i didn't tag him he responds to me on the fucking blue like this same thing with jangles jangles went with his tweet just responds to me out of the blue fucking says you can mi- read my fucking mind and that i have nefarious uh motivations i'm just like fuck these people yeah it's pro fucking- felicity Let so me- no this is Put him on the- blast i said fuck you you piece of shit this is one of the so. 48 laws of power. I'm going to look it up for you. You really need to read that book. So you won't fall. But then he was all traps. like, and then he was trying to do this like weird shit. Where he was like trying to sort of apologize, but not apologize. And I'm like, you're not, you know, you're not important. You're just some random fuckhead. Right? Like I, I it's not like he's acting like he seemed like he was acting like it would behoove me. There we go. I, I worked it in to have some like, per, like, relationship where we invite pisco back on stream like who the fuck is this he's a fucking nobody what are you talking about get out of here <laughs> fuck look at you. you look at you you're like Listen. this is weird it was just a weird it's, the whole Listen, thing was dude. weird the whole conversation was weird after that point i'm like all right i don't know what the fuck you know your ego is out of control here uh, pisco but okay so we run a comedy show here and you're just saying funny dude yeah yep. hold on what's a, this one i don't know what law this is i should really just memorize it <laughs> But there's like four it's always days. trust the gut. It's what feeds you. That's true. That's true. Yeah, it's, I have to bring back the gut voice. It's something about. It's something about going after people who are more powerful than you because they <laughs> have like more of a reputation to protect and you have no reputation so you can really just do whatever you want i mean it's very much what bosch bosch did to blow up right so i'll find it well that was a nice sidetrack um maverick christian for 20 dollars says you know your interlocutor is irrationally polarized when they can't even agree with you that water is h2o without extreme difficulty i know Oh, so bad. Very true. Very true. Uh green green ant. I hope I'm saying that right. Maybe green ante. Thank you so much for joining the free will seekers. Uh Equa Shadox for five dollars says choose words wisely and you can reframe anything. Do you guys know that dihydrogen uh, monoxide is one of the deadliest substances known to man? Hydrogen monoxide? Di dihydrogen monoxide. Is that water? I don't know what that is. That's not water. H two O? It is not. It's di oh. are you are you okay? I know it's late at it. Oh no. It's past my bedtime. Oh wait a minute. You're right. 
Yeah. Are right. you right? Of course I'm right. I'm always right. So just learn to live with it. Dihydrogen monoxide. H2O and then monoxide is one oxygen. How did right? you know this? Wait a minute. Because I'm the fucking man. I, oh my God. I even take though, it all back. Even though I'm, I'm an exhausted, idiot. I still. And you're um, right. Yeah. Maybe you. Th there's like a there's like a joke about this. Dihydrogen monoxide. Oh, obviously, di two hydrogen one monoxide. Yeah. Monoxide. Just is do a the parody. math with the words. There you go. Is a parody. It involves calling water by an unfamiliar character name, enlisting some of the water's properties in a particularly alarming manner, such as accelerating corrosion and causing suffocation. Yeah. The parody often calls for dihydrogen monoxide to be banned, regulated, or labeled as dangerous. Um, and then it goes through a bunch of times that this has been done publicly. So, have you like have you heard have you heard one of these jokes or did Tim, you just Tim Pool does it from time to time? Oh, he brings up dihydrogen. I've heard him do it. Yeah. Oh, okay. So law thirty nine here: stir up waters to catch fish. Anger and emotion are strategically counterproductive. You must always stay calm and objective. But if you can make your enemies angry while staying calm yourself, you gain a decided advantage. Put your enemies off balance. Find the chink in their vanity through which you can rattle them Listen. and you hold the strings. First of all, I'm offended that you used a, a slur. Okay. What do you mean? You this? said chank. <laughs> you said sank. I said chink. Ah, he said it again. <laughs> chink is a word. I know. Find I'm just the chink. Find I'm the just chink joking. in their vanity. I'm just joking. Yeah. Is that is that the same spelling as the slur word? I think it is. Uh, I don't think so. Isn't okay. there a K in in the correct usage of chink? I don't know. Is there actually? I don't even know. Suppose they could be both spelled the same. I'm not sure. Uh, Equin <laughs> Shadowknox in the chat says that made my day. Thanks for not knowing this beforehand. You're welcome. This is a it's a comedy show, so you're welcome. Uh, this is your up dog moment. No, listen, listen. This was not as bad as Adam's up dog moment. Okay, up dog. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it wasn't as bad as that. Okay, how dare you? Interaction with boldness. Bosch does this one all the time. Law 28. What is that? This one he does too. Law 27. Play on people's need to believe to create a cult-like following. That's so Vosh. Are you kidding me? To answer the question, yes, chink is spelled the both both the same way. The slur and the like a chink in your armor. But so I said I said the armor one, obviously. How dare you? Play the perfect courtier. Adam, show the meme I sent Concentrate you. your forces. Meme time is over, guys. Okay. Sorry, Andrew. Do not commit to anyone. Uh, GSB1005 for $20 says, Vosh doesn't understand that basically all definitions are just pattern recognition. A and B have similar features, so we group them together. They have those features with or without definitions. We're just labeling patterns. That's a good point. That's a good point. Of course, it's all patterns. I believe the world is made up of patterns. That's Jordan Peterson. Okay, here's one for you. Tell me what you think of this one in the context of Vosh, right? Law 18. Do not build fortresses to protect yourself. Isolation is dangerous. The world is dangerous and enemies are everywhere. Everyone right. has to protect themselves. A fortress seems the safest, but isolation exposes you to more dangers than it protects you from. It cuts there you, you off from valuable information. It makes you conspicuous and easy to target. Mm -hmm. Better to circulate among people, find allies, mingle. You right. are shielded from your enemies by the crowd. This, this is, is uh, true in both power and in love. This is, uh, but this is Vosh's fortress arc. This is why Vosh's fortress arc isn't. Yes, someone in the chat said <laughs> directly to Vosh's fortress arc. Yeah. Yeah. This is uh, a giant mistake. 
Yeah. <laughs> Someone Dad. said they, they clipped us saying chink and they sent it to Taylor Lorenz. <laughs> oh my God. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Tell, uh-huh. Hold on. Clip this and send it to Taylor Lorenz. Taylor no, Lorenz, okay. you're a fucking piece of shit, okay? Stay away. You you are a blight <laughs> on journalism. There you go. Clip that out. There you go. Uh, Texas SP12 for $2 says, I call soda coca red. <laughs> I know. I know you. I know you. You you wrong people do that. That's almost as bad as the poppers. Listen, once the poppers are gone, I'm coming for you cokers. Okay. You cokers are next. Cokers. You're going to be cool. like, all the cokers are going to be there like, when, when Stitch came from the poppers, I said nothing. That when, when Sitch came for the Cokes, there was no one there was no one to defend me. Mm-hmm. Uh, Frito's Bookshelf for 20 uh, R's, thanks so much, says, Vosh is so narcissistic that he believes that if we didn't exist, rocks would fly, <laughs> gases wouldn't be gases, and dirt would be rainbow, and water would be fat-shaming heavy water. <laughs> Jeez, uh, that's retarded. Also... Thank you. And that is true. Mm-hmm. Uh, HTE Mojo for Five Canadians says, just want to say you guys are killing and I'm surprised you're not bigger. Uh, FYI, Peter Bogosian's latest campus romp on trans athletes just dropped. Yeah, a bunch of people really? tweeted this. I, I didn't have a chance to watch it before the stream, but I'll check it out afterwards. So... Uh, Mithram6 for 200 Kazarkazark says, I think we need to start treating sophists as language hackers. No matter what comes out of their mouths, it's futile. You say futile or futile? Futile. Futile. Yeah, futile sounds lame. It's futile to seek a meaning in it. It's like trying to figure out what Nigerian prince inherited the money. (laughs) I think that's a good way to conceptualize it. Yes, sophists are language hackers. Yeah, that's a good way to think of it. Uh, the expert layman for $20 says, from my time volunteering at an animal shelter, I can attest to the fact that some dogs and even some cats have a strong sex-based bias when interacting with humans they don't know. That's interesting. I've, I've definitely heard that very often, um, especially animals that have been abused Really, I've heard that huh. from yeah. Like if they're abused by a man or a woman, sometimes they'll have. Oh yeah, that makes sense. Right, and also I know like I've had friends uh, who've had pets, and their pets seem to be biased in favor of males or females, um, and it's not like it's not based on like oh if it's a male dog it's biased in favor of females or anything like that. It seems somewhat random, so. I have seen that in pets. I don't know what exactly drives that. I'm biased against Dennis because I was abused by a dentist. That is true. That is true. Yeah. You and my dad. Yeah. Uh, what the 40K for five Canadians says, congrats on reaching 40K subs. Thank you so much. Love the show. Keep it up. The emperor protects. There you go. That's right. Reach 40K for all the 40K fans. A bunch there. of people subscribed like we were getting trickle in subs and I think just me mentioning it, we got like a hundred subs. <laughs> See, there you go. You're like, you're like Sitch. It's so lame when you say subscribe to the channel, but it works. It does work. Yeah. It works. We got to do it more often, especially well, on Sundays. If people also, they like it when you do the thing that Keemstar always does now what? at 40,000 subscribers. Oh yeah, yeah. sure. Sure. Uh, Joe the Make for $5 says, talk about zero awareness of far left terrorism that dominated the 30s and 70s. That is true and fair. Of course, yeah. Yes. Environmental terrorism. Uh, Micro Omega for three months, free will seeker. Thank you so much. Says, behold my awesome milestone. Behold. Thank you. Yeah. I don't know if that was a Zim reference, but I'm going to pretend like it was regardless. Wait till the gold badges come out. Oh, they look so badass. Yeah. When is that? Six months? I don't know. I think so. Is it six months? The the last one's not gold, right? The last one is 
I believe the last one's gold. I thought the last one's black. No, I thought the black was first and then gold. Huh. Oh, there's. I think it's. There's a one month, two months, three months, six months, one year, two year. I think is the. the oh, breakdown. it is. I think that's the breakdown. I'm gonna look it up. So it's gonna be a while. If it's two years, it's gonna be a while before you see one of those. It can't be that long. I gotta wait uh, that long just to see the badge. Come on. Let's see. I don't know. What Membership. Is... I'm going to find it first. Uh, membership levels. Oh, whoops, that's not it. Badges and emojis. Here we go. 24 months, Adam. Oh, it is. Holy <laughs> it is shit. I was right. One month, two months. Oh, no, it's not three months. One month, two months, six months. Okay. Then so, 12 months. So one year, one year is the black one, and then two okay. years is the gold. Gold. So it's going to be a while before you wow. see some gold. Uh... Wow. That's crazy. Yes. I don't. Will the show still be going in twenty four months? Of course it will. How could you say something? I like don't that? know. Look at this guy. I mean, I, I'm, I'm down to do it, but I don't. You know, I don't know. We have an extra emoji slot we never used. In twenty, in twenty four months. Oh, I know. We need an eagle. We need a badass need an eagle. eagle. Yeah. Yeah. We need like a badass eagle. An American eagle. An American eagle, yeah, not one of those eagle with. I said eagle yeah. with American flag sunglasses on fire. Not one of those dumb Australian eagles. No, look, not one of those de like degenerate dumpster diving Australian parachute eagles. pants wearing, <laughs> Crocs wearing. Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, Sammy G says, "In two years, I hope I can finally see a new Sitch video." <laughs> Listen. No guarantees. Since his <laughs> Joe, dead. Joe the stop it. Joe the Meg for two dollars says, "Oh no, the IAT is a dumpster fire." Is it? What is the IAT? The uh, Harvard Implicit Association test. I think it's the implicit bias test. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. yeah. Impl but she didn't mention specifically implicit bias testing, right? She did, I think. Well, I, she seemed to be conflating implicit bias and and systemic racism. So, and I we didn't never really ask enough questions to get to the bottom. Well, of no, that. she was saying she wasn't conflating them. She was saying that like a denial of systemic racism, she categorizes as implicit racist, which I don't. Right. But no, I mean. So. I, for me, like the systemic race, they're not, they're just, the, their evidence for systemic racism is just a correlation. There's no causal connection. Yeah. Well, that's, yeah. that's the ultimate problem with systemic racism is it's measured via correlative factors. Right. Yeah. So it's impossible to really pin down or to fix. Yeah. Uh, Satoshi was a reptilioid for 50 knock knocks says the right tends to be xenophobic the left tends to be racist uh, apropos conflating of terms hmm the left is xenophilic i don't know where you're getting that there's i'm not sure i agree with that satoshi i had to think about that the, the left right is, is xenophobic while the left is racist the right is xenophobic and the left is xenophilic i understand what the i understand what he's saying mm -hmm. um i think about that Sarah Richards for five dollars says, "I wonder how good Sitch's tongue tastes because he sure is biting it a lot." <laughs> listen, listen. Was that during the talk? Doctor Doctor Ghost is a nice lady. Okay, I don't want to like <clears throat> goal here. It's not to like rip in there. Okay, we'll talk. We'll talk in the future with her. Maybe we'll, we'll make some progress. Unless Move she's gonna, she might snipe you on Twitter. You never know. If she does, then then uh, we're done. But uh, I don't know if she's even on Twitter. So yeah, right. She said she she said she was personally, not publicly. So. Right. Uh, Brandon Norman for $20. Thank you, Brandon. Says, quote, trans women are women and are also male. Recognize both sex and gender. That is the best way to understand this. Um, I disagree completely. Uh, it just trans women are trans women. Just, it, I don't. To me, this is like the. This is like a defund the police argument. It feels to me like 
it's it's very obvious that the origin point of trans women are women is from people saying that there's no categorical difference between a trans woman and a woman, and a cis woman, which is obviously not true. And then we sort of have other people trying to run interference and carry water and say, it's not, that's not what they're saying. It means this other thing. And it's like, no, I don't, I don't buy it. It's like defund the police. I don't buy it. That's what the people who, who said, who came up with the phrase, that's what they meant. They literally meant defund the police. They're anti-police, period doesn't mean any of this other sort of like nuanced thing if you want to if you want to have a nuanced opinion then create a new saying a new slogan nuance is such a cop out i don't like that right. term i mean most of the time people who are talking about nuance don't really have a very nuanced position right but not but not me i have nothing but nuance how can J -Mac. you have, how can you like if defund the I mean, there's no nuance there. <laughs> Let's be honest. There you go. J Mac. Uh, J Mac for fifty dollars. Thank you so much, Daddy. Daddy J Mac R. Circuit Father says, "I know how we can solve this from both political perspectives. Stop grouping people as though they're monolithic hive minds. Focus on the individual, not the group. I'm brown, so you can't argue with me." There you go. I agree. 100 percent 1000 million jillion percent that's why we're uh in favor of individual rights mm -hmm. conception of liberalism and we don't and, uh, agree with brown people because we're not racist there you go also that yeah uh zero richards for two dollars says adam should yell at more women there you go <laughs> that was hilarious i saw that when it went through <laughs> and i was thinking oh don't tell her don't tell her that I made Aiden cry. I should have read that during the. You had a how is that possible? You had an entire conversation with a female act for with a female Adam, and you didn't yell at her mm -hmm. once. I'm impressed. Well, I don't know her well enough. Aiden and I are like buds, so. Oh, I see. It's once like you lot. know Charlotte well enough, of you'll course. start making her cry and yelling at her. Yeah, you you understand how it is. Yeah. Okay. There you go. Alex Garris for five dollars says Vosh uses a lot of sarcasm. But sarcasm is just a social construct, so sarcasm doesn't really exist. Oh, true. There you go. Yeah. Got him. Very true. Uh, Matrix 07012 for 500 Kazarkazarks says implicit isms are just 10 degrees of separation. You are looking for a stick to beat the dog with. The implications of an action are purely subjective, depending on the biases of the observer, and therefore unscientific. Asserting them only polarizes. True. I like that. That's a good yeah. super chat matrix. Very good point. Polarizing is bad. Uh, Hurl Hay for 2000 NGN says, Adam, we need more MMT debates. I'm halfway through Thomas Sowell's basic economics book, and I feel like I am something of an economic, <laughs> of, an, <laughs> of an economist myself. Nice. Well, if you want to come on and argue MMT, I'll, I always like talking about MMT. There you go. Nice. Uh, <laughs> I always appreciate the Spider-Man meme. I just saw that actually recently. Um, Spider-Man. What was the last Spider-Man movie called? No Way Home. No Way Out. Uh-huh. Have you seen Spider-Man No Way Home? Is that the last one? I saw the That's last one. That's the last one. one. That's the one with yeah, all the great. other Spider-Mans. Toby Maguire's in it. Yeah. You, I loved you it. Thought it was, yeah. You liked it? I Am feel I like it should have like been it? amazing. And it just, I just felt like it wasn't. It, the beginning was super slow. I didn't like, it should have got going faster, but. I don't know. I just, it felt. It just seemed like it had all the right pieces to be so amazing. And it just, I don't know. It felt very boring. And I'm like, how is this movie boring? You have like this, in, like the first time I think ever in a movie that wasn't like a parody. We have a cross, like a remake crossover, <laughs> like characters. It's such a, like an awesome idea. And it just, I don't know. It just didn't tickle me the way it should have. Mm 
Uh, Sitch, should Black kill Destiny on StarCraft 2? Is Sitch, I mean, is uh, Sitch, is Destiny a big StarCraft 2 lore defender? Oh my god. I'll have to have a debate about that. If that's the case. Holy shit. StarCraft 2 lore is terrible. It totally ruined StarCraft 1's storyline. So depressing. Oh, I know exactly what you're talking about. I know you don't. <laughs> I would go into it, but we still have more super chats and it's late. Okay. Yeah. And I'm just falling asleep. Andrew Clark for two dollars says, Adam, Wormy needs a mic so we can hear the little cat sounds. Yeah. I mean, he is cute when he purrs, I'm not gonna lie. Right. Who's heard a domain for two Canadian says, Is she racist against oh I read that one? It's against ducks. Uh, Ostracy for five dollars says it amazes me that none of you can even properly articulate the bootstraps argument and the amount of assumptions being added to it. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, excuse me. What is so hard to articulate about the bootstraps argument? I don't know. We didn't even really flesh it out at any point in the conversation because we assumed everyone understood it. Yeah. Um. So I'm not sure what you're referring to. They're going after Disney again. Disney's down. For what? In- Disney's down to ninety four dollars a share, ninety four twenty two. Every, yeah, everything's fucking down. <laughs> Everything is down, but also, I mean, the people who don't know the stock market don't they don't know about resistance and support. It's really when a stock breaks through support, that's when you really have an argument to say, okay, this company fucked up. But stocks usually travel between distance, between resistance and support, normally as a course of... Yeah, but how do you figure out where that line is? Well, the normally support becomes resistance or resistant. Resistance becomes support once it breaks through the resistance. And there's like a new set of buyers that come in. Mm-hmm. But it's just over time... Uh, people accumulate at a certain price point and that price point it becomes support where, right you know they're not they're sellers above that price point but once you hit that price point the sellers kind of dry dry up so <laughs> so it can't really go any lower yeah okay but disney's support is at $90. Like this is a good time to buy Disney because Disney's at support and likely it's going to travel back up to resistance, which I think is like about 140 or I don't know how high. Mm-hmm. We shall see. Yeah. So I just, uh, so like pointing to this, the stock market price of something and doing the whole get woke, go broke thing is, well, it doesn't make sense if the entire stock market's like shit. I know. Like, but that's not really apparent. But, uh, like, if Disney was the only stock, you'd be like, okay, maybe there's something going on in here. But, uh, Dennis, for $5, says, why don't people who propose taxpayer-funded entitlement, why don't people who propose taxpayer-funded entitlement, why don't they put some numbers on paper and debate them versus private? Because uh, that's too much work, I guess. I don't know. Uh, Lucifer in the domain for two Canadians says, I know they are harmless. I could take on four. There you go. Lucifer says you could take on four ducks. Four ducks. Four horse sized ducks or four duck sized ducks? Micah Sal, Saldian, Denny in the chat says, Adam, support and resistance aren't magic, they're psychological. I do agree there. But the thing that makes them, I mean, this, the psychology is, you know, obviously if you own something that is underwater, Mm -hmm. you're one of those people that's going to hold it until it, until you finally make your money back and you buy at the top and it immediately plunges like you're very incentivized to get that off your balance sheet as soon as it makes it back up to where you bought it again right right so that that's the psychology i mean i completely agree with you that it is psychological but 
it's the psychology of a bunch of different people and different people have different psychology depending upon when they bought in. Yeah. Anyway, you can tell I'm tired. Um, Starcraft 2 debate win with us. It's yet another response podcast. Uh, <laughs> probably never. <laughs> Remind me on Tuesday. If we only have one guest, maybe we'll have time for me to give my Starcraft 2 rant, which I know I've given a long, long time ago. I mean, we don't have to bring out another guest. We can just have one person. Right, right. No, I meant, yeah, I said, remind me to rant about StarCraft 2 on Tuesday if we have time. We don't really have time to get into it now. Uh, Matrix 07012 for 100, because Arkazark says the anti-radicalizer research makes the argument and talking points of radicals funny. Ouch. Uh, Jack of Spades for $2 says, Adam, check your mentions for a Marty Robbins meme. I don't know I who looked at my Marty mentions, Robbins. But I didn't see anything. Who dat? Marty Robbins, American singer, songwriter, NASCAR racer. Oh, that's the Big Iron guy. I only know that song because of Fallout. Big Iron, Big Iron. Uh. Lucifer the Dopeman for five Canadians says terrible cops don't empty pockets. And oh, that was I remember that one. Uh, I read that one. Crew, crew saddest viewing for $20 says quit being pink in mostly wet sitch. I don't know what that's referring to, but I'll try. <laughs> I'll try to be more uh, blue and dry. Investigator one Quim for $50. Thank you so much. Oh, you read this one. This was, is this a slur? Investigator one Quim for $5 says, hey, did you guys see Idubs appeared on Hassan's stream? I think he's going woke. I saw that he did appear on it. I didn't listen to it. Did you, did, I don't know. Did anyone listen to listen it? I didn't listen to it, no. Yeah. Did anyone listen to Idubs on Hassan's stream? Did he go woke? So. I don't know. Yeah, but he did join Hassan's stream, and Hassan right. is woke, so he might be forced into the woke position. So the guy who was famous was saying, for saying the N word, go woke. Oh, I <laughs> did know. Did Hassan ask him about that? He should. He got that's you know he made such a big deal about Destiny's N word saga, and Idubs is kind of famous for saying the N word. So, what happened to Disney in two thousand eight? Like two thousand eight, it didn't really even. I guess it did kind of drop a lot. Uh, J Mac for another fifty dollars. Thank you so much, J Mac. Said if we're playing the game of self identification, then I wholly reject the identity of cis. It's similar to neurodivergence, serves no purpose other than the political. Oh, I read that one, but yes. Uh, I listened to the Hassan stream. It was embarrassing. Oh, that's sad. He sort of did go up. Oh, that's sad. He's also famous for saying, I'm gay. That's right. He did. That's right. That's sad. I blame Idubs Yoko Ono. <laughs> That's funny. Hassan said that he forgave Idubs for saying the N word because he was dunking on leftists with his content comp. What you mean, not leftists, right? He, the people he was attacking were not leftists, right? No. Like rice gum and uh, and uh, what the fuck's his name? Gnome beard and leafy. I mean, they weren't leftists. Uh, Jmac for twenty dollars says no BS is the son of the right. Is he still a thing? I don't know. I don't know. I have no clue if he's still making videos. Uh, Crew Sadist viewing for twenty dollars says Nick Ricada is the man and Destiny is a communist dwarf. <laughs> also, Sitch is pink and wet. What does this mean? Is this a thing? Pink and wet is a pussy, right? Oh, is that the reference? Why am I? What happened? What happened in this conversation, crew? That made you call me a pussy? How dare you? Okay, I'm pink and hard. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it also sounds wrong. 
Uh, James Christ five dollars says Tim Pool does not want you to have a nuke. He's just saying the Second Amendment would technically allow. Yeah, I I understood that. Um, I think that's a dumb argument, though. I think that's a really dumb argument. That he's not saying that you should. He's just saying that that's what it means descriptively. I I think that's an incredibly stupid argument. But that's just me. I don't think the Second Amendment precludes any and all uh, gun regulation at all. And I think to interpret that way is just as radical as to, to interpret it, you know, the way that quote unquote gun grabbers would try to interpret it. Gun grabbers. As they like to say. Uh, DBZ Dragon for $50. Thank you so wow. much, Shenlong, or possibly Perunga. Says, I would love to be a part or see a discussion either on the Second Amendment or on gun control, thinking the idea of the Second Amendment is too liberal in its freedoms. Interesting. Maybe. I don't know. I mean, people are just, if people not come super on and... interested in having a gun conversation. Yeah, the thing is, I mean, are we going to... People want us to take a position or whatever. No, I don't really know enough and... I mean, people are going to come on and they're going to basically just preach their position and people are going to be mad at us going, you didn't push back. That position is incorrect and wrong. And I'm like, sure, well, we're sure. just inviting them on to to hear their position. Yeah, so, right. No, their position is incorrect. You have a huge platform and you're <laughs> platforming these maniac idiots. Well, it depends. I mean, you, you have to find the balance because you don't want to be like, no. Well, it also depends who you're talking to, right? There's no such thing as balance. Okay. Um, Idub's wife flirted with Hassan a few times and revealed that Tana Mongu say N-word prank was her idea. That That's oh, his that's wife true. now? I mean, it was his girlfriend when she started an OnlyFans. Like, maybe. Maybe they're married now. So he... So I guess... The OnlyFans was a success. It was a... There you go. It was Maybe because he doesn't make videos that much anymore, so maybe she's... It was a marry me. Money. It was a, a marry me or I'm going to start an OnlyFans or it was a... I'm going to start Now that you have money from your OnlyFans, we can get married. Right. Yeah, no. It's it's interesting. To, like, <laughs> how did that work out? Uh, Radio Freedom for $5 hours says, What would it become of the poor cart wranglers? If we return all the carts for them and their employment is no longer needed. There oh, you go. Oh, I like this. There yes. This is the <laughs> argument that I needed the other day. That's a that's what we the business like to call a nice big juicy rationalization. Yes. Mm. Sitch, I'm a job creator, okay? Yeah, okay. Quit fucking Listen around. This fucking guy. Listen, this fucking guy. Do you remember did you ever see the movie The Terminal with Tom Hanks? I think I did, yeah. Do you remember there's a part where like um he realizes that some airports if you return the carts they give you back however much you paid for the cart like like the dollar or 50 cents or whatever it is hmm. and he goes around just doing this to to fund himself being able to eat and live in the, the airport and so the asshole airport manager who i forget why is like trying to fuck him over uh hires an employee to go around and start <laughs> And start returning the cart so he can't get the money for it. Ah, uh, what an a-hole. I know. Uh, Bixley for $10 says, it's impressive the mental gymnastics needed to think that people being able to defend themselves, individual property rights, and freedom to speak, so long as it's truthful, is the gateway to fascism. I agree. I mean, obviously, that's not, they're not conceptualizing it that way, but I agree. Bob and Go for five dollars says, "Do you worry that policymakers might choose policies based on perceptions of second-order observations over what might actually be effective?" I don't worry about that. That's obviously what's happening right now. Yeah. <laughs> what well, looks good? Right. That's a hundred percent what's happening. Yeah, a hundred percent. I think it might have always been happening in politics, though. To some extent. Yeah. To some extent. Politics is the ultimate expression of pro felicity. Right. I like to think we were better at some point. Mm, no. Okay. You're more blackpilled on it than I am, I guess. 
Ostracy for $5 for five dollars says watching height on Lex made me really not like height. I think his social media takes are right, but his arrogance towards fixing it, I was not a fan of. Interesting. Was he arrogant on Lex? I didn't watch it. I did. And I, I mean I don't think he was super arrogant or anything, but he was I mean they did have a back and forth. Uh, the I just I don't Lex is in a Lex is obviously in a position where social media is an important part of his business model. So, I mean, he, and and also, I mean, he's, he's the one that's representing the good things of social media. Right. Yeah. Okay. See, uh, CMC, they call it commuter, computer mitigated communication. He said he thought height was arrogant, not... Lex. Right. Right. Uh, Crack Bandicoot for five Canadians says, are you trying to separate Marx or Marxism from the greater movement that Marx inspired? I mean, that's what, I think that's what uh, Carefree Wandering, he's, he just doesn't like, um, he doesn't like calling Marx inspired movements Marx, Marxism. As soon as it's divorced from economic conditions, he says it's no longer Marxism. Which, I mean, I don't agree with him on that. I think it's fine to call that identity Marxism or race Marxism, but I understand why he wouldn't like that. Uh, Lord Tennyson's Pipe for $2 says, Dr. Moeller, please red pill such an atom on on Kantian philosophy. (laughs) We'll have to say that for next time. He has a video on Kant. It wasn't that that was a video that was a response to uh, philosophy tubes. I thought it was on account, wasn't it? Oh, was it? Maybe. I thought it was, yeah. Uh, Solo Doge, formerly America's Big Fat Surplus Ish, for $10 says this week's book recommendation Endurance by Alfred Lansing. It details the 28 man voyage to cross Antarctica in 1914. And how they were stranded for over two years. Holy fuck, I didn't know that. What was it? How do I look it up? Endurance what? Endurance by Alfred Lansing. Alfred. I didn't know they got stranded for two years. That's crazy. Shit happens, man. Isn't that the guy that Daryl Davis was talking about? Where like some black guy finished the voyage and then they wouldn't like wouldn't allow him to get credit for it or was that something else i thought he said that was for the crossing of antarctica it's got an audible look at this it's got an audible uh okay. interesting oh no this was a different thing you and your things uh so Doge also said you should cover the whole woke interjection into localization drama such as Persona 4, etc. It's to the point where gay cross dresses must be made trans. Yeah. The whole localization drama is always a bin of wall cowism. Uh, for those that don't know, primarily Adam, what they're referring mm-hmm. to is that when video games are localized from like that are made for prime or they were made first for like a Japanese audience or made by like a Japanese developer. When they localize it to an American audience, often they'll have to change things that they think would be like offensive or vice versa. So hmm. apparently he's saying that there was some situation where there's like a gay guy who's cross dressing and they have to like change them to being trans, not to be offensive or something. So it's always weird localization changes that are made. This I think is Adam weird. Went, I don't know, he's there. There's two books for well, I don't understand the localization thing. What okay, do you, don't worry about it. What what is local what does localization have to do with anything? I told you they they so localization is like when they censor or change a video game depending on the region it's going to be released. Okay. To conform to like the social standards of that region. And that's should be a moral so, or something. Well, I mean I, I I don't think you should do that. I think you should, you know, keep the artist's mm-hmm. original intention generally. Really? I mean, yeah, don't they really. change the language for the area because okay, of the Vosh. local? <laughs> okay, Agua. I mean, my artist's intention was okay. for this to be in English, but 
Uh, CT says it was a girl pretending to be a boy to get respect. She's not trans or gay at all. Oh, okay. Interesting. So wait, there was a girl who's pretending to be a boy to get respect and they want to, or th did they want to, or did they localize that girl in the American game to be trans? Or is it just that trans people wanted them to do that? I haven't followed any of this drama, this specific drama. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Smooth Brain for $2 says schools need social media managers for their students. There you go. Yeah, hell yeah. Uh, Solidoge for $2 says the OK girl also thinks we should abolish the Senate. Is she still fucking around? I thought she wasn't even doing politics anymore. Yeah, why? Sh she sh probably shouldn't be doing politics if she wants to abolish the Senate. That's really stupid. That's really stupid. Endurance, Shackleton's Incredible Voyage. There's two versions of the book, and one is f six hours and one is ten hours. Mm -hmm. One is free with an Audible subscription, so I'm going with the free one. <laughs> <laughs> but thanks for the suggestion. I'll definitely read it this week. Sounds fascinating. Uh, trans people wanted them to make the character trans, even though it would destroy her entire story arc. Uh, they didn't make her trans because she's not. And and then they, the tra oh, and they, who's they, the trans activists, claim they erased the trans character. Oh, that's hilarious. Yeah, well, you know, old cow's going to old cow. What are you going to do but laugh? So, what are these idiots? Look at these idiots. A little cow's gonna low cow. That's pretty funny. Uh, Investigator One Quinn for ten dollars says you guys should talk to Gothics. She's anti woke and anti CRT Twitch streamer. Also, you should see if you guys can talk to the Britisher too. He's a former friend of uh, Quack before Quack went crazy. Sure. Britisher, I would have on in a hot second. Like, yeah, right. maybe we could talk to him about what happened with his. I mean, I don't know if he wants to do drama, but I'm curious. Yeah, maybe. Where, because he left, he was a regular on Quack's live streams, and they parted ways. And I don't know if, I mean, we can either blame Britisher, like <laughs> Britisher left and he fell apart because of that, and so if uh -huh. Britisher is somewhat responsible. <laughs> or, right. or... Uh, Quack is responsible and Britisher left because he couldn't stomach the crazy shit he was doing. Yeah, right. Yeah. I'm assuming it's the latter, but we can pretend like it's the former because it'll be funny. Mm -hmm. uh, Bub Savvy for $20 says, if you guys are for universal health care, can I refuse to pay for your health insurance? I don't know. It seems like you're advocating for a forceful theft to me. What if some people don't want it going towards a public option? I mean, that... You're just making the you're just making the argument that all taxation is theft, which we don't agree with. I don't see how it's any different than that argument. Yeah, see, that's I don't. Ben Shapiro makes this argument, and it bugs mm -hmm. me because Ben Shapiro is a very smart person, and I mm -hmm. just think when he comes out and talks about you can't force my wife, who's a doctor, to to be a doctor at gunpoint, I just think. Well, that's the, not what the well. That's well. First of all, that's not what Bub Sabby was even saying. But that's okay. What is he saying then? Well, he was he, was, he wasn't talking about forcing a doctor. He was just talking about uh, paying for insurance. I mean, do you know the the argument that Ben Shapiro makes about how, like, how does it force his wife? She's not going to be employed by the state if there's a public option. He's saying that if the government provides a service that mm -hmm. that basically forces people to provide that service to people at gunpoint. <laughs> that's like, his that, argument. but that's like, I mean, are police held at gunpoint? That is, police that is the, I don't understand that is saying. why I think it's such a stupid argument because mm -hmm. so are you saying postal workers are forced at gunpoint to be postal workers? I mean, there are all these government employees, the whole idea, and I mean, I've heard, I've heard Congress people say this. I've heard Senate senators say this. The, well, the, let me let me steal, man. Maybe. maybe what he's saying is that if we switched over, like if if he woke, like if 
if Ben Shapiro's wife woke up, if she went to sleep a private doctor and she woke up and being a private doctor was outlawed, maybe that's what he's referring to. Well, if he's talking about Medicare for all, sure, he's got an argument to make because... Well, no, not even. Medicare for all was only that there would be no private insurance. It didn't say that the government would take over. It's not like changing to the UK system where the government actually runs the hospitals, right? Okay. I didn't know that. I thought it was the UK system. I don't think it was. I don't think that's ever even been advocated in America by anyone. It's like a politician. Right. Seriously. So I could be wrong. I thought, yeah, I'm pretty sure Medicare for all was just about payment. It wasn't about the government actually owning the hospitals or anything. Right. Police have the option to be police or not to be police, right? I mean, that's the world we live in. They're not police. Like, we don't basically dole out employment status at birth and say, this is your cast, <laughs> like you're a policeman now. Right. Yeah. So that's why I hate that argument. Ben Shapiro makes that argument every time universal health care comes up. Uh, Bub says, I'm saying you're forcing me to pay for your health insurance. I understand that, but I'm saying... Um, no, I'm not. Listen, no, no, no. I Stop. pay taxes too. It, I'm saying, how is that How is that different than saying like, well, you're for, like, you by paying taxes are being forced to pay for someone else's education. You know, that goes to public school. It's like, yeah, I mean, that's what, that's how taxes work. I don't, I don't understand how that would be different from... A public option or something to that and extent. you're paying for your own health care. You need health care. What the hell? <laughs> I mean, uh, I so Toshi was a reptilioid for 20. Knock knock says moist grandma. There you go. Bernie argued for nationalization of health care. Let me. I could have swore Medicare for all was only about the payment. Uh, Medicare for all. Rage Pro for four ninety nine says, "I am in the medical business, and insurance is theft for us as well. Insurance forces our prices. I will show my books. No, I, 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 I accept com- that. Yeah. They're completely correct. I do. Yeah, I'm very aware of all that. Yeah. The whole, the whole problem. I mean, there's a whole, the whole way that medical insurance in the U.S. is totally fucked. Yes, big. Time. So yeah, no, you're completely right." Completely right. Where's that book? This book is really good. The price we pay is about the fucked up healthcare system in America. Uh, I have to really get through this. The price we pay, what broke American healthcare and how to fix it by Marty Mark uh, Macaray. By Marty Macaray. This book is crazy. But yeah. I don't know. I have to read the... I have to read it. I thought, I thought it was about payment, but whatever. Regardless, I'm not in favor of either direction. Uh, I think it... I don't. Regardless of whether it's just for payment, I don't think it would work. And I don't think it's... I don't even see what the point of it was. Anyway opposed to having a public option that would compete against the private option it seems to me it would be the better solution yeah uh, investigator one quim for 20 dollars. thank you so much says hey sitch can i send you an article about transgender kid that possibly tried to commit suicide over greg abbott's order that parents of trans kids to be investigated for child abuse i'm very suspicious of its validity yes you can send it to me of course i saw that sounds i like... saw people um talking about that i didn't look into it but i saw it being shared around on twitter but yeah send it to me looks like misinformation see if it's i would be interested to see if that's true or not uh blunder of you for two dollars says everyone was non-binary until gender was invented there you go uh, mr cp thanks so much for a dollar uh plo to pl pl for two dollars says sent a link on twitter of an example of adam's crow project yeah but adam's doing it wrong so if someone wants to make me a crow box and send it to me, fuck, I'll set it up on the top of my garage. I'll do the, I just, I don't have time to build like that elaborate crow box. But I'm not putting <laughs> quarters in my crow box. I'm putting $20 bills. I want, my crows are going to work for it, okay? hmm Yeah. 
Uh, freaking out for two hours says debate me on gun laws. No, thank you. See, I don't. We don't want to debate. <laughs> I don't know the gun laws. Uh, XL S XSL for two dollars says Virgin Marks versus the Chad Max Sterner. <laughs> there you go. Who's Matt? I don't know who Max Sterner is. I don't know. Max was a German post Hegelian philosopher dealing with the Hegelian notion of social alienation and self consciousness. Well, there you go. I don't know anything about Max Sterner because apparently he's a meme because I see a bunch of meme drawings of him. Kano for $2 says, Giri no Kyodai, Sore wa Oki, Sugam Sugamasu, Omachi Kudasai. I don't know what any of that means. I hope I didn't say something How horrible. did you do that? Did you just make uh, it up, or can you really read that? What do you mean? I took Japanese in high school. I didn't realize you Is could that... really do that. Let me see what this means. That's pretty impressive. Thank you. I can read I can read words in English. <laughs> it's not that impressive. <laughs> but thank you, Adam. Uh, Bus savvy for no Why is this not translating? Bus Savvy for No Dollar says, I don't believe Adam when he says he's against MMT when he at the same time believes in centralized health care. Listen. What? MM, there's nothing centralized. MMT is not central planning. So I don't know why you're putting in the word centralized to health care. And I mean, what MMT is a descriptive view of how the economy works. It's not, it's nothing to be against. It's just, it's a description. I mean, there's proscriptions like the jobs guarantee program, which I'm not necessarily in favor of, but what are you looking up? There you go. See people in chat saying my Japanese is terrible at it. I thought it was amazing, but well, I, thank mean, you. I don't speak Japanese, uh, I so tried I to know. translate this. Google Translate refuses to, so I don't know what that means. Does anyone? I don't know what the words mean. Google says no. CT sent me a picture of a dinosaur. That's adorable. Adorable. Uh, yeah, there are two discords for the show, actually. I keep forgetting to put a link in the description, uh, but I should do that. Were are you going official, unofficial? They're both unofficial. What do you mean? Right. Oh, okay. Oh, did we not want to put links in? Did we put links in at one time and then we stopped because there was like I don't drama remember. or something? I don't remember. I can't remember. I mean, if it's like a no drama situation. MMT is absolutely central planning. Their central thesis is that the government should be in charge of fiscal policy. Um... I understand what his argument is, but I don't want to get into it right now. Well, they're too tired. The under... <laughs> okay. That's uh, such Benchmere's argument is against the idea that healthcare is, is a right. He's saying you can't force his wife to give you medical care. Uh, CT linked one of the discords in the chat. Um, okay, I understand. If he's making, if he's saying it's not a right, I guess it's a different. It's a different argument. Mm -hmm. I understand. I guess I understand. Isn't isn't the government see this is a distinction because right. saying you don't want the government to be in charge of fiscal policy when they already are in charge of fiscal policy? Yeah, that's why well, that's why I'm like I understand what you're saying about MMT being central planning, but I'm like, well no, because MMT again is a description of what already exists. Um, right. And and how like so yeah, I mean obviously MMT is describing a system where a fiat currency is controlled by a central authority, right? A central government. Sure. But that already, like that already exists. Yeah. Right. Like, yes. I guess, so I, I guess I don't know what, what is the, the next jump here that's being argued. Yeah. Like it's not central planning in terms of like a socialist central planning. Right, it's if not, that's how you're yeah. interpreting it, right? Not price controls. 
Yeah, MMT is not price controlled. Sure. I mean, there technically is a price control that's not doled out by the Fed or the Treasury. It's doled out by the Congress, and it's called the minimum wage, the federal minimum wage. I mean, isn't that being in charge of... So you don't want the government to be in charge of fiscal policy, even though they are. Right? Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I mean, some people. This is like when our conversation with um, Cody uh, Doge, with Do with with Doge, yeah. Where you know, some people want a completely decentralized currency, which I just, I don't, I do not foresee that as ever going to be a thing. Who makes the tax ever. brackets? Is it the Fed or the Treasury? Do they do they pick the tax brackets and? Well, I assume a lot of those people don't want there to be taxes. So. Well, if I mean, if you're in the taxation as theft camp, then okay. Yeah. So sort of those ideas seem to go one after the other. I just, I don't think it will ever work because I don't see, I don't see a world where a government would ever give up its power to enact fiscal policy by allowing a, a decentralized currency to, to become the norm. I was arguing with someone on Twitter. Mm -hmm. It's an Austrian economic, uh, Austrian economist. Mm -hmm. And I got to admit, I was being kind of a dick, but I just, <laughs> like, <I'm, laughs> you get so like angry about like this economic stuff. People for some are just reason. so, it's so like dry and boring. And you're like, ah, people are just so condescending about it. I just, I keep, that's what bugs me. It's just the condescending nature. I guess. It. Yeah, it's true. People are very condescending. It's it. like, okay, whatever. And whenever I dig in, it's like, they don't really even know. They kind of really don't know what they're talking about. But this guy was super nice and actually seemed a bit more open-minded than most. Austin See, so you're being on. rude for no reason. I listened to a talk. He's actually working on a book about mm -hmm. evolution and economics. And I was like, oh, well, this guy, <laughs> like, I feel like this guy could be my pal. Right. So be nice. Who knows? Maybe we'll have him on sometime. Yeah. I think Peter Bird, Bird, I think is his name. I'm not sure. I can't remember. Okay. I know you sent me that <laughs> on Twitter. You're like, what was it? El Salvador, which was trying to like use oh, yeah. Bitcoin as a. Yeah, official currency, and now it's like, well, they weren't trying to use it as like official currency. They just invested in a lot of it, and now they're like totally fucked. This is straight selectorate, selectorate theory. Yeah, of course, some South American dictator wants his his um, his people to pay their taxes in Bitcoin. Because they're the currency they print is worthless. Well, and also there would be, it'd be easier to steal the money. Essentially, sure, yes, <laughs> obviously. Uh, Andrew Clark for two dollars says thoughts on the anime words bubble up like soda pop. I've never even fucking heard of this anime. Mm -hmm. So there you go. Uh, Kano for two dollars says, "Damn it, no! Google, stop listening." Porn, 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 porn. Ronaro Zoro was here for five dollars. Says, "Did you guys watch Benjamin Boyce's video with Eric Smith, the the rhetorician, rhetor rhetorician? I can't say that word. Rhetorician, rhetorician guy. Uh, no, is it good? I'll have to check it out. I haven't. No, I haven't seen it." Uh, Rage Pro for five dollars says I'm in. Oh, we read that one already. Uh, Doctor Diddler for a dollar says I would say that shunning is less related to the Amish in particular and more so to do with cults in general. Scientology, for example, practices an even harsher version of shunning. Uh, that's true. And actually, that would be good because um, what uh, Doctor. God, I can't fucking ever remember his name. Moeller? Dr. Moeller, right? <coughs> Hans. Yeah, with Doc, Doc, I don't want to say Dr. Half Hans. Half the people in Germany are named Hans. 
I know. Moeller is his name. I, when I, if, if I call him Dr. Hans, I, I just, I always think of like Jeremy Irons and as Hans Gruber. Yeah, I know. Hans Gruber. Just think Hans Gruber. Come on. <laughs> uh, Dr. Moeller, but, um, Hans George Moeller. Yeah. Moeller. Um, yeah, no, that's actually, that'd be a better example. Cause he was even saying like with Amish, the shunning was used for internally for the in-group as opposed to like shunning someone out like of the community completely the way like Scientology does. So yeah, that makes, that'd be a better comparison. Uh, Dr. Diller for $2 says it's so funny uh, that he's talking about China as a socialist paradise. When Mao died in 1976, they started reversing all of Mo Mao's stupid socialist policies and introducing market forces. Their economy is more like fascist Germany than say communist Russia. There you go. Interesting. Why well, brought up the market yeah. forces? Cause I, I, right, just, read to that, yeah. I read about that just recently. I know that's uh, I don't know enough about it to say one or the other. I know that's James Lindsay's. He also makes that same argument that basically uh, Chinese government now is like, he says it's communism over fascism or, or fascism over communism. I forget the exact way he phrases it, but yeah, he says that same thing. Uh, Dr. Lear for a dollar says it's interesting seeing chat's reaction to various guests. Obviously I don't agree with Hans and I support a lot of people. I suspect a lot of people didn't on some things, but they were, weren't nearly as ravenous as with Dr. Ghost must be cultural issues versus philosophy. Well, I think it's more that, I mean, even if people don't agree with uh, Dr. Moeller economically, they feel a kindred spirit with him because he's anti-woke and he's shat all over philosophy too. So I think that's more of it. I mean, maybe it's also because of what we're talking about, like the subject matter. You know, the first half of it, we're talking mostly about something that's not remotely revolving about the culture war so and on this and in the second half even if he doesn't like the cult marxist he did agree that it all came from marxist like they're using the marxist framework which is i mean he's obviously understands what's what it is like almost every conversation we've had with someone about crt they don't even they don't understand that at all Mm -hmm. So I was happy that Dr. Moore was like, yeah, that's what's happening. I just don't want to call it Marxist. It's like, oh, okay, fine, I guess. Uh, Dr. Diller for $3 says, Sitch and Adam about to complete the confrontational but very civil interview. About to complete the confrontational but very civil interview with Tucker Carlson that could launch the show into the national spotlight. Oh, I understand. Doctor, this is Dr. Diller's what if. Okay. Mm. Are you listening to this, Adam? I am. He says, uh, me and you are about to complete our confrontational but very civil interview with Tucker Carlson. The interview that could launch our show into the national spotlight as it airs on TV. And we get ready to end. We're saying goodbyes and whatnot. And suddenly a thought embeds itself in Adam's mind. He speaks up right before they're scheduled to go off. And he says, Sitch. I got to ask Tucker Carlson the three questions. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what? No. So, Tucker, do you think you could personally take down a horse-sized duck? <laughs> there you go. That's funny. I would, listen, I would 100% ask Tucker Carlson all three questions. Yep. Okay. And let's, Dr. Moeller answered them all. Okay. Right. Yeah. And the chat loved him for it. You instantly, if you answer the, the POV question, the chat instantly went, you instantly wouldn't chat over. Okay, that's the secret, the secret technique. Yeah. Uh, CT for a dollar says, how come Diddler is allowed to send 400 Streamlabs, but I'm not? This is some sexism, probably some racism and some bigotry. I'm trying to think of other isms. Uh, <laughs> Kinomortophobia? Thank you, Google. You Kino Mortophobia. Is that CT? That is CT. Obviously. What is Kino? That's the fear of zombies. Okay. Yeah, but the different CT is that we pay you, so it's weird that you pay us back. Yeah. <laughs> That's the difference, okay? It's a little strange. It's like you're like giving money to, you know. Does it, I don't know. You can do whatever you want, CT. I'm just saying. I don't know. I don't like it. makes me feel weird. 
They're all saying uh, Dr. Uh, Moeller was based, even though, I mean, he pretty much is a full-fledged Marxist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but he's anti... See, this is where we talk about the cultural issues are more important. He's anti-woke. Right, yeah. Right. This so is you, what Matt... So you guys don't mind if they're economic Marxists. You just don't like the cultural Marxists, though. Yeah, but that's what... Like, but see, that... that I think you just... We accidentally uh, fell into what Matt Binder didn't understand. Where he's like, I don't understand why people are voting against their economic interests. I'm like, I, I think people fixate mostly on moral and cultural things and not economic. Yeah, especially in a situation where their economic situation is pretty damn good. I mean, most people are doing okay. Right. Now, Dr. Mueller conceptualizes his economic position as a moral position too. But he just seems to be very anti the culture, you know, well, culture war shit. So. Right, yeah. Uh, CT for a dollar. Oh, I read the one. Arithmus for five, six dollars says, I accidentally stumbled into an argument about CRT with one of my high school friends and was able to cut through the normie talking points, have a very productive discussion with the knowledge I've gained from the show. Thanks a ton. Comedy changes lives. Wow. Awesome. Based, Arithmus. Based. We also talked about MMT Adam and I compared the gold standard simps to economic flat earthers. He agreed and we had a good <laughs> laugh. You guys really are doing a great thing with wow. the show. It's the best thing on wow. the internet. Thank you, Rhythmus. That's high praise. Really that is. It. Yeah. Wow. Thank you so much. All the gold standard people in the chat right now are. <laughs> How dare you? Well, I don't see. This is a thing. When you're talking about gold standard, you're talking about the ability to trade your paper money for gold. Can't you just do that already? Can't you just buy gold? Right? I mean, that's the thing. No, but they want, they don't, they won't, they don't, excuse me, they don't want money to be on like a fiat currency. They want it to be pegged to some tangible thing. Yeah, I understand the philosophy. Which is somewhat ironic because I seems like this, I don't know, maybe I'm completely strawmanning here, but it seems like there's some overlap between gold standard people and crypto people. <laughs> Right. I think it's just really the intuition is they they don't want the government spending a lot of money. I think that's real. Well, they don't want the government creating money. They don't want the government. Yeah. I guess you're right. They don't want the government controlling. Yeah. Like monetary policy, essentially. Right? Yeah. So I yeah. guess that's where it's coming. Even from. though they're providing a service that they don't recognize. Yes. Right. Well, they don't rec exactly. Yeah, they don't recognize it. So. Right. Uh, the official S class says, quote, have you figured out who I am yet? Hint, she is in the chat. Yours truly, Dr. Thallium. Uh, utter nonsense. Also, long live the Alliance and fuck the horde. <laughs> well, I don't, is that a riddle or something? <laughs> who, the Alliance is like, who the fuck likes the Alliance? The Alliance is for shitters. The Alliance is for total shitters. What kind of Lame loser plays a lion. Oh, I want to be a boring human or fucking pretentious night elf. Or let me be a little, little fucking gnome. I want to be a little gnome. God, so lame. Jeez. What's These wrong with lame gnomes? alliance people. God. Come on. Uh, Huck Finn for ten dollars says, "Thank you, Huck Finn." Says, "Congrats on the forty k, guys. Spend this super chat wisely. Buy some Bitcoin." <laughs> a team reigns supreme. Aha! Uh -huh. I feel Make bad sure. for the Bitcoiners. I really yeah. do. Yeah. Oof. Oof. Well, I'll be I'll be curious if it comes back or not. So. Yeah. We'll see what happens. Mm -hmm. If that um, if that video was right about the supply chains getting even tighter, uh, so. uh, Sitch retail clothing stores provide a service. How would you feel if they took? 
in money from all Americans regardless, and then you refuse to pay, they locked you up. <laughs> I don't think that's a good comparison. Come on. Really? <laughs> Come on. You can't compare you can't compare a retail clothing store to the the government, right? <laughs> you can't you have to come up with a better analogy than that. Uh, Andrew Clark for $2 says, Dr. Hans also seems like a truth seeker. He does. He does. Uh, <laughs> Zifu for 20 Aussie bucks. Thank you, Zifu, says, uh, Moeller was great. It reminds me of something Destiny said. Online people rarely give honest answers and simply say things that someone of their identity would say. That's very true, Zifu, and that perfectly aligns with authenticity versus profilicity. So there you go. Yeah. Fascinating. Anyways. Is that it? Anyways. How come I can see Vinny Doberman in the chat, but I can't see him on the screen in the video? Who? I see Vinny Doberman. Says, Vinny Doberman? Yeah, and the chat says, fuck every single one of you dumbasses. <laughs> but I don't even see that in the chat. Where are you looking? You don't see that? I can see it. I'm just I'm wondering how come I can see it. Why can't I see that? I can see it um, in my chat, but I can't see it in the video. Like somebody made him invisible or something, but I can still see it. Yeah, but how come you can see it? I don't and know. I can't see it. I don't even see that username. That's so weird. Take a screenshot of that. Yeah. Okay. Here, I'll bring it up. Some absolute legend in the chat recommended me Hollow Knight. Hollow Knight's a great game. Hollow Knight's a great game. Okay. We're done with super chats finally. We're done with super chats. Yes. What do you want to watch next? Uh, we can watch the CAA commercial. <laughs> Woke say hey, commercial. I guess we could I watch mean, one of those. Um, uh, what are they called? The little the woke uh, police accosting innocent black teens turns out to be the police chief's son. Video. I mean, I'm very delirious right now, and CT <laughs> loves it when we go over twelve hours. Right. So, okay, here it is. I'm mystified. I'm Vinny. We're free speech absolutists here. I don't know why. I don't know how. First of all, we are not free speech absolutists. Right, yes. <laughs> Technically, okay. we're not free speech absolutists. That is not true. But your chat both amused and made me chuckle, so I don't know. I, but I don't Vinny know why. Doberman. Vinny Doberman I don't even, says, fuck yeah. every single one of you dumbasses. Well, that's interesting, because I don't even, that doesn't even appear on my screen. I don't see that at all. Right, yeah. The, the one right above Zifu super chat is Vishnu uh, Vishnu Akar's chat. Uh-huh. So I don't know how you can see that, but I can't. I don't even know what that means. Yeah, I don't either. Very Am bizarre. I the only one that can see? Obviously, is, Vinny is... Is someone, a, like, fucking with... Is the CAA, like, fucking with Adam's mind? They're, like, sending him messages only he can see? Try to, like, gaslight him? Vinny has a potty mouth. I mean, it doesn't get much better. But I don't see I don't see any of Vinny's. Yeah. Use know. live chat sitch. I am using live chat. What are you talking about? Um, is that it? Oh, maybe. The, oh, I'm not using live chat. You're right. So it must be top chat that goes into the into the window there. I didn't even know this was a thing. Holy shit. Okay. I never knew there was a thing. Oh my god. Okay, so we figured it, it is. out. Yeah. Well, first of all, I think you should keep using top chat instead of live chat for the video. But wow, right. that's incredible. I didn't even know that was a thing. Because it censors out the some of the dirty words at least, I guess. Well, I, the, I think it tries to make some algorithmic choices. Decision about getting rid of what they consider spam or something. And look, I pulled it into the video anyway, so uh, did you see the Vosh video of him abusing the lady saying she was a pick me and she wanted to be harassed like in Mad Men? What's a pick me? 
Did did we already read this super chat? Moeller yes. was great and reminds me of something Destiny said. Online people rarely give honest answers. They simply yeah. say things that someone of their identity would say. That's pretty funny. And I said that was the difference between profilicity and authenticity. Yes. Yeah, I think I was distracted by Vinny. You were you were distracted fuck by every single fuck one. Every single one of you. There you go. And he means all of you, okay? That's not just aimed at me. Yeah, what the fuck? It will it'll block that out, but somehow the adult dating spam bullshit still gets in. What's up with that? I don't see it in the video, though. I don't know. I always pick me the... I, I didn't watch yet. I still have it open. I don't know why. Right. There's, a, there's a, a YouTuber called The Authentic Observer who got into some spat with Fosh. Is pick me a different person, a different YouTuber? How many people is Flash getting his fucking arguments with Jesus? Why do you think pick I me. do a live chat reminder? At Signs the of a pick of me stream? girl? Oh, this is some like fucking one of your resumer terms. I don't know about this shit. So it looks like CT has been doing a live chat reminder at the beginning of the stream. For 195 episodes, and we've just yep. noticed now. <laughs> well, I know, no, I always knew she did that. I didn't know didn't that had know something to do with like <laughs> live chat versus top chat. Hilarious. So, but it turned out that she was wrong because we never had live chat. It was always top chat. Right, but she's doing the live chat reminder to tell you to set it to live chat and turn it was off. Is that what the? No, chat. that's not what the reminder is for. I maybe it is. I don't know. I always wondered why she did. I that. thought the live chat reminder was for the ch for the chatters. CT. Okay. I didn't know you meant it was for us. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Listen. Listen. We're okay. learning things. Okay. We're learning all sorts of things today. We plan on we plan on perfecting the show before. I don't. I'm saying you should keep it top. You should keep it top chat, Adam. Hundred well, percent. Keep. I'm not changing top. anything that goes into right. the stream. Okay, so it doesn't matter. I just I pull up the live chat and I do change it from top chat to live chat. But I'm glad we figured out why we saw him instead of yeah. No. Okay. Uh, pick listening. me means a low value female. Ouch. Ow. Oofa. Yeah. Ooh. All right. <laughs> the doorman is still in the chat. Ethan. Fuck you all. Sigma. Sigma. <laughs> what? He just made his name. Made his day. Wait. My two dick, more. my dick boneless. DX. <laughs> That's sad. Uh XSL uh for two dollars says look up Max Sterner images, uh then the memes. Yeah, someone said that the re that he, he refused to allow like a picture of himself or something. So I'll, I mean it looks like there's a photo of him. Maybe this isn't. It looks like there's photos of him. I don't know. I, I think kind of think Vinny might have to rest. I'm not sure. I think you could be correct. <laughs> I think you could be completely correct. Andrew Clark for two hours says, Sitch, I sent you the next Soul Snack video. Let's see. Well, I'm not going to watch it right now. Black Doctor saves slice of online model who dropped. Oh, yeah. We. Uh, I'll watch that at some point. Okay. Oh, I was joking about the Soul Snack. Fuck you guys. Anyway. Thank you all for coming. Thank you all for incredibly generous donations. Thank you all for your amazing art. Uh, thank you, Charlotte. And thank you, Dr. Muller, for coming on. Uh, you're both great guests. It was a lot of fun. Uh, thank you all. You are the true heroes for making it to the end of the stream. And, we will, and thank you, Vinny the Doberman. Uh, <laughs> Grabbing a potty mouth. <laughs> and thus us <laughs> learning about live chat. <laughs> Anyways, thank you all for coming, and we'll see you all on Sunday. Bye-bye!